after the doomsday arrived. While everyone was desperately avoiding zombies, I, on the other hand, went against the grain and voluntarily became one of the first zombies in the apocalypse. Then I followed the zombies to avoid humans, all because I suffered from severe depression, coupled with extreme social anxiety. I, who didn't want to live, then let a zombie scratch me. Then I lay back in bed and waited to die slowly. But I didn't die as expected. Instead, I became a self-aware zombie. After becoming a zombie, I didn't feel hungry, nor did I feel like I had been in the house for months. I heard the sounds of announcements and gunfire outside, but I didn't dare to go outside, because I was a zombie. I was sure I wouldn't be seen as human if I went out. Instead, I might get shot by those people. So I just occasionally wander in the corridor. There are a few zombies in the corridor. These zombies look a bit leaky, but I didn't recognize him. I watched these moaning zombies walking around. Some sighs, perhaps they don't want to die. Unlike myself, feeling that death is a relief for myself. But those who wanted to die didn't die. Those who didn't want to die became walking dead. During this time, I basically stayed at home. Until a month later, the power in my neighborhood suddenly went out. Then the internet went out too. I used to watch videos to pass the time. I became thoroughly bored. This for a long time. I made a bold decision. That is to go hiking in Kwangu. The decision was made in the morning. People walk in the middle. I only took a few bags, took a map, and then set off with a sun umbrella. Because I'm a super social phobia. For me, going to a scenic spot to see the scenery is completely impossible. Now I'm not so afraid. Because there are definitely no living people in the scenic area. And zombies don't come up to talk to me. I live in a small 18th tier city. The city is not big, but it also has a population of 2 million. Based on the broadcasts and some informational videos I've heard in recent days, it also made me realize that 80% of the world's population has turned into zombies. I held the map and looked at the marked places on it, then draw a big red cross on top, because these places are the survivor bases established by Huaxia. It's absolutely not a place to go by yourself. Since we're going on a hiking trip, let's start from the province where we live. The place where I live is a major tourist province. There are also many natural scenic spots. Although the broadcast said not to go to the border at all, I still insist on going in that direction. There are many abandoned vehicles on the road outside the community. There are corpses and zombies in the cars. There are wandering zombies on the street. I don't know them. They won't bother me either. This relaxes me a lot, but this leisurely feeling didn't last for half an hour. I heard a few gunshots, and the sound of cars. I was so scared that I quickly hid to the side. The zombies nearby went there after hearing the sound. I put away the umbrella, caught a passing zombie, reminded not to go there. I caught a human zombie over there. There's still some fuzz, growling with big teeth at me. After I understood what he meant, helplessly, I just let go. Look, all the zombies nearby have passed by. The sound of them moving around made me feel like there might be some treasure ahead. But I know that ahead are the enemies of human zombies, even if I'm a social phobic, but I still have the nature of enjoying watching people's drama. Sneakily following behind these zombies, and walked forward in the direction of the sound. Soon, I saw several cars in the distance, and some plants sprouting from the cars. The vines will whisk away any zombies that get close. I immediately realized, there's a psychic in this car. Although I was just being nosy, but I also kept a safe distance. I didn't get close. There were only three people and a dog in the car. As the vines retracted, the passenger door was opened. A dog jumped out of the car. Then a young woman came out of the driver's seat. The woman looked to be in her early 20s. She looked about 6 or 7 years younger than me. But seeing her beautiful and confident appearance, it reminds me of those unfamiliar female protagonists I've seen before. Soon, three people enter a supermarket, while the zombies are separated from the door by the rolling shutter. Can only watch the delicious food enter the supermarket. Zombies clawing at the door, muttering under their breath. Although humans can't understand the zombies' words, as a zombie, I can understand what they're saying. Since this place has humans, then I also shouldn't stay in this place all the time. After about two hours, those three people and a dog came out again. The zombies at the door have already dispersed, but they gathered again after hearing the sound. I watched those three people put some things into the car. Then they got in the car and left. Make sure those people have really left. They won't come back again. I then dawdled my way to the supermarket. The supermarket is in a mess. Many food items are scattered on the floor. I picked up the messy things on the shelves, opened them, and put them in my mouth to eat. Then I found that it wasn't tasty, but I didn't think it was very bad. It just had no taste. 
In the end, I still didn't dare to eat it because I didn't know if my stomach could digest these things. I walked around. I walked to the clothing area, looking at these neatly arranged clothes and skirts. I excitedly tried on those beautiful skirts on myself, but now my body is covered in bruises. No matter what skirt I wear, it doesn't look good, but I don't mind. After all, who cares what a zombie wears? So I found a few more nice ones to put in my backpack. I walked out of the supermarket with these clothes. Before leaving, I still left a few hundred dollars at the checkout counter. Although I knew the money was useless now, but I still felt the need for a sense of ritual. I walked for the whole afternoon, watching the night fall. I looked around, found a hotel that looked decent, pushed the door and went in. There were two zombies behind the counter. Judging by their uniforms, they were hotel staff. As I entered, the two zombies behind the door were initially excited, but when they realized I was also a zombie, they instantly became dull again. I ignored them. I walked straight towards the elevator, but no matter how many times I pressed it, I found that there was no response no matter how many times I pressed it. Suddenly I remembered that the power was out last night, so I had to take the stairs. There were zombies in the stairwell too, so I could still see people who fell down in a panic from upstairs and died, but I didn't know why these people didn't turn into zombies. Instead, they rotted on the ground, but I had long been used to these smells. I calmly continued walking upstairs, because I didn't want to continue climbing the stairs. I found an open room on the second floor, seeing that the bed and blankets in the room were not messy, so I decided to stay here again tonight. So, thinking about my first night out, and since it's the apocalypse, it will be very quiet. But I never expected that when I was sleeping soundly, a loud explosion scared me out of bed. Then I quickly looked out the window. I saw a building a few hundred meters away was on fire. At a time like this, a residential building can explode, probably only due to human actions, which means there are humans around me. This made me a little puzzled. Why are there always humans around me? I leaned out the window and looked at the distant residential building. After making sure it wouldn't happen again, I climbed back into bed and went back to sleep. But in less than half an hour of lying down, I heard the sound of a car approaching from a distance. Indeed, the zombie's hearing is sharp, but I hadn't seen the shadow of the car yet. I heard the sound of a car first. Although for me, this is indeed a good thing. But now I feel like I might be in a bit of a predicament. Because it seems like the car stopped below the hotel where I live. Then I heard the sound of their conversation again. Let's stay here tonight. There aren't too many zombies around here. This hotel looks good too. And it's by the city. Rest here tonight. We'll leave tomorrow morning. This is a man's voice. He sounds young. The one responding seems to be a girl's voice. It seems like he's leading this group. After the girl responded. These people are getting ready to stay at this hotel. But I'm very flustered right now. Because I'm a zombie myself. If I look like a human on the outside, it would be fine. Maybe I could pass as one. But now I really look like a zombie. Perhaps because turning into a zombie was too painful. My mouth has a very deep wound. Although it doesn't hurt at all. But with this pale gray skin and the corners of my mouth split open, it doesn't look like a normal person at all. However, this isn't the worst part yet. The worst part is that I heard a dog's sound. This moment made me think of the trio I encountered during the day. Even if there were ten of me, their strength would overwhelm me. Otherwise, at this moment, someone pulled the door. I was so scared that I lay on the ground pretending to be dead. Soon, I heard someone entering the room. This room is quite clean. It looks like no one lives here. But the next second, don't be surprised. The leading boy walked in without seeing anyone. As he turned the corner beyond the bathroom wall, he saw me lying on the ground pretending to be dead, but it was just from the boy's perspective. I'm just a dead person. No breath. Pale skin. There was a deep cut on the face, then another girl walked in. When the girl saw me lying on the ground, she looked at the bedside decoration again. Then, I was so nervous as she approached. What's the matter with these people? There are so many rooms in the hotel. Why did they choose this one? Anyway, I don't have a heartbeat or breath. Even if they come to check my breath, it's useless. I just need to lie still on the ground. And when I was ready to let this girl explore her own breath, the next second I was covered by Miss Jean. What are you doing? She's already dead. The boy didn't expect it either. Gu Wanqing actually lifted the body from the ground. But Gu Wanqing turned a deaf ear. After putting me on the bed, she even thoughtfully covered me with a blanket. Sorry, I and my friend disturbed you. You go ahead and sleep well. Gu Wanqin looked at me on the bed, spoke. After finishing speaking, Gu Wanwan took two people out. Until I heard the door lock. After the entire room fell silent, only then did I dare to open my eyes slightly. Only when I was sure that no one was around did I relax. That's when I finally relaxed. If these people don't leave, I'll have to get up and rush out. Although that sister is very gentle, I still can't get used to it. I just lay in bed until it was light out. 
Even though I've turned into a zombie, it doesn't matter whether I sleep or not, but still, I still retain human thoughts, so I still feel like I should sleep at night. But I found that I couldn't sleep at all, because I was afraid those three people and a dog might come back. Sure enough, as soon as it was light out, my door was pushed open by someone. Sister Chin, what do you care about her for? She's already dead. The boy followed Gu Wan Ching into this room. I was really puzzled. I know, but we can't just let him rot here. We should at least give him a proper burial. Gu Wan Ching responded to the boy. After hearing what she said, I was speechless. No, sister, this is the end of the world. You should have taken supplies and gone to the survivor base instead of kindly burying bodies here. I am indeed dead, but not completely dead. You don't need to kindly bury me, but I dare not speak because I'm a zombie. If I'm found to be alive, I'll definitely be killed. So I had to let Gu Wanqing bury me in the ground. Luckily, I don't need to breathe now. It doesn't feel uncomfortable being buried. Apart from the heavy earthy smell, it's quite comfortable. It made me think that after visiting all the places I wanted to go, I could dig a hole and bury myself. So, I slept underground until the sky turned red when I emerged. I changed into new clothes and found myself outside the city at a green belt near the toll station. There were only scrap vehicles and some zombie limbs around. It seems that it was Gu Wanqing and her group's doing. There should be a survivor base nearby, which is why she buried me here and even left a bouquet of flowers. That surprised me. Then I headed to my destination, the first stop being the wetland park, which is only about 50 kilometers away. Anyway, I don't need to eat, and I won't get tired from sleeping. I should be able to reach there in a day and a night. Keep going along the highway. It didn't take long before the sky turned completely dark. Because of turning into zombies, night is just a little darker than daytime for me. Walked for about three more hours. Suddenly, a gunshot came from the distant town. This sound made all the zombies on the highway crowded towards the source of life. Out of curiosity, I also entered the town, as I sneaked along with the zombies. Finally, I saw a car not far away, but it seemed that there were no humans in the car. The car's wheels were already damaged. The windshield was also broken. Looks like the car escaped. Suddenly, I smelled a strange smell coming through the air. The smell is like the scent of meat and cake. And this smell, I only smelled it on Gu Wanqing and the others. I used to think it was meat and cake in Gu Wanqing supplies, but later I found out it wasn't. It's the instinct of zombies to see humans as... Food. I followed the direction where the zombies were gathering. Soon I saw a tall building surrounded by zombies. It seems that the person who escaped in the car should be hiding inside. But you can hide here for a day or two. But if it goes on for too long, even if you're not eaten by zombies, you'll starve to death. I looked around. Then I sneaked off in another direction. I found the town's broadcasting room. I fiddled with it for a while. Finally connected to the radio. This is probably all I can do. Will we be able to run when the time comes? That's their own fate. As soon as the radio sounds, the zombies will be alerted. As long as these people are not foolish, they all know this is a chance to escape. And the survivors hiding in that building originally came to this town to find some supplies, but ended up being chased by zombies. And then the car had a flat tire. No choice. They could only abandon the car and escape. Now they are trapped in this building, and escaping is almost impossible. Even though the door has been locked by them, they have very little food in their hands, not enough to last them a few days. Just as they were in despair, just heard the sound of radio waves in the air. What's that sound? Someone heard this sound. Some doubts. I don't know if it's the town's broadcasting room, but is there still someone in the broadcasting room? After all, it's been more than 20 days since the end of the world. Who can still stay in this small town for a month in this situation? As soon as their words fell, the broadcast unexpectedly started playing music. Because the sound was too loud, all the zombies downstairs headed towards the source of the sound. These people knew it when they saw the zombies leaving. This is the best chance to escape. Could there be someone in the broadcasting room? This also counts as that person saving the five of us. Let's go outside the town. Currently, they have indeed escaped the danger. Is the person broadcasting really okay? A boy in the team asked in confusion. There shouldn't be anyone. Even if there is someone, they must have already run away. After all, if the zombies surround them, they won't be able to run away. No one is that foolish, the leader of the team analyzed. However, what they didn't know was, the person who saved them at this time is having a party. I saw those zombies all coming towards the broadcast room. I just find it quite spectacular. Sure enough, people have died. The terror attribute has also decreased a bit. Of course, this is only for these zombies. After all, these zombies won't actively communicate with us. And even if we initiate a conversation with them, these zombies won't pay attention to us. I'm upstairs watching those zombies gathering downstairs. I don't know if those people escaped, but this is all I can do. Sorry, there's no food here, but it shouldn't be a problem for you to stay here for a while. 
I look at these zombies clamoring to eat. I can only apologize with clasped hands. After saying that, I turned and went downstairs. The zombies have already climbed up, but they ignored me, continued walking up. I squeezed out from the pile of zombies, had no choice but to take the main road. After all, if those people are squatting outside the town watching, if they see me, it would be over. Finally managed to climb out of this town. As soon as I left the town, I saw a figure moving in the gas station. It scared me and I immediately shrunk my neck back. How come there are still people here? I remember leaving the town in the opposite direction of those people. How did I encounter them again? Luckily, my zombie nose is better than a dog's. I would have bumped into these people. Could they really be here to hide from me? No choice. I had to sneakily start taking the detour again. Then I quietly climbed onto the highway from this gas station, continuing to head south. When the first ray of sunlight emerged from the horizon, I squinted my eyes. It's only 7 in the morning. The heat wave has already hit. But for now, this temperature is bearable. Because there are towns around, I can't use an umbrella yet. If someone sees us, they'll probably come and ask some questions. Start and stop. I noticed that there are fewer and fewer cars on this highway. Looks like there won't be any more cars blocking the road ahead. The next exit is 30 kilometers away, and I need to change direction and head west. Just as I was about to turn towards the west, the sound of a vehicle made me quickly crouch down again. Peeking out and quietly looking at the highway outside the expressway, I saw a slightly rundown bus speeding along the highway, and there were over a dozen people on the bus. There were also several zombie dogs following behind, even though they turned into zombies. But these zombie dogs were very very fast. Seeing this scene, I quickly took out my camera and took a picture. Since it's a hiking trip, then you should take photos of the interesting things you encounter on the road. Just as I finished taking the photo and was about to stand up, several gunshots scared me into pressing my head down. My gaze turned to the off-road vehicle that caught up from behind. The car looked familiar. Because I was lying in the trunk yesterday, this is Gu Wanching's car, and the gunshots came from Gu Wanching's car. With a few gunshots, every shot hit and exploded heads. Those zombie dogs flew out directly because of their speed. They flew out directly and crashed on the roadside. After the threat was gone, the bus in front slowed down. As the off-road vehicle caught up with the bus, the car stopped because there is some distance. I can't hear what they are saying, but you can tell from the expressions of the people on the bus. I guess it's to thank Gu Wanqing. Gu Wanqing glanced at the bus, then her eyes locked onto something. He went directly around the front of the car and got on. This makes me curious about what Gu Wanqing is going to do. Although I really don't like humans now, but Gu Wanqing, who leaves flowers at her grave, I still quite like her. As soon as Gu Wanqing got on the bus, the bus started to get chaotic. I squinted at the bus. The next second, I saw a person being thrown out of the window by Gu Wanqing. The person lay motionless on the ground. Suddenly, he stood up abruptly, rushed towards the boy who was walking with Gu Wanqing, but the boy was carrying a long knife on his back. The next moment, the person who rushed over had half of his head directly chopped off by the boy. Obviously, there are infected people on that bus. The people getting off the bus were all shocked to see this scene. They didn't expect that there were infected people on their bus. If it weren't for this little girl chasing after them, I reckon they would have died and more. The driver was shocked. Even I think Gu Wanqing is really amazing. The more amazing Gu Wanqing is, the farther I want to stay away from this person. Suddenly, they really started fighting. I didn't even have a chance to explain myself, and my head was chopped off. So, let's run first. This hustle and bustle is unbearable. I moved to the other side of the highway. I stood up, intending to leave. But to my surprise, as soon as I turned around, I was startled by a group of zombies in the distance. Goodness, there must be thousands of them, densely packed. There are over a thousand. I don't know if it was the sound of gunfire that attracted them, because the highway on this side is obstructed by the expressway. Plus, there's a bend in the road. So from Gu Wanching's position, they couldn't see the lion group attacking at all. I reached out and tapped my forehead. I hesitated on how to warn them. Suddenly, I thought of Gu Wanching's dog. That dog's sense of smell and hearing should be very sensitive. Thinking of this, I looked around. I saw a zombie walking towards me. So I quickly went up and pulled this zombie brother towards Gu Wanching and the others. Just as we reached the edge, I squatted down and lifted one of the zombie brother's legs with force. The zombie was then hung on the railing of the overpass. The muttering sound of the zombie immediately caught the attention of the dog. When I heard the dog barking, I immediately ran to the side of a car, crouching down, and pulled the body from the car over, covering it over myself, and started playing dead again. Soon the boy followed the dog onto the highway. I casually took care of the zombie hanging on the railing, but I didn't expect the dog to walk towards my position. This made me very nervous. If it's not you, then don't look for me. 
you should look across the street. If it weren't for my own heart not beating anymore, I would have felt like my heart was about to jump out of my mouth. It's really hard to repay the favor of burying the dead, but fortunately, this dog just passed by me and jumped onto the highway across the street. And the vigilant young man heard the dog's voice coming from that direction and looked over in that direction. When he saw the densely packed zombies, he was so scared that he quickly took the dog and ran. At this moment, the young man only felt fortunate. Luckily, Xiaotian reacted to this zombie. Otherwise, they would have been surrounded by zombies. Okay, sis, let's go quickly. There's a horde of zombies coming. Estimated number is close to 2000. We can't handle it. The voice of the boy is getting farther. The dog also followed and dashed down. But I still dare not move. After hearing the sound of the car starting, I finally stood up from the corpse I had just lifted. By now, those zombies have already walked over from the bridge tunnel on the expressway. They are heading densely towards the direction direction where the car disappeared. Very good, very good. Now, I and Gu Wanxing are also considered even. Thinking of this, I picked up the map, continued towards the west. I don't know how long I've been walking. As the sun rises, as a human, I was never good with the sun. As a corpse, I'm even less heat resistant. So I opened the umbrella and continued walking forward. I look at these wilted zombies in front of me, dried out by the sun, and some can only hide in the dark, silently mourning. I inexplicably feel a bit silly about my mood. I have an umbrella. I strut forward with my umbrella, feeling a bit cocky. Originally, I planned to walk 50 kilometers in a day and a night. But now, after a whole day and night, I've only walked less than 30 kilometers. Obviously underestimated my nature of joining in the fun. Indeed, even if I'm socially anxious, the essence of human beings is still to join in the fun. Wait, the afternoon sun is not so strong now, so I put away my umbrella. As the sun sets, when passing through a small village, I found these zombies unusually active. It moved me a little. When we arrive at the small village by the highway, there are usually only a few dozen households. If the whole village turns into zombies, there would probably only be one or two hundred of them. But are these zombies a bit too active? The human faces all have a slight sense of despair. But when facing the zombies, I just want to go up and take a look. So I swaggered into the village full of zombies. These zombies are almost all gathered in front of a household's gate. I went closer. I found that this household's house is two-storied, and the courtyard's wall is higher than those of the neighboring houses. Plus, the gate is also that kind of heavy steel gate. But my nose caught a faint scent from inside. Obviously, there are living people in this house. It's been about a month. I never thought there would be survivors in this small village. I squeezed my way into the zombie crowd. Then I peeked inside from the crack in the door. But after looking for a while, I couldn't see anyone inside. So I didn't force myself anymore. If I climbed over the wall myself, I would probably scare others. But just as I was about to leave, my foot accidentally stumbled over something. I looked down and found the remains of several bodies. This scared me so much that I immediately apologized to the zombie's face as I backed away. Sorry, I didn't mean to step on you. I'm really sorry. Just as I was still apologizing to the zombie's body, suddenly, the sound of the door lock rang out. This scared me so much that I immediately turned and ran. After I quietly greeted the zombies in the neighboring house in this house, I sneaked up to the second floor. From here on the second floor, I could see the yard of the neighboring house. At this moment, the door of that house was opened. A 17 or 18 year old girl walked out from inside. The girl casually picked up a baseball bat by the door and walked towards the big iron gate, then climbed up the stairs next to the iron gate. After coming up, she squatted on the wall, watching the zombies below howling and making a mess. The zombies, smelling the scent of flesh and blood, started to move towards the girl, but the girl remained completely calm. She swung the baseball bat in her hand directly at the approaching zombies, smashing the zombies' head to pieces. I felt a little scared when I arrived at this scene. Fortunately, I didn't go to the door just now. Otherwise, the baseball bat would have hit me on the head. That was close. The girl looked down at the corpse. A baseball bat swung at the second zombie. When I killed the fifth zombie, the girl seemed to glance from the void. Then she climbed the wall back satisfied. Seeing this, it made me wonder who was more powerful, this little girl or Gu Wancheng. If the two of them acted together, I dare not imagine how powerful they would be together. But after thinking about it, I think it's better to leave this place quickly. Anyway, this little girl is in danger. Even though I understand why she has this kind of strength, why does she still want to stay in this small village? 
But everyone has their own thoughts. After confirming the other party's ability to protect themselves, I waited until the sky was completely dark and then left this small village. As for whether that girl has noticed me, I don't care. As long as she doesn't come to attack me. But what I didn't know was that as I left, a pair of eyes were staring at me. It's just that the girl seemed a bit surprised. After system detection, it was indeed confirmed that the other party was a zombie without a doubt. But the threat of this zombie turned out to be zero. Its combat power is only 8. You should know that an ordinary person's combat power is 10. And this zombie only has 8. It was originally a woman. Are you still planning to stay in the village for a while? We'll find a base after the base is built. Then we'll figure out a way to team up with others to earn points. Just because the girl awakened the system before the apocalypse, you can earn points just by killing zombies, and you can use the points to buy things from the system store. But considering the current strength of the zombies, using those high-end weapons is completely wasteful. It also makes us an easy target. So we've decided to stay low here for now, and sneakily develop with a specially made baseball bat. But unexpectedly, this seemingly weak zombie caught the attention of the girl today. So he quietly packed up and followed her. She actually wanted to see what that weak zombie was up to. Meanwhile, I checked the map, confirmed the direction, and continued forward. Sometimes when I encounter a place with a bunch of zombies, I can't help but go take a look. Finally, the next morning, I arrived at the first destination. This waterfall is unique. It's because it's a warm spring waterfall. The water is warm, so the hot springs here are very famous. There are many tourists all year round, especially in winter. Of course, there are also many zombies now. Because there are too many zombies, the girl naturally got stopped outside. She could only watch me enter the tourist area helplessly. Although she felt her combat power was not weak, but when she felt that she should not go looking for trouble. After all, no matter how strong, she is also a human. She's looking at me from a distance, through the zombie horde, heading towards the ticket window. Then, when Chang saw a zombie actually queuing to buy a ticket, then entering the hot spring tourist area, seeing this scene, when Chang's worldview was shattered instantly. This little zombie is actually here for tourism. You don't come for tourism when you're human, but turn into a zombie. You're sick to come for tourism. At that time, I was just following the usual steps to enter the tourist area, even though there's no one selling tickets. But I still wanted to experience the tourist atmosphere for real. But I didn't know that someone was tracking me at that time. Even felt like I was sick. After entering the tourist area, I found that many places are damaged. But for me, it doesn't affect at all. After all, there are many water facilities that can still be played with, like soaking in hot springs. Water drifting and other activities are all possible. I dragged the kayak and headed towards the hot spring waterway. At the same time, on the other side, Curious Wenxiang finally found a way in and found me. As a result, I saw this little zombie actually started playing. All ignored. Who is as leisurely as you? Soon, I quickly tried out all the famous activities in this scenic area. Although I am the only conscious person in the entire scenic area, I don't feel lonely at all. Instead, I feel very relaxed. After trying out all the popular facilities, it's getting dark, and we've pretty much had our fun in this place. So it's time to head to the next place. Just as I was about to leave, I suddenly spotted a convoy heading towards this hot spring road. I was quite curious. I wonder what they're doing here. The hot spring park isn't exactly a storage place for essential items. Apart from the hot spring, there are various entertainment facilities. Of course, there are also quite a few zombies. They can't possibly be here to move the zombies, can they? I dare not stay in the house. Instead, I walked towards the forest. If it weren't for the fact that the hot spring pool allows you to see underwater at a glance, I would even feel safe lying in the water. As I walked, my mind was filled with all sorts of random thoughts. Finally found a place with a good and high vantage point. I want to see what these people are up to. It wasn't until I saw those people dressed in military uniforms that I realized this wasn't just any ordinary operation. They first dealt with the wandering zombies outside. Then they stationed outside. Then they released night vision drones. The number of zombies to be filmed should be planned first. Then launch a strong attack during the day. After all, the zombies' mobility at night is much more agile than during the day. Just don't know if this drone will capture me. Thinking of this, I immediately folded many branches to cover myself, to block the line of sight. Even if it's a thermal drone, as a dead person, I shouldn't have been noticed. But just as the drone flew towards me, suddenly, a figure flashed in my sight. That's not a zombie. It's a human. And I know this person. It's the same zombie from the small village before. Especially that baseball bat really left an impression on me. This little girl actually followed me. How did she manage to follow me? I didn't even notice. If it weren't for the military, I probably wouldn't have noticed this little girl. If she were to hit me now, I'd really be saying goodbye to the world. 
Thinking of this, I immediately threw a branch and slipped away behind the mountain. I have to leave this place. As for where to go, let's go to a safe place first. So I went around from the back mountain, headed towards the city. The more zombies, the safer for me. Walked for two to three hours. Finally left the hot spring resort. Arrived in the city. I took a walk around the city. Found a telescope. Although my eyesight is good now, but I still can't see things far away. So I still need to prepare a telescope. Otherwise, I wouldn't even know if I was being followed this time. Fortunately, that little girl doesn't seem to want to harm me. Suddenly, I felt a ringing in my head. Then I felt dizzy. My eyes are almost popping out of their sockets, but I didn't hear any sound. I reached out and patted my face. I climbed the high rise with a telescope in hand. I couldn't hear it myself, but I was definitely affected. So it means this is a type of sonic attack. There are no zombies in this area now, and it's close to the border. Perhaps the soldier just now wanted to build a garrison here. If all the zombies in the hot spring area are taken care of, it would indeed be a pretty good place to station troops. From this place to the border is less than 50 kilometers, as long as the equipment is installed. But if anyone wants to cross the border, they will be captured immediately. After all, even though the world is in chaos, but the territory of the country cannot be violated. As I look through the telescope towards the scenic area, sure enough, I saw a large truck pulling a dark equipment. Although I don't know what that is, but at a glance, I knew that thing was definitely very dangerous. Fortunately, I can run fast. If you are in the center of that sound wave, then these zombies can't move at all. Of course, this also includes animals with sensitive hearing. As long as you control the movement of the zombies, then the zombies are easy to kill. Then I held the telescope and looked down the road from the mountain again. And then I saw a familiar off-road vehicle. But now the car is marked with a military emblem. It's not my sister. Why are you everywhere? Obviously, this situation is evenly matched. No wonder his marksmanship is so good. He's a professional. Gu Wanching's off-road vehicle is heading towards the scenic area. I reached out and scratched my head. Almost pulled out the hair on my scalp. Now I'm already dead. If my hair falls out, I won't be able to find it again. I don't want to be a bald zombie. I quickly reached out and pressed my scalp. Then I put the telescope in my backpack. I turned around and walked downstairs. As I walked, I thought about how eventful this trip has been, either being buried or, or being followed by an indifferent female lead. I always feel like I'm about to have a brainwave. So I started flipping through that travel guide. And then I started strategizing on the map. A place where luck decides everything. It's not a place to pour out your thoughts. It should be relatively safe. In the end, I chose a place surrounded by mountains on three sides. A city that caters to one side. This kind of city is easy to defend and hard to attack. After making the decision, I set off before dawn. After all, the faster I run, the less likely I am to bump into humans. At the same time, on the other hand, when Chang lost track of me, he was originally trying to avoid the heat-seeking drone, so he chose to temporarily stop tracking. It wasn't until later that he discovered the authorities had directly used sonic attacks. These zombies were all destroyed destroyed by the sonic waves. Their brains seemed even more sluggish. This made him wonder if that little zombie would also end up like this, and then be killed. Then he scanned the entire hot spring area with the system, but didn't find the body of that little zombie. When Chang finally felt relieved, because the system couldn't find it, that means the little zombie has already run away. But the problem is now he's lost track of it, and to find this little zombie again, unless it enters his own 3 kilometer range, otherwise, he may never find it again. They've all turned into zombies. I do have some skills. I've returned here. After leaving this city, I headed east all the way because I had to bypass the survivor base. So I had to take a detour of over a hundred kilometers. But for me, it's not a problem at all. Plus this time I chose the highway instead of heading into the city. After all, there are some fun facilities in the city too. Just as I was thinking this, I heard the sound of vehicles. Not just one. Seems to be heading towards the hospital in the city. I watched the zombies pass by. Then I turned my head towards the direction of the hospital. It looks like hundreds of zombies are heading towards the hospital. But the hospital's main door has already been closed. Obviously, they went in to find medicine. But the hospital is in the end room. It's usually a heavy zombie area. Want to find medicine in the hospital. But it's all dangerous. I watched those zombies pushing and shoving. Then I circled around to the back door of the hospital from the nearby alley. Many of the back doors are restaurants. 
shops, and hotels. At the same time, there are many zombies. I wandered around a few shops, then I looked towards the back door of the hospital. There were quite a few zombies gathered at the back door. There are also quite a few zombie bodies. There should be someone walking from here. Closed the back door. Blocked the pursuit of the zombies. I didn't dare to get close. It's almost dark. After those people left, I finally entered the hospital because there are no humans now. Naturally, I swaggered into the hospital. There were many zombies lying on the ground. All of them had their heads chopped off with a long knife. Of course, there were also fresh corpses. These should be people who were injured and didn't want to turn into zombies. So they chose to end it themselves. Looking at these partially eaten corpses, I thought for a moment. So I decided to bury the bodies while I was at it. After finishing the task, it was already past 3 in the middle of the night. And from the clothes of these people, I saw a list. It is written on it how much of each medicine is needed. I looked at that pile of soil. Then I looked at the list in my hand. Immediately turned around and went towards the hospital storage room. I took out a trolley. Then I took out several large cardboard boxes. Comparing the names of the medicines on the paper. Doubled the quantity of these medicines. Waited until 5 in the morning. I pushed several full boxes of medicine towards the edge of the city. Because I also don't know if those people will return. Anyway, just send it to the edge. Didn't take enough this time. They will definitely come again next time. I placed them on the route those people must pass through. It should work. Just as I was pushing this cart out of the hospital. Suddenly, I saw a car parked in front of an office building. Aren't these the cars from the convoy? I dare not go further. But my current position. Those people can't see these medicines. If I go further, I'll be easily spotted by the sentries. I really want to slap myself at this moment. Why meddle in other people's business? But then I thought, if there really are people in urgent need of these medicines, if so many people sacrificed and still can't get them, then more people will die. After thinking it over, I decided, since I've already done it, there's no need to regret. I reached out and pushed the cart around the corner. Those people should be heading towards the direction of the hospital. As long as they look towards the hospital, then they will see the cart of medicines on the main road. Watching the cart being pushed by me to the middle of the road. Then I immediately bent over and ran to the building on the opposite side. At least I want to see the medicine I sent out. Whether those people can see it. And I also thoughtfully wrote a note on it. Take it and use it. No need to write. Not poisonous. Against time. I just feel like an underground hero. But it twisted me. At the same time, in another building of the hospital. Sheen Gu. I just heard a little noise. We looked over there. Suddenly there was a cart in that place. There were some medical paper boxes on the cart. Do we need to go and take a look? A sentry suddenly pushed open the door. Walked into the room. It turns out that this group of people is taking a big risk coming out to find medicine this time. Because the amount of medicine needed is too much. And there are even many medicines that are not sold in the pharmacy. So they came to the city to search. The whole convoy has five cars. A total of 30 people. Went on a trip today. Lost seven people. Three of them did not die on the spot. They were just injured. So they were tied up and placed in one of the rooms at the moment. And there are only two superhumans in the entire convoy. Including the captain, Sheenan. He is a very powerful fire elemental with strong attack abilities. There is also a water elemental. If one of these three injured people becomes an elemental. So even if they didn't get the medicine this time, it's still a win for them. Because after being injured by the zombies, there's a small chance it might awaken special abilities in people. It just depends on their situation. There's a higher possibility of turning into a zombie. Sheenan walked to the window with the mention of it. He took the binoculars and looked down the street. Although it's a bit blurry. But, he could indeed see the familiar medical supply box. He could confirm they didn't have this when they retreated. But it's still not bright out. The sun hasn't come up yet. Zombies are agile at night. He doesn't want his brothers to take any more risks. So he's planning to wait until it's light out to go and see. And I also waited from nearly 6 until after 7. When the sun comes up, just saw a man jump straight from the second floor. He had a gun tied around his waist and a long knife on his back. Looks like he's the captain of this convoy. He walked over cautiously then skillfully killed the few zombies lingering nearby. Only then did he feel the four large cardboard boxes on the side of the cart. The boxes were not sealed, but there was a note on top. Sheenan picked it up and took a look. A hint of doubt flashed in his eyes, but he still folded the note and put it in his pocket. Then he took out the walkie-talkie and asked the brothers to pack up. Prepare to retreat. Have a few people come to my location. He has checked the items. Indeed, it's what they need. Even double portions. This puzzled Sheenan a lot. Who could have taken out so much medicine from that hospital full of zombies? They are not people from the official base. Now they've found this base. It's a survivor base built on the basis of a breeding farm. After all, 
There are over 200 kilometers from this place to the official base. If they really head towards the official base, they might just die on the way. I watched them put the medicine in the car. Then I felt relieved. In the car. Sheenan rolled up the car window. Then he took out the note in his hand. He looked at the crooked lines on it. He really couldn't understand what was written on it. Because this time is like a child's random scribble. Only knew the other party wanted to write. But just didn't know what was being written. Forget it. Since the other party has the ability to take out so many medicines from the depths of the zombie-filled hospital. It shows that the other party has self-protection ability. As for the person who delivers the medicine to them. If I can meet him later. Of course, I will thank this person well. After I watched these convoys leave, then I breathed a sigh of relief. But then I felt that there are still so many medicines in this hospital. If there is no way to take them out and use them, wouldn't it be a waste? Anyway, I'm not in a hurry to travel. Why not move all these medicines to the outskirts of the city? So that when the destined person comes, they can also take them. In this case, humans don't have to face zombies. Then they won't be eaten by zombies. Moreover, if the zombies are all killed, it won't be good to hide anymore. So I dragged the cart to the hospital again. I moved back and forth regardless of day or night. Looking at the piles of medicines in front of me, I looked at the sky again, not knowing if it would rain. So I dragged the big umbrella from the neighboring snack shop over again. After doing all this, I only feel like I'm completely an angel, instead of a zombie. On the other side, it's been two days since Chin and returned to the base. Today, he plans to go out again. Naturally, his team members disagreed after hearing this. After all, this time we went to the city to find medicine. We've already lost seven brothers. It's just that they were lucky. They got help from good people. That's the only way to get these medicines smoothly. Don't worry, I can go by myself. If you don't want to go, stay at the base. Sheenan insisted on going back. He wants to go back and take another look. Because of that graffiti note, he studied for two nights. He probably understood what I wrote. From those graffiti words, we can tell. The other party knows what they want, and even helped them actively. But from this note, apparently, the other party's thinking should be somewhat uncontrollable. So Chinan wants to go and find out. The team members were naturally opposed when they heard that Chinan was going alone. Naturally, they disagreed. In the end, only two people were selected to go with Chinan. Chinan didn't stop them from following him. He didn't stop them either. But when they drove for two hours to the edge of the city and saw the pile of medicine that looked like a mountain, all three of them were a bit overwhelmed. So much medicine. Even with two or three people, it would take several days to move it. It would still take several days to move it, right? Chinan looked as if he immediately had someone contact the base via radio to have the base send a truck over. You guys stay here and watch. I'll go look around. At this moment, Sheenan felt that these medicines were definitely deliberately placed here. And it was definitely the person from a few days ago. Sheenan's eyes scanned the surroundings, trying to find some clues. At the same time, I'm glad I'm okay for now. Now, slip away quickly. After all, I didn't expect this guy to come back so soon. Don't they usually take a break after the mission? How come it's not even been three days? This kid has gone back into the zombie nest again. And it seems like he's looking for something. This kid isn't looking for himself, is he? Thinking of this, I knew I had to run again. But this time I'm a little rushed. Turned around and bumped into a pillar. The thud made Chinan nearby instantly react. I was a bit flustered and Sheenan directly jumped over from the top of a scrapped car. He ran straight towards me. With his speed, I'm afraid he will catch up and grab me in less than a minute. At this moment, I felt like my time was running out. I clearly just helped him. I quickly climbed out of the window and ran towards the area with more zombies. But as soon as I ran out, suddenly, I heard a clinking sound behind me. It was the sound of metal hitting each other. I was so scared that I immediately flashed to the back of a wall. I peeked out half of my head to look back sneakily. I saw Chin and draw out a long knife, blocking a baseball bat, seeing that familiar baseball bat. I was so scared that my hair was almost standing on end. Yu Ching Xian dared not look at the excitement. She turned and ran, running fast. She thought she had already shaken off this little girl, but she actually caught up again. Is this little girl crazy? What does it mean to chase her like a zombie? There are so many zombies, can't she kill them? Although zombies are her own kind. But sacrifices must still be made. When Chang spent five days finally found that little zombie. As soon as she found it, she found a man staring at her. How could Wen Chang agree to let someone else kill the little zombie? Sheenan also did not expect to be blocked by someone. Get out of the way, I'm looking for someone. Sheenan didn't want to deal with this little girl. But if this little girl is that person's person, Sheenan would understand a little. This little girl is very skilled. So the person who ran away must also be very capable. But when Chang did not let go, 
and swung the retrieved baseball bat fiercely. This man doesn't look like an ordinary person. He must be chasing a little zombie. If he knew the other party was a zombie, he would definitely kill that little zombie. The combat power of the little zombie is not as good as an ordinary person. It's already very difficult to survive in the apocalypse. Sorry, I won't let you chase after her, Wen Chang replied. Xinan knew that he really had nothing to say to Wen Chang, so he could only defeat this little girl and find that person. Wen Chang saw that the other party was serious and knew that he couldn't leave. He could only fight Xinan. Ten minutes later, the system prompted her that she had lost track of the little zombie again. This made Wen Chang very angry. She directly took out her gun and aimed it at Xinan's chest. Put away your knife, or I will shoot. Xinan didn't really want to fight to the death with Wen Chang. In fact, avoiding Wen Chang's bullets was not difficult. But Xinan still put away his knife. Wen Chang saw Xinan put away his knife and frowned, it's really troublesome, lost again. This time, losing track, Wen Chang felt that it would be even more difficult to find her. Maybe this little zombie didn't know she was being followed before. Now that she saw her in this place, she must think she was being followed. Otherwise, even if she met people before, she would want to see what was going on. As a result, today when she met people, she ran without hesitation. She even ran 3 kilometers in good form in 10 minutes. When Chinan heard Wen Chang's words, the corner of his mouth twitched, and he knew that this little girl was also tracking that person. He turned his eyes and a smile appeared on his face. Since the person is lost, you can't just stay in a place full of zombies like this. I am a member of a team of supernatural abilities in a civilian base ahead. If you are willing to cooperate with me, I can help you find that person. Don't worry, I will definitely not harm that person, Xinan said. If you want to survive in the apocalypse, you need to cooperate with the strong. Although this little girl's skills are not those of a professional, her movements are reckless, but agile, and every move is deadly. She is a strong person. First, she should. No, first, she should recruit her into her own team. As for the person who has given them a lot of medicine, does this little girl know something about it? Maybe she can find out from this little girl. And Wen Chang also agreed. She really needs a stable team to earn points. Relying solely on herself, her abilities are still too limited. Now she can bind an affiliate to earn points for her. Wen Chang, this man, is indeed a good choice. So the two of them, each with their own ulterior motives, agreed to cooperate. And Yu Qingxian dared not stop at all, and sure enough, that little girl was tracking her. This was not her illusion. But why did she want to track herself? And that man, can't he just take the medicine and leave? It seems that she really can't be careless at all. Yu Qingxian ran around for a while, running straight until dark. She didn't know where she had run to. It seems she needs to keep going forward, find a landmark, and determine her location. After another half an hour of walking, Yu Qingxian arrived at a small town. There was a sign on the country road, with the name of the small town written on it. She immediately took out the map from her backpack to look at it. She found that she was almost 50 kilometers away from the city area where she was in the morning. It turns out that she had been running and could run far. Although Yu Qingxian was not tired, she still found a household and climbed in. She also drove the zombies out of the house. Yu Qingxian was quite proud of her behavior of taking advantage of the situation. She closed the door. Then she carefully looked at the yard. The original owner was a lover of life. There were many flowers and plants in the yard, but now they were withered. It's been over a month without watering, and being exposed to the sun, they definitely won't survive. Yu Qingxian walked to the faucet and turned it on, there was water. But this water must also be contaminated with the zombie virus. Humans definitely wouldn't dare to drink it. She filled a few buckets and poured it onto the flower bed. As for whether these plants can survive, it's up to them. Since there was water, Yu Qingxian took a bath and changed into a new dress. She packed another one. It looks like she'll have to find clothes at the clothing store again. The dress she took off, Yu Qingxian didn't bother to clean, she just threw it aside and sat on the sofa in the house. Although no one had lived in the house for a month, there wasn't much dust inside. Yu Qingxian took out a pen and drew on the map, finally determining several places she must go to. That is the Cross Sea Bridge to the south, the Ancient Garden to the east, the Imperial City and the Snowfield to the north, and the Sacred Plateau to the northwest. These five places are where she must go. They are also places she has seen in many documentaries. In the past, after Yu Qingxian went out and had contact with people, she would have a fever when she got home, couldn't eat, and would vomit whatever she ate. So of course, Yu Qingxian wouldn't go to crowded scenic spots like this. After she goes to City J, she can head south all the way to see the Cross Sea Bridge. After packing up, Yu Qingxian set off as soon as it was light, towards the direction of City J. 
It's just that the closer she gets to City J, the more she has to bypass the safe zone. This safe zone is indeed an official base. According to the broadcast Xu Qingxian heard in the past half month, she roughly understood that there should be over 100,000 people in this base. This number would completely overwhelm Yu Qingxian. But if you calculate, just the people in the counties under the jurisdiction of the city have several million. In a city-level base, there are only 100,000 survivors. It can be imagined that this zombie virus is almost a disaster for humanity. If humans were to perish, perhaps after a few thousand or tens of thousands of years, the earth would give birth to new rulers to dominate the earth like the dinosaurs in the past, and now humans. This is the apocalypse for humans, but not for the earth. Yu Qingxian looked at the rising sun, and a new day had come. She headed towards City J. And the closer she got to City J, the closer she got to the safe zone. And there were fewer zombies. She could even see speeding convoys on the road. This scared Yu Qingxian, and she didn't dare to move around. Yu Qingxian had originally planned to take a detour. After all, within a radius of 100 kilometers, there were signs of human activity. Unlike the places she had passed before, where there weren't many people. Indeed, humans are indomitable. Even in a place overrun by zombies, they can create a place to live. They are really strong. But humans are strong, and Yu Qingxian couldn't be strong. There were always convoys passing by outside, which completely prevented Yu Qingxian from leaving. As for those unconscious zombies, they swaggered along the road. When a vehicle passed by, they would pounce on it, and then be knocked away or crushed into zombie pancakes. Because the zombies in the vicinity had already been cleared by the official army and some teams of supernaturals over the past month, Yu Qingxian could only retreat. But she never expected that as she retreated, she would witness a scene of zombies eating people. Yu Qingxian retreated more than 10 kilometers, and it was about 20 kilometers away from the official safe zone. For a car, it's just a journey of a dozen minutes. But even in these dozen minutes, it might never arrive. Although the previous Yu Qingxian wandered around and could see people in corpses, she had never seen zombies eating people with her own eyes. Therefore, seeing a small car surrounded by a dozen or so zombies, a mother and daughter sitting in the car, and a man continuously hitting the zombies with a steel pipe, the car was either broken or out of gas. In any case, the family of three was surrounded by these zombies. The man was just an ordinary person, wearing glasses, probably used to working in an office. His blows with the steel pipe had no effect on the zombies. It was very difficult for an ordinary person to obtain a gun. Unless they reached a base and formed a task force, they might be able to borrow a gun from the authorities. Yu Qingxian watched as the man was bitten on the arm and thigh by the zombies, but he still held onto the car door tightly, not letting the woman in the car get out. It wasn't until the man was overwhelmed by the zombies, lost his breath, and his flesh lost its warmth, that the zombies moved away from him. Then they started climbing onto the car. These zombies were quite strong. The car window cracked after just a few hits. After all, it wasn't bulletproof glass, so it was easily damaged. If the car window really broke, the mother and daughter in the car would definitely be killed by the zombies. Yu Qingxian hesitated for a moment, then took out a piece of paper from her bag and covered her face with it, then rushed forward. She pushed away two zombies and stood in front of the car, shouting at the zombies, Get out of here. The zombies seemed to be really scared by Yu Qingxian's shout and stopped attacking. Although this puzzled her, she shouted again for them to leave. The zombies reluctantly backed off. The mother and daughter in the car thought they were doomed. Little did they know that a girl had come out to save them. Just that shout made them shiver. Although they were very scared, the girl did save them. When Yu Qingxian turned to look at the two people in the car, even though her face was covered with a piece of paper, her pale face and dilated pupils made the mother and daughter shrink back. She was also a zombie. Yu Qingxian was puzzled to see the mother and daughter shrink back even though she wasn't particularly pretty, covering her mouth shouldn't be so scary. Although her skin was indeed a bit frightening. Yu Qingxian spoke up, come down, the car is broken, you've been in the car all this time, and I can't stay with you. But when Yu Qingxian finished speaking, the mother and daughter hugged each other in terror. This puzzled Yu Qingxian. She had spoken in human language, why couldn't they understand? Although puzzled, she didn't have time to explain and just reached out and pulled the car door. The clanging sound made the surrounding zombies gather again. Yu Qingxian scolded them and they backed off like eunuchs in a Qing Dynasty drama. She pulled the car door a few times and finally opened it. The mother and daughter in the car shrank further to the side. Yu Qingxian was speechless and just stood aside. When other zombies approached, she scolded them. It was the eight-year-old girl who finally realized that she and her mother had been saved by a zombie. The girl was no longer afraid and immediately crawled out from her mother's arms to look outside the car. Dad. Daddy. 
The girl lay on the side of the car, looking at the pile of unrecognizable body, almost unable to cry. The woman also reacted and immediately got out of the car. She looked at the body on the ground and her eyes turned red in an instant. Yu Qingxian stood with her back to the mother and daughter. She thought they were too nervous to hear her clearly. But Yu Qingxian didn't expect these zombies to give her face like this. She felt a little embarrassed after scolding them. Fortunately, the mother and daughter, although afraid and saddened, also understood the current situation. May we bury my husband? Then we can go with you, the woman spoke. At this moment, she also realized that the zombie was not trying to eat them. Yu Qingxian did not look at their expressions, she actually understood the pain of losing loved ones. But no matter how painful it was, she had still survived. Of course, she couldn't really be considered alive now. But she still hoped that those who wanted to live would live well. So, she agreed to this matter. She even helped the mother and daughter dig a grave together and buried the man's remains. At this moment, Yu Qingxian felt that she had been encountering the convoy all along, and now it had been almost two hours, and still no convoy had passed by. Could it be that she really had to escort this mother and daughter to the safe zone? As for this mother and daughter, they were just afraid and did not want to resist. They did not want to harm themselves either. Yu Qingxian buried her head and dug the grave, and the eight-year-old girl next to her was somewhat puzzled. Why would a zombie save their lives? And why would a zombie be so skilled at digging a grave? Her movements were not as stiff as those of the other zombies, but rather similar to those of a living person. It's just that the little girl completely didn't understand what she was saying. Is sister a zombie? The little girl asked boldly. The woman next to her, seeing her daughter ask this, also looked at Yu Qingxian. She was indeed a zombie, you could tell from the color of her skin and her eyes, she was a zombie. But zombies only eat people, she had never seen a zombie save someone. Yu Qingxian did not answer the little girl. She just pointed to the man's body in the grave, letting the mother and daughter say something. She was about to start burying the soil. And it was already afternoon. If they delayed any longer, more zombies would come. She didn't know if she could stop those zombies by then. The little girl seemed to understand Yu Qingxian's actions and immediately pulled her mother to bow to her father. The woman's complexion wasn't very good. But she couldn't die with her husband. Because her daughter was still young. Even if she loved her husband so much that she wished to die with him, they still had a daughter. As parents, they couldn't be so selfish. After all, she was only 8 years old, not 18. Yu Qingxian watched the mother and daughter bury the soil in the grave and also started to bury the soil. Her hands didn't ache, so naturally she buried the soil faster than the mother and daughter. After burying the man, Yu Qingxian took out a map and looked at it, pointing in the direction of the base. But as she thought about it, it seemed like humans couldn't understand her speech. So she took out the map and pointed to the location of the base. The little girl immediately understood. This zombie sister was going to take them to the base. Then she immediately translated for Yu Qingxian, so that the woman could understand. The woman was somewhat surprised to hear this, but she also knew that they couldn't wait now. Although the daytime temperature was indeed very high, it would drop to zero degrees in an instant at night. They couldn't stay in the wilderness. The woman immediately went to the car's trunk and took out the backpack. The things inside were already packed. Yu Qingxian saw that the zombies seemed to have left, so she looked around. In a garage of a house, she saw a car. This made Yu Qingxian's eyes light up. She immediately pulled the woman to the side of the garage. The woman was also happy. Then she went into the house to find the car keys. Fortunately, the car keys were placed at the entrance of the living room. And most of the zombies here had actually been cleared out. The woman let her daughter sit in the car, and then started the car. She saw that Yu Qingxian didn't want to get in the car, so she looked at Yu Qingxian with some confusion. Aren't you getting in the car? Yu Qingxian shook her head then took off the paper from her face. The half-split mouth revealed her intention. She is a zombie and cannot go to the survivor base. If she goes, her life will be in danger. It's only over 20 kilometers from here to the base. And most of the zombies here have been cleared out. As long as we don't stop the car, no zombies can catch up with the car. So Yu Qingxian is not very worried that they will encounter zombies. And as long as they get close, and it's evening, the team that goes out on a mission will definitely come back. The girl seemed to realize something and immediately poked her head out. Don't worry, zombie sister, we will definitely not talk about your situation. And also, my name is Hang Jin. my mother's name is Song Jing. We will not forget you, and zombie sister, don't forget us either. Song Jing also nodded, and then started the car. Then I wish you a safe journey. Song Jing said, if she is found by someone else, she will definitely be killed. Even if she is a kind zombie. But not everyone thinks that zombies are really good. In Song Jing's heart, too. If she encounters a zombie next time, 
she will not think that the other party will not attack her. She really needs to improve her abilities, and the next time she encounters a zombie, she can only rely on others for protection. Yu Qingxian watched the car drive away, feeling a bit puzzled. They will never see each other again in this lifetime, so why bother introducing themselves? But Yu Qingxian also made a note of it. Fortunately, this mother and daughter are not the kind of people who scream when they encounter danger, or who directly attack her when they see that she is a zombie. Of course, Yu Qingxian also hopes that in the future, they will not hesitate when they encounter zombies. If they can kill, they should. Yu Qingxian watched the car disappear on the road and then turned and left. This place is really not safe. If she encounters a team of supernaturals leaving the base, then she is really in trouble. Therefore, Yu Qingxian naturally stays away from the base. The farther away, the better. Mom, will I see that zombie sister again? Hang Jin sat in the passenger seat, watching as they finally left the town, and couldn't help but ask her mother. I don't know, I think it's best not to see her again, at least it shows that she is avoiding humans. Song Jing said, although she didn't know why this zombie still retained human kindness, but she felt that this kind of kindness is best not to be discovered by humans. Not everyone will appreciate the kindness of others, let alone a zombie. If her existence is discovered by people, then she only has two outcomes. One is to be killed directly. The other is to be captured and studied for the reason why she still retains human consciousness. But looking at the appearance of that zombie, she carried a travel map with her. And she also marked the location of the base on the broadcast. Obviously, she knew she couldn't go to that place. She circled several places, all of which were popular tourist destinations. So Song Jing probably understood the purpose of this little zombie. Because going to this place, it's J City, which is a famous ancient city. But she didn't expect that a person turned into a zombie would also want to travel. Why is that? Is it because she didn't have the chance to go before? Forget it, since this is her wish, then no one can stop her. She and her daughter will not question her behavior. After the car arrived at the base, the mother and daughter finally breathed a sigh of relief. Fortunately, they entered the quarantine zone before dark. They didn't have anything on them. The car was parked in the parking area. After confirming that they didn't have any wounds and were not running a fever, they were taken to another room for isolation. This isolation only requires one night. It doesn't need 24 hours. Once a person relaxes, they will start thinking about this and that. Song Jing had just sat down and watched her daughter fall asleep in her arms, and then she thought of her husband. She instantly teared up, but Song Jing quickly wiped the tears from her face. She couldn't cry. If it weren't for her husband getting off the car to protect her and her daughter, they would have been eaten by zombies. Therefore, she couldn't give up on herself. In the future, she would have to protect her daughter well in this post-apocalyptic world. At the very least, she had to ensure that her daughter had the ability to survive on her own in this post-apocalyptic world. She helped her daughter adjust the blanket on her body and whispered, in a few days, you should start exercising, and of course, don't neglect your studies. Even though there are no exams now, you can't become illiterate. There were people around, but they didn't pay attention to what Song Jing was saying. Just being able to come to this place, they just wanted to sleep peacefully. They didn't have to worry about zombies coming. Okay, I will remember what mom said, Hangi Jin suddenly spoke, clearly not asleep. Although she was exhausted all over, she was now safe. But when she thought of her father being killed and eaten by zombies in front of her, Hangi Jin naturally wanted to become strong. If she were strong enough to kill zombies, then her father wouldn't have died. But everything was just wishful thinking. No matter how hard she cried now, her father wouldn't come back. If she didn't become strong, next time she might lose her mother. Not every time she and her mother would be lucky enough to receive help. It was quiet at night, and the zombies started to move. After scaring off those zombies during the day, Yu Qingxian had a doubt in her mind. She had thought she was useless in battle, but she didn't expect to scare the zombies away. Maybe it was because the zombies didn't have much energy during the day, so they were scared off by her scolding. Therefore, at night, when the moon rose, Yu Qingxian found a group of zombies. She scolded them directly, but they just looked at her and then walked away. They didn't give her face like they did during the day. Yu Qingxian. It turns out she's still useless in battle. Although Yu Qingxian felt that she still had no fighting power, she didn't mind. After all, she was also a zombie. There was no need to kill zombies. Maybe it was just because the zombies gave her face during the day. Thinking this, Yu Qingxian turned to leave. But as soon as she turned around, she saw a zombie standing at the intersection. The zombie stared at her intently, making Yu Qingxian's back feel cold because this zombie gave her a sense of danger. However, after staring at her for a while, the zombie turned and left. Its movements were different from those stiff zombies. 
It was like a normal person, not staggering or walking aimlessly. Yu Qingxian knew that this zombie must be very dangerous, but she still followed it. What if they could communicate? Yu Qingxian felt that even if she turned into a zombie, she still had human nature. For example, she liked to join in and meddle in other people's business. This zombie was no exception, even though it was different from other zombies. But in terms of speed, Yu Qingxian was still faster. She caught up to it and called out, wait. The zombie also stopped. She instantly understood that this zombie could understand her. Perhaps this was the tacit understanding between zombies. Seeing it stop, she walked around to its front. The zombie's face was different from other zombies, it looked more like a dead person. There were no scars on its face. Of course, as she looked at it, its eyes also looked at her. But those eyes were different from the eyes of other zombies. They were dark red. It was indeed a different kind of zombie, even its eyes were different. Judging from its hair and attire, it should have been a high school student in its previous life. It was still wearing a high school uniform. The school uniform is now stained with blood, and it's unclear whether it's its own blood or someone else's. Or perhaps it's the blood of its prey. Yu Qingxian saw it staring at her, but it didn't move, and the sense of danger she had just felt disappeared. But if humans don't notice this dangerous zombie and carelessly lose their lives, should she write a flyer to notify them? However, even if she posted it at the entrance to the survivor's base, no one would believe it. And she doesn't have the ability to post notes on other people's doors. Yu Qingxian felt that it wasn't appropriate for her to spread the word. So should she lock this mutated zombie in an iron dungeon? But there must be more than just this one mutated zombie in the world. If she locks this one up, she can't possibly lock up so many others. And she would have to find them one by one, which would be a waste of time. It would be best if she could communicate with these zombies, but that's unlikely. Not all zombies are like her, not needing to feed on the flesh and blood of the living. It's like telling someone not to eat, isn't that starving them? Without being beaten, the other person might just have a good temper. Thinking of this, Yu Qingxian prepared to leave. Although the zombies are evolving, so are the human supernaturals. It's not her place to intervene. And with such powerful zombies attracting attention, those powerful supernaturals won't be focusing on her. And in places with many zombies, humans are even more afraid to tread. Wouldn't she be safer? Thinking of this, Yu Qingxian grabbed the other's hand and shook it up and down. Work hard to become a great zombie, I believe in you. Yu Qingxian cheered the other on. In just over a month, the zombie had already grown, as long as it wasn't killed by humans in the early stages. Then it would become a powerful zombie. The more conspicuous it became, the more she would appear to be just an ordinary zombie. Thinking this way, Yu Qingxian felt that having more evolved zombies would be good. Yu Qingxian no longer paid attention to the high school zombie and turned to leave. But after walking a few hundred meters, Yu Qingxian found that the high school zombie was following her. It stayed about a dozen meters away, not too close or too far. When she stopped, it stopped too. This puzzled Yu Qingxian. Could it be following her and waiting for her to let her guard down so it could eat her? But is zombie flesh really tasty? Thinking this, she ran away directly. After all, ordinary zombies shouldn't be able to outrun her. But she was careless. This upgraded zombie was originally a high school student, a male high school student at that. His legs were almost as long as her waist. Although it's exaggerated, this young man should have been over one. Eight meters tall in his previous life. Yu Qingxian was soon caught up by this zombie. This gave Yu Qingxian a headache. Just because she looked back and took a second glance, now they were mutually accompanying each other? Accompany my foot. This isn't a pet, it's a zombie, a flesh-eating, upgraded zombie. It might just bite her one day. Stop following me, can you speak? Say something and let me hear it? Yu Qingxian turned to look at the zombie. For now, let's call it a second-level zombie, according to zombie novels. It should be at least a second-level zombie now, and should be able to communicate normally. After all, she could understand what the ordinary first-level zombies were saying. Although the words those zombies said were just instinctive and useless. The reason Yu Qingxian felt that this second-level zombie could communicate with her was that when she told it to stop, it did stop. So Yu Qingxian felt that this level 2 zombie should be able to communicate with her. But the level 2 zombie remained silent, just staring at Yu Qingxian with its red eyes. This made Yu Qingxian somewhat helpless. However, she still went forward to rummage through the pockets of the level 2 zombie. Since it was a high school student, there should be a student ID or something to prove its identity in its pocket. When Yu Qingxian tried to touch it, the level 2 zombie reached out to block her. I just want to see your name, not strip you. Yu Qingxian had never expected that she, a social phobic in her previous life, would become so confident after turning into a zombie. Indeed, the level 2 zombie could understand her words. 
As soon as Yu Qingxian said she was just looking for its name, it really let go of her hand and allowed her to search. She found a student ID, a meal card, and a small notebook stained with blood in the pocket of the level 2 zombie's jacket. Fortunately, the name was still visible. The student was in the second year of high school, named Shi Xingyu. Second year? About 16 or 17 years old, maybe even underage. Yu Qingxian glanced at him and found no external injuries, which meant he was one of the first batch of zombies. What a lucky guy, turning into a zombie in his sleep without being bitten by one. After reading his name, Yu Qingxian put the student ID back in his pocket. But Shi Xingyu, the little zombie, still didn't speak and continued to stare at Yu Qingxian. It was only then that Yu Qingxian spoke, your name is Shi Xingyu, probably 16 or 17 years old, anyway, that's it. Well, I really have to go now, don't follow me, I'm not tasty, go eat other zombies. After saying this, Yu Qingxian turned and left. She walked a distance and looked back to make sure the level 2 zombie didn't follow her. When she left the county town and confirmed that the zombie named Shi Xingyu didn't follow her, she breathed a sigh of relief. After walking more than a hundred kilometers, she arrived at City J. Yu Qingxian took out the map and studied it again. She had been walking fast these days, so at her current speed, she should be able to reach City J in three days. Of course, if nothing strange happened along the way, like running into a team of people with special abilities, Yu Qingxian immediately dismissed this terrifying thought. If she really encountered a team of people with special abilities, she would be in big trouble. But she was already more than 50 kilometers away from the base, and it was nighttime, so she shouldn't encounter a team of people with special abilities. And she had already left the base. Yu Qingxian chose a relatively popular highway, which she heard would pass over a lake. Half of this road was on the lake's surface, and the other half was underwater. In autumn and winter, the forests on both sides of the lake displayed beautiful red and yellow colors, reflecting in the lake, which was very beautiful. There were even photos attached. It was indeed beautiful. However, due to the apocalypse, the creatures in the lake had all mutated, so humans definitely wouldn't dare to walk on it. But wasn't this perfect for her? She made up her mind and decided to go. This time, Yu Qingxian made preparations in advance. First, she needed to change her camera to one with a particularly good pixel. Even if she couldn't see the photos, she still wanted to feel the atmosphere. She also needed to prepare some beautiful clothes and a few pairs of shoes. She couldn't keep wearing the ordinary canvas shoes on her feet. They were all dirty. But with this in mind, she would definitely need to bring a suitcase. Of course, it didn't need to be too big. It would be best if it was a solar-powered suitcase that could walk on its own. That way, she could even sit on it. After all, the winter sunlight was also very good. Yu Qingxian looked at the map and found a county town nearby, so she turned and went there. She went straight to a large shopping mall. Although it was a county town, it had developed particularly well in recent years. So this five-story mall really gave Yu Qingxian a good opportunity to choose. Even without lights, it was pitch black in the eyes of ordinary people. However, this did not affect Yu Qingxian at all. There were many zombies in the mall. And there were no signs of humans having been there. Everything was neatly placed on the shelves. She first went to the digital area. Looking at this large mall, Yu Qingxian never expected that she would not only visit the supermarket, go to the scenic area, but also wander in the shopping mall. In the past, she never dared to think about it. After Yu Qingxian chose a relatively beautiful camera, she rummaged through her backpack. She actually had money. In addition to the insurance paid after her parents' death, she had also saved some over the years. It's just that now, it's all worthless. After thinking for a while, Yu Qingxian took out her bank card and placed it on the counter. Then she found a few power banks and put them in her backpack. Her phone had been dead for a long time. This phone had been around for many years. It still contained her and her parents' chat records, as well as some group photos. She had never thought that she would suddenly lose both parents, nor did she expect the apocalypse to happen. Although she wanted to back up all these chat records, videos, and pictures, she never wanted to go out. She always felt that tomorrow, and so countless tomorrows wasted three years for her, and she was unwilling to go out. The more she stayed indoors and avoided contact with people, the less she wanted to go out. It was a vicious cycle, but there was no way around it. Now, no matter where she went, there were people everywhere. Her social anxiety was not only psychological, but had become severe to the point of being physiological. Now that she had become a zombie, her body was already dead and she wouldn't vomit or have a fever. Although she still felt a little afraid of being in a crowd psychologically, she had accepted her identity very calmly. But looking at many zombies, Yu Qingxian didn't feel afraid of them. Indeed, her social anxiety was really only directed towards humans. Yu Qingxian took the things and went to find a suitcase. 
She did find a suitcase. It said that if the suitcase was fully charged, it could travel 20 kilometers. Yu Qingxian thought it was really good. Then she put the things in the suitcase. This suitcase was solar powered, although it was out of power now, it only needed to be placed in the sun for an hour to start the cycling mode. It could carry a weight of 200 kilograms. Yu Qingxian dragged the suitcase to the clothing store. She chose thinner skirts. Indeed, the smaller skirts suited her better. Anyway, she wasn't afraid of the cold. Yu Qingxian happened to pass by a supermarket and was about to look at masks. But when she passed the daily necessities area, she stopped. She looked at the shelves full of sanitary napkins and fell into contemplation. Most of the team of mutants were men, usually looking for food or medicine and the like. So, did the women in the base have their own team of mutants? This kind of thing was a necessity for women, right? But after standing for a while, she pulled the suitcase and left. She was a zombie, she couldn't help humans. Yu Qingxian found the masks. She took a lot and put them in the suitcase and backpack. Only then did she leave. But before she stepped out of the supermarket door, she turned back. She found cardboard boxes, packed the sanitary napkins, and sealed the boxes with tape. She threw them down the stairs box by box and then carried them out of the supermarket box by box. She looked around. If she kept carrying the boxes to the roadside like this, she didn't know how long it would take. Fortunately, there were indeed many cars parked on the roadside. But cars couldn't hold much. There were trucks, but she couldn't drive. Oh well, she had to try. So Yu Qingxian went around trying to open car doors. Finally, she managed to open the door of a truck. The car keys were even inside. She just didn't know who the owner was. However, she climbed into the car directly and tried to start the car. Fortunately, it seemed that the car was ready to haul goods, and the tank was full. Just as she sat in the driver's seat, Yu Qingxian remembered when she had just started learning to drive 10 years ago. Although her mother accompanied her, Yu Qingxian did not want to try a second time. She tried to start the car. After becoming familiar with it, it wasn't difficult. She drove the car to the supermarket's entrance and loaded all the boxes onto it. But there was still plenty of space left in the car. Yu Qingxian ran back and forth to the supermarket many times. It wasn't until the next day at noon that she finally filled the truck. Inside were some food and supplies. It should be no problem to stop outside the base and run. Yu Qingxian simulated her route plan in her mind several times before putting her suitcase on the passenger seat and driving towards the official base. At this time, she shouldn't encounter anyone. Yu Qingxian looked at how close the official base was. She hadn't expected that it would only take her three hours to drive to the base. As she stopped the car, she saw a vehicle coming from a distance. Yu Qingxian immediately honked the truck's horn and then opened the door, grabbed her suitcase, and ran. In any case, she achieved her goal. Anyone who saw this car would look inside. Yu Qingxian dragged her suitcase into the nearby house, hoping that her rough actions wouldn't damage her suitcase. Gu Wanqing was indeed an official person. In addition to her abilities and some secrets that couldn't be revealed, she became the head of supervising various official bases. Besides helping to kill zombies and find supplies, she did have free time. She had just returned to the base from the border this time. She was preparing to investigate the body of the girl she had buried before. The day before yesterday, when she passed by there, the entire grave had been dug up, and the bouquet of flowers was also gone. Of course, what was also missing was the body. Could it be that the body had turned into a zombie? It was indeed possible. If she remembered correctly, there was indeed a large crack on the face of the body. Many zombies had this crack. Perhaps this body had really come back to life and turned into a zombie. She couldn't go deeper into the city, so she could only look around. But she didn't see any familiar zombies. Sis Ching, there's a truck ahead, and it honked. Should we go down and take a look? The young man asked. If he hadn't seen it wrong, it seemed that someone had come out of the driver's seat and then ran into the town. Hmm, let's go and take a look. Gu Wanqing came to her senses and looked at the truck on the road ahead. The car stopped next to the truck. The door of the driver's seat was still open, and the car key was not removed. But there was no one. Gu Wanqing sat in the passenger seat and glanced at the car next to her, then opened the door and got out of the car. Sis Ching, be careful. What if there's something else in this car? The young man also got out of the car and followed Gu Wanqing's footsteps. The man sitting in the back seat did not get out of the car and continued to sit in the back seat with his eyes closed. Gu Wanqing didn't care about this man. He was just someone she was ordered to protect. But she couldn't stay in one place. Naturally, she could only run around with people. Fortunately, this person seemed difficult to approach, but he was still easy to talk to. He was given whatever he wanted to eat, and he stayed wherever he wanted to stay, and he wasn't fussy. The man's name was Pei Yuan, 
the son of Gu Wanqing's superior superior. He had been weak and sickly since he was a child, and his parents felt that no one else had the ability to protect their son's safety, so they had to let Gu Wanqing do it. And Gu Wanqing was the first person with abilities in the entire Huaxia. It wasn't because of the end of the world. She awakened her abilities three years ago. It was precisely because of this that Pei Yuan was assigned to her for protection. And following her was a child who later entered the laboratory. For three years, both of them were in the same laboratory. The apocalypse suddenly arrived, the laboratory collapsed, and she and the child were liberated. When Qing Sheng, the young man, carefully opened the back door of the truck. When he saw the entire load, he was stunned. Qing Jie, its supplies, a whole truckload of supplies, when Qing Sheng said in amazement. Who could send such a large amount of supplies in the apocalypse? It's like a living bodhisattva. Gu Wanqing also looked at the supplies and found that they were all women's products and food, immediately understanding who the items in the truck were for. I'll drive the truck back, you follow in your car. I have a rough idea of the other party's intentions, Gu Wanqing said. After saying this, she shouted for Xiao Tian. The big black dog got into the front passenger seat of the truck, and she also got in. When Xingxing did not object and directly started the car to follow the truck. At this point, Gu Wanqing probably could guess whether the person who delivered the truckload of supplies to this base was a man or a woman. It's not that men can't think of things like sanitary pads. And there were quite a few warm palace patches, indicating that the other party was indeed a careful girl. But why did the other party abandon the truck and the supplies and run away? This was something Gu Wanqing really couldn't understand. Oh well, she decided not to dwell on it. Yu Qingxian watched the two cars leave from the third floor in the distance. Especially seeing the two familiar people get out of the car, she felt somewhat relieved. Although Yu Qingxian was also curious why she could encounter Gu Wanqing wherever she went. But with this truckload of supplies in Gu Wanqing's hands, Yu Qingxian felt she could handle it properly. It's just that she's a young girl, running around all day, isn't she afraid at all? Yu Qingxian really admired these people. Not only did they have the energy to run around in the apocalypse, but they could also raise pets. She felt that Gu Wanqing was really capable. If she wanted to raise a zombie, could she afford it? Although not to feed on living people, but live chickens, cows, and sheep, should be possible. After all, zombies eat living creatures. Thinking of this, Yu Qingxian felt like she should go and see if there were any farms or something. Are there still live animals now? There should be, Gu Wanqing's big black dog should be a mutated animal. Mutated animals have aggressive tendencies. Of course, they still attack humans. Thinking of this, Yu Qingxian clasped her hands together in prayer for humanity. Then she walked along a country road. She put the suitcase on the ground, checked it carefully to make sure it wasn't damaged, and then breathed a sigh of relief. She checked the battery and found that she could start riding mode. Yu Qingxian naturally didn't hesitate to get on the bike. The handle could be turned into a steering wheel, just like driving a car. This made Yu Qingxian very happy. She had seen many travel bloggers ride suitcases before. Yu Qingxian also held up one hand and raised the suitcase high. Then she happily made a nostalgic sound. Since her parents passed away, Yu Qingxian had rarely been as happy as she was now. But when she heard the sound of a car, she was so scared that she scrambled out of the suitcase and rushed into the village with it. Happiness is really fleeting. And when she hid in the village, she smelled that fragrance. There were actually living people in this small village. But it made sense. This place was only one or two kilometers away from the base, and the surrounding zombies had already been killed. And there might be monitoring stations a few kilometers or even dozens of kilometers away. Of course, it's not to monitor survivors. It's to monitor the groups of corpses. If you don't know the movements of the zombies in advance, then this base is not safe. Only by knowing the movements of the zombies in advance can survivors be better protected. It is very likely that there are monitoring teams in several cities around the official base, and they use long-range radio walkie-talkies. They can provide advance notice. The speed of the zombie tide's movement is not too fast, and a distance of 10 to 20 kilometers is enough for the entire base to make adequate preparations. If there are tens of thousands of zombies, naturally, they will use firearms. If there are over a hundred thousand, they will choose to retreat. Therefore, the construction of the city walls by the authorities has become the top priority. Of course, these are just Yu Qingxian's speculations. As for the specifics, we will have to wait until the actual base is built to know. Yu Qingxian sniffed in the direction of the scent. There are still quite a few people living in this small village, at least 20 or more. Of course, what Yu Qingxian is concerned about now is not those humans, but the convoy coming towards them. The convoy stopped in the village. This surprised Yu Qingxian. Oh no, they've come to the old nest of the villagers. Hopefully, they didn't hear her screaming just now. 
Yu Qingxian is currently at the end of the village, and it seems that the place where those people live is at the front of the village. After all, there is a river behind the end of the village, so naturally, people cannot live by the river. But in this village, it seems that the dozen or so households at the end of the village appear to be wealthier, all living in three and a half story villas. Of course, the front of the village is not bad either. Yu Qingxian placed the suitcase by the door before going upstairs to take a look. At this time, everything that could be used in the building had been taken away. Indeed, compared to searching for supplies in places full of zombies, ordinary people would naturally prioritize safe places with fewer zombies. Yu Qingxian climbed to the top of the three and a half story villa and secretly looked ahead. She could see smoke coming out of the house in front. Obviously, they were having dinner. Dinner time was the perfect opportunity for her to escape. So Yu Qingxian immediately went downstairs, picked up her suitcase, opened the courtyard gate, and ran with the suitcase. After all, the suitcase would make noise if dragged on the ground. Ordinary people could overlook this, but what if there were people with special abilities? The bodies of people with special abilities are further strengthened. Their vision and hearing are also enhanced. Naturally, they would be afraid of being heard by people with special abilities. In the village, a little girl's head peeked out at the gate. The captain who had just returned saw his team member peeking out and was a little puzzled. What's wrong? Did you hear something? Well, I did hear something, but there was no heartbeat, so it should be a zombie, the little girl replied. She was a mutant, completely different from someone with special abilities. Mutants enhance a specific part of their body's abilities, such as vision, hearing, strength, or speed. These abilities are attached to the human body and cannot be projected externally like special abilities. She was a hearing mutant. Of course, this kind of hearing mutation does not mean she can hear the sound of a needle dropping several kilometers away. However, she can hear all vibrations caused by sound within a kilometer, like someone's heartbeat or the sound of footsteps on the ground. It was because of this that the little girl was able to survive before joining the team of people with special abilities. Footsteps with a heartbeat belong to humans, and these footsteps are regular. Footsteps without a heartbeat belong to zombies, and these footsteps are chaotic. Of course, other sounds are also easily heard. Zombies? That's impossible. The zombies within a radius of 10 kilometers have already been eradicated by the military. We are less than 2 kilometers away from the base. How could there be zombies here? The captain immediately refuted the little girl's words upon hearing them, but he also felt that Wan Xing's words were probably not false. I thought so too, but the sound is indeed the footsteps of a person, but there is no heartbeat, and it doesn't sound chaotic like a zombie. Moreover, the sound is getting farther and farther away from us, Wan Xing retracted her head and continued. In other words, even if it was a zombie, it posed no threat to them. Never mind, let's talk when we get closer. There's only one, not a big deal. Let's have dinner first, the man said. In the apocalypse, eating is the most important thing. Who knows if we can eat tomorrow? Living well today is the most important. As soon as the man finished speaking, Wan Xing couldn't hear the other person's voice. Obviously, the other person had already left the range within a kilometer. The speed was quite fast. But is this really a person, or a zombie? Never mind, it's impossible to meet again, let's just pretend it didn't happen. It's more important to have dinner first. Seeing that the team of supernatural beings led by Yu Qingxian did not catch up, she breathed a sigh of relief. Plus, it was getting dark soon, and Yu Qingxian relaxed. After all, at night, humans would stop moving. Night belongs to the zombies. But Yu Qingxian didn't need to sleep, so she naturally continued to walk at night. By the latter half of the night, Yu Qingxian felt that the sky was getting darker. She couldn't see any stars either. Speaking of which, from the beginning of the night, the sky was covered with dark clouds. Could it be that it's going to snow? Indeed, it was the end of December, and the next year was coming soon. The weather should have gotten colder, but it didn't. Of course, this was how Yu Qingxian felt while she was alive. But looking at the clothing of those survivors, it should still be warm weather. Perhaps it's possible for it to snow. But would the snow in the apocalypse sound so beautiful? The rain, snow, wind, and frost in the apocalypse are all deadly. But this snow was falling heavily. Yu Qingxian had just withdrawn her gaze when she felt something falling, one piece after another. At first, they were small, but later the snowflakes seemed to be pinched into round shapes and flattened. A snowflake was as big as a palm. When it fell on the ground, you could even hear the sound. With this heavy snow, it probably wouldn't take all night. It wouldn't even take an hour for the whole world to turn white. But there was no place nearby for her to take shelter from the snow. Hopefully, the snow wouldn't be too heavy. Although she didn't feel cold, Yu Qingxian still planned to find a down jacket to wear. It would be good to cover up her identity as a zombie when it snowed. 
As long as she covered her head, body, and limbs, and wore a windproof mask, no one would recognize her as a zombie. But speaking was something she couldn't do, it seemed that humans really couldn't understand her. But she clearly understood what she was saying and what the zombies were saying. Why couldn't humans understand? It must be because her body had lost its vitality, and her vocal cords were already damaged. But clearly, in those post-apocalyptic novels, zombies could speak. It's really annoying. Why wasn't she so lucky? Thinking this, Yu Qingxian continued to walk forward. She walked until dawn, and finally saw a small town. At her speed, she should have walked out of the range of the base's radiation. Because Yu Qingxian began to see zombies. Being able to see zombies meant that she was already outside the range of the base, about 20 kilometers away. Finally, at dawn, Yu Qingxian found a suitable place to rest. There was also a clothing store in the small town. Because it had been very hot before, the down jackets in the clothing store were naturally unwanted. Plus, it was already November or December, and the clothing store had also put up down jackets. But who knew that the weather would suddenly change? Yu Qingxian found a beautiful down jacket to wear. Although she couldn't feel any temperature, Yu Qingxian still looked in the mirror. Hmm, not bad. She looked pretty good. She turned her head and saw a zombie coming over with a head full of snow, and asked, this down jacket is nice, do you want to wear one? But the zombie glanced at the clothing store and then walked away with heavy steps in the snow. Yu Qingxian looked at the skirt under her down jacket and changed to a longer down jacket. This time it covered the calf, revealing the lace of the floral skirt. Yu Qingxian also posed in front of the mirror. When she turned her head, she met a pair of red eyes. Yu Qingxian did not expect that Xiu Xingyu, that kid, had been following her all along. This made Yu Qingxian somewhat helpless. They were not on the same path. Why was he following her? She didn't eat people. Yu Qingxian was somewhat helpless. Come in and sit down, Yu Qingxian thought about pulling down the roller shutter of the clothing store directly, regardless of this teenage zombie. But it just stood alone at the door, with the snow rustling behind it, making the teenage zombie appear even more lonely. Could this kid be an orphan? Oh, forgot, her own parents were also dead, and she had no parents either. As Yu Qingxian's voice fell, Xu Xingyu walked in and sat down on a chair. It turned out that zombies could also sit. She thought that a zombie's joints were like rusty iron, unable to bend, and that sitting or squatting was impossible. But thinking that if zombies really couldn't move their joints, how could they walk, run, or even tear off limbs from a person's body? This was enough to show that their hands and feet and strength had definitely been enhanced. After all, ordinary people didn't have the ability to tear humans apart. But Yu Qingxian didn't believe in a level 2 zombie. And it was a level 2 zombie with a brain. Maybe one day it would devour her. Yu Qingxian put on a pair of furry long socks and snow boots. Fortunately, this clothing store was indeed well prepared. After Yu Qingxian was dressed, she looked at Xu Xingyu again, who was still sitting in the same place, with his eyes fixed on her. This made Yu Qingxian somewhat helpless. Xu Xingyu was still wearing that thin school uniform. However, the blood stains on his body did not seem to have increased. In other words, during this time, Xu Xingyu had not eaten anyone else. It seemed that he thought he could level up faster by not eating himself. Damn it! She was being watched by a zombie before being watched by a human. No, she had been watched by a human long ago. That baseball bat girl. Why was it so difficult to be a human, and even more difficult to be a wandering zombie? Is there no justice left? At this point, maybe she should just dig a hole and lie down. And stop traveling. Yu Qingxian was always a pessimistic person. She had originally thought that becoming a zombie would end her suffering. She wouldn't have to struggle to live. Who knew she would still have consciousness? The courage she had finally mustered suddenly dissipated. Ah, she wanted to die. Yu Qingxian's negative thoughts surged up in an instant. But after sighing, Yu Qingxian rallied. Although she wanted to die, she must finish what she wanted to do before dying. As for why Yu Qingxian was willing to be scratched by a zombie and become a zombie, it was also because it was the end of the world, and she no longer needed to update her novels. Besides, with her social anxiety, she had no way to survive in the apocalypse. To survive in the apocalypse, she had to cooperate with others. Can you speak at all? Yu Qingxian was afraid that if someone came to this town looking for something, they couldn't stay in this town. But Xu Xingyu's appearance was clearly that of a zombie. If it wasn't disguised, anyone could tell it was a zombie. There was no choice but for Yu Qingxian to dress up Xu Xingyu. She put on a down jacket, a mask, a hat, and glasses for him. Then she said, this town is a bit too close to the base. We have to leave. You do have the ability to protect yourself, but I don't. After saying that, Yu Qingxian picked up her suitcase and walked out. With such heavy snowfall, the suitcase was useless. 
It seemed that even the heavens were against her. She had only ridden for three minutes. Sure Xing Yu was obedient, although he didn't speak, he followed Yu Qingxian obediently. It's just that it's a serious zombie, wearing a long down jacket, looking a bit clumsy. It stumbles after a few steps. But Yu Qingxian didn't care, and continued to walk forward. But now the snow has almost reached Yu Qingxian's calves, and there is still no sign of it stopping. It's getting a bit difficult to walk further. But half an hour later, Shi Xingyu's speed picked up. In the end, it's still the long legs. Watching Shi Xingyu gradually walking ahead of her, Yu Qingxian suddenly stopped. She looked around, then went into a store to find a rope, tied it to her luggage, and then reached out and looped it around Shi Xingyu's waist, tying the other end of the rope to his waist. It's okay, Yu Qingxian felt Shi Xingyu struggling, so she spoke to quiet him down. After she finished tying the rope and sat on the luggage, she said, let's keep going, let's leave the town first, and I'll give you directions. Shi Xingyu was obedient, like a big white dog pulling a sled. He went in the direction Yu Qingxian pointed to. After becoming a zombie, physical strength has already surpassed that of humans. Dragging a luggage of less than 10 kilograms and a 90 kilogram Yu Qingxian, it didn't affect his pace at all. He even walked much faster than Yu Qingxian herself. But Yu Qingxian thought to herself, is it still considered hiking if she sits on the luggage and lets a zombie pull her around? Anyway, with the addition of Shi Xingyu, the progress of Yu Qingxian was much faster. In just half a day, Yu Qingxian sat on the luggage and saw the beautiful lake. Although it wasn't the full autumn colors of red leaves on the mountains, it was a completely different scenery. There was only white in this world. The water was frozen, and both sides were covered in snow. Even the middle of the road was completely covered with snow. But fortunately, because there were tall street lamps on the side of the road, Yu Qingxian knew where the road was and where the lake was. A zombie who doesn't like to talk and a zombie with social anxiety seemed unusually quiet in this world. As the two zombies stepped onto the road across the lake, the sky once again brought down a gust of wind carrying large flakes of snow. Yu Qingxian opened the umbrella that was originally blocking the sun, to block the snow falling on her. As for Shi Xingyu, Yu Qingxian couldn't be bothered. It's just a zombie that doesn't speak. And Shi Xingyu didn't seem to mind the snow piling up on his head, just walking straight ahead. Yu Qingxian looked at the scenery around her and suddenly spoke, stop for a moment. Shi Xingyu stopped as if he were a robot. While taking pictures, Yu Qingxian thought about Shi Xingyu. She definitely wouldn't allow him to eat people. But if a zombie doesn't eat flesh and blood, how long can it survive? Yu Qingxian didn't know, although she had read novels where some lasted for three months, some for six months, and some even for one to three years or even ten years. Shi Xingyu stood on the side, watching Yu Qingxian taking pictures here and there. Then Yu Qingxian turned to face Shi Xingyu. She reached out and removed the burden from his face. Although the skin wasn't that of a living person, it was clear that he had been good-looking in his lifetime. Speaking of which, when she was in high school, she used to shrink into her own seat. From childhood to adulthood, she only knew a maximum of six classmates in front and behind her. She didn't live on campus when she went to college, so she didn't have any friends. And Yu Qingxian also felt that she didn't need any friends. Until now, Yu Qingxian still felt the same way. So she could stay at home alone for three years, and could even choose death willfully. And after becoming a zombie, she could travel without any worries. But what about Shi Xingyu? What kind of person was he before he died? Yu Qingxian had never thought about getting to know anyone. She didn't want anyone to get to know her either. But this zombie following her, that made Yu Qingxian a bit puzzled. There is nothing special about myself. Why would a second level zombie follow me? In the zombie group, it is actually considered a relatively powerful zombie. At least it can be the kind of overlord in one area. Yu Qingxian took a few more photos of it. If zombies really become extinct in the future, the photos she took might become display pictures in textbooks. It's a pity that Shi Xingyu just looked at her blankly, without even a smile. Well, she couldn't have such high expectations for a zombie. She put away the camera and sat back on the suitcase. Let's go. Crossing the road on the lake, if Shi Xingyu didn't stop, it just kept walking forward. Although the whole corpse was dragged into the snow by Shi Xingyu in an instant. She couldn't feel the temperature of the snow, nor would she suffocate from being buried in the snow. Because she was actually already a dead person. Is Shi Xingyu the same, so he can recklessly break into the snowy underground passage? There were no vehicles on the road. After all, this road was built for sightseeing, not for escape. Walking out of the snowy area, suddenly it became bright ahead. Because this was a tourist road, not only the road on the surface could provide a view, but also the underground. The walls on both sides were made of super transparent special glass. It didn't affect the line of sight, and it wasn't afraid of the water pressure causing the wall to collapse. 
Even in such suddenly cold weather, it was still firmly fixed underground. It's just that the water is very turbid now. Occasionally, a few fish swam by, their bodies tattered and even growing sharp teeth. Although these fish were not very ornamental, since it was a tourist attraction, it couldn't be treated like completing a task. Stop. Yu Qingxian spoke again. Although she said it couldn't be treated like a task, for sure Xingyu, this zombie, it did seem like a task. Well, when it gets bored, it will leave on its own. Or when it gets hungry, it will go find food. Yu Qingxian walked to the edge of the glass wall and carefully looked at the zombie fish at the bottom of the water. Even though the scales on these fish had fallen off, and even their fish bones were exposed, they still had a different kind of elegance in Yu Qingxian's eyes. It's just a pity that she didn't see the maple leaf lake in autumn. Thinking of this, Yu Qingxian suddenly said, let's come again next autumn. It was a pity not to see it this year. Okay, she heard a slightly hoarse voice. This made Yu Qingxian stun for a moment, and then she realized that it was Shi Xingyu who answered her. She turned her head to look at Shi Xingyu beside her. Seeing that Shi Xingyu was finally not staring at her, but at the zombie fish swimming by, Yu Qingxian seemed to realize something. Did this child, when alive, also never go anywhere like herself? But the sentence she just said was just her own sigh. Socially anxious people are socially anxious, but it doesn't mean they don't like to talk. When she's alone, she talks a lot. Even when writing novels, she would roleplay. So there's no situation where she doesn't like to talk. It's just that she doesn't like to talk to people. And sure Xingyu has never talked to her, just a simple word is enough to shock Yu Qingxian. But on second thought, if two zombies were talking, wouldn't it look strange to others? Just thinking about it, she felt that the scene was very eerie. So you can talk, Yu Qingxian said. She had talked to him so much before, but he didn't say a word. So Yu Qingxian treated Shi Xingyu as a second-level zombie without humanity. At this moment, Shi Xingyu became a silent gourd with a sawed mouth. Yu Qingxian didn't expect him to say anything else. She took out the camera and took a few photos. Then she pointed to a place, stand over there, I'll take two photos of you. This gloomy gourd is indeed unparalleled in its obedience. No, it's unparalleled in its lack of corpses. Watching him obediently stand there, Yu Qingxian took several more photos of him, even adjusting the composition. Even if he turned into a zombie, Shi Xingyu would still be one of those particularly good-looking zombies, without that repulsive feeling of other zombies. Boys like him must have been very popular when they were alive, right? But now, they must be feared by everyone. After taking the photos, Yu Qingxian directed the old cow to continue forward. Passing through the underground glass walkway, Shi Xingyu dragged Yu Qingxian back to the surface. Although they could see several abandoned cars, they didn't see any zombies, of course, nor did they see any living people. The snow outside was also piling up thicker and thicker. Yu Qingxian had lived for 28 years and had never seen such heavy snow. Although she had seen snow as deep as her calves in her hometown when she was young, this snow was almost a meter deep. She sat on the suitcase, only her head exposed outside the snow. But this snow posed no obstacle to Shi Xingyu. He was like a natural snowplow, clearing a narrow path directly. This made Yu Qingxian feel a little uneasy. However, she only felt uneasy for a few minutes before feeling calm again. If he got hungry later, she would reluctantly catch a few live chickens or ducks for him. They arrived in Jay City on the morning of the fourth day. Although the snow had stopped by then, its depth had almost exceeded Yu Qingxian's height. She walked into the snow, and she probably couldn't even be seen. The place where the ancient city was located was not supposed to have heavy snow. Now, with such heavy snow, many ancient buildings had already collapsed under the weight of the snow. Naturally, there was no sense of the ancient town's scenery. There were only ruins crushed by the heavy snow. Yu Qingxian knew that she would not be able to see the charm of the ancient town. She felt a little regretful. Perhaps if she had come a few days earlier, she would have been able to see it. Perhaps if she had walked faster. However, this thought only flashed through her mind for a moment. Some scenery was lucky to be seen, and if not, she could only go with the flow. After all, she still wanted to see the dinosaurs from the dinosaur era. Yu Qingxian untied the rope from Shi Xingyu and then dragged her suitcase through the snow towards the house. After walking a few steps, she ran into a zombie head-on. Oh, she hadn't seen any zombies for several days, so she had forgotten that there were probably many zombies in Jay City. So running into a zombie head-on was no big deal. Yu Qingxian watched as the zombie didn't make way for her, so she had to step aside and let the zombie pass. How rude. But as Yu Qingxian made way for the zombie, Shi Xingyu came up and grabbed the zombie by the neck smashing its head with one slap. Then he pulled out a crystal core from its head. The crystal core was not big, it was like a glass bead. And this series of actions happened in an instant. Watching the zombie with half a head fall to the ground, Yu Qingxian felt that Shi Xingyu was even more rude. 
he just opened someone else's skull. Then Yu Qingxian watched as Xiu Xingyu directly swallowed the crystal core. This child didn't even think to wash it in the snow. He just ate it, without any refinement. But watching Xiu Xingyu's actions, Yu Qingxian covered her head. Did she also have a super powerful crystal core in her head? Was Xiu Xingyu trying to fatten himself up by eating her? And Xiu Xingyu's eyes were fixed on Yu Qingxian. Seeing Yu Qingxian step back with her suitcase, a hint of doubt flashed in his red eyes. It seemed like he understood something. The usually reticent Xiu Xingyu finally spoke, You don't have it. These three words filled Yu Qingxian's head with question marks. I don't have what? I don't have a crystal core? Oh, 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 oh. That's great. Her brain is healthy and there is no tumor. But since there is no crystal nucleus in her brain, what is Xingyu doing with her? It can't be that he wants to form a tour group with her, right? Is he just fooling around? Yu Qingxian also ignored Xingyu and headed towards the high-rise building. Although Jay City is an ancient city, on the other side, it is indeed a modern city, separated by a thousand-year-old city wall. On one side is a modern city, on the other side is a thousand-year-old ancient city. Yu Qingxian climbed up to the hotel with her luggage and chose a room with a very good view to stay in. But Xingyu did not follow. He should be going to find the zombie to get the crystal nucleus. Yu Qingxian also ignored him. If killing a few more zombies could save a few more people, then she would encourage Xingyu to go on a killing spree. At least for now, Yu Qingxian knew that Xingyu would not kill her. Yu Qingxian put down her luggage and walked to the balcony, taking pictures in the direction of the ancient city. After a while, Yu Qingxian returned to the room. Just like a living person, she went to the bathroom and tried the water. There was not a drop of water. Yu Qingxian waited for a while and confirmed that there was indeed no water. The province she lived in was already in the southern region, and had never experienced such heavy snow, nor had the facilities to deal with freezing. It was estimated that the water pipes had long been frozen. So Yu Qingxian went to fetch some snow and put it in the bathtub. She buried herself in the snow. After half an hour, the snow still showed no signs of melting. Yu Qingxian, I am truly a cold corpse. Three hours later, Yu Qingxian finally crawled out of the snow. She changed into clean clothes and as the night fell, she lay on the bed. It seemed like she hadn't slept for a long time. Although she didn't really need to sleep, no one wanted to stand all night, right? It was okay to lie down for the night. Yu Qingxian indeed didn't need to sleep, but unlike other zombies, she could actually fall asleep. And she slept deeply. Even when Xingyu entered her room, she didn't feel it. Xingyu stood at Yu Qingxian's bedside, his red eyes staring at the peacefully sleeping Yu Qingxian. Then his gaze turned to the window. As the light gradually appeared in the sky, he walked to the floor-to-ceiling window, grabbed the curtain, and blocked the snow and the light outside. Then he brought over a chair and sat at the foot of the bed. He looked towards the door with a guarded look, unlike the quiet gaze he had on Yu Qingxian. When he was collecting crystal nuclei, he found a powerful zombie in this area. The mall was filled with zombie and human corpses, and even the bodies of two ability users. Even the zombies that couldn't be killed by ability users. It must be very strong, perhaps similar to himself in level. But judging from the behavior of this zombie, it seemed to be heading towards a more bestial direction and had not evolved much intelligence. As long as an ability user used a little bit of intelligence, they could easily kill this zombie. But in the end, they were of the same kind. Xingyu naturally hoped that the same kind would be stronger. He no longer had memories of being human, and didn't care if he had a name. When he noticed this zombie, he just mistook her for a human. She was just too weak, not even reaching the energy level of an ordinary zombie. So at that time, he turned and left without hesitation. But he never expected that this weak little zombie, who could be killed with a single fall, would dare to stop him and reach into his pocket. It turned out that he had a name, and he had once been human. Xingyu followed her, watching a zombie give things to humans, and watching her ride the luggage, which was somewhat funny. When she heard human activity, she ran like a mouse encountering a cat. He had never seen such a zombie before. If he didn't take care of her, this weak zombie would be killed by humans one day. Maybe it would be killed by its own kind. Like the zombie in this city, it kills both zombies and humans without distinction. Thinking of this, Xiu Xingyu felt that he was the same. In order to become stronger and obtain more flesh and blood, he was also slaughtering his own kind. Thinking of this, Xiu Xingyu's eyes calmed down, but only a slight sound made him stare at the door of the room. Yu Qingxian was awakened. When she opened her eyes, she saw the sky instead of the roof. What the heck is going on? She just took a nap. How come the roof has been torn down? There were rocks all around, but there wasn't even a small stone on the bed. There was indeed an intact wall in front of her, and she couldn't help but look back. She saw a big hole behind her, piercing through a dozen rooms. 
Even a fool like Yu Qingsan knew what had happened. There must have been a fight while she was asleep, and the wall behind her was obviously knocked out. Yu Qingxian immediately lifted the chilly blanket, put on a down jacket, and wore snow boots. She crawled through the big hole to see what was going on. There were also zombies in other rooms, but most of these zombies were in a sorry state. Some had broken arms and legs, but they could still move. Some had no heads. They were truly dead. Yu Qingxian crawled to the last room and finally saw the two zombies that had torn her roof. One was Shi Xingyu, and the other. Yu Qingxian didn't recognize. The combat power of these two zombies felt almost the same, but they were much stronger than her, even stronger than the humans she had seen. It seemed that Shi Xingyu was not a second level zombie. He should be third level or higher. She was just being petty. If they could understand what she was saying, they were not second level zombies. After all, second level zombies could only run fast and jump over low walls. For example, a two meter wall in the countryside should not be difficult for a second level zombie. So someone like Shi Xingyu who could communicate with her was probably third level or higher. It had only been a little over a month since the apocalypse, yet such powerful zombies had emerged. The future of humanity could be said to be in darkness. Fortunately, she was just a zombie. At this moment, Shi Xingyu was pressed against the wall by that zombie. Because this was the outermost wall, it was also the thickest. Shi Xingyu hadn't broken through the wall. It turned out that this kid had broken through such a long wall. He was young but tough. But this despicable zombie uncle was bullying a 16 or 17 year old zombie. Isn't that unfair? Shi Xingyu saw Yu Qingxian coming towards the zombie and wanted to tell her to run. He had thought that this zombie was just a brute, but he hadn't expected that it had also mutated, gaining strength. Fortunately, it was himself who was hit. If it had been Yu Qingxian, she would have turned into a pile of mud long ago. But before he could speak, the mutated zombie was grabbed by the back of its neck by Yu Qingxian and thrown out. Are you crazy? He's not a human, he's a zombie too. Why are you hitting him? High school students already have a heavy workload. After becoming a zombie, they finally don't have to study, and you still treat him as a punching bag. If you have the ability, lift this building and throw it out. You only know how to bully the weak, really shameless. Yu Qingxian pointed at the old zombie and cursed loudly. Shi Xingyu was her old cow. If he broke his back, where would she find such an obedient zombie? And this mutated zombie, thrown to the ground by Yu Qingxian and scolded, knelt on the ground, seemingly trembling. A look of wanting to run but not daring, can only hold the head and hesitate to speak. Don't talk, I don't want to talk to the savage zombie. Yu Qingxian was really angry at this moment. It was hard for him to choose a room to sleep, and it was ruined. The zombie who came to pull the suitcase was almost killed by it. So the savage zombie shut up. And the look in the eyes of Shi Xingyu, who was protected by Yu Qingxian, completely changed at this time. Because just for a moment, he felt the terrifying power on her, which almost made him fall to the ground. It was absolute suppression, making him completely unable to produce any thoughts of resistance. Even though that power was not directed at himself. Of course, Yu Qingxian didn't know. But when he saw the zombie really leave, he felt that although the other party was savage, it was still okay to communicate. It turned out that retaining human consciousness was still useful. Humans evolve language to avoid physical collisions. After all, a gentleman uses his mouth and not his hands. Watching the zombie uncle run away, Yu Qingxian finally breathed a sigh of relief. It was dangerous. If the other party had thrown a punch at him, he would have definitely turned into a pancake. Ah, it's really great. Fortunately, the other party is reasonable. It's a good zombie. You must not have talked to it properly, and didn't get beaten up, right? Yu Qingxian pulled Shi Xingyu up from the ground. Shi Xingyu looked at the little zombie in front of her, who looked like she had survived a disaster, still not reacting. Was she pretending? Or did she simply not realize the problem? But it seemed that she belonged to the latter. Although Yu Qingxian felt that the zombie uncle was easy to talk to, he still felt lingering fear. Even Shi Xingyu couldn't beat him. It's better to run away quickly. So 20 minutes later, Shi Xingyu watched the little zombie in front of her running fast with the suitcase. Still silent. Was her strength only for a moment? When scolding the zombie, that domineering appearance made him think that the mutant zombie was going to commit suicide. As a result, the domineering little zombie was also almost scared out of half of his life. He packed up and ran away before dawn. Her back gave Shi Xingyu the feeling of a powerful zombie that made other zombies tremble in an instant, but on the surface, she was weaker than an ordinary zombie, and always gave others a feeling of few, almost got killed. What exactly prevented her from knowing about the power in her own body? Forget it, he naturally couldn't possess such power. 
but he had to find a way to make her confident. She had the ability to protect herself. Speaking of which, as a zombie, retaining human consciousness was already incredible. Even though his level was indeed at level 4, humans were just food in his eyes. He wouldn't have any sympathy for food. But for Yu Qingxian, it seemed not to be the case. She knew she was a zombie, but still wanted to protect humans. What a ridiculous zombie. Shershing Yu naturally couldn't be as merciful to food as Yu Qingxian, and even make protective actions for food. But he could teach her to have the ability to protect herself in battle. At least when facing off against ability users, she could have the ability to escape. Like the previous idea. If left alone like this, this zombie with human consciousness would eventually die at the hands of the humans she wanted to protect, right? At least for now, he could be sure that no zombie could harm her. Yu Qingxian felt unlucky. It seemed that the travel destination confirmed by Dian Dian Dodo was not suitable. The place they had played before was taken over by the authorities. The ancient city they wanted to visit was covered by heavy snow, and there was also a big zombie in the city. Run, run quickly. But when they ran out of Jay City, she turned back. She found a super large white cloth, drew a big yellow triangle on it, and then drew a big black exclamation mark in the middle. After finishing the painting, Yu Qingxian dragged the super heavy cloth to go upstairs. But after dragging for a while, she was completely stuck in the same place. Shershing Yu didn't know why an adjective popped into his head, moonwalk. But he knew that if Yu Qingxian relied solely on dragging the cloth, she wouldn't be able to get it upstairs even by next year. He reached out and grabbed the other end, leaping up to the second floor, and his hand suddenly pierced the wall like a sharp nail, pulling himself and the cloth up to the rooftop. He didn't want to help with the food. Of course, he didn't want the mutated zombie to become stronger. Just relying on the zombies in the city, he wouldn't grow so quickly. It was mainly because of those two arrogant ability users that this zombie had grown so quickly. So, be wary of visitors, maybe there would be an ability user to help him kill this opponent? Yu Qingxian looked at Shi Xingyu's agile movements with envy in her eyes. It's great to have a powerful zombie. Unlike her, who can only lie down and play dead when in danger. Yu Qingxian nodded as she watched Shi Xingyu hang up the alert sign. This way, anyone who came would know the danger in the city. Starve that violent zombie to death. How dare it bully a minor. But after Shi Xingyu went downstairs, Yu Qingxian pulled him and ran away. She didn't stop at all, running for several days. Only when she was sure that the zombie wouldn't chase after them did she stop. You need to practice self-defense, Shi Xingyu spoke. Yu Qingxian didn't run fast, an ordinary adult could catch up to her. And she always had a kind heart. She didn't know if humans nowadays were her enemies. Perhaps they knew, otherwise she wouldn't see humans and run as if chased by ghosts, faster than when chased by zombies. She had only seen zombies chasing people. It was the first time she had seen a zombie being chased by a person. Why? Yu Qingxian was surprised that this kid could say so much. Of course, she was also puzzled as to why a zombie would learn self-defense. Isn't self-defense something humans learn? She had become a zombie. What would a corpse learn about self-defense? Because you need to fight, Shi Xingyu said again. Why do I need to fight? Yu Qingxian didn't understand. She just wanted to travel, and when she had been to all the places she wanted to go, she would turn into dust. This way, you will be killed by humans. You are too close to humans, Shi Xingyu pointed out Yu Qingxian's weakness. Being too close to humans would not end well. Humans wouldn't think that zombies wouldn't eat people. As long as they saw a zombie, they would exterminate it. Because if they didn't kill the zombies, they would become the zombies' food. The two couldn't coexist. They were born enemies. Well, if I really get killed by then, then I'll just die. Anyway, I won't feel any pain, Yu Qingxian said as she carried her suitcase, looking around and taking out the map to look at. She had run around and everywhere was snow, not knowing where she was running to. Finally seeing a road sign, she quickly confirmed her location. Do you want to die? Shi Xingyu didn't understand. After becoming a zombie, she had great power, and this world should be ruled by zombies. Humans should be kept by zombies as food. As you can see, if I wanted to live, I wouldn't have scratched the zombie, Yu Qingxian said, taking off her gloves and revealing the wound on her wrist. It was a trace of being scratched by a zombie. This mark shocked Shi Xingyu. He had never seen a human voluntarily become a zombie before. Although he didn't remember his human memories, he could tell from those people's reactions. No one would want to become a zombie. Shi Xingyu was shocked at how determined Yu Qingxian must have been to do this. Of course, he didn't know how disappointed Yu Qingxian had been when she woke up from a nap and found that she hadn't turned into a zombie. However, at this moment, he felt that if Yu Qingxian had not turned into a zombie, he should be someone who loves life very much. Perhaps someone who enjoys traveling and taking photos everywhere. 
But you are living well now, even if you become a zombie, you still have your hobbies, Shershing you couldn't help but ask. This was indeed his curiosity. What are you talking about? I am peacefully dead. Don't speak nonsense if you don't understand. Yu Qingxian withdrew his hand, put on gloves, and continued to look for the place names on the signpost. Oh, found it, indeed went the wrong way. Yu Qingxian checked the map, then compared it with the signpost, and turned towards the direction she wanted to go. After confirming the direction, Yu Qingxian put away the map and picked up the suitcase. After walking a few steps, she noticed that Xu Xingyu was still standing in place. She turned back to look at Xu Xingyu, are you coming or not? If you're not, then let's part ways here, goodbye. After saying this, Yu Qingxian waved her hand and left without any nostalgia. Xu Xingyu, is she even human, or did I overestimate her? She really has no emotions, just leaving without a trace. Yu Qingxian certainly wouldn't miss Xu Xingyu. After all, she was used to being alone, and meeting Xu Xingyu was indeed an accident. But zombies are like this. They only appear to be in groups in the eyes of others because they have the same destination. She didn't think Xu Xingyu and herself had the same destination. But she helped the enemy of humanity. Is that really okay? If Xu Xingyu kills humans in the future, then she would be an accomplice. Well, forget it, just one Xu Xingyu, it won't lead to the extinction of humanity. She really underestimated humans. People in this world have experienced all kinds of difficulties and still live on with strength. If all humans in the world were like her, they would truly perish instantly. With these thoughts, Yu Qingxian continued to walk through the snow, not even looking back. It was as if the past few days with Xu Xingyu were just an illusion. Xu Xingyu watched Yu Qingxian leave without looking back. For a moment he was unclear whether he was the zombie or Yu Qingxian was the zombie. He caught up with her. No matter what method he used, he had to make Yu Qingxian learn to deal with people with abilities first. Especially during this heavy snow, human activity is not as widespread, so she naturally had to exercise well. This made Yu Qingxian extremely impatient. She just wanted to run when she saw people. And a zombie, what self-defense skills could it learn? Too much to ask of a corpse. So Yu Qingxian completely ignored Xu Xingyu's nagging. As for Xu Xingyu following her, she naturally couldn't drive him away. The further south they went, the thinner the snow became. Indeed, no matter how severe the blizzard, it couldn't approach the hot equator. For the earth, these extreme weather conditions were just a scratch. With these thoughts, Yu Qingxian's ears twitched, and she turned around and dragged Xu Xingyu into the snowdrift. Xu Xingyu was about to ask what she was doing when he heard a sound. Then several cars drove by from a distance. The wheels were equipped with anti-skid chains, making a crisp sound on the snow. But Yu Qingxian's ears were too sensitive, right? She only heard the sound of the approaching car when it was close. Of course, this approach was also hundreds of meters away. Judging by Yu Qingxian's reaction, she could probably hear the sound of the car from one or two kilometers away. After a few cars passed, Yu Qingxian and Xu Xingyu crawled out of the snowdrift. But just by looking at Xu Xingyu's appearance, Yu Qingxian knew something was wrong. His veins were bulging on his face, his red eyes were shining even more, and there was even some unknown liquid seeping from the corners of his mouth. Yu Qingxian stared at his appearance and instantly understood. He was craving human flesh. I also really admire his ability to endure. After all, ordinary zombies definitely can't resist. But those advanced zombies in the novel can even blend into the crowd. Maybe the higher the level, the more they can endure. Yu Qingxian asked this question to Xu Xingyu. Xu Xingyu seemed to hear something funny. The higher the level, the stronger the desire for living flesh and blood. It's just that, the higher the level of the zombie, the less they lack living creatures to eat. So naturally they can control their desire for humans. Since that day, Xu Xingyu finally opened up. In other words, the reason Xu Xingyu was able to endure was entirely due to his strong willpower? Or is it? There is a powerful psychic in the convoy, Xu Xingyu admitted generously. Yu Qingxian listened to his words and looked towards the convoy, where the exhaust fumes were almost invisible. A very strong psychic? Why couldn't she sense it? It seems that she is really weak. How did you sense it? Yu Qingxian felt that being able to sense danger from the other party was important to her. If she could know in advance that this person was dangerous, then she could escape in advance. The intuition of a strong person, Xu Xingyu said. Not all zombies have this kind of thing. His evolution is quite special. As Xu Xingyu's voice fell, he was hit in the face with snow by Yu Qingxian. He's really narcissistic. But as long as she sees people, she runs away, whether they are strong or weak, it doesn't matter. But running around in this heavy snow, without any strength, is impossible. Yu Qingxian emerged from the snow and continued walking along the road. Because the cars had passed, she had made a path for herself. It was quite easy to walk.
But looking at the tire tracks, it seemed that the other party's target was also the direction of the cross sea bridge. But it couldn't be confirmed at the moment. It wasn't until she and Xiu Xingyu had been walking for a day that she found a fork in the road ahead, and the car went down the fork, because further ahead was a very popular highway. But thinking with her brain, she knew that this highway was definitely blocked by vehicles. Yu Qingxian walked a little further. Sure enough, the snow on the road ahead was uneven. Some were high, some were low. Yu Qingxian reached out and pushed aside the thick snow, and saw a zombie trapped in the car. The zombie was clawing at the car window, and the whole zombie was slightly stiff from the cold. Even though it's a zombie, it can't withstand the cold. After all, it's still a physical body, and there are quite a few zombies that have frozen to death. Of course, survival of the fittest, the zombies that survived naturally evolved to a higher level. This is a new test for humans. Perhaps this winter, many people will become zombies, and many will become psychics. Of course, this is not something that Yu Qingxian, this zombie, should consider. As she prepared to continue walking, she heard a few gunshots. The sound should be quite far away. It should be two or three kilometers from their current location. Under normal circumstances, Yu Qingxian would not go to sea. She continued walking with her suitcase, but the old cow she had picked up was carrying her with one hand and her suitcase with the other, quickly heading towards the sound of the gunshots. Yu Qingxian never expected that Xu Xingyu would actually carry her to the sound of the gunshots, and the closer they got, the stronger the scent at the tip of Yu Qingxian's nose. Of course, Yu Qingxian is not a glutton. Naturally, she couldn't drool, but being carried by Xu Xingyu, the drool turned into rain and fell on Yu Qingxian's head, but she was held by Xu Xingyu around the waist, and could only grab a handful of snow and wipe it on her face. She really couldn't understand why Xu Xingyu wanted to eat people and still dragged her along. Could it be that he wanted to stuff her with heart, liver, spleen, and kidneys? Is raw meat really delicious? Fortunately, Xu Xingyu wasn't that crazy. He just threw Yu Qingxian into the thick snow. Then he tied the suitcase to a tree and made ten tight knots. Only then did he climb over the wall. Yu Qingxian got up from the ground, jumped onto the wall, and looked behind it. There were two people lying behind the wall, with bloody holes in their heads. Xu Xingyu was crouched on the ground, gnawing on the two people. They had just breathed their last breath, and their bodies were still warm. When Xu Xingyu saw Yu Qingxian staring at him, a hint of embarrassment flashed in his red eyes. It had been half a month since Yu Qingxian had last eaten. If this continued, even the strongest zombie would starve to death. Yu Qingxian saw Xu Xingyu eating people, but her eyes showed little emotion. She slowly shrank behind the wall. Xu Xingyu was puzzled. How could Yu Qingxian, a zombie herself, be scared by his actions? Who would be scared of eating? Meanwhile, Yu Qingxian was trying to open her suitcase, but the cloth was tied too tightly. Ten tight knots. What was this old cow thinking? The cloth was difficult to untie and couldn't be torn. Yu Qingxian's gaze fell on a small tree. It was probably only two or three years old. Her attention shifted from the cloth to the sapling. Then she grabbed the small tree with both hands and broke it. Although she felt a little sorry for the small tree, she untied the cloth from the trunk and ran off with the suitcase. Yu Qingxian didn't oppose Xu Xingyu eating people. After all, humans were food to him. If she kept Xu Xingyu with her, she felt that he would starve to death one day. Of course, if he starved to death, she would have eliminated a big zombie for humanity. But he had only been 16 or 17 years old in his previous life, so he should at least live to 30. Even if he lived to 30, it would still be a short life. Forget it, she didn't want to get involved in the struggle between humans and zombies. But those two humans should have been killed by their own kind, right? Were they the people from the cars before? Since they had come out together, why did they have to kill each other? Forget it, she didn't want to think about it. Let's head to the cross sea bridge first. Since Xu Xingyu had jumped down from the highway while carrying her, they could only move forward. They couldn't go back. That would be a waste of time. After Xu Xingyu finished eating, he climbed over the wall and saw that the tree with the suitcase tied to it had been broken, and both the box and Yu Qingxian were gone. Xu Xingyu was speechless. How could this little zombie run so fast? Indeed, for Yu Qingxian, who still retained human consciousness, seeing herself eating people must have been terrifying. But she shouldn't have just run away. He had torn the down jacket he was wearing into strips, and now, whether it was goose or duck feathers, they fell to the ground like snowflakes as he moved. He headed in the direction Yu Qingxian had left. Yu Qingxian had originally intended to return to the highway, but she never expected to end up in a place where others were fighting. She peeked out and stared at the house in front of her. No wonder she had heard gunshots earlier, and now there were two bodies here. These people were fighting again. Yu Qingxian didn't know what was going on. It wasn't until she saw a familiar figure that she understood. 
It was Gu Wanqing. Why was she here? Were the powerful people in those cars referring to her? It made sense, she could run around the world, so she must have some ability. But she was an official, yet she was engaged in a shootout with the other side. That meant the people on the other side were the problem. Yu Qingxian hid her suitcase where no one would see it and headed towards the group of problematic people. She wanted to see what they were up to, but after a few steps, she turned back. What was the point of knowing? Let's go see the cross sea bridge. Yu Qingxian dragged the suitcase and bypassed the crowd again. Shi Xingyu also caught up with Yu Qingxian. Yu Qingxian looked at the goose feathers on his down jacket, which had fallen off, and the blood on his face was gone. She didn't say anything. It was as if she hadn't wanted to ditch Shi Xingyu just now. Shi Xingyu saw that she had no guilt at all and knew that it was useless for him to be so calculating here. At this time, Yu Qingxian put on a mask and I mask again. Shi Xingyu felt that with Yu Qingxian's appearance, as long as her face was covered and people couldn't see her grayish skin, ordinary people really couldn't tell if she was a human or a zombie. As long as she didn't speak, she really looked a bit like a cold person who didn't like to talk. Otherwise, when he first saw her, he wouldn't have mistaken her for a human. When Shi Xingyu was distracted, Yu Qingxian took a mask and put it on his face. In fact, in Yu Qingxian's eyes, Shi Xingyu's skin was whiter than hers. At first glance, she just felt that Shi Xingyu was a bit too white. Unlike her gray skin. At a glance, she could tell that she was a zombie. Before, she thought it was the wound on her face, but now she realized that she couldn't pretend to be a human at all. Shi Xingyu originally didn't want to be as cowardly as Yu Qingxian, almost crawling on the ground. She was so timid and loved to join in the fun. But looking at her like this, she probably didn't look like she was just joining in the fun. Of course, Yu Qingxian was not here to join in the fun. If she knew that Shi Xingyu thought she loved to join in the fun, she would definitely kick him. They went around the residential area. Yu Qingxian only then realized that there seemed to be no zombies in this town. So it was related to the residents here. When Yu Qingxian and Shi Xingyu bypassed the fighting area and prepared to go up to the overpass, suddenly a few people rushed out in front of them, holding guns, and made them stop. Stop, or we'll shoot. The two people in cotton jackets, holding guns, made Yu Qingxian and Shi Xingyu stop. Yu Qingxian didn't know why these people suddenly attacked them. They were just two zombies. But Yu Qingxian reached out and patted Shi Xingyu's hand, indicating that he should not be impulsive. Let's see the situation first. After that, Yu Qingxian raised her hands in surrender. Shi Xingyu didn't understand what Yu Qingxian's gesture meant, but he had to imitate Yu Qingxian. Then Yu Qingxian felt something pressing against her back, indicating that they should move forward. The two of them were then taken into a basement by these people. Yu Qingxian only then saw that there were many people locked in the basement. Men, women, old and young. They all looked thin and were wearing summer clothes. Obviously, they had been locked up before the snow came. Yu Qingxian instantly understood that since Gu Wanqing was an official person, she must have come to rescue these people. There should be talents needed by the authorities among these people, but they had been waiting for two months and hadn't been rescued. So they sent people to find them. But is it really okay to put two zombies among the people? Those people looked at Yu Qingxian and Shi Xingyu with different expressions. After those people closed the door, the whole room became dark again. But the darkness had no effect on Yu Qingxian and Shi Xingyu. These people were skin and bones, and it seemed that they only ate once every few days. There were also a few children inside. Yu Qingxian took off her down jacket and walked towards the woman with two children. The woman heard the movement and was a little scared. But Yu Qingxian definitely couldn't speak. If she spoke, everyone would know that she was a zombie. Yu Qingxian covered the two children with the down jacket. Then she turned around and gave the tattered down jacket, which had lost most of its feathers, to the child next to Shi Xingyu. Now she was sure. Capture these survivors, they are not good people. Since they are not good people, why not use them as food for Shixinjiu? Yu Qingxian pointed to the iron gate, and Shixinjiu understood what Yu Qingxian meant. It's just that he didn't understand, they were never supposed to be caught. Just a few ordinary people, they couldn't have stopped him. Yu Qingxian didn't speak, just stared at him. Shixinjiu helplessly stepped forward and kicked open the iron gate. The clanging sound not only startled the people inside the room, but also the guards outside. After the iron gate was opened, the light shone in. Yu Qingxian finally spoke, you can eat those people. Of course, Shixinjiu naturally understood what she meant. In the ears of those people, they heard the unique sound of zombies, which made them even more frightened. The two guards at the door hadn't reacted yet, and Shixinjiu broke their necks. Then they headed towards the place where the humans lived. Now, the majority of these people are fighting with Gu Wanqing's people, so the remaining people are not many. But they have quite a lot of weapons. Yu Qingxian went towards that room. 
The people in the room heard the noise and came out of the room. Then they saw Shiksinjia running towards them. Only three people, of course, Shiksinjia killed them directly. After the people died, Yu Qingxian showed up and went into the room to get her suitcase. The suitcase was just placed aside, and it wasn't opened because it had a password. She picked up her suitcase and glanced at the two pistols on the table. Yu Qingxian decisively took them, along with the bullets, although she had never used them. But with some research, she should be able to use them. They could also be used to intimidate people. When Shiksinjiu saw her smiling as she carried the suitcase out of the house, he was puzzled. Aren't you close to humans? How could you let me eat those people? You are eliminating harm for the people, it doesn't count as hurting them, Yu Qingxian said. However, she didn't expect that Shiksinjiu didn't eat people. Shiksinjiu felt that Yu Qingxian, in fact, was not particularly close to people. Even in the apocalypse, some people might not be able to harm those who look like zombies, let alone living people. But Yu Qingxian gave him a completely different feeling. He used to think that Yu Qingxian was unwilling to harm humans and unwilling to harm zombies. She stood in the middle of the two in a vague manner. After Yu Qingxian finished speaking, she walked with her suitcase. When passing by one of the bodies, Yu Qingxian said, Are you really not going to take a bite? Shik Xinjiu. Hurry up and eat, it will be cold later, it's a snowy day, Yu Qingxian said, seeing Shik Xinjiu freezing. Shik Xinjiu didn't want to waste these humans, but suddenly being told by Yu Qingxian like that, he instantly lost his appetite. In his moment of hesitation, Yu Qingxian fiddled with the pistol in her hand and then fired a shot into the air. The quiet night was shattered by Yu Qingxian's shot. At least when those people were fighting, the guns still had silencers. After all, at night, not only could it attract zombies, but also zombie animals. Shik Xinjiu was surprised to see Yu Qingxian holding a gun. Run, run, people will come later, that particularly strong person you mentioned will also come, Yu Qingxian said, then picked up her suitcase, put the gun in her backpack, and ran away. She wasn't worried about the gun going off. As long as it didn't hurt her head, she wouldn't die. Shik Xinjiu saw that Yu Qingxian had really run away, and he could only follow. He couldn't understand what this little zombie was thinking. And this gunshot did indeed echo over the quiet town. Gu Wanqing originally wanted to find the lair of these people. It was just blocked by someone, and this town is not small. She was not sure how many people were left on the other side. Now there was gunfire in that direction, it must be that place. Aisheng, you take people to hold these people, I'll go save others, Gu Wanqing said. When Qingxing nodded at the words, be careful, take Xiao Tian with you. Gu Wanqing made an okay gesture to Wen Qingsheng, then waved to the nearby half-height big black dog. Xiao Tian immediately followed. As for Pei Yuan, he watched Gu Wanqing go alone and handed her the gun from his waist. Gu Wanqing did not refuse, took it, and left directly. Pei Yuan looked at Gu Wanqing leaving, then said to the person next to him, Give me the sniper rifle. The person next to him handed a box of aluminum alloy over a meter long to Pei Yuan. When Qingsheng glanced at him, what was this sickly guy going to do? Snipe? Did he know how to snipe? No wonder Sister Ching said he was just sick, not useless. Gu Wanqing arrived at the place where the gunfire was heard. But when she got there, she only saw bodies on the ground. She went into the house and found several boxes of weapons, then went to the next house. It should be a basement. The two people at the entrance to the basement were also dead, their necks twisted instantly. Even their expressions had not yet reacted. But as Gu Wanqing walked towards the basement, a foul smell filled the air. But when she saw those people, a hint of surprise flashed in her eyes. Because these people were already so thin and emaciated, covered in frostbite all over. She took out the walkie-talkie and said, People found, no need to show mercy, leave no one behind. Gu Wanqing glanced around, the number of people did not match at all. In other words, they were late. Some people had already been killed. When Qingsheng received the message and made a gesture to the people around him, Finally, no longer retreating, everyone put on night vision goggles and rushed across the street. There was no need to worry about hostages now. In just 20 minutes, they wiped out dozens of people on the other side. As for the people who were imprisoned, they also came out of the basement and entered the warm indoors. But at this time, Yu Qingxian and Xiu Xingyu did not leave. You do so much, those people won't thank you, they will only thank the human who suddenly appeared. Xiu Xingyu didn't understand why Yu Qingxian did all this. After all, she couldn't explain to humans, she had done a lot of good things, and there was the danger of being discovered and killed by humans. Yu Qingxian didn't care about what was said. Even without me, she could have saved these people, it was you who kicked the door, it was you who killed, you haven't said anything to those humans, I haven't done anything. Yu Qingxian said. This made sure Xingyu speechless. Obviously, they wouldn't have been caught in the first place. So whose fault was it? Now everything was pushed onto him. 
It's really the villain who first accuses others. He wanted to explain, but Yu Qingxian turned and walked away. Do you trust her so much? Do you know her? Shi Xingyu caught up with Yu Qingxian. Looking at her gaze towards that woman, it was actually somewhat different. It was as if these people were completely saved by that woman. She buried me once, she's a good person, Yu Qingxian said seriously. If Yu Qingxian were to say, Gu Wanqing, that woman, really resembled the female lead in a novel, gentle and strong, and decisive. Shi Xingyu was puzzled. What does it mean to bury her once? If she buried her, shouldn't that be considered bad? Gu Wanqing checked the condition of these people and confirmed that they were just malnourished and had minor frostbite. Only then did she breathe a sigh of relief. As for what these people said about two people, there should be a man and a woman. It was that man and woman who saved them. As for the man and woman, they may not be human, but zombies, they couldn't say it at all. How could zombies save people? But they heard the zombies roar with their own ears. Although the roar sounded weak, it was as if the zombie was whispering to the man next to it. Since the other party could understand the zombie's roar, they must also be zombies. But they said that two zombies saved them, who would believe that? Moreover, if they said the other party was a zombie, they might be hunted down. And what if those two people were not zombies? Wouldn't that be slandering them? However, only the people near the door heard the zombies groaning. It could also be a hallucination caused by hunger. So they glanced at each other and said it was a man and a woman. When Qingxing could tell they were lying at a glance, but Gu Wanqing seemed not to notice. She just nodded slightly and got up. She bowed to the crowd and apologized for not being able to respond to them in time. These people just looked at Gu Wanqing and didn't say much. They were originally family members of some technicians. They were supposed to be picked up. Even if it was difficult to leave, they should have arrived in a month. So after a month passed, the authorities still hadn't seen anyone. They knew there was a problem. Gu Wanqing became the leader of this mission again. As for those who intercepted the survivors' convoy, they were criminals before the apocalypse. So when they saw their convoy, they just robbed it. As for the officials who resisted inside, they were killed at the beginning. Later, some of these family members were also taken out and killed. As for the several young girls who were taken out, they were never brought back. Wen Qingxing couldn't bear to listen to these brutal acts, but Gu Wanqing still listened quietly. I'll go out and take a look at the car, Wen Qingxing said. Now they had dozens of survivors, so they needed a bus. Currently, Pei Yuan did not see any infected people among the crowd, so Wen Qingxing didn't have to worry about someone suddenly turning into a zombie. Gu Wanqing watched him leave and then withdrew her gaze. She looked at the people who had survived. Tell me, what compensation do you need? Speak boldly, I will help you fight for it, except for bringing your family members back to life, Gu Wanqing said. Now, no matter how much they apologized, it was useless. It was better to offer something practical. Only by comforting these people could the researchers upgrade their weapons better. This way, the things in her space could be taken out more effectively. Yu Qingxian and Shi Xingyu left the town. If they walked a hundred kilometers further, they would reach the cross sea bridge. Yu Qingxian had taken off her down jacket, and now she was only wearing a thin strap dress. It was sticking to her body in the cold wind. Hiss, it's so cold, Yu Qingxian suddenly stopped and couldn't help but say. This remark surprised Shi Xingyu. She could feel the cold? No wonder she wore a down jacket after it snowed. Can you feel the temperature? Shi Xingyu couldn't help asking. Clearly, he couldn't feel any temperature on her. Why could she feel cold? No, I'm just sighing. If a living person dressed like this, they would definitely freeze to death. Yu Qingxian waved her hand. She was sure she couldn't feel the cold. But if she stayed in such low temperatures all the time, her body would definitely be damaged. Otherwise, some zombies wouldn't have been frozen to death. Like those popsicle-like zombies. They were completely frozen to death. Even the virus was frozen to death. Yu Qingxian didn't want to become a sculpture. Then she continued to walk forward and finally arrived in H City the next morning, but the first thing she did was not to go see the cross sea bridge. Instead, she went to find a down jacket. She also found a jacket for Shixinjiu. However, after being beaten up by the zombie uncle last time, Yu Qingxian chose a short one for him this time. Shixinjiu felt that Yu Qingxian, this zombie, was really good at making trouble. Humans are busy escaping and won't be picky about clothes, and zombies can't feel temperature, let alone wear extra clothes. The clothes on the zombies are all left over from when they were human. Of course, many of the clothes on the zombies have been damaged and fallen off. Yu Qingxian changed into a better quality down jacket and patted it contentedly, feeling how soft it was. She had never worn this brand before. After all, it cost 7 or 8 thousand yuan. She felt it was not worth it, as she rarely went out and wouldn't be able to wear it many times. Now she could wear it for free. 
After changing her clothes, Yu Qingxian finally headed towards the cross sea bridge. The snow in H city was not thick, only reaching to the calves. But for H city, which rarely sees snow, this could be considered a once in a hundred years event. Not to mention the snow piling up to the calves. The south was like this, so Yu Qingxian naturally dared not imagine the situation in the north. But the north snows every year, so there should be many facilities to deal with it, right? Even if the snow is several meters deep, Yu Qingxian wouldn't be able to do anything about it. Yu Qingxian imagined herself shoveling snow and realized it would probably take 30 years. When she arrived at the Cross Sea Bridge, she found guards at the bridge. Not that she saw them, but she smelled them. The houses looked like solid walls of copper and iron, on both sides of the bridge. As for the bridge, there were fences. It was clear that they were intercepting passing vehicles. Yu Qingxian slapped her forehead at this point. Since this place was occupied by humans, then the eastern gardens and the northern imperial city must also be occupied by humans, right? Then what was the point of going there? It would be better to catch a few ducks, enclose an area, and just farm there. Shikxinjia looked at Yu Qingxian staring at the blockade post and was so angry that he almost crushed the binoculars in his hand. He found it somewhat amusing. If you can't go, then go somewhere else. If you really want to go, you can just kill people. Shikxinjia's words were always indifferent to humans. Yu Qingxian handed Shikxinjia a knife. These are official people. How can we just kill them? If we kill them and survivors want to seek help, no one will respond. Yu Qingxian paused here. She suddenly thought of something. First, if the people at this post were official, then it was impossible for them not to know that people passing through here would be intercepted. And those people might not necessarily pass through that town. How did those people know that there would be survivors passing through there? In addition, there were more survivors than just those, so why were some survivors able to pass through this place smoothly? The people who the authorities sent Gu Wanching to rescue must be important people. Did these people capture those important people and exchange them with the authorities? How did these criminals know that those people were important? It indicated that someone had checked the identities of these survivors. Where could they check the identities? Only at this post on the bridge. The survivors saw people in official uniforms and naturally wouldn't suspect them. Either these people had already betrayed the authorities, or they were imposters. But no matter which, these people were not worth keeping. Of course, if she could think of this, then Gu Wanqing should also know. You don't need to kill them, someone will take care of it, Yu Qingxian said. After saying this, Yu Qingxian found a place with a good view and observed the area safely. Shirxing Yu really didn't understand why Yu Qingxian would run away when he saw humans, but also loved to watch the excitement. However, Shirxing Yu didn't stop Yu Qingxian either. He wanted to see who the person Yu Qingxian mentioned would be. Sure enough, someone came at noon. A car, two people, and a dog. Gu Wanqing had been thinking about this issue all night. That is, how these criminals could accurately find the family members of the researchers. It shows that these people knew the news in advance. That's why they intercepted these people. They even dared to take action against the official personnel. Do they think they can do whatever they want just because it's the end of the world? Shirshin Yu looked at the woman in front of him and could confirm that the powerful force he had felt before came from her. The woman opened the car door, and a big black dog followed her out of the car. The zombies that had followed because of the car's noise were thrown off by the vines she swung from her hand. Before they could get up again, the vines instantly pierced their foreheads, smashing their brains. Dozens of zombies were killed in an instant. Yu Qingxian saw Gu Wanqing's actions and looked at Shirshin Yu with pride. This made Shirshin Yu speechless. They are humans. What's there to be proud of? She could kill 10 Yu Qingxians in an instant. What are you laughing at? With just one move, she could kill 10 of you, Shirshin Yu said what he was thinking. It's okay, I'm not going to provoke Gu Wanqing, Yu Qingxian said indifferently. Gu Wanqing is powerful, and she's not the only one who knows that. Although Gu Wanqing killed dozens of zombies in an instant, these zombies did not feel any fear because of the deaths of their kind. The remaining zombies still rushed towards Gu Wanqing. The snow is not deep now, so it doesn't have much impact on the zombies' movements. The people in the outpost heard the noise and opened the small window to look outside. When they saw the special license plate of the car, a hint of surprise flashed in their eyes. They had been discovered. But the newcomers were just a young girl and a dog, with a person sitting in the back seat who didn't seem to pose any threat. How could just two and a half people do anything to them? At first, someone asked Gu Wanqing what she was doing here. If she wanted to go to the island, it was better not to go for now, as there were many zombies there, and even aquatic zombies were coming ashore on the beach. But Gu Wanqing completely ignored these people's words and directly swung the vines in her hand. Obviously, Gu Wanqing's actions indicated her intentions. In just over 10 minutes, Gu Wanqing had taken care of the people in the outpost. 
She used the vines to wrap up the people and threw them under the bridge, where they were instantly torn apart by aquatic zombie creatures. Of course, she left two people alive to ask them why they did what they did. Although Yu Qing Xian could see what Gu Wanqing was doing with the telescope, she couldn't hear what Gu Wanqing was saying at all. She didn't have the ability to read lips. Yu Qing Xian's gaze had been fixed on Gu Wanqing, and suddenly she felt someone looking in her direction. Her gaze instantly turned to the off-road vehicle. She saw a man looking in her direction. This surprised Yu Qing Xian, and then she saw the man take out a long sniper rifle. Without thinking, she grabbed Shi Xingyu and pulled him back. But the man didn't shoot. It seemed like he just wanted to use the scope on the sniper rifle to see if there was anyone in this area. But was this man a little too sensitive? She hadn't even been looking at him, so how could he think there was someone in this area? Shi Xingyu was puzzled when he saw Yu Qing Xian suddenly pull him into the house. Don't look, someone is using a sniper rifle to watch our area. We need to move, Yu Qing Xian said, indeed, she loved to watch the excitement. But she wouldn't watch this kind of dangerous excitement. Yu Qing Xian picked up his backpack and suitcase and headed downstairs. There are people in this place, and that man will definitely tell Gu Wanqing about this. If Gu Wanqing really comes over, she and Shi Xingyu will definitely not be able to beat her. Just by looking at her movements, you can tell that she is really good at fighting. Although Shi Xingyu didn't know whether Yu Qing Xian's intuition was accurate, he still followed her and left. And Yu Qing Xian's idea was indeed correct. Gu Wanqing would know that there are people in this place. But it wasn't something Pei Yuan told him. But Gu Wanqing saw Pei Yuan aiming a sniper rifle at that place and knew that there must be someone there. People? Gu Wanqing asked. Zombies, Pei Yuan replied. Gu Wanqing was somewhat surprised to hear these two words. Pei Yuan's ability is to see if there are infected people in the crowd. Although Gu Wanqing didn't know what the world looked like in his eyes. But since it was a zombie, why didn't Pei Yuan take action? The color of one of the zombies is a bit off, and it's somewhat similar to you, indicating that the other party's level is not low, and it's not easy to snipe, Pei Yuan was telling the truth. Because he had spotted him when he took the sniper rifle. Even if his speed was fast, he couldn't snipe instantly. Gu Wanqing was somewhat surprised to hear Pei Yuan's words. If there are zombies in H city that are similar to her level, then these iron houses cannot stop that zombie. Why didn't that zombie attack? And there's another one with an unusual color? What's unusual about it? Gu Wanqing wiped the blood off her hands and then got into the car. She started the car as she asked. This place cannot be guarded by ordinary people. It needs to be guarded by people with abilities, otherwise, if something like this happens again, it would be inappropriate. This zombie has not eaten people, no, it has not eaten living things, Pei Yuan continued to explain. This statement startled Gu Wanqing. It is indeed the female corpse you buried, Pei Yuan's eyes were bright at this moment, as if he had seen something that interested him. Gu Wanqing was indeed shocked by Pei Yuan's words. Although she thought that the female corpse had disappeared, maybe it had turned into a zombie. But at that time, Pei Yuan didn't say a word. It made her think that it was just a tourist who had died outside because she had mistakenly entered her room, so she wanted to let her rest in peace. Who knew that she was actually a zombie? Since she was a zombie, why didn't that zombie attack them at the time, but chose to play dead directly? You didn't ask me either, Pei Yuan put away his long sniper rifle, speaking as if it were a matter of course. Gu Wanqing, she must be crazy to chat with Pei Yuan, who is also crazy. But anyway, she had to go and see for herself. She had never seen a zombie that doesn't eat people. Yu Qingxian crossed the street, crossed the wide avenue, and then crossed the checkpoint, and got on the bridge. How did you know they would go in that direction to find us? Shi sure Xingyu had seen the car go in the direction they were in before, and he admired this little zombie a bit. Whether she was strong or weak, Shi sure Xingyu still didn't understand. Intuition, Yu Qingxian said. Zombies in novels are diverse, and people around Gu Wanqing, who looks particularly like the female protagonist in zombie novels, should not be underestimated. Abilities are varied, and not just natural phenomena like wind, fire, thunder, and lightning. What if the other party could see at a glance that she was a zombie? After all, she had seen Gu Wanqing throw a person off the bus and that person quickly turned into a zombie. So this kind of thing is not impossible. Don't zombies have intuition? Shi sure Xingyu's red eyes showed a hint of doubt. Why wouldn't they? You said before that you have the intuition of a strong person, then I have the intuition of a novelist, can't I? Yu Qingxian retorted. Sure Xingyu. What about the novelist? In fact, Xingyu didn't understand many of Yu Qingxian's words. But Xingyu didn't ask much. The damaged vehicles on the bridge were moved to the side, leaving a two-meter wide passage in the middle. Of course, Yu Qingxian didn't walk on this cleared path, but went to the adjacent one filled with zombies and vehicles. 
The 20 meter wide road was packed with vehicles, and although there were gaps between them, they were also filled with zombies. However, these zombies couldn't cross the cars, which were almost as tall as them. But Yu Qingxian didn't walk on the ground, instead stepping on the car roofs and jumping directly over. At first, Yu Qingxian was indeed cautious when jumping over. But later, she started to play around. Red is a bomb, white is walkable, black is step back. Yu Qingxian even made rules for herself. Xing Yu felt that Yu Qingxian was just idle. But she was indeed idle, otherwise she wouldn't be traveling everywhere. Although he didn't understand what traveling meant, he probably knew that she wanted to go around and see things. She handed her suitcase to Xing Yu to carry, while she bounced around on the car roof. The nearby zombies stared blankly as Yu Qingxian jumped over their heads. Xing Yu watched as Yu Qingxian stepped on the black spots and actually took a step back, shaking his head helplessly and continuing to walk forward. He didn't walk on the car roof, but on the road surface. There was a sidewalk on the side, not wide, but indeed free of cars. Yu Qingxian and Xing Yu didn't find the scenery appealing. The sea didn't look like a lake, completely frozen, and the sea was still rough. Occasionally, a few zombie fish and mutant fish fought in the water. Then he saw a zombie being thrown down from beside him. Then the zombie struggled in the water for a moment before being devoured by the sea creatures. Oh, once you fall, it's over. The creatures in the sea even eat zombies, Yu Qingxian said. Originally, she just wanted to jump on the car roof, but the zombie grabbed her clothes, causing her to fall from the car roof. Although it didn't hurt, if she fell from the car roof, the game would be over. She was just getting into it. Angry, Yu Qingxian dragged the zombie over the fence, onto the sidewalk, and pushed it down. At this point, Xing Yu knew that Yu Qingxian was not only unkind to humans but also to her own kind. She just threw the zombie away. Yu Qingxian came to the sea crossing bridge to watch the sunrise. Just looking at the sky, she didn't know when it would clear up. So she chose a decent car as a temporary residence. She wanted to wait here for the sunrise. When she saw her get into the car, Xing Yu put the suitcase in the car and then spoke, I'm going to find the crystal core. Yu Qingxian pulled out a book from somewhere and, upon hearing Xing Yu's words, waved at him, indicating that he could go. But as soon as Xing Yu left, he never returned. When Yu Qingxian came to her senses, it was already dark outside. She had to climb out of the car and look around. At this point, she was near the middle of the sea crossing bridge. It was more than 10 kilometers from the shore. This sea crossing bridge is the longest in the world. Should she go look for Xing Yu? Yu Qingxian gave up after just a second of thought. It's troublesome to find either people or zombies. Moreover, if Xing Yu couldn't handle it himself, her going would just be sending food. It's not necessary. Yu Qingxian didn't return to the car, but climbed onto the car roof and looked up at the sky. She seemed to see stars. Of course, it could also be her low blood sugar making her eyes blurry. She squinted at the sky. By the time Xing Yu returned, he could see Yu Qingxian sitting on the car roof from a distance. She was like a statue, gazing at the sky. Sure Xing Yu placed a bag next to Yu Qingxian, and the sound of the bag hitting the roof echoed like a stone. But Yu Qingxian did not look down. What are you looking at? Sure Xing Yu asked. I'm looking at the stars, Yu Qingxian replied. Hearing this, Sure Xing Yu also looked up at the sky, but did not see any stars. Although the clouds had indeed dispersed somewhat, where were the stars? Where? Sure Xing Yu couldn't see the stars, so naturally he couldn't help but ask. It was only then that Yu Qingxian realized that Sure Xing Yu didn't understand many things she said, but they could still communicate smoothly. Can you speak the language of humans? Yu Qingxian suddenly thought of something. That is, advanced zombies can speak human language. If you want to blend in with humans, of course you can learn their language, but it's not necessary, Sure Xing Yu explained. Upon hearing Sure Xing Yu's words, Yu Qingxian kept staring at him. It turns out that advanced zombies can really speak human language. Speaking human language is not to blend in with humans, but just to make humans accept us better, Sure Xing Yu continued. In the eyes of humans, zombies are low level creatures that act on instinct alone. But in the eyes of advanced zombies like them, humans are the low level ones. After all, they are just food. So language has become a means for you to prey on humans? Yu Qingxian couldn't help but ask. After all, when she read zombie novels before, she never thought that the reason advanced zombies could speak human language was to approach and prey on humans. If you want to prey on prey, of course you will try every means possible. This is probably the instinct I left behind when I was human, Shi Xing Yu answered honestly. Although he didn't really understand the meaning of some words, his intuition as a former human told him how to respond. This is something they are born with as zombies. Zombies are not social creatures, the stronger the zombie, the stronger their territorial awareness. And zombies have no emotions, they only think about becoming stronger. 
Just like now, the reason Shi Xingyu followed Yu Qingxian was not only out of curiosity about her, but also because in his eyes, she was indeed very powerful. At least by staying by Yu Qingxian's side, if he encountered zombies of a higher level, he could also save his own life. Listening to Shi Xingyu's words, Yu Qingxian did not ask anything further. She just picked up the small bag that Shi Xingyu had placed next to her, and she could feel energy surging from it. It should be a crystal core. But this kind of thing is not only important for ability users, but also for zombies. Giving her this bag, she probably won't have to kill many zombies. No wonder she was out all night. However, Yu Qingxian still handed the crystal core in her hand to Shi Xingyu. You keep this, I don't need this kind of thing, but it's good for playing chess. Yu Qingxian took out one to play with in her hand, and gave the rest of the bag of crystal cores back to Shi Xingyu. This surprised Shi Xingyu. Although zombies have turned into monsters, they still need to feed. If there is no food, they also need to absorb the energy in the crystal core. This is also the reason why many advanced zombies kill their own kind. Naturally, in order to avoid attracting human attention, they need to absorb more crystal cores. However, these ordinary crystal cores have a lower effect on higher level zombies. Naturally, they need to find crystal cores of the same level. But zombies of the same level are not easy to kill. So they need to find ability users among humans. Even ordinary ability users have very rare crystal cores in their bodies for advanced zombies. Like the previous zombie that mutated with power, obviously lacking in intelligence, it was able to obtain such powerful strength because of those two ability users. It's really unfair. Such a stupid thing could kill two ability users. And he had to follow Yu Qingxian, this leisurely zombie, to watch the sunrise with Lao Shizi on this bridge. It was a snowy day, all covered in dark clouds, how could you see the sunrise? He rarely kindly brought her some crystal nuclei, only to be told to use them for playing chess. Forget it, let's starve. Shi Xingyu reached out and took the bag of crystal nuclei, all of which he shook into his mouth. It sounded crispy, like eating fried peanuts. You sound like a mouse, Yu Qingxian couldn't help but comment upon hearing that sound. Shi Xingyu, can't you say something nice? What do you mean by sounding like a mouse? Just then, a mutant mouse happened to pass by, seemingly also eating something, and its sound was just like Shi Xingyu chewing on crystal nuclei. Upon hearing this sound, Yu Qingxian couldn't help but laugh and pat the roof of the car. This infuriated Shi Xingyu, who slapped the mouse into the sea. Then he turned around and cleaned up the zombies again. Yu Qingxian didn't care about him. Teenage rebellion is normal. Yu Qingxian looked at the gradually whitening sky, even tinged with golden light. This immediately made Yu Qingxian flip off the car roof, open the trunk, and take out the camera. She looked towards the distant sea, unable to vent her anger by killing zombies, and started throwing cars at Shi Xingyu, immediately waving at him. Come over, the sun is coming out. Yu Qingxian still had a good temper. Shi Xingyu looked at her slightly smiling face and could only throw the car in his hand and walk towards her. He didn't know what was so good about a broken sun. Anyway, he didn't like the sun. But when he walked to the car where Yu Qingxian was sitting, his gaze turned towards the eastern sea. In fact, between the sky and the sea, there appeared a golden horizontal line. It was as if someone had drawn a line of light in the darkness with a colored pen. Although the clouds had not completely dispersed, they could not block the sun rising from the sea. Yu Qingxian sat on the car roof, holding the camera, taking pictures of the sea in the distance. After taking a few shots, Yu Qingxian put the camera aside and earnestly watched the sunrise. Although the sun rises every day, whether it's cloudy or sunny, rainy or snowy, it's always there. Yu Qingxian had lived for 28 years and had never really watched a sunrise. Of course, she had seen it many times in other people's travel videos. Sometimes she envied others for being able to travel, but sometimes it made her fearful, because her parents died while traveling. This made Yu Qingxian even more unwilling to go out. Looking at this beautiful sunrise, she rarely resisted the two words daylight. It's beautiful, isn't it? Yu Qingxian asked Shi Xingyu. Shi Xingyu squinted and couldn't help but say, it's dazzling. Here, I prepared a prop. Yu Qingxian rarely praised Shi Xingyu's words and handed him a pair of sunglasses. Before Shi Xingyu could take the sunglasses, Yu Qingxian had already put them on. Because after becoming a zombie, her vision had indeed improved a lot, so she was really sensitive to light. The sunrise was beautiful, but indeed too dazzling. Looking at Yu Qingxian's leisurely appearance, Shi Xingyu, who was somewhat puzzled, took the sunglasses and put them on, then looked towards the direction of the rising sun. Well, it's just average. Yu Qingxian had watched the sunrise on the cross sea bridge, so this trip was a perfect ending. Although the sun had risen, the sunlight was cold. There was no trace of melting snow on the ground. Yu Qingxian packed up and bounced towards the shore with her suitcase. 
Shi Xingyu simply couldn't understand why Yu Qingxian took the risk to come to this bridge just to watch the sunrise. Was it really necessary? She was really the most boring zombie in the world, and he was even more boring for following her. Shi Xingyu felt like he had scolded himself. Yu Qingxian was in a good mood. She took out a map and drew a check mark on the cross sea bridge. Then she headed towards the garden to the east. Just going to visit the Imperial Gardens and the Royal City, do I need to change into ancient clothing? Forget it, no need to wear it now. What if I encounter any danger and end up dirtying the dress? It's not appropriate. Let's just add wearing traditional Chinese clothing to the list of things to do for now. With this decision made, Yu Qingxian naturally hurried down the bridge. The guard at this post was killed by Gu Wanqing yesterday. New people will be sent in a few days. Maybe there will be people with special abilities. With her small frame, she's not even enough for others to warm up. Therefore, Yu Qingxian's fast-paced figure left a somewhat awkward impression on Shi Xingyu. Yu Qingxian, who was sneaking around and looking everywhere, made Shi Xingyu feel ridiculous. She had only seen people afraid of zombies, but it was the first time she had seen zombies afraid of people. Her fear of people was not entirely due to being a zombie, but possibly related to when she was still human. If she was so afraid of people, does that mean she would never leave the house when she was human? Why are you in such a hurry? Shi Xingyu followed. This place is an important border area, so the authorities will naturally send strong people to guard it. Maybe there will be people with special abilities. Yu Qingxian explained. If she waited a few more days, she wouldn't be able to come down from the bridge. She would have to live on the bridge for the rest of her life. Of course, this is impossible. This place will probably be cleared out in a few years. This bridge is quite important. Otherwise, there wouldn't have been troops stationed here shortly after the apocalypse. But after this incident, they should increase the number of people in the team. They might even take back the entire city of H. In any case, H city used to be a very important city. Yu Qingxian dragged her suitcase through the guard post and suddenly looked back at the cross sea bridge. I hope I have the chance to come back. If I can, I must see the clean and beautiful cross sea bridge. Yu Qingxian suddenly spoke, although it seemed like she was speaking to Shi Xingyu behind her. But Shi Xingyu knew that Yu Qingxian was not talking to herself, but to humans. As a zombie, she actually trusted humans so much that she believed humans could defeat zombies. Excuse me, zombie, have you chosen the wrong side? But if Yu Qingxian didn't think so, Shi Xingyu would be surprised. But in the end, it was Yu Qingxian, the zombie, who was strange. Yu Qingxian looked at the rising sun and didn't feel tired from the sunlight, so she didn't need to use an umbrella. They walked east from this place, along the coastal road. As the coastal road approached the sea, they could see some waterborne zombie creatures crawling ashore. They all looked strange. Of course, among these waterborne creatures that dared to come ashore, there were not only zombie creatures, but also some mutated waterborne creatures. These creatures even eat zombies, and they are not picky eaters at all. But then again, many fish and waterborne creatures naturally feed on carrion. Maybe zombies are more to their taste. I'm good at cooking, do you want to try? Yu Qingxian suddenly said something that made Shi Xingyu look at her. No need, Shi Xingyu refused. Zombies only eat live creatures, they eat hot food. I can make it with live creatures, hot and fresh. At this moment, Yu Qingxian seemed to have telepathy and gave a thumbs up to Shi Xingyu. Apart from writing novels, eating snacks, watching various books and travel videos, cooking was her favorite thing to do when she was alive. Of course, she always felt like she was wasting food. She could never finish the meal by herself. She promised to pay attention to the portion next time. But the next time she made it, the portion was still more than enough for one person. Perhaps it was not that she didn't pay attention to the portion, but deep down, she also longed for someone to accompany her for a meal. When mom and dad were still around, Shi Xingyu looked at Yu Qingxian's rare bright eyes and did not refuse her. But he still wanted to tell Yu Qingxian that zombies eat lively creatures, not hot food made from living creatures. After all, zombies need to absorb fresh flesh and blood to enhance their vitality. Flesh that has lost its vitality is like rotten meat to zombies. Adding seasoning will only make it harder to eat. But seeing Yu Qingxian looking like she was about to show off her skills, Shi Xingyu had to accept it. Of course, when it came to cooking a big meal, Yu Qingxian couldn't stand the taste of cooked meat and died halfway through. Yu Qingxian also didn't expect that the moment the cooked meat was heated, it would give her the nauseating smell of rotten flesh. You actually agreed to eat this kind of thing, you're really something, Yu Qingxian once again gave Shi Xingyu a thumbs up. She wouldn't eat it herself, even though she was already dead. You made me eat it, didn't you? Shi Xingyu retorted, he had already said he wouldn't eat it. After the kitchen drama, Yu Qingxian continued eastward with her suitcase, and this time she didn't need to tie herself to Shi Xingyu with a rope, 
as he had already taken the initiative to help her pull the suitcase. In Yu Qingxian's eyes, Shi Xingyu was becoming more and more competent. It wouldn't be good if he starved to death following her. Hey, do you eat live chickens and ducks? Yu Qingxian, sitting on the suitcase, couldn't help but ask Shi Xingyu. As long as it's a living creature, I'll eat it, Shi Xingyu replied. He wasn't picky in this regard. Of course, humans are the best to eat. Then let's figure out a way to raise a few ducks, in case you faint from hunger on the side of the road, I won't be able to carry you, and I'll have to leave you behind, Yu Qingxian said as she flipped through the map. There should be farms around the outskirts of this big city. Although most of them have turned into zombie ducks, there should still be some alive, turned into mutant ducks. Yu Qingxian's words carried concern, yet also felt indifferent. They had been together for almost a month, and if he fainted, she would actually leave him behind. Shi Xingyu felt that this zombie, possessing human consciousness and memories, was more ruthless than he, a genuine zombie. Don't worry about me fainting from hunger, but have you really not eaten any flesh or blood since becoming a zombie? Shi Xingyu thought of this question. Many zombies would weaken if they didn't eat any human flesh for a month or two. Of course, they wouldn't die, but some zombies would gradually decay. No, I'm not interested in eating people, Yu Qingxian turned the page of the map. Recently, she had acquired a lot of new equipment, such as a detailed map of the entire country. Normally, this kind of thing was not accessible to the general public. Of course, if she hadn't come to H-City, she wouldn't have gotten it. It detailed all the places in the country, and such a thing naturally couldn't be mass-produced. Therefore, it was only available in the exhibition hall. A few pages were played at random every day, and the speed was quite fast. Yu Qingxian had seen this thing in someone else's video before. No one had gone to get it. Now it had become cheap for her. But zombies also need to eat. If you don't eat, you'll starve to death, Shi Xingyu reminded her. Turning into a zombie didn't mean one wouldn't age or die. Although they were much stronger than humans, they weren't always invincible. Then we'll talk about it when I'm hungry. If I really feel painful from starving, then I'll take action, Yu Qingxian said nonchalantly. After all, she had wanted to become a zombie in order to give up interacting with humans. It wasn't that she disliked humans, she just didn't know how to interact with them. Even though she knew there were many kind and wonderful people among humans, Yu Qingxian just couldn't take that step. However, there should be people like me in the world. If these humans are still alive, can they really overcome psychological difficulties and get along well with humans? If they can get along well with humans, that would be great. Don't ever become a zombie. Zombies. Don't look good. What do you mean by take action? How do you plan to take action? Shi Xingyu looked back at Yu Qingxian, who was sitting on the suitcase with some confusion. She had no fighting power, would run away at the sight of people, and was too kind-hearted. Shi Xingyu had considered many possibilities, but she had never thought that Yu Qingxian would pull out a gun and point it at her own temple. It turned out that when she said take action, she didn't mean towards humans, but towards herself. Clearly, the one who had been feeding on humans was this zombie holding a gun to her own head. You would rather commit suicide than harm humans? I thought you didn't care about humans that much, Shi Xingyu said. I just don't care about those who harm their own kind, but I used to be human too. I don't want to become a threat to my own kind. That would make me just like the people I dislike. I don't want to become like that, Yu Qingxian earnestly replied to Shi Xingyu's question. Of course, she didn't think that this zombie, Shi Xingyu, could understand her words. After all, how could a zombie understand the meaning of fellow? Shi Xingyu indeed did not understand what Yu Qingxian said nor did she understand Yu Qingxian's actions. She would rather commit suicide than harm humans. But, when humans slaughter animals, they don't commit suicide either, Shi Xingyu said, puzzled. So I didn't stop you from eating humans, did I? Yu Qingxian looked up at Shi Xingyu. She had always understood this principle. Yu Qingxian naturally couldn't force everyone to think like her, nor could she force zombies not to eat humans. Although Shi Xingyu truly couldn't understand Yu Qingxian's thoughts, she now knew. If one day she really had to harm an unarmed human, she would really raise the gun and end herself. So when she had the gun before, was it for this? Then why did she bring so many bullets? Ten would have been enough. So you have so many bullets, are you planning to take me out too? Shi Xingyu asked again. Since she could harm herself, she definitely wouldn't feel any pressure to harm other zombies. Don't worry, they're not for you, they're for those kind of people to be taken out. Yu Qingxian confirmed the location of the goose farm and closed the map book. After saying this, she pointed in a direction. There's a big duck farm over there. If we're lucky, there should still be some alive. If we're not, I'll cook for you, Yu Qingxian said. Shi Xingyu felt like he might as well starve to death. Hey, 
Even if a level 4 zombie didn't eat for 3 years, it wouldn't starve to death. He had really become an idiot after spending so much time with Yu Qingxian. Xie Xingyu started to head in the direction Yu Qingxian had pointed, and Yu Qingxian thought of another question. That is, is it possible for zombies to develop feelings for humans and not be able to harm them? After all, humans have trained animals as pets. So can zombies become human pets? Or can humans become zombie pets? Yu Qingxian was curious and asked this question. This made Xie Xingyu feel like she was being unrealistic. After asking, Yu Qingxian also felt that her question was indeed somewhat ridiculous. She didn't even believe that zombies wouldn't eat humans, so why would anyone else believe that zombies wouldn't eat humans? Therefore, if I were human, you would eat them, Xie Xingyu answered before Yu Qingxian could finish. Obviously, he knew what Yu Qingxian wanted to ask. That is, if she were human, would he eat her? The answer was yes, he had no attachment to Yu Qingxian. The zombies won't have such feelings. If you want humans and zombies to live in peace, Xie Xingyu thinks that Yu Qingxian should give up on this idea. Of course, Yu Qingxian knows this, but there are cases of zombies and humans getting along well in zombie novels. She's just asking a question. If someone really wants to get along with zombies, she would definitely be the first to go up and wake them up. Let this person not have any delusions. Even a zombie with human consciousness like herself doesn't think there's anything wrong with zombies eating people. Let alone the zombies themselves. Just like she has been with Xie Xingyu for a month now, but if she were a human now, he would still hesitate to bite her. This is the way of survival for zombies. In the end times, it's a struggle between zombies and humans. It's impossible to live in peace, unless one side defeats the other. If humans win, then the rulers of the earth will still be humans. If the zombies win, then the rulers of the earth will be animals and plants. Without humans, the food source for zombies will be instantly cut off. It can be said that this is probably the Earth's self-cleaning, just like the dinosaur era, or even earlier. But, I bet humans will win, Yu Qingxian said again. Xie Xingyu felt a little helpless. If humans win, then all these zombies, including Yu Qingxian, will die. But thinking of Yu Qingxian's attitude, Xie Xingyu felt despair again. Walking towards the duck farm, they had to pass through most of the H-City area. If it were two living people, they would definitely not dare to do this, but Xie Xingyu was dragging a suitcase, and Yu Qingxian was sitting leisurely on the suitcase. After walking for 20 minutes, Yu Qingxian suddenly felt the ground shaking slightly. Xie Xingyu also stopped. Yu Qingxian turned her head to look behind her. Seeing the surrounding zombies starting to move aside, she was puzzled. Is there something extraordinary coming? It wasn't until a zombie over 5 meters tall turned from behind the building that Yu Qingxian got off the suitcase directly. This zombie had a big head, but that wasn't the scariest part. It was its body, as if many zombies were stuck together to make it so big. It's no wonder the surrounding zombies all turned and ran. Any zombie touched by it would be instantly devoured. Only in a densely populated city like H-City would such a strange zombie be bred. And this zombie was obviously not an ordinary one. Yu Qingxian stared at the zombie. She found that although it was devouring zombies all over its body, there were indeed many zombies stuck to its body. It's just that these zombies' heads were not devoured and they were even trying to climb out. This immediately made Yu Qingxian understand that this zombie's limit for devouring should be reached soon. Otherwise, these zombies' heads wouldn't be exposed, let alone have a chance to climb out. Seeing this kind of zombie, Xie Xingyu knew it was not good to fight it head-on, unless it was a long-range attack. So he grabbed the suitcase and ran elsewhere. Yu Qingxian, on the other hand, took out her camera and started taking random shots of the zombie. Devouring evolution is also one of the ways for zombies to evolve. It's just that this method is too primitive and doesn't look elegant. Like a wild beast. Yu Qingxian prefers Xie Xingyu's way. At least it looks more in line with human eating aesthetics. But at this moment, Xie Xingyu, who was praised by Yu Qingxian, didn't feel any sense of honor at all. He turned around and saw Yu Qingxian taking pictures with a camera, and he was furious for a moment. Are you here for sightseeing? Of course, as soon as he said that, Xie Xingyu regretted it. Sure enough, Yu Qingxian nodded, yes, I've said it before, I'm here for sightseeing. Sightseeing can be perfect, or it can be full of surprises. But no matter what, Yu Qingxian will face it calmly. Of course, when it comes to playing dead on the ground, she wouldn't hesitate for a second. After Yu Qingxian took the photo, she jumped down from the luggage compartment. Suddenly weightless, Xie Xingyu staggered a few steps. When he turned around, he saw Yu Qingxian walking towards the large zombie. What level of zombie is this? It should have a crystal nucleus. If you get the crystal nucleus of this zombie, it should be more useful than ordinary crystals, Yu Qingxian said. First, this zombie can devour other zombies, so it can also devour humans. 
and it looks like a very difficult type of zombie to deal with. If it really digests these zombies, it will probably become even more difficult to deal with. And judging by its appearance, it should be close to its limit in terms of the number of zombies it has devoured. This is a good opportunity. Sure Xingyu never expected that Yu Qingxian was doing this for herself. This zombie is only a level 3 zombie, although its abilities are not strong at the moment, it will indeed become more troublesome after devouring. It is not a long-range attacking zombie, although it does have special abilities. But if it is forcibly devoured by this zombie, he will waste half of his strength struggling. Most importantly, is Yu Qingxian underestimating this zombie? Although it looks cumbersome now, it has already devoured countless zombies. Yu Qingxian took out a pistol from her backpack and shot the zombie in the face. Then she turned to Shi Xingyu and said, lead it to where there are more zombies, the more the better. Shi Xingyu thought Yu Qingxian was crazy, but he was also crazy for actually listening to Yu Qingxian. This way, Shi Xingyu pointed in a direction for Yu Qingxian. After confirming the direction, Yu Qingxian said many harsh words to the zombie. The zombie was immediately attracted to Yu Qingxian and started moving towards her. But for some reason, when the zombie saw Yu Qingxian and Shi Xingyu, it turned and ran away. Yu Qingxian? It's afraid of you, Yu Qingxian said. Indeed, in the world of zombies, the powerful can do whatever they want. Shi Xingyu looked at Yu Qingxian with a face full of admiration, not knowing how to explain. She had driven the zombie away with a few harsh words. Protect your luggage, I'll drive the zombie towards that place, you find a place to hide first, Shi Xingyu now roughly understood what Yu Qingxian wanted to do. He handed the luggage to Yu Qingxian and then instantly shot away. Yu Qingxian watched as Shi Xingyu disappeared in an instant and thought, indeed, the capable should do more work, while the useless just stroll around. Fortunately, she was the useless one. Otherwise, she would have to go fight. Yu Qingxian went to the next street. There were more zombies in that direction. Occasionally, she could still see the tall zombie between the buildings. As for Shi Xingyu, she did not see him. But Yu Qingxian was not worried about his safety. In any case, no matter which one she killed, it wouldn't be too much of a loss for Yu Qingxian. It's just that if the old cow dies, she will have to drag the luggage and walk on her own. But she had planned to travel like this from the beginning. Just to return to the starting point, Yu Qingxian saw ahead, there was a square, and the square was densely packed with zombies. It's unclear whether they gathered here when they were alive or after they turned into zombies. In any case, the snow on the ground of the square had already been trampled by the zombies. Yu Qingxian looked at so many zombies and went to the nearby building. She took out her camera and took a few shots. Why didn't she think of taking pictures of the zombie tide before? Video recording would also work. Meanwhile, the zombie was being driven by Shi Xingyu towards the square. The closer it got, the more zombies stuck to it. And where it passed, it left behind the remains of zombies. These remains were all undigested. Obviously, Yu Qingxian's idea is correct. It's just that this zombie had bad luck. When it encountered Yu Qingxian, it was already full and then got scolded by Yu Qingxian, so it panicked and fled. As a result, it attracted even more zombies and eventually collapsed. Yu Qingxian did not participate in the battle between Shi Xingyu and the zombie, so she did not know how they fought. In short, half an hour later, when Shi Xingyu returned, he was very clean and holding a crystal nucleus that was much larger than usual. It was almost as big as Yu Qingxian's palm and was flowing with beautiful colors inside. No matter how Yu Qingxian looked at it, she couldn't imagine that such an ugly creature like a zombie could have such a beautiful thing in its brain. However, when she saw Shi Xingyu trying to give her the crystal nucleus, she still refused. I don't need this, you keep it. How can a zombie that Shi Xingyu killed have the crystal nucleus? It should belong to Shi Xingyu. But Shi Xingyu did not put it away, but directly stuffed it into Yu Qingxian's backpack. It's heavy, Yu Qingxian complained. At most two pounds, it won't kill you. Shi Xingyu looked at Yu Qingxian, who was almost lying on the ground, feeling speechless. This crystal nucleus was much lighter than the camera she had hanging around her neck. The camera didn't weigh her down, but this crystal nucleus could. However, he did not expect that this crystal nucleus actually had attributes. Whether it was a human or a zombie, as long as they fused with this crystal nucleus, there was an 80% chance of awakening special abilities. He already had special abilities, so absorbing this crystal nucleus rashly would be a waste. He couldn't let himself advance all at once, so he might as well keep it and wait until this little waste felt that he should have some ability before using it. After all, a crystal nucleus with attributes was not easy to find. Yu Qingxian also knew that this crystal nucleus should be very rare, otherwise Shi Xingyu would not have let her carry it. Forget it, she would just carry it. She wouldn't use it now, and maybe she would give it to a kind and sensible child in the future. 
Shi Xingyu looked at Yu Qingxian's rolling eyes and knew what she was thinking. I'm doing this for your own good, Shi Xingyu said helplessly. Well, thank you then, Yu Qingxian thanked Shi Xingyu. Clearly, she was a child who was more than 10 years younger than herself, but she spoke to her like an elder. You know, that's enough. Is there anything else to do? If not, let's go, Shi Xingyu said. Yu Qingxian immediately stood up straight at his words. No, let's go. After speaking, she got on her beloved suitcase again. Shi Xingyu felt that he had been used. Sure enough, Yu Qingxian, this zombie, had the heart of a human. In any case, she wanted to reduce trouble for humans. If that zombie really digested all the zombies in its body, it would indeed be difficult to kill. If he killed that zombie, it would be eliminating a potential threat to humans. If he died, it would also eliminate a big zombie. She was really a cunning little zombie. Let's go, Shi Xingyu grabbed the suitcase and walked away. Great. Off to the duck farm. Yu Qingxian raised her hand and gave orders. After they left, the dead zombie turned into a pile of slime, constantly corroding the surrounding zombies and melting their flesh into a pile of foul-smelling blood. When Wen Chang arrived in H City, it was already several days later. Qinan looked at the city in front of him. The snow had already melted slightly, but it seemed that there would be another heavy snowfall in a few days. Even bigger than this one. Qinan and Wen Chang were getting along better now. Previously, because of the civilian survivor base, Qinan couldn't leave. But after he brought back so many medicines, he contacted the official base and exchanged those medicines to allow the survivors of the civilian survivor base to enter the official base. Of course, it was the officials who escorted them. The survivors of the civilian base naturally wanted to go to the main base, especially the official main base. That was definitely secure. In addition, these survivors could see that Qinan stayed in this place because he was concerned about their safety. They were a small base, with only one or two thousand people. Therefore, they naturally wanted to go to the main base, to take responsibility for themselves and to give Qinan freedom. A powerful person like Qinan could go anywhere. Are you sure that person will come to H City? There are many zombies in this place. Qinan's car stopped on the side of the road and did not move forward. Going further would enter the city area. This large city already had a large population, and there would be many zombies. Just the survivors of one city would be enough to establish a survivor base. Moreover, this place was connected to a cross-sea bridge, so there must be officials guarding this place. It would probably take several years to clear the entire city of zombies. Not sure, I guess he should come to this place, when Chang said, then pushed open the car door and got out of the car. If she was not mistaken, that small zombie would definitely travel to all the famous scenic spots. And this cross-sea bridge was a place where many people would come to take photos. Of course, she could also be wrong. Just a few days ago, the people from their official base found a warning sign in City J, with dangerous symbols drawn on it. Although it looked like a child's graffiti, it could barely be seen that it was indeed a dangerous sign. After checking the base's ability users, it was found that two teams of ability users went to City J and never returned. In other words, those two teams were likely to have perished in City J. If even ability users could die in there, what kind of people could hang such a large warning sign on the roof of City J? Xinan and Wen Chang combined the clues they had obtained, and could confirm that the person who left the warning sign was the person they were looking for. However, Wen Chang did not tell Xinan that it was not a person, but a zombie. But speaking of it, that small zombie would protect humans, so it could be considered half-human. She not only went to the hot spring scenic area, but also went to the ancient city of City J so she would definitely come to the cross sea bridge in H city. But when Chang was not sure if that small zombie had been there or not, the system currently had no way to track the other party's whereabouts, so they could only proceed according to their own thoughts. Xinan watched when Chang get out of the car, then turned to look at the car behind him. Originally, his team now only had five people. After all, running across the country, there would definitely be people who were unwilling. Staying in the base and joining other teams of ability users was the same. There was no need to wander around everywhere. What if they died outside? And the three people following Qinan and Wen Chang naturally had a close relationship with Qinan. Naturally, they would follow. As for Wen Chang, this young girl also had strong combat power. Although leaving the base was her idea, in any case, the three of them had cooperated in battle with her. They had also entrusted their lives to this young girl. In any case, she was trustworthy. Yu Qingxian was currently catching ducks. Naturally, she did not expect that the little freak would actually come to H City. At this time, she watched as the zombies in the duckyard were directly crushed by a machine she didn't know what it was. Shi Xingyu squatted on the wall, watching Yu Qingxian crush those zombie ducks like crazy, and there was nothing surprising about it. After all, 
These ducks had turned into zombie ducks and were also cannibalistic. As soon as he saw that all the ducks in this duck farm had turned into zombie ducks, he knew that Yu Qingxian would definitely not sit still. Shi Xingyu also had no intention of stopping her. After all, in his eyes, zombie ducks were just very low-level zombies. The mutated ducks were probably already filled with wildness and flown away. Even if they hadn't flown away, they would have been eaten by those zombie ducks. After Yu Qingxian and the others stopped the machine, they realized that the machine was probably used to harvest corn. This duck farm should have been fed with pure grains. And with such a large scale, the business before the end of the world should have been very good. Yu Qingxian looked at the zombie ducks that had been crushed into pancakes by her, feeling a little embarrassed. Then she went into the house where someone lived and found that it was an elderly couple who had turned into zombies. Yu Qingxian stood at the door, looking at the two zombies inside, and said, Excuse me. After saying this, she went into the house. She looked like a guest who had come to visit. Shi Xingyu, who was squatting on the wall, saw that Yu Qingxian had really gone into the house, so he stood up. He looked around and made sure there was no danger before jumping off the wall. When Shi Xingyu entered the house, he found that Yu Qingxian had already started brewing tea with the host's tea set. As for the two zombie hosts, they were wandering around in the house and showed no intention of driving Yu Qingxian away. Yu Qingxian's brewing of tea was just a process. Without electricity, the electric kettle could not be used. But Yu Qingxian went through all the steps anyway. Then she poured two cups of tea and placed them on the table before standing up. Shi Xingyu looked at Yu Qingxian's serious expression and thought she was going to do something. As a result, Yu Qingxian bowed to the two zombies and said, I'm sorry, I crushed all the ducks you raised. After saying this, she pointed to the two cups of tea on the table and continued, So I brewed two cups of tea for you as an apology. After saying this, Yu Qingxian pulled Shi Xingyu out of the room and then locked the door. She locked it directly. Shi Xingyu looked at the door, which was tied up with various things by her, and looked at Yu Qingxian with some speechlessness. One minute ago, you were apologizing to others. One minute later, you locked them in this room directly. There's no other way. I can't kill them, but I can't let them run out and eat people. This is the best way. Yu Qingxian looked at Shi Xingyu's speechless expression and knew what he was going to say. Shi Xingyu also thought that this was indeed the best way. But this kind of duck farm generally wouldn't have anyone coming. Even if the door wasn't sealed, there wouldn't be any problem. Yu Qingxian looked at the closed door, originally intending to catch a few ducks. But now she could only return empty-handed. Fortunately, Shi Xingyu was not starving at the moment, so she didn't have to worry too much. After leaving the duck farm, Yu Qingxian and the others continued eastward. However, Yu Qingxian never expected that she had been walking for a month and would still run into that little freak. Yu Qingxian saw two cars from a distance, one of which she had seen before. It was the car driven by that man. And that little freak had some connection with that man. Now that man's car appeared in this place, the reason must not be simple. What if the little freak instigated it? So Yu Qingxian immediately called Shi Xingyu to hide. However, Yu Qingxian did not know that as long as she entered a range of 3 kilometers, her whereabouts would be instantly under Wen Chang's control. So when the system reminded her that it had found the whereabouts of the little zombie, it made Wen Chang so happy that he jumped up from his seat. She didn't expect that she had really found it. But there was a level 4 zombie next to the little zombie. What's wrong? Xinan asked with some confusion when he saw Wen Chang looking so excited. Wen Chang and Xinan originally had the same goal, which was to find that little zombie. Now they were considered partners. She didn't need to hide it from Xinan. I found the trace of the person you're looking for, Wen Chang said. After saying this, she added, but I didn't tell you before, in fact, that person is not human, it's a zombie. When the word zombie reached Xinan's ears, he immediately hit the brakes. The car behind also stopped immediately. They inquired about Qinan's situation through the intercom. Qinan just said it was nothing, and then restarted the car. A zombie? How could a zombie help humans find medicine? Qinan was still somewhat incredulous. Only humans would help humans, zombies only eat people. Believe it or not, otherwise you said that even you haven't entered the hospital, how could that person go in alone and bring out so much medicine? Wen Chang retorted. It was precisely because it was a zombie that it could accomplish these things. All of Qinan's doubts at the time were resolved. So why could someone move freely in a place full of zombies? Why give medicine and then hide? But since it was a zombie, there was no need to find the other party. In any case, the other party was avoiding them, so there was no need to look for them again. Then why are you looking for this zombie? Qinan was curious, he had never asked Wen Chang about this. As a human, it wasn't quite appropriate to chase after a zombie. Just out of curiosity, aren't you curious? 
A zombie that has no hostility towards humans, anyone would be curious, Wen Chang admitted honestly. Chinan nodded, that was true. A zombie that had no hostility towards humans, if it could become a partner, it could almost dominate in the apocalypse. However, judging from the other party's behavior, this zombie seemed to not like being in crowds. But now, it's difficult to get close to this little zombie, when Chang could feel that the other party was not making any moves at the moment, and had stopped in front. The level 4 zombie also didn't move. Why? Xinan was puzzled, although it was a zombie, when Chang had said that the other party didn't have much combat power. Because there is a level 4 zombie by this zombie side, when Chang admitted openly, she definitely couldn't defeat the level 4 zombie. As for Chinan, he was now a level 2 esper, and among espers, he was already outstanding. But it was still somewhat dangerous to take on a level 4 zombie alone. Chinan also hadn't expected that this little zombie had a level 4 zombie by its side. If they wanted to get close to this little zombie, they would have to kill this level 4 zombie. But they didn't know the relationship between these two zombies, it would be inappropriate to act rashly. After when Chang finished speaking, she signaled for Chinan to stop the car. Xinan stopped the car and looked in the direction when Chang had pointed. On the rooftop of a building over 10 stories high, there were two figures, one tall and one short. They were about a few hundred meters away from their position. However, in an instant, the two figures disappeared from the rooftop. Yu Qingxian stood on the rooftop, holding a telescope to observe the two off-road vehicles. Sure enough, she saw two familiar people. She immediately waved and called for Shi Xingyu, then handed him the telescope. That man seems to be an esper, I'm not sure about the girl, but she's very powerful, she has a dog's nose, wherever I go, she can find me. I suspect she's put a GPS on me, she's a freak, probably around your age, just a few years older, Yu Qingxian introduced to Shi Xingyu. And Shi Xingyu also hadn't expected that these two humans were acquaintances of Yu Qingxian. Can we eat them? There really was an esper, and it was someone Yu Qingxian disliked. It should be no problem to eat them. Take it easy, I suspect that girl has something on her, just don't provoke her easily. And also Gu Wanqing, keep your distance from them. Yu Qingxian quickly waved his hand. Their car stopped, that girl is pointing at us, Shi Xingyu said. Hearing that the other party noticed them, Yu Qingxian grabbed Shi Xingyu and left. They came down from the rooftop and quickly changed their position. Are you so afraid of them? With me here, they wouldn't dare to come near you, right? Shi Xingyu said. Yu Qingxian felt that zombies were ignorant and fearless. He really didn't understand what it meant to have a protagonist's halo. Even if you were powerful, in the end, you would only become a crystal nucleus in the hands of the protagonist. Yu Qingxian felt that she might need to educate Shi Xingyu about what it meant to be a protagonist. Some people just naturally looked untouchable. But when she looked back at Shi Xingyu, she couldn't help but say, if you die one day, it will definitely be because of ignorance. Shi Xingyu didn't care about this statement. Death was optional for zombies. They wouldn't fear or be afraid. Zombies were just there to eat and keep moving forward. Unless the opponent was so powerful that it made the zombies feel fear and retreat. In such a situation, zombies only felt fear when facing their own kind. Like when Yu Qingxian roared at those zombies, it was a fear that made the zombies unable to resist. Is that so? Shi Xingyu's tone was very relaxed, and he didn't think death was something to fear. Yu Qingxian looked at Shi Xingyu's indifferent face and realized that Shi Xingyu hardly showed any strong emotions. In the end, they were not the same. Do you have any intention in following me? Yu Qingxian took her luggage from Shi Xingyu's hand and couldn't help but ask him. She had never asked this question before. Shi Xingyu didn't insist on helping Yu Qingxian with her luggage, and when she took it from him, he didn't feel anything. Just have nothing else to do, Shi Xingyu said. Would a zombie's personality be influenced by their personality when they were alive? Yu Qingxian couldn't help but ask again. Except for memory and human cognition, the rest of the personality and way of speaking should be habits from when they were human, Shi Xingyu said. Yu Qingxian nodded. It turned out that Shi Xingyu didn't like to talk before, and he would only speak when someone else initiated the conversation. He was a slow warming type. It seemed that in the eyes of those students at school, he was also considered a freak, just like herself. Yu Qingxian didn't hand the luggage to Shi Xingyu, but carried it herself. Shi Xingyu looked at her back as she walked ahead. For some reason, he felt that Yu Qingxian seemed different from before, but also the same as before. They walked in this manner, one after the other. The surrounding zombies just brushed past them. It was as if the apocalypse hadn't really happened. Sometimes Yu Qingxian would stop in front of a shop window, leaning against the glass, as if she was really shopping. Shi Xingyu felt that Yu Qingxian was just wasting time. But when he looked back at the motionless zombies behind him, he felt that the zombies themselves were also a waste of time. 
So many zombies, until they turned into a pile of rotting flesh, might not even get a taste of fresh blood and meat. Yu Qingxian's gaze moved away from the shop window and looked ahead. Let's part ways here, Yu Qingxian turned to look at Xiu Xingyu. This statement came suddenly, leaving Xiu Xingyu without a reaction. Why did Yu Qingxian suddenly want to say goodbye to him? Yu Songyu did not get a response from Yu Qingxian, so she turned her head slightly to look at Yu Songyu's expression. It was as if she suddenly remembered something, so she took out the crystal core from her backpack. Oh, right, I have this. I have to give it back to you, Yu Qingxian said. But Yu Songyu did not accept it. Instead, he snatched Yu Qingxian's suitcase and ran ahead. By the time Yu Qingxian reacted, Yu Songyu had already run a hundred meters away. No, why is this zombie still robbing? She should have rushed up and held this kid down for a beating, but she did not quicken her pace. As she walked past an alley, she glanced over and saw a little girl standing in the alley. The little girl was wearing a white dress, standing in the dim alley. Of course, she was definitely not human. She was a zombie. Yu Qingxian looked at the zombie, and the zombie looked at Yu Qingxian. This made Yu Qingxian feel as if she were seeing Yu Songyu for the first time. Yu Qingxian just looked at her a few more times and then looked ahead. Yu Songyu, who had already disappeared, turned back. He saw Yu Qingxian standing at the mouth of the alley and couldn't help but say, What are you doing? Don't want the suitcase? Upon hearing this, Yu Qingxian remembered that her suitcase had been snatched by this little jerk. You still have the nerve to say that my suitcase was taken by you. Before Yu Qingxian could finish her sentence, a figure suddenly rushed out from behind her. Then it jumped directly onto her back, hands circling her neck. This caused Yu Qingxian to lean back slightly. But her hands instinctively supported the person on her back. In terms of weight, the person jumping on her back was not heavy. And she did not smell the scent of a living being, indicating that this was a zombie. Realizing this, Yu Qingxian reached out and pulled the zombie off her back. Upon looking, she found a small, thin girl. It was indeed the zombie she had just seen in the alley. She just looked at her for a moment. Yu Songyu immediately felt that this zombie was a level 3 zombie, but it could break through to level 4 at any time. Judging from her actions, jumping onto Yu Qingxian's back in an instant, she was not a stupid, barbaric zombie. She evolved in the same direction as himself. There are not many zombies that can evolve consciousness. Most evolve towards greater strength. They only need to prey on more humans. They do not need the intelligence to interact with humans. After all, evolving intelligence would result in a significant loss of energy, causing these intelligent zombies to have a body size and appearance that is no different from humans, except for the color of their eyes, and they lack body temperature, heartbeat, and breath. However, the zombies that choose to evolve in the direction of intelligence have subconsciousness. In other words, this little zombie also did not want to become barbaric, and she was also a very intelligent type before she died. The smarter a person is, the higher the probability of evolving into an intelligent zombie after being infected. Yu Qingxian looked at the little zombie. The snow around her had not melted, and she was wearing only a thin summer skirt. Even though Yu Qingxian did not feel cold, she couldn't help but shiver. But Yu Qingxian did not think of her as a cute little child just because she looked young. After all, she was a zombie. It seemed that she was also a high-level zombie. She already had a high-level zombie by her side and if she brought another high-level zombie, Yu Qingxian felt that she would not be able to control them. So she pushed the little girl and then turned and walked away. Sister, are you not taking me with you? You can take him with you, the little girl said directly when she saw that Yu Qingxian was unwilling to take her. Upon hearing this, Yu Qingxian looked at the little girl with some surprise. It turned out that this zombie could also speak and communicate. It seems that the little girl is a type of zombie like Shikshinjiu. She is intelligent. Since she is intelligent, she should become a dominant force. Shikshinjiu can't drive her away. And now there's another one. Yu Qingxian feels like she's not just traveling on foot anymore. She has become part of a tour group. Yu Qingxian is naturally unhappy about this. She originally planned to travel alone. She brought Shikshinjiu along because the old cow could help her carry her luggage. But what can this little girl do? And her intuition tells her that this little girl is very dangerous. More dangerous than Shikshinjiu. Shikshinjiu pulled Yu Qingxian behind her and then stared at the little girl. As a zombie, she could also feel the level of danger this little zombie posed. She probably deceived many humans with her appearance. How many people have you eaten? Shikshinjiu asked her. The little girl just stared with her red eyes, as if she didn't understand what Shikshinjiu was saying. Her eyes were fixed on Yu Qingxian. It seemed like she was waiting for Yu Qingxian to speak, and this little zombie, who was of a higher level than her, completely ignored the little girl. Seeing the little girl staring at her, Yu Qingxian shrank behind Shikshinjiu. 
Shikxinjiu, this is not good, she looks very dangerous, Yu Qingxian said. Although Shikxinjiu is also a high-level zombie, she is not very astute. But this little girl looks like a zombie with 80 eyes. If she brought her along, maybe one day Shikxinjiu and her own skulls would be opened by this little girl. Although she doesn't have a crystal nucleus in her head, ordinary zombies wouldn't target her. But Shikxinjiu is different. A fourth-level zombie, if killed, would be a big prize. But why does this little girl seem to have targeted her? Yu Qingxian reached for her luggage and didn't waste time talking to the zombie. She picked up her luggage and ran. Even Shikxinji didn't react. Shikxinjiu, help me stop her, we'll meet again later. Yu Qingxian sold Shikxinjiu without any hesitation. In any case, she had Shikxinjiu stop the zombie. She ran first. What a mess. Yu Qingxian just wanted to travel when there was no one around. Shikxinji didn't care at all about the month they had spent together and just sold her. So who is the more heartless zombie? It's a pity that Yu Qingxian, this zombie, still retains human consciousness. The little girl watched Yu Qingxian run and then tried to chase after her. But as soon as she moved, Shikxinji grabbed her leg and threw her against the wall. The little zombie hit the wall, but for a high-level zombie, it didn't cause much damage. However, the little zombie didn't expect Shikxinji to be so fast. It seems that the only way to get close to that zombie is to defeat the one in front of her. In terms of level and combat power, she is definitely not as good as this zombie. So should she run now, or should she fight directly? Yu Qingxian really ran away. Although she felt sorry for Shikxinjiu, there was no other way. She wasn't here to recruit followers. And with two high-level zombies, it's hard for her to pretend to be dead. Those with abilities can perceive her as a corpse or an ordinary zombie. But for zombies with levels, those with abilities can detect them. It's even easier to be discovered when accompanied by high-level zombies. But Yu Qingxian was a little confused at this point. Why did that little girl find her? Has her thoughts been exposed? Otherwise, how could she have followed her to H-City? Would going to Dongfang Original Garden expose her? Yu Qingxian looked back as she ran. She heard a bang, and although she didn't know what was happening, she felt that the fight should be intense. If they fight so fiercely, won't they attract those with abilities? For example, the little girl who has been following her and the man. Although I don't know what their names are. Of course, there's also Gu Wanqing. If Gu Wanqing hasn't left yet, then sure Xingyu and that little zombie shouldn't be in danger, right? Yu Qingxian thought so, but then felt that she was overthinking. Both of them are advanced zombies and have intelligence. When they encounter danger, they will definitely run away. It's better to worry about themselves than to worry about them. Thinking of this, Yu Qingxian felt at ease again. But she didn't expect that three hours later, these two zombies would block her way. Yu Qingxian immediately knelt down. Sorry, I didn't mean to. Yu Qingxian admitted her mistake readily. Shirshing Yu looked at Yu Qingxian kneeling in front of him, and a drop of sweat fell from the back of his head. Then he looked down at the little girl next to him. This is the zombie she wants to follow. It's really unreliable. I have talked to her. She is only interested in you and doesn't want to hurt you. What she said can be considered true for now, Shirshing Yu said. Upon hearing this, Yu Qingxian looked at the little girl next to her. The little girl still looked at Yu Qingxian with big eyes and a smile on her face. What do you mean by for now? I don't even trust you completely, let alone her, Yu Qingxian spoke directly, of course, it was also what she thought in her heart. In front of her was a zombie, so naturally, the zombie wouldn't feel any harm from what Yu Qingxian said. There was no trust or distrust between zombies. They acted based on their own thoughts. Although Yu Qingxian was indeed very special, in terms of the energy of zombies themselves, she was not even comparable to ordinary zombies. Even if her skull was lifted, not even half a crystal core could be found. In other words, for these advanced zombies, it would be completely foolish to target Yu Qingxian. But I am only interested in sister, and I don't want to do anything else, the little zombie said with her hands behind her back, her beautiful eyes like red agate carrying a smile. Indeed, seeing human expressions on a zombie's face was strange. Could this kind of zombie be the female lead in the post-apocalyptic zombie novels? Intelligent and powerful, and able to lead zombies. Thinking of this, Yu Qingxian asked boldly, Sister, can you lead zombies? Yes, the little sister answered with a tilt of her head. Oh my god. This was the third female lead in a post-apocalyptic novel she had encountered. Sure Xing Yu was not sure if Yu Qingxian would take this little zombie with her. But the question she just asked was indeed unexpected. How could Yu Qingxian know that this little zombie could lead zombies? And the little zombie also answered that she could. This little zombie was indeed extraordinary. After all, only the zombie king could lead zombies. But her level was not even as high as her own. She couldn't even lead zombies, but she could? 
Then Yu Qingxian stood up from the ground. Well, there's no other way, let's go together. Yu Qingxian said. After saying this, she handed the suitcase to Shi Xingyu. Shi Xingyu took it, and Yu Qingxian sat down again. Both Shi Xingyu and the little zombie were somewhat surprised by Yu Qingxian's sudden change. For some reason, Yu Qingxian suddenly agreed. Yu Qingxian did indeed give up resistance. First of all, female leads have their own auras. Of course, there are also reasons why female leads are powerful. Like Gu Wanxing, she is very powerful herself, but she has encountered her many times. And that little weirdo, with impressive combat power, can survive in the apocalypse for a month alone, and even have hot pot in the apocalypse, not simple, definitely not simple. Compared to Shi Xingyu, who doesn't remember his own name, this little zombie, although she doesn't remember her human memories, has a bracelet on her wrist. So she handed it to Yu Qingxian to see. Yu Qingxian recognized that the medical identification bracelet worn by hospitalized individuals on their wrists. However, the wrist of this little zombie was wearing a red bracelet. In other words, she was a critically ill patient before her death. It had her name, age, and department on it. She was a 12-year-old heart disease patient. And the condition was very serious. But she hadn't died yet, and she welcomed the end of the world. Afterward, she turned into a zombie, losing the memories of her human life. The little girl's name was Xiao Ji, 12 years old. Yu Qingxian thought she was at most 8 or 9 years old. She looked thin and small. It turned out she was already 12 years old. Now that she had become a zombie, she probably wouldn't have to suffer from heart disease anymore. But what use was it to follow her? Are you two okay following me? Don't you want to fight for the title of zombie king? Yu Qingxian took out the map again, studying where she should go. What if that little freak found her again? The seaside is very dangerous now, so take the coastal route. After all, the three of them are all zombies. Sure Xingyu didn't speak, but Xiao Ji smiled and said, I'm not interested in that position. You can do things you're interested in even if you're not interested in it. Follow me, there are no humans to eat, look at him, he hasn't eaten anyone for almost a month, Yu Qingxian pointed to Sure Xingyu. This was indeed true. Since that night when he gnawed on two dead people, he hadn't eaten fresh flesh and blood. He's useless, I'm not, Xiao Ji replied. This was clearly mocking Shi Xingyu, as if she had eaten a lot of people. When Xiao Ji said this, she looked at Shi Xingyu. After all, Xiao Ji hadn't seen a zombie that didn't eat people. But when she looked up, she saw Yu Qingxian staring at her like that. Isn't it? Xiao Ji looked at Yu Qingxian staring at her, and for some reason, she felt a bit of pressure from this zombie Yu Qingxian. Do you think he can't eat people? Yu Qingxian asked Xiao Ji. Although Xiao Ji had a pitiful life as a human, but now that she had become a zombie, her character was really terrible. With such a terrible character, she shouldn't be the female lead, right? Yu Qingxian sat on the suitcase, letting Shi Xingyu drag it, but her eyes were on Xiao Ji. Could this Xiao Ji not be the female lead, but the antagonist? How could there be a female lead with such a terrible character? Shi Xingyu didn't expect Yu Qingxian to speak up for him. He didn't care about Xiao Ji's words. It was as if he had long been accustomed to such mocking words. Since he can eat people, why hasn't he eaten in a month? Xiao Ji was a bit puzzled. Humans are just food, why not eat? Then I'll ask you not to eat in front of me, can you do that? Yu Qingxian closed the map book, saying this very seriously. Even Shi Xingyu was a bit surprised. During the time he followed Yu Qingxian, she had never forbidden him from eating people. But in the end, he still had some taboos about eating in front of Yu Qingxian. It's just that Yu Qingxian had seen him eat people and didn't mind. But when she made it clear to Xiao Ji, Shi Xingyu really didn't understand her thoughts. In Shi Xingyu's eyes, Yu Qingxian was a strange creature, half human and half zombie. She was ruthless to some humans, but destined to protect some zombies. When Xiao Ji heard Yu Qingxian's imposing inquiry, she breathed a sigh of relief. The mocking smile on her face instantly disappeared, replaced by a more sincere smile. That's good. I thought I was the only zombie in the world who doesn't eat flesh and blood. Xiao Ji quickly waved her hand. She didn't want to be seen as a freak. Even though she no longer remembered human memories, she didn't want to be excluded. But in the entire city of H, she hadn't seen a zombie that didn't eat humans. Until she met these two zombies. She secretly observed them for several days. She confirmed that they indeed did not eat humans, especially the older sister, who did not even eat crystal nuclei. Xiao Ji did not see any problem with eating the crystal nuclei of zombies, but of course, she was unwilling to eat the flesh and blood of living humans. However, as a zombie, she could not avoid eating flesh and blood. Therefore, she would save some humans in H city and then exchange a little blood from them. Fortunately, zombies and humans are not the same. They can go for several months without food and not starve to death, only becoming a little weak. 
Moreover, it had been two months, and she had not encountered any communicative zombies. Therefore, when she encountered these two zombies, she naturally hoped that they were like her. But if the other party ate humans, wouldn't she become a freak again? So she decided to deceive the other party. When she heard that Xu Xingyu had not eaten human flesh for a month, Xiao Ji was naturally very happy. After all, a powerful zombie like Xu Xingyu could not go without eating humans for a few days. When Yu Qingxian and Xu Xingyu heard Xiao Ji's words, they both looked at her with some surprise. So the sarcasm towards Xu Xingyu just now was intentional? In other words, Xiao Ji also does not eat humans? You don't eat humans? Yu Qingxian looked at Xiao Ji with some surprise. After all, Xu Xingyu ate humans, and she did not stop Xu Xingyu from doing so. Now, with Xiao Ji, who does not eat humans, it put Yu Qingxian in a difficult position. She indeed does not eat humans, but that does not mean she thinks zombies who do not eat humans are good zombies. Of course, for humans, zombies who do not eat humans are good zombies. The main problem was that Xiao Ji was too much like a human, triggering her old problem again. Xiao Ji looked at Yu Qingxian dry heaving on the side of the road, feeling a little at a loss. She looked at Xu Xingyu with some confusion. What's wrong with the older sister? Xiao Ji asked. Just a fear of people, nothing serious, Xu Xingyu said, but after saying this, his gaze was fixed on Xiao Ji. Xiao Ji should not be an ordinary zombie. In the past month, Yu Qingxian had been with her and had not seen this kind of situation. In other words, Xiao Ji was at least half human. Otherwise, Yu Qingxian would not have had such a big reaction. Yu Qingxian had not felt this way for a long time. It was as if Xiao Ji was not a zombie, but a living person. Yu Qingxian straightened up and then distanced herself from Xiao Ji. Sorry, I don't think you are 100% a zombie, Yu Qingxian said. The more she spoke, the further away she moved from Xiao Ji. Xu Xingyu looked at her taking small steps back and looked at Xiao Ji with some helplessness. You see, she really doesn't like to be in contact with people, and from the looks of it, she seems to like humans quite a bit. After saying this, Xu Xingyu added, although she really doesn't eat humans, it doesn't mean she likes humans. If you follow her, not only will she be uncomfortable, but you will be too. Upon hearing this, Xiao Ji's gaze turned to Yu Qingxian. So why does the older sister pretend to be human? If she doesn't like humans, why pretend to be human? Precisely because she is not human, she has to pretend to be human so that she won't be killed by humans, right? And I have things I want to do. If you were sure about what I want to do, would you do it? Yu Qingxian looked at Xiao Ji. Of course, if Xiao Ji also wanted to travel, that would be another matter. Xiao Ji listened to Yu Qingxian's words and was a little puzzled. So what does the older sister want to do? Travel the country on foot, Yu Qingxian replied. After all, this was not something that zombies couldn't hear, and there was no problem telling a zombie. I see, I understand. It's good to have something you want to do. I should think about what I can do too, Xiao Ji nodded. It is precisely because she didn't know what she wanted to do that she wanted to follow these two zombies. Because they seem to have their own ideas. You can speak the human language, right? If you still like humans, you can try to contact them. Anyway, what I want to do is definitely not what you want, Yu Qingxian said seriously. The fact that even her corpse reacted to him meant that Xiao Ji was definitely not an ordinary zombie, at least she still had half of her humanity. Xiao Ji didn't insist, standing in place and watching Yu Qingxian ensure Xingyu leave. As she stared at the two of them, thinking about what to do, a mechanical voice suddenly sounded in her mind. Restaurant system activated, task completed, can transform back into a human, please choose a restaurant address as soon as possible. The sound made Xiao Ji instantly come to her senses. She had something to do. Although she couldn't follow the older sister, she had indeed been awakened by the older sister, and she did want to become human again. And now there was a system that could help her become human. Xiao Ji turned back to City H. This city was important, with plenty of resources, and there were definitely survivors appearing in this city. She just needed to take in those who were being chased by zombies and then send them out of the city. Obviously, this was what she had done before. Anyway, she needed to choose a location first. Xu Xingyu did not feel Xiao Ji following, obviously she had figured it out. He saw Yu Qingxian leaning on the luggage without speaking, and didn't ask further. Why did Yu Qingxian know that Xiao Ji liked humans? Xu Xingyu didn't know, and didn't intend to ask. However, Xu Xingyu knew that Xiao Ji didn't know about Yu Qingxian's abilities. She probably just seemed a little special to her. Perhaps it was also because Xiao Ji was too wary of herself that she didn't investigate Yu Qingxian's identity. If Xiao Ji thought about it carefully, she would realize that Yu Qingxian was just a very weak little zombie, but she could communicate with high-level zombies without hindrance. Just this alone was enough to make other high-level zombies suspicious. 
And the reason why Shi Xingyu gave Yu Qingxian the suitcase was partly because he didn't know why Yu Qingxian, with the body of a low-level zombie, had human consciousness. And later, the power that could suppress all zombies was the real reason why Shi Xingyu truly wanted to stay by Yu Qingxian's side. High-level zombies were powerful, but that didn't mean there were no even more powerful high-level zombies, like in City J before. If Yu Qingxian hadn't come, although he wouldn't have been killed by that zombie, he would definitely have been injured. Yu Qingxian held a novel in her hands, and a snowflake fell on her book. She looked up and the large snowflake hit her directly in the face. Yu Qingxian wiped the snowflake off her face and put away the book. She thought winter was already over, but it seemed that the real winter was just beginning. Even the snowflakes in the south were so large, she didn't know what the situation was in the north. Human survival was really precarious. Let's find a place to shelter from the snow, Yu Qingxian said. Shi Xingyu, upon hearing this, headed towards the nearby building. Although this was the outskirts of City H, it was still under construction. Originally, these projects were not abandoned, but because of the apocalypse, these places became abandoned buildings. When Shi Xingyu pulled Yu Qingxian towards one of these unfinished buildings, Yu Qingxian smelled a faint fragrance. She looked into the building. Obviously, there were people in the building. But it made sense, if they had combat power, staying in a big city like this would make it easier to survive. After all, it was easier to find resources in a big city. Near these under construction buildings, there would be some small restaurants. Although these restaurants looked simple, at least there was some rice and seasoning. They didn't have to go to the base in such a dangerous way, they could still survive. Also felt it and slowed down his pace. It's okay, go to the next door, Yu Qingxian spoke. Shi Xingyu is different from himself. He really wants to eat people. He might be able to hold back if he stays with humans for 10 minutes, but what about half an hour, or three hours? Yu Qingxian wasn't sure if Shi Xingyu could hold back. Maybe if his level were higher, he could. Like the zombie kings in novels, who can stay by the side of the female lead. There are dozens of survivors in the building, some of whom have special abilities. However, they are not the ordinary survivors that Yu Qingxian and Shi Xingyu thought they were. At this moment, there are seven or eight girls huddling together in the room. And outside the door, there are people guarding, armed with guns, and even the leader is a person with special abilities. They originally heard the people outside say that someone had come. They had a glimmer of hope in their hearts, hoping that someone could save them. But when they heard that there were only two people, that hope was instantly extinguished. Two people simply couldn't beat these people. But they didn't dare to call for help loudly, if they attracted the zombies, they would only be pushed out to feed the zombies. Originally, there were more than 10 people imprisoned here. But some couldn't bear it and committed suicide. But since they survived, they couldn't die like that. If they died, who would avenge the sisters who were forced to commit suicide? So they must survive. Yu Qingxian and Shi Xingyu arrived at the building next door. The snow outside was getting heavier and heavier. The snow that had already melted was instantly covered with a layer of white by the heavens. And these snowflakes were not as big as the ones Yu Qingxian had seen before, but as big as her face. When they fell to the ground, they made a sound. Yu Qingxian stopped on the first floor directly. They were not afraid of zombies, and there was no need to go upstairs. They would just leave when the snow stopped. It's just that Yu Qingxian didn't want to provoke humans, but humans just had to provoke them. In less than 10 minutes, three men came over in the snow. They could see clearly from upstairs that it should be one man and one woman. And the woman was sitting on a suitcase. Are you survivors? Where are you from? The leader was still holding a cigarette and asked Yu Qingxian and Shi Xingyu carelessly. Yu Qingxian glanced at the three men and moved to a different position, turning his back to them. Shi Xingyu didn't say anything either. Although advanced zombies can mimic human voices, he didn't really want to deal with these people. The three people, who didn't get a response, were annoyed by their attitude. We're talking to you, are you deaf? If you don't speak, we'll feed you to the zombies, the leader said fiercely. Yu Qingxian stood up and was about to leave with the suitcase. She really couldn't stand it. She just wanted to quietly avoid the snow, but she didn't expect these people to come knocking on the door. And their attitude was so bad. Yu Qingxian pulled the suitcase to leave, which made the three men even more unhappy, and they directly pulled out their guns and pointed them at Yu Qingxian and Shi Xingyu. We're just passing by, Shi Xingyu's hoarse voice reached the ears of the three men. Although it was hoarse, it was indeed the language of humans. Yu Qingxian stole a glance at the three men when she heard Shi Xingyu speak. She found that they seemed to understand. In other words, Shi Xingyu was speaking the language of humans. It seemed that Shi Xingyu didn't want to fight with these humans. But was Shi Xingyu such a kind-hearted zombie? Could it be because of himself? Yu Qingxian did look at Shi Xingyu in a different light. 
But she didn't think that people who would point a gun at others at the drop of a hat could be good people. Passing by? Who is she? Your girlfriend? One of them said, trying to move in front of Yu Qingxian. It is obvious that with her long hair and the skirt under her down jacket, Yu Qingxian is indeed recognizable as a woman at first glance. My sister, Shi Xingyu replied. After saying this, Shi Xingyu couldn't help but take a step forward and stood in front of Yu Qingxian, blocking her figure. Although she didn't know the purpose of these people towards Yu Qingxian, or what they intended to do, Shi Xingyu instinctively protected her. When those people heard that Shi Xingyu was her brother, not her girlfriend, their malicious smiles grew even more. One of them tried to step past Shi Xingyu towards Yu Qingxian, but with a single gunshot, a new hole appeared in the person's forehead. Before the two men in Shi Xingyu could react, Yu Qingxian pulled the trigger again. Two more shots rang out, ending the lives of the remaining two. Yu Qingxian did not hesitate. She knew what she and Shi Xingyu would face if they were just ordinary people. Unfortunately, although she still had human consciousness, she was indifferent to humanity when she was human. You. Shi Xingyu's words were interrupted by Yu Qingxian. I told you, I'm not protecting all humans. My gun isn't really for myself. Yu Qingxian directly dropped her luggage and stepped over the still warm bodies. The three gunshots from Yu Qingxian attracted the attention of the people next door. After all, the sound of gunfire in their ears must be from their own people. The leader of the group originally just wanted someone to check if the woman was pretty, and if so, bring her back. If not, then forget it. Judging from their appearance, there was nothing worth robbing. So there should be no need to shoot. Could it be a fight? If so, it seems that both the man and the woman are not ordinary people. Judging from the direction they came from, it was towards the city. Could they be espers? And these three gunshots, I wonder if these people noticed that there were a few young girls locked in the room. Are these people going to rob others again? Just over 10 minutes later, the door to the room where they were being held suddenly opened. It wasn't those people who walked in, but a girl who had wrapped herself up. Yu Qingxian was not too surprised to see the eight young girls in the room. She let go of the doorknob and then turned and left. As for the people in the room, Shi Xingyu had already taken care of them. He was not here now, probably taking a few people to eat. Yu Qingxian squatted in front of one of the bodies and searched through it, finding a bunch of keys. So she turned and walked back to the previous room and threw the bunch of keys inside. Their cars were all downstairs. As long as they wanted to survive, there would always be a way. Those young girls looked very young, probably students. Being able to survive in this situation was enough to show their determination to live. Yu Qingxian left the place, and the heavy snow outside was still falling. The smell of blood shouldn't spread too quickly. I wonder where Shi Xingyu, the zombie, went to eat. Two people were eaten, one was the leading esper, and the other seemed to have a more appealing taste, probably a mutant. They really are picky eaters. As Yu Qingxian walked downstairs and picked up her suitcase, she heard the sound of a convoy approaching. Without hesitation, she lay down on the ground, pretending to be dead. When Shi Xingyu returned and saw Yu Qingxian pretending to be dead on the ground, he almost fell over. What's the use of pretending to be dead at this time? Fortunately, he came back, otherwise, Yu Qingxian would have been mistaken for a corpse. He lifted Yu Qingxian with one hand and carried the suitcase with the other, and they disappeared from the house in an instant. The snow outside was still heavy. Yu Qingxian came out of the house and stopped Shi Xingyu. Then they squatted outside the house. Yu Qingxian at this time also stopped pretending to be dead. The convoy stopped in front of the house, and a man in a black windbreaker got out of the car. In Yu Qingxian's aesthetic opinion, even in the entertainment industry, there may not be many who can compare. Has she been going out less? Or has she been watching fewer videos? Why hadn't she seen such a handsome guy before the apocalypse? This level is already at the level of a male lead, right? Yu Qingxian's head was covered in snowflakes, and her eyes stared straight at the man getting out of the car. Shi Xingyu looked at her somewhat puzzled. Why isn't she pretending to be dead now? Just as Yu Qingxian was sighing about the man's handsomeness, another off-road vehicle came rushing over, even brushing past the man and stopping. Yu Qingxian was familiar with this off-road vehicle, although it was not the most familiar one, it was indeed driven by Gu Wanching. As soon as the car stopped, the men next to the man immediately pulled out their guns and pointed them at Gu Wanching's car. But Gu Wanching was not afraid at all. She didn't even give the man a glance, turned around, and headed towards the building under construction. When Qingxing also got out of the car and headed towards the building where Yu Qingxian had just pretended to be dead. Although there was a blizzard outside, they were not far from the building, so they could hear the people talking. It turned out that the people here were the same group as those who had kidnapped the family members of the official technology personnel before. Later, due to conflicts, they dispersed. 
These people thought that kidnapping the officials was suicidal, so they dispersed. But they imprisoned those young girls and acted arrogantly in this place. Yu Qingxian watched as Wen Qingxing entered the first floor and found the three bodies. After checking, it was confirmed that they were already dead. Only then did she stand up. They had been searching for this place for several days. It was the information that Gu Wanqing had obtained from those people. There were still some gangsters here who had kidnapped some girls in the suburbs of H City. As for which suburb, that was not clear. So these days, Gu Wanqing had been searching for these people. And what attracted them was the few gunshots that seemed like an illusion. At this point, when Xingxing could confirm that the gunshots they heard in the blizzard were not an illusion, he looked around, then withdrew his gaze and left the house. Gu Wanqing also brought eight young girls downstairs. They were already wearing thick clothes, and Yu Qingxian probably knew where these clothes came from, but that was not her concern. Gu Wanqing was doing a good thing, and she didn't need to stop her. When the eight girls reached the ground floor and saw the cars, Gu Wanqing asked if any of them could drive. After confirming that someone could drive, she made arrangements. As for that man, Gu Wanqing temporarily didn't have time to deal with him. After Wen Xingxing drove one car and took another car away, Gu Wanqing began to negotiate with the man. The two seemed to know each other. Yu Qingxian saw the two seemingly talking, and her gossip fire instantly rose. She took out her binoculars. So the faces of Gu Wanqing and the man instantly appeared in front of Yu Qingxian. In fact, Yu Qingxian didn't need binoculars to see the two, and she could even hear their conversation. So Shi Xingyu completely didn't understand why Yu Qingxian still needed binoculars. From the conversation between Gu Wanqing and the man, Yu Qingxian could tell that this man's name was Xin Yan Li. He was the boss of an underground arms dealer. Gu Wanqing had been running around the world just to find this Xin Yan Li. Xin Yan Li must have a lot of firearms in his hands. Plus, the authorities were very worried that Xin Yan Li might have ulterior motives. In a way, Xin Yan Li was a criminal even before the apocalypse, but he disguised himself too well. The authorities couldn't find any evidence against him. Therefore, in Gu Wanqing's eyes, this Xin Yan Li is like a thousand-year-old fox. It's just unexpected to meet here. Because there is a police word on Gu Wanqing's license plate, Xin Yan Li naturally knows that Gu Wanqing is an official. Yu Qingxian listened while gossiping in his heart. If this Gu Wanqing is the female lead, then this Xin Yan Li is the male lead? But the feeling of being followed by the sniper next to Gu Wanqing is also good. Well, if there's a male lead, there should be a male second lead. Yu Qingxian felt sorry for the sniper at this time. Although you came first, love is not about who comes first. Shi Xingyu listened to Yu Qingxian's incessant chatter and couldn't understand a word. But he could tell that Yu Qingxian's expression at this time was like that of a zombie who hadn't eaten for a long time suddenly seeing food. That focused and serious yet very delicious expression. Shi Xingyu didn't understand, but he looked at the man and the woman. At this time, his face was expressionless. He didn't understand, completely didn't understand. Yu Qingxian's telescope moved from Gu Wanqing and Xin Yanli to the car, and met a smiling face. Pei Yuan's hand was resting on the car window, his head leaning on his hand, tilting his head to stare at Yu Qingxian, as if he could really see himself. Yu Qingxian saw that he didn't take the sniper, so he wasn't afraid of him. He extended a finger. Pei Yuan also extended a finger. Yu Qingxian extended another finger, and this time Pei Yuan made a peace sign. At this moment, Yu Qingxian instantly knew that this kid could see them. Clearly, they made no sound and were still in the snowdrift. Even Gu Wanqing and Xin Yanli hadn't noticed them. But this Pei Yuan seemed to have been staring at them for a while. Run, run quickly. The people around the female lead are not just some small fries. Shi Xingyu hadn't reacted yet and was pulled by Yu Qingxian to run. She held a suitcase in one hand and pulled her sleeve in the other. It was the first time Shi Xingyu had seen Yu Qingxian run so fast, and even a little panicked. This puzzled Shi Xingyu. Yu Qingxian ran all the way, looked around, and headed towards the sea. Why are you running? Shi Xingyu let Yu Qingxian pull her and run wildly, and when she slowed down, she asked. Wait to be caught? There's someone with Gu Wanqing who can see us. Yu Qingxian explained. We can see them. What's the problem? Shi Xingyu was puzzled. They are zombies, not ghosts. As long as they have eyes, they can see. It's a big problem. If we have no cover in our scene, it's fine, but we're hiding in the snow. It's completely inappropriate to be seen like this. Yu Qingxian suddenly stopped and looked seriously at Shi Xingyu. She and Shi Xingyu were hiding in the snow, and ordinary people wouldn't think that living people would hide in the snow. After all, living people need a certain temperature. Hiding in the snow is just asking for trouble. So under normal circumstances, people wouldn't think there were people under the snow. Of course, zombies under the snow, as long as they smell the scent of flesh and blood, would definitely not stand still. 
Shi Xingyu understood instantly as he listened to Yu Qingxian's explanation. They had just been in very thick snow, and ordinary people couldn't see them. Plus, they were wearing white down jackets. If humans didn't stare carefully, how could they see them? And if it made Yu Qingxian a little panicked, it was definitely not a trivial matter. But at this time, the heavy snow was still falling, and the visibility was only a few meters. Everywhere was white. It was unknown how long this snow would continue to fall. As the snow fell heavier and the wind grew stronger, Yu Qingxian felt as if she was not in the south, but in the north. Could it be that she had actually gone the wrong way? Yu Qingxian felt that she should find a compass to look at. But she was near H city, so it should be normal. Yu Qingxian stopped and looked for a road sign. The main base is 300 kilometers northeast of H city. It has been more than two months since the end of the world, and the real major bases should still be under construction. After all, these bases will need to be used for a long time. Therefore, the walls are the most important. Yu Qingxian finally found a road sign and took out her map, but the wind was too strong for her to flip it, so she had to go to the nearby house. It's good to be near a big city, no need to worry about not having a house. As soon as Yu Qingxian entered the house, she saw several zombies. Originally, Yu Qingxian didn't want to bother with them, but as soon as she sat down, these zombies surrounded her, making a lot of noise about being hungry. Yu Qingxian couldn't calm down, so she had to send them out of the house one by one. The whole house finally became quiet. Shi Xingyu leaned against the window and couldn't help but say, they will freeze to death. Then you can bring them back, Yu Qingxian said nonchalantly. If they freeze to death, so be it. After all, there are plenty of zombies that freeze to death. Shi Xingyu. Yu Qingxian remembered the name on the road sign and found its location on the map. When she saw the name of the town, she drew a red cross next to it. At a glance, she felt uncomfortable even looking at the bodies. It's less than a hundred kilometers to the base. It's true that there's no direction when running around. She didn't even know how long she had been running before stopping. Anyway, now she's less than a hundred kilometers away from the official base. Although she was indeed scared, she wasn't worried about being caught in this weather. First, she had to catch herself, and then she had to defeat Shi Xingyu. Now it seems that the old cow can still be a bodyguard. When necessary, he can still be pushed out to block something. Thinking of this, Yu Qingxian suddenly looked up at Shi Xingyu. He shouldn't die so easily, right? If he dies, he should be behind her. After all, she's so weak. Having determined her direction, Yu Qingxian looked at the snow outside and didn't rush to leave. Instead, she waited for the snow to stop in the house. Yu Qingxian sat on the sofa in the house, flipping through a book she had picked up from a bookstore. After all, her suitcase was empty, with only a camera protected by foam. So Yu Qingxian put a lot of books in it. Before she died, Yu Qingxian loved watching other people's travel videos, writing, and reading books. In short, she read all kinds of books. Especially now that she had nothing to do, it was more suitable to read books. This heavy snow lasted for several days. The thickness of the snow reached the second floor directly. Yu Qingxian opened the door, and the snow outside blocked her view. But fortunately, the snow outside had stopped. Shi Xingyu watched Yu Qingxian walk out without stopping her. She was like a little hamster, constantly digging through the snow. Shi Xingyu followed behind her, dragging her suitcase. The height of the snow had reached the second floor, although it was the end of the world, the snow was not pure white. It was covered with a layer of dusty gray. If humans drank water made from this kind of snow, there might be a possibility of turning into zombies. So where did Yu Qingxian's confidence come from, betting on humans to win? Probably a group of people will die in this snow again. Thinking of this, Shi Xingyu felt that Yu Qingxian was right. If humans lose, then zombies will not have the ability to survive. The food of zombies is said to be living things, but in fact, 90% are humans. If humans are gone, then zombies will starve to death. If humans win, advanced zombies can actually hide among humans. As long as you find a way to get fresh blood and flesh, you can naturally survive in the human world. But someone like Yu Qingxian probably can't live in the human world. She seems to be allergic to people. It's a strange condition, being human but allergic to humans. But, are you sure about the direction? Shi Xingyu couldn't see the sky and didn't know if Yu Qingxian was going in the right direction. I should be, anyway, I'm walking in the opposite direction towards the base. Yu Qingxian put her hands away and looked up. After saying this, she lowered her head and thought again. Shi Xingyu waited for her to finish thinking. You should jump up and take a look. Yu Qingxian said. Shi Xingyu. He knew he couldn't rely on Yu Qingxian. It's just too difficult for this zombie to jump directly 4 or 5 meters high. He's a zombie, not a spring person. Although Shi Xingyu did complain in his heart, he still tried to confirm the direction. Yu Qingxian indeed didn't go the wrong way. 
Although in the several meters of thick snow, Yu Qingxian was indeed walking in a straight line, but Xu Xingyu felt it was unlikely for Yu Qingxian to want to see the scenery. It's very difficult to go out in this several meters of thick snow, let alone to see the scenery. Is Yu Qingxian really serious about traveling in the apocalypse? After the apocalypse, it's not just humans that have changed, but also animals and plants. Some plants have also become carnivorous. Of course, Xu Xingyu hasn't seen it. Yu Qingxian hasn't seen it either. In fact, Yu Qingxian also planned to take a look at these mutated plants. That's what Yu Qingxian thought, but she didn't really expect to encounter them. After Yu Qingxian walked for seven or eight days, the snow finally lowered a bit. But the snow was still one and a half meters high. Xu Xingyu could still have his chest above the snow, while Yu Qingxian only had her head floating above. Of course, as long as she encountered a town, Yu Qingxian could see that many zombies were floating with their heads above the snow. This made Yu Qingxian feel somewhat balanced. Of course, at this time, she was still nearly 700 kilometers away from Dongfang Garden. In other words, she had walked for 7 or 8 days and only covered half of the distance, and this was without much rest. Indeed, it's really difficult to walk in winter. On the ninth day, Yu Qingxian saw a very strange rose tree from a distance. It was strange because everything was white, but this area was full of red roses, and it was a large area. Although it looked strange, Yu Qingxian had to admit that it was really beautiful. She turned and climbed up the nearby building, taking out her camera to take pictures. Xu Xingyu didn't follow her up. Usually, she would stay on the first floor and rarely climb high buildings, except when she wanted to see the scenery. Xu Xingyu had thought about encountering this kind of mutated plant before, and it really happened. But Xu Xingyu wasn't sure whether this mutated plant ate humans or even zombies, or neither. Yu Qingxian didn't think so much. She had never seen such a large area of roses. It would be great if there was some sunlight. Like in the morning or at sunset, it would be very beautiful. Yu Qingxian lay on the window, looking at the large rose garden, and she was curious whether she could propagate the roses herself. But she didn't have time to take care of them now. Maybe after she visited the places she wanted to go, she could grow some flowers. If there were seeds, she could collect some and plant them when she found a place to live without people. Then she could grow some roses in the yard. Yu Qingxian thought so, and the heavy clouds in the sky seemed to give her face. Twenty minutes later, a few cracks appeared in the sky, letting out some sunlight. This made Yu Qingxian directly exclaim. Xu Xingyu, come up quickly, don't take the stairs, it's too slow. Yu Qingxian excitedly pounded the wall with his hands. As for Yu Qingxian's excitement, Xu Xingyu was somewhat surprised. It had been two months, and this was the first time he had seen Yu Qingxian so excited. But it's just flowers, what's so great about them? And telling him not to take the stairs. Xu Xingyu didn't really want to see those roses, but he couldn't resist Yu Qingxian's enthusiasm, so he could only climb up the outer wall. But before he reached the floor where Yu Qingxian was, his eyes were drawn to those red roses with green leaves underneath, and Xu Xingyu found himself drooling. No matter how you looked at it, it looked like a huge piece of fresh flesh and blood. So he really couldn't understand what Yu Qingxian was so excited about. When he climbed to Yu Qingxian's window, he saw her taking a picture of him with a camera. Suddenly, Xu Xingyu remembered that during this time, Whenever there was a beautiful scenery or building, Yu Qingxian would make him stand there, and then she would take pictures of him. Clearly, she was the one who wanted to travel, but she didn't take pictures with the scenery. Xu Xingyu climbed into the room and looked out the window. The pale sunlight was shining on the red roses, but Xu Xingyu couldn't feel the beauty of the scenery because he was just a zombie. He no longer had human aesthetics. Yu Qingxian could tell that Xu Xingyu didn't like looking at the scenery, but when she saw beautiful scenery, she couldn't help but want to share it with someone. Xu Xingyu was the only one around, so she could only share it with him. Although Xu Xingyu couldn't see what was so beautiful about the scenery, he turned to see that Yu Qingxian's pale face seemed to have some color. Xu Xingyu didn't know about Yu Qingxian's past, nor did he want to know. After all, he was just a zombie and not interested in the past as a human. He was just curious as to why Yu Qingxian, as a zombie, could still maintain human consciousness and memory. Seeing Xu Xingyu staring at her, Yu Qingxian explained, In the first 28 years of my life, I rarely went out for travel. You also know about my physical condition, which is not suitable for going out. And my parents died in a car accident while traveling, so I don't like going out even more. Here, Yu Qingxian sighed. Actually, sometimes I think, if I had followed my parents at that time, would it have been better? Yu Qingxian regretted it. After her parents' death, Yu Qingxian's life was turned upside down. Of course, she thought she might live like this for the rest of her life, but she never expected to encounter the apocalypse. Perhaps it was because of the apocalypse that she had the courage to leave that room. If I were human, or had human consciousness like you, 
Would I be able to respond to your topic from a human perspective? Sure, Xingyu could probably understand what Yu Qingxian was saying, but he couldn't fully grasp the meaning behind her words. She must have suddenly said these things to have someone to talk to. Yu Qingxian was surprised that Sure Xingyu wanted to try to understand human thoughts. No, it's because you're a zombie that I'm telling you these things. I feel like I don't need comfort or sympathy. Those things don't have any effect on me, Yu Qingxian explained. It was precisely because Sure Xingyu didn't understand anything that Yu Qingxian could be so unrestrained in front of him. It was like when she was at home, chatting with her action figures and dolls. She didn't need any response. Sure Xingyu was somewhat surprised by Yu Qingxian's words. Humans are social animals, and it was precisely because of this that Sure Xingyu always felt that Yu Qingxian actually needed a friend. Otherwise, she wouldn't have brought him along. Then why did you bring me along? Sure Xingyu asked her. But you're the one who followed me, aren't you? Yu Qingxian countered. She had never said she wanted to travel with Sure Xingyu. And he had already said goodbye to Sure Xingyu twice. But Sure Xingyu always caught up. In her eyes, Sure Xingyu was like a figurine. In the past, she had seen many mobile game or anime enthusiasts, who would always take photos with a cotton doll or a standee of their favorite character when they went out. Yu Qingxian let Shi Xingyu stand and take photos, which could be considered as taking a figurine to check in. Perhaps. Yu Qingxian's words made Shi Xingyu realize. It was indeed him shamelessly following Yu Qingxian. It was he who needed Yu Qingxian, not the other way around. Yu Qingxian sharing the scenery with him was probably just a subconscious reaction. It wasn't necessarily for him to see. Thinking about this, Shi Xingyu felt that Yu Qingxian, even as a zombie, was also a weirdo. Placed in a crowd, he was definitely not a likable type. When you were human, you must have been very unlikable, unable to even fulfill the most basic human trait of getting along with others, Shi Xingyu couldn't help but say. He just wanted to know what words could really touch Yu Qingxian. While Yu Qingxian was putting away the camera, he retorted, that's not true. When I was in school, I got along well with my classmates. Don't think so badly of humans. After saying this, Yu Qingxian thought of something else and added, of course, don't think too highly of humans either. But this doesn't matter to you, you just need to treat humans as enemies. They were now zombies, standing on the opposite side of humans. If one thought all humans were good people, they would definitely suffer. No, they would lose their lives. While Shi Xingyu was still pondering Yu Qingxian's words, Yu Qingxian had already packed up. She picked up the suitcase and headed downstairs. Normally, she was very averse to trouble, but for the sake of seeing the scenery, she never complained. It was only now that Shi Xingyu realized that there were all kinds of people among humans as well. Just like zombies, there were all kinds of them. When Shi Xingyu finally reacted, Yu Qingxian had already descended two floors. He hurried to catch up. He heard Yu Qingxian muttering to herself. She didn't need anyone to respond, she could handle both asking and answering perfectly by herself. Self-questioning and self-answering were displayed vividly in Yu Qingxian. But Yu Qingxian wanted to pick a rose. This was too dangerous. First, it was uncertain whether this mutated plant would absorb zombies as well. And this issue was also within Yu Qingxian's consideration. If this plant had become a carnivorous plant, then it wouldn't be necessary. If she carried a plant that ate humans and zombies, and it occasionally came out to bite her, she couldn't bear it. And there was no snow around this rose, as if snow had never fallen on it. Yu Qingxian sneaked over from the snow. She made a few snowballs and threw them, but the rose didn't react. So she threw a few more, still no response. Yu Qingxian looked at the snowballs in her hand, then turned to look at Shi Xingyu. Shi Xingyu stood in the distance guarding her suitcase, watching her as if he was afraid she would be swallowed by the rose. When Shi Xingyu saw Yu Qingxian turn to look at him, he was puzzled. Before he could speak, a hard-packed snowball hit him squarely in the face. Although it didn't hurt, Shi Xingyu didn't know what Yu Qingxian was doing. Could it be that the scent of the rose could affect the consciousness of zombies and humans, causing them to attack each other? Thinking of this, Shi Xingyu immediately rushed forward and carried Yu Qingxian back. Yu Qingxian was puzzled. She didn't know what Shi Xingyu was doing. Could it be that this rose really could attack? But she didn't see it. It wasn't until Shi Xingyu put her down and exchanged thoughts with her that she realized it was a misunderstanding. You are really boring, a boring zombie. You must have been boring when you were alive. After Yu Qingxian stood firm, he couldn't help but mock Shi Xingyu. Where do you find the fun? After a long time of contact with Yu Qingxian, Shi Xingyu would argue with Yu Qingxian like a human. This surprised Yu Qingxian. Indeed, I am also very bored. Yu Qingxian nodded and admitted this. After Shi Xingyu's investigation, it was found that this was a mutated rose, but it was not interested in zombies. It just became more cold resistant. 
Of course, it is not certain whether this plant is also not interested in humans. In any case, this rose is safe. After confirming that the rose was safe, Yu Qingxian plunged into it like a child. This was a rare occasion when Yu Qingxian's emotions were so openly displayed in Shi Xingyu's eyes. He didn't understand why Yu Qingxian was so happy because of a plant. Anyway, when Yu Qingxian walked out from under the rose tree, apart from smelling fragrant and having her clothes scratched by rose thorns, she only had a large bunch of roses in her arms. There were also a few rose seeds in her pocket. But Yu Qingxian had never thought of planting flowers before, and now that she had collected the seeds, she should find some books on planting to read. This was what Yu Qingxian thought, and of course, what she did. She then directed Shi Xingyu, the old cow, to the town's bookstore. It's just unknown whether the bookstore in this town has such books. But after going in and looking around, she found that there were not many, mostly novels and study materials for students. She wasn't too disappointed, took a few novels she wanted to read, and then put the one she had finished back on the shelf. Was this considered bartering? After taking the books, they continued eastward. Originally, it was thought that the further north they went, the thicker the snow would be. But the reality was completely opposite to what Yu Qingxian had thought. The further north they went, the less snow there was, which made Yu Qingxian very curious. The weather in the end times was unpredictable. So the temperatures in the south and north have reversed. This. No, she still wanted to go north to see the snow. But just thinking about the snow in the south, she felt she could go see the flowers in the north. So the plan changed, and going north to see the snow was replaced by going north to see the flowers. It's really a long life, you can see all sorts of strange things. At this moment, Yu Qingxian suddenly felt lucky that her consciousness had not dissipated, which was also a kind of luck. If she hadn't retained the consciousness of a human, she wouldn't be able to see these scenes. As for the large bunch of roses that Yu Qingxian had, she made them into specimen bookmarks. Shi Xingyu didn't understand Yu Qingxian's actions, but he didn't stop her either. As they were about to reach the eastern garden, Yu Qingxian still secretly looked to see if there was a survivor base ahead. After all, there were many people in this area, and just one base wouldn't be enough. And she hadn't obtained any human intelligence for three months. Maybe she had missed something. It wouldn't be good if she stumbled into someone else's stronghold. The city of Ji in February seemed unusually warm. Of course, it wasn't something Yu Qingxian felt, but rather that there wasn't thick snow here, and even her suitcase had started to charge automatically. This was enough to show that the sunlight here was just right. But she didn't feel mentally sluggish, which meant that the sunlight now wasn't too intense. It might just be the weather of over 20 degrees in spring. Sure Xingyu followed behind Yu Qingxian, and at this point, the suitcase was already fully charged and didn't need him to pull it. Yu Qingxian rode on the suitcase, lying on the handle, sneaking through the streets and alleys. Sure Xingyu had no idea what she was up to. Yu Qingxian didn't know that her caution, in Sure Xingyu's eyes, seemed sneaky. The city of Ji is located at the easternmost edge of the city. There is still a distance from the seaside. However, this city used to be a famous coastal city and an ancient port city. But now it is considered a semi-inland city. Yu Qingxian looked at the wandering zombies on the street and finally breathed a sigh of relief. Obviously, this city is still under the occupation of zombies. However, just as Yu Qingxian relaxed, she heard gunshots, which made her control her suitcase and rush into the alley. In short, as long as there is any human-made movement, she is always easily startled. Shi Xingyu also followed Yu Qingxian into the alley. After they entered the alley, a convoy approached from a distance. There were five cars. There should be quite a few people. Indeed, it is a big city, and even a team of supernaturals has a large number of people. Yu Qingxian watched as the five cars passed by, followed by piles of zombies. These zombies had clearly evolved during the winter. Their speed had become very fast, exceeding the running speed of ordinary people. In the apocalypse, relying solely on human legs, one could definitely not outrun the zombies. She looked at these running zombies and couldn't help but sigh, if these zombies were to participate in a marathon, there wouldn't be enough medals to award them. Shi Xingyu didn't know what Yu Qingxian was talking about and calmly replied, at this speed, they will definitely starve to death. Yu Qingxian didn't care about Shi Xingyu's irrelevant words. These zombies were already running faster than her. But in fact, Yu Qingxian felt that her physical fitness had become stronger than when she was human. If the zombie virus was considered an evolution, Yu Qingxian felt that it was correct. But if it was a good evolution, that was not necessarily the case. It would be great if all zombies could choose not to eat people like herself. From any perspective, this type of creature, the zombie, indeed had very obvious weaknesses, but as long as those weaknesses were protected, they would be truly invincible. They had strong endurance, and as long as they ate a little flesh and blood, they could persist for a long time. 
However, the fact that they would rush towards the smell of blood and flesh was indeed not very suitable. It seemed that only advanced zombies would do, like Shi Xingyu. Thinking this, Yu Qingxian looked up at Shi Xingyu and saw saliva starting to secrete from the corners of his mouth. When she was about to say something, she realized that zombies couldn't change their nature of eating people. Didn't you just eat two people? Why are you craving again? Yu Qingxian couldn't help but mock Shi Xingyu. Why was he so greedy? In response to Yu Qingxian's words, Shi Xingyu retorted, I didn't just eat, it's been almost a month. As an advanced zombie that evolved quickly in the apocalypse, eating only once a month would definitely be laughed at by other advanced zombies. Yu Qingxian didn't say anything. She hadn't eaten for three months and didn't feel any hunger. She didn't even have the desire to eat. The appearance of a team of supernaturals here indicates that there are indeed survivor bases nearby. Of course, it is also possible that these teams have traveled a long distance, but regardless of which, it means that this city cannot be stayed in for long. Yu Qingxian watched the group of zombies pass by and bent down to help up a small zombie lying on the ground. The small zombie should have been 5 or 6 years old in its previous life, and now it was also running and chasing with the other zombies. The small zombie that Yu Qingxian helped up did not stop, but continued to chase forward. However, after running a distance, it lost its target and began to slow down and wander around, indicating that the convoy had left the range of these zombies' sense of smell. However, a faint scent still lingered in Yu Qingxian's nose. This scent also dissipated from her nose after a minute. It seemed that those people had completely left the city. Yu Qingxian turned back, got on her suitcase, and continued walking towards the city center. The city center of Ji City is the destination of Yu Qingxian's trip, known as the Eastern Garden. Although there are many zombies in the city, it is not an obstacle for Yu Qingxian and Shi Xingyu. They arrived at the Eastern Garden smoothly. The garden has not been damaged, but because no one is managing it, the plants have grown wildly over the past three months. However, this is not important to Yu Qingxian. She went to the entrance, waited in line for a while, then got her ticket and entered the park. She sat on her suitcase as usual, holding a tourist map in her hand. She seemed like a real tourist, not caring about the zombies around her or the fact that she was also a zombie. Yu Qingxian carefully observed the scenery and took out her camera to take pictures. Shi Xingyu followed behind her, looking around with his eyes, not understanding what Yu Qingxian was thinking. At this moment, Yu Qingxian wasn't thinking about anything. She was just enjoying the scenery in her own way. When Yu Qingxian watched other people's travel videos before, it was mostly for preparing to write novels. After all, there are some things that cannot be written without experiencing them firsthand. But that's how authors are, using words to describe everything and weaving a false yet real world for readers. A good writer can make readers feel like the characters in the book have truly lived in the world. However, Yu Qingxian did not have such accomplishments. At most, she wrote for her own entertainment. But at this moment, as she looked at the scenery, she probably understood why many authors like to travel. However, Yu Qingxian no longer needed these things. She came out to see the scenery, influenced by those authors, her parents, and the neighbor's older sister. But most importantly, it was the step she took. If she hadn't thought of going out to travel, she would definitely still be at home, lying on that bed, waiting for her energy to deplete, then turning into blood, bones, and finally becoming a handful of soil. But now, Yu Qingxian is very grateful to herself. Grateful for stepping out of that room. When the sun set, Yu Qingxian didn't continue to wander. Instead, she left the garden and found a hotel to rest. Shi Xingyu didn't understand why she did these things, but he felt that he had learned something from Yu Qingxian. That is, as a zombie, as a powerful zombie, one should not be too ostentatious. Humans are not fragile. Perhaps he should separate from Yu Qingxian. Zombies are never social animals. And he was not worried at all that Yu Qingxian would die at the hands of humans, let alone die in the mouths of zombies. They were always different. Yu Qingxian couldn't understand the thoughts of zombies, and he couldn't understand Yu Qingxian, who had human consciousness. So when Yu Qingxian watched Shi Xingyu bid her farewell at the door, she was not surprised at all. Goodbye, I hope to see you again this autumn. Last year, you said you would go see the autumn scenery lake again this year. Don't get killed by humans, Yu Qingxian said. There was no hint of reluctance on her face. Shi Xingyu just nodded slightly at her words and then disappeared at the hotel room door. Zombies feed on humans. Shi Xingyu was a gentle person when he was alive. Even though he didn't remember his memories as a human, he would instinctively avoid himself when eating. And he wouldn't actively hunt humans. It's really hard. When Yu Qingxian woke up and didn't see Shi Xingyu, she felt a little uncomfortable. Because in a week or so, Yu Qingxian would find a place to rest for a night. And Shi Xingyu would always sit by the bed and stare at her like that. 
Now, waking up and not seeing him, she was indeed a little surprised. But Yu Qingxian was only momentarily uncomfortable. She got up slowly. Because there was no snow, and there was sunshine, Yu Qingxian changed into a beautiful dress. She carried her luggage downstairs and changed into a new Chinese-style dress, which was not exactly ancient, but still had the appearance of ancient clothing. This kind of dress did not hinder her movements, and did not clash with the ancient garden atmosphere. Even the way Yu Qingxian sat on her luggage was not with her legs crossed, but sitting sideways. Indeed, people rely on their attire. Yu Qingxian felt that her movements had become more restrained. She sat on her luggage, which carried her, and continued to stroll in the garden. There were zombies in the garden, and their clothes also matched the garden's style. She took out her camera and took photos of these zombies. However, it was only morning, and Yu Qingxian's camera almost shut down due to low battery. Fortunately, Yu Qingxian's luggage could be charged. She found a sunny spot to charge her luggage, while she wandered around. She didn't think the zombies would take her luggage or camera. If she had left fresh meat, then she would have had to worry. Yu Qingxian stood under the pavilion, watching her luggage and camera basking in the sun, and wondered if she should take out the things she wanted to do when she was young. With these thoughts, she left her luggage to bask in the sun and went to the nearby shops. When she came out again, she was holding several sketchbooks and some pencils. She had many memories of these things. When she was young, she liked to draw with pencils on the walls at home. At that time, she didn't like to talk to others much. Yu Qingxian felt that she was more socially anxious than autistic. But it wasn't a complete case of autism, because as long as she wanted to, she could still communicate normally with others. She just didn't want to. She felt it was completely unnecessary. When Yu Qingxian returned to the garden with her sketchbook, the battery had been fully charged, and the camera's battery was one-third full. She put the camera back in her luggage, sat on the luggage, holding the sketchbook and pencil, and continued walking. The luggage was stable and not bumpy. She had adjusted the speed to the lowest, similar to a human's walking speed. The fastest speed could even catch up with an electric bike. It's no wonder a luggage like this could sell for tens of thousands. If it weren't for the apocalypse, Yu Qingxian felt that she would only be able to look at it. She couldn't possibly drag it around with her. So Yu Qingxian's first drawing was of her luggage. She got off the luggage, circled around the slowly moving luggage, and then directly stopped it. She squatted on the ground and observed her luggage from all angles. Then she drew sketch after sketch of it. Finally, she chose the most satisfactory one and showed it to the luggage, saying it was the best one she had drawn. Although the luggage was just a piece of luggage and couldn't respond to her, Yu Qingxian didn't mind at all. Anyway, her mood today was very good. Of course, only in the morning. When the sun was slightly to the west, Yu Qingxian's nose caught a faint scent. This was the scent of a living creature. Because everyone's scent gave Yu Qingxian a different aroma. For example, Gu Wanqing's scent was a kind of refreshing and invigorating feeling. The young man next to her also had a faint scent. As for the person sitting in the back seat, the scent he gave Yu Qingxian was more like that of a plant, not a dessert or meaty aroma. However, when these three people eat, it must be a top-notch experience. Because the most fragrant food is not necessarily the most delicious. Of course, it may also be very unhealthy. Even for someone like Gu Wanqing, who is a top-notch human, Yu Qingxian has no appetite for her. As for the rich aroma of ordinary humans, it's like passing by a shop and suddenly smelling something delicious, making you want to eat. But when you enter the shop, the aroma that attracted you outside completely disappears, and you lose your appetite in an instant. This is also why Yu Qingxian has no interest in humans. Once she gets close, the aroma is enough to make her feel full. Thinking of this, Yu Qingxian suddenly realized that she had been eating all along. She just didn't need to eat flesh and blood like ordinary zombies, nor did she need to eat at intervals like advanced zombies such as Shirshingyu. Her way of eating is to smell the aroma of humans. As long as there are people nearby, as long as she smells that aroma, she is already eating, right? Of course, this is just Yu Qingxian's speculation. Oh, Shirshingyu, can you smell the aroma of humans? There was no response. Ah, the person is not here, Yu Qingxian realized. She stood up and looked at the passing zombies, casually grabbing one to ask. Of course, they were just subconsciously venting their desires and couldn't communicate with Yu Qingxian. Yu Qingxian couldn't communicate with them, and she didn't dwell on this issue anymore. She continued to sit on the suitcase and stroll through the garden. As for the faint aroma wafting to her nose, Yu Qingxian didn't pay attention to it. Because it was faint, Yu Qingxian knew that it was some distance away from her. It wasn't until evening that Yu Qingxian felt the aroma gradually dissipate. It didn't suddenly disappear, but dissipated. This situation had occurred once before when she witnessed the death of a man. It had also happened when she killed those people. 
In other words, someone had died. Yu Qingxian pulled the suitcase through the garden and passed through another gate. At this gate, there were many zombies gathered, but they were separated by a barrier. Yu Qingxian slightly turned her head and saw a person lying next to her who had already died from excessive bleeding, not from being injured by zombies. If he had been injured by zombies, he would have turned into a zombie, not died from excessive bleeding here. She squatted down in front of the deceased person. Then she turned to the zombies who were eager to rush forward and waved her hand at them. Her actions were like shooing away small animals. Of course, the zombies couldn't understand. It was just that the dozen rows of barriers prevented them from entering. There weren't many zombies in this area, and the passage here also had a closed gate. The passing zombies couldn't open it. So only Yu Qingxian, who still retained human consciousness, could open this gate. It was this gate that isolated this person's vitality from the outside. If I had walked faster, you should have been able to survive, Yu Qingxian said, looking at his unwillingness before his death. Of course, she didn't feel any guilt. After all, she didn't kill him. Yu Qingxian's gaze shifted from his face to his hand. He was still holding a gun. Well, luckily I didn't rush, otherwise I would have been shot as soon as I opened the door, Yu Qingxian said. After saying this, she tried to take his gun. As soon as she picked it up, she accidentally fired a shot at the floor. Indeed, even the safety was off. As soon as a zombie approached, he would shoot. Even if he knew he would die here, he wouldn't let the zombies hurt him, and even if those people chased after him, he planned to fight back to the death. Why fight so hard? In the end, it's still death, Yu Qingxian said helplessly. After saying this, she bent down and dragged the corpse away by its legs, only leaving behind a trail of red blood on the ground. Yu Qingxian felt like a doomsday cleaning lady. How many people had she buried? Three in the hospital, the man later, and now another one. Five in total. All men. Fortunately, there were no girls. Otherwise, Yu Qingxian didn't know how to face a girl. After all, there was always a sense of protection between the same sex. Yu Qingxian dug a hole and threw the man in, looking at the man lying in the pit. The man's appearance was quite handsome, and he didn't seem very old. He should be a few years younger than herself. Yu Qingxian thought so, but still buried the soil in the pit. There was no place to find a coffin, and no time to cremate him. The flame's temperature was not high enough, at most it would just roast the man crispy. And zombies are afraid of high temperatures. Yu Qingxian was also afraid. Thinking so, she buried the man before dark. She even went up and stamped the new soil down. The soil could block the smell of blood. This way, the buried body would not be dug up by the zombies. Yu Qingxian looked at the grave without even a small mound. If it grew grass in the future, no one would remember if this person existed. After burying the person, she moved her belongings and sat on the suitcase to change her location. Since Lin Yuan had already been explored, she was going to continue heading north. She just entered an alley with her suitcase. Then she heard the sound of a car. She didn't smell any fragrance, it seemed that the car didn't have its windows open. The ceiling was very good, these people were indeed very cautious and wouldn't let their breath leak. But it could also be a coincidence. Yu Qingxian peeked out from the alley, and three minutes later, several cars stopped at the back door of the garden. It seemed that these cars had been modified. Even the windows had protective nets installed. Very professional. In fact, Yu Qingxian was very close to these cars and the people inside, only about 10 meters away. But if they were talking inside the car, she wouldn't be able to hear them. If the car windows were down, Yu Qingxian would still be able to hear them. Of course, whether she was interested in what they were saying was another matter. After all, Yu Qingxian couldn't knock on someone's window and ask them to talk for her to listen. But fortune favors the curious. Those people rolled down the windows. Oh, they looked fierce and evil. They looked like villains from a TV drama. Yu Qingxian had always encountered characters who seemed like protagonists. Would she encounter a villain this time? Is it clean? The man looked towards the back door of the garden, but because he rolled down the window, many zombies gathered around. The howls of those zombies almost drowned out the man's voice. This made Yu Qingxian really want to howl. After many days, she could finally enjoy the show. How could she be drowned out by these fools? Yu Qingxian squatted in the corner, emitting a resentful aura. The people in the car also seemed to be annoyed by the noisy zombies and shouted directly. The zombies actually fell silent. Yu Qingxian was surprised. This person was amazing. He could actually silence the zombies. The people in the car were also somewhat surprised to see the zombies quiet down. But these low-level zombies couldn't break through the modifications of his car. At this time, the zombies were lying in front of the car, blocking his line of sight. He didn't see the person's body. But with such serious gunshot wounds in this city full of zombies, he wouldn't survive. Most importantly, 
he had shot the person in the lungs. Even if he had a strong will, he wouldn't survive, only die in pain. No matter how powerful, didn't they die by their own gun now? Becoming zombie food, not even leaving a complete corpse. Yu Qingxian was very happy listening on the side. So that's how it is, so that's how it is. The mutiny of the Esper team, the original captain was taken out. In other words, the person she buried was actually the captain of the Esper team. But then again, if it were an ordinary person, with such serious injuries, there would be no way to find a safe place. Most importantly, they would have to climb over a dozen rows of one, five meter high fences. Such a talent, actually died. Just 20 minutes ago, she was the one who buried them. What a pity, what a pity. In any case, these people just came to see if that person was dead or not. To be able to shuttle freely in a city full of zombies, that's really something. In any case, Yu Qingxian didn't want to be discovered by these people. If she were discovered, then she would only end up lying flat. Retreat, retreat. The show's over. Yu Qingxian quietly picked up the suitcase and left. Afraid of making any noise. Indeed, humans are too dangerous. Yu Qingxian was now very grateful that she no longer had a heartbeat. Otherwise, she felt that her heartbeat could be heard from 8 miles away at this moment. Yu Qingxian, carrying the suitcase, bent over and crawled away from this place of trouble like a dog. When Yu Qingxian felt that she had reached a safe place, she finally put down the suitcase. In any case, first find a hiding place. Indeed, just because there are many zombies in the big city, it doesn't mean one can do as they please. There are still people like Gu Wanqing who can do as they please in the big city. So Yu Qingxian's days ahead will be difficult. It turns out that the days as a zombie are not so easy. At this moment, Yu Qingxian once again had the idea of locking herself in the house. As long as she's in the house, she doesn't have to worry about facing those humans. Of course, in just a moment, Yu Qingxian kicked open the door. To hell with locking herself in. She still wants to travel the country on foot. But first, let's look at the route. Does she want to gather some human intelligence? If she wanders around, she might lose her life. Since two Esper teams have come to this city within two days, it means that there must be survivor bases near this city. And these teams look very strong, after all, they've all staged a coup. It shows that there are many strong people in the teams. If one's abilities are not enough to lead their subordinates, then they will definitely be replaced. So these must be the people from the official newly built base. What does the big base look like? I really want to go and see. Should I go and take a look secretly? Take a few more photos? Ah! Exciting, exciting. With this in mind, Yu Qingxian began to make a plan. First of all, she definitely can't get too close, because there must be defenses set up within several kilometers or even dozens of kilometers. After all, it's a place where humans will live for a long time in the future, so it naturally can't be easily overrun by zombies. So the situation in which the city is surrounded by zombies and then abandoned will definitely not exist. It's not that Yu Qingxian is thinking too optimistically. It's that the country she lives in can indeed achieve this. With this in mind, Yu Qingxian naturally had to be cautious. First, she secretly followed those Esper teams. In the past, Yu Qingxian always avoided humans. But now, Yu Qingxian is following them. Although following humans, she naturally has to be careful of some Espers, such as those with sharp eyes or sensitive ears. But what Yu Qingxian needs is not to always follow behind humans. Until she roughly knows their direction, that's enough. As long as it's a place where humans are heading, it must be a safe place for humans. If it's safe for humans, then she should go in the opposite direction. After confirming this, Yu Qingxian sniffed around with her nose to see where there were humans. Originally, Yu Qingxian thought she would have to wait a few days to encounter humans. But she never expected that there were so many people in City G. Who came here to play Mahjong? Of course, these people did not live in the city center of G, but on the outskirts. After all, there were not many zombies on the outskirts, and it was easy to escape. Yu Qingxian could smell the presence of two groups of people, probably dozens of them. With this in mind, there must be a large base nearby. After all, within a few hundred kilometers, there were many large cities. Those who went out to work were mostly concentrated in these cities. With many zombies, there were also many survivors. With many survivors, there were also many people with special abilities. Otherwise, there wouldn't be the kind of power struggle that happened during the day. Yu Qingxian placed her luggage in a safe place before carefully taking her binoculars and approaching. First, she needed to confirm the number of people on the other side. There were two groups in total, separated by only a few hundred meters. It was probably for the purpose of being ready to fight if zombies appeared. Yu Qingxian crouched on the building and observed the vehicles of the two teams with her binoculars. They were all parked outside and had not been driven into the buildings. 
Indeed, humans' ability to react and adapt was quite strong. The vehicles of the two teams had been modified, even the wheels were made of a material that could withstand nails without being punctured. Even the roofs of the cars were equipped with machine guns. Obviously, three months was enough time for humans to develop self-defense capabilities. Yu Qingxian looked at the vehicles and then up at the building. She noticed that the windows were covered with anti-glare film. This type of film allowed clear visibility from the inside, but prevented visibility from the outside, as well as the reflection of light from the inside. After all, zombies were attracted to light. If there was light, it would attract zombies and zombie birds. Of course, this type of anti-glare film was only effective against ordinary zombies and not against second or third level zombies. In such cases, fighting was the only option. Yu Qingxian carefully observed and noticed that the survivors closer to her seemed to be the group she had seen during the day. This made Yu Qingxian even more cautious. Just as she was about to retract her binoculars, she noticed something outside the temporary residence of the group that looked like a supersized bat. Upon closer inspection, she realized it was not a bat, but a zombie. It still had a human body and head, but its hands and feet were covered in black flesh, making it look like a supersized bat. Obviously, this zombie was an evolved advanced zombie, likely looking for an opportunity to attack humans. It probably planned to strike when it was quiet at night. Evolved zombies were indeed more formidable, knowing when to choose the right time to attack. Yu Qingxian had no intention of warning those people. If they couldn't handle this kind of zombie, coming to a city full of zombies was simply seeking death. Around 1 or 2 in the morning, the zombie finally made a move. It broke through the window and immediately caused a commotion inside the building. Yu Qingxian crouched at the window, carefully observing the situation inside. She could see the chaos through the broken window. After all, an advanced zombie that infiltrated for a surprise attack was indeed unexpected. The screams attracted the surrounding zombies, and they began to gather towards the source of the screams. At that moment, the people inside didn't care about the gunshots attracting more zombies. After all, the screams had already attracted them. The priority was to kill the advanced zombie and then leave the area. There was also movement from another team of special ability users a hundred meters away. As for whether to help this team, it was definitely impossible. Even if you really go to help, it is very likely to be used by the other party as bait. And that Black Thunder team is such a team. Especially since the captain of the Black Thunder team disappeared half a month ago, the Black Thunder team has become even more lawless. There used to be their captain to keep them in check. Therefore, the teams in the base all feel that the reason why the captain of the Black Thunder team disappeared may have been killed by someone. But no one has evidence. Until three days ago, someone said they saw the captain of the Black Thunder team in City G, still alive, but running away when seen, seemingly afraid of being discovered. Now that they have encountered the Black Thunder team in City G, maybe they are here to kill the former captain. A team that can even harm its captain and use its members as bait won't help. So in Yu Qingxian's eyes, when another team discovered the attack of an advanced zombie, they packed up and ran away. This surprised Yu Qingxian. She thought that at this time, the two teams would work together to take down this advanced zombie. After all, the crystal nucleus of an advanced zombie should be very valuable. So even if she couldn't get the crystal nucleus of this zombie, she could still get a lot of things from the other side. Thinking of the crystal nucleus, Yu Qingxian felt that the backpack on her back seemed very heavy. This made Yu Qingxian scream again. She forgot to return the crystal nucleus to Shi Xingyu. With that kid's speed, she doesn't know where he's gone now. The phone can't be used, and even if it could, she can't contact Shi Xingyu. Yu Qingxian sighed at the window. She would have to carry this crystal nucleus until autumn, and then return it to Shi Xingyu. Yu Qingxian squatted at the window for about 20 minutes, and that zombie was still taken down by the team of supernaturals. However, hundreds of zombies surrounded them, and if the team wanted to leave, someone had to lead the zombies away, or just blow up the zombies. But these zombies were very close to their car, and if they threw a bomb, it would definitely affect the vehicle. Just as Yu Qingxian was curious about how the team would handle it, two people suddenly jumped down from the second floor and ran towards Yu Qingxian. The zombies behind the two people naturally chased after them when they couldn't open the gate. And while these zombies were distracted, the people upstairs immediately came down and drove away. Yu Qingxian instantly understood that these two people were bait. She thought that this kind of plot would only happen in novels. But thinking of many social news, Yu Qingxian felt that it didn't seem too surprising. Who would have thought that the handsome guy she could communicate with easily would eat people? The two people being used as bait also ran for their lives. After all, as long as they could shake off the zombies, there was still a chance of survival. Yu Qingxian looked at the zombies approaching and felt that the chances of these two people surviving were not great. But in the end, 
the people who could enter the team of supernaturals were definitely not useless. The two people ran fast, and one of them stepped on the roof of a car and climbed up to the second floor. After all, standing on the roof of a car was not safe either. But if the person who climbed to the second floor encountered zombies, then they would be in danger. Yu Qingxian stood on the building and wanted to see how the remaining person would escape. She saw the young man quickly take out something from a small bag around his waist and threw it back. Then with a bang, the bodies of the group of zombies were instantly blown away. The rumble traveled far. In this clean city, it seemed exceptionally loud, especially with Yu Qingxian's strong hearing. So this explosion sounded like it was right in her head. Indeed, having good hearing is not necessarily a good thing. Yu Qingxian did not move, but watched the two people escape. People who could be pushed out as bait shouldn't be considered particularly weak. After all, if they were not skilled, the two of them would have been caught and eaten by zombies as soon as they went downstairs. It was useless at the door. So, the bait had to be either fast or capable. Obviously, the two people that Yu Qingxian saw were indeed capable. But would the car that had already left come back to pick them up? Yu Qingxian turned her head to look at the street in the distance, where a group of zombies was running towards them. She felt it was unlikely. Hundreds of zombies had already prompted them to use living people as bait. It would not be appropriate to put the whole team in danger again for this bait. In other words, these two people had definitely been abandoned. Yu Qingxian turned and walked towards the other room on the other side of the building, confirming that the zombies had also gathered there. Even the zombies on her floor were restless. When Yu Qingxian returned to the window where she had been watching, she found that the two people were gone, but she could still smell their scents. It indicated that the two people were still alive and had not left a certain range. However, the sense of the two team members were no longer there. In other words, they were probably one or two kilometers away from Yu Qingxian. It would probably be difficult for them to come back. Yu Qingxian waited in the house for about 10 minutes, but the two team members did not return. Of course, the two baits had survived, but the ground floor was crowded with zombies. Yu Qingxian dared not go downstairs, fearing that she would be trampled by the zombies as soon as she entered. Although Yu Qingxian was not short, she was slender and belonged to the type that stayed indoors. She definitely wouldn't be able to push through with those zombies. Yu Qingxian went down to the first floor, looked at the zombies outside the door, and then turned and went in another direction. There were not many zombies on the street behind her, so Yu Qingxian opened the window and climbed out. It seemed that the two baits had found a temporary safe place to hide. The scents were stable, indicating that the two people had not moved. But that was understandable. There were zombies everywhere below, so how could they dare to move? But Yu Qingxian didn't care at all. She walked back to where she had left her luggage. In fact, it was not far from that street. It was just a few hundred meters away. But because it was a dead end, and it was a narrow alley with quite a few zombies, humans would not easily venture into such a place. Yu Qingxian sat on her luggage and pondered. The main reason was that she couldn't speak human language, otherwise, she could save those two people and get information from them. For example, whether the official main base had been built. China was vast, and she always felt that building only five bases was definitely not enough. There should be at least five or more. So Yu Qingxian had to figure out the locations of these bases. The more people with abilities, the larger the range of human activities. In the early days of the apocalypse, she could encounter so many survivors. When humans gradually faced the zombies, she couldn't act recklessly. She couldn't level up, nor could she gradually become human like Shiksinjiu. Even with the wound on her face covered, she would be recognized as a zombie in an instant. It would be difficult for her to find the mother and daughter. Although they might tell her if she asked, the risk was greater than if she went to find them herself. Thinking of this, Yu Qingxian thought it over and decided against it. They were members of the team of people with abilities, and they killed zombies like cutting grass. If she went over, she would definitely get shot. Forget it, forget it. Let's continue on the road. On the other side, two teenagers were hiding in a house. Looking at the densely packed zombies downstairs, they fell into silence. They would be used as bait, which was naturally expected. After all, they were the original team leader's people, and the deputy team leader would definitely not let them live. But they had to stay alive, they still had to find the team leader. They didn't believe that the team leader had died like that. Just as the two were thinking about how to escape from the encirclement of so many zombies, they heard firecrackers going off on the next street. But considering the time, today happened to be the Lantern Festival. But this was the end of the world, how could anyone set off firecrackers in the middle of the night? However, after hearing the firecrackers, the zombies headed towards the sound. But the sound of a single firecracker didn't last long. So when the first firecracker finished, the zombies hadn't completely left. 
But at that moment, the second firecracker went off. There were even fireworks. This astonished the two teenagers. In the end of the world, there were actually people who weren't afraid of death. Who on earth was setting off firecrackers and fireworks? At this moment, Yu Qingxian, who was being treated as a deity, looked at the fireworks she had ignited in front of her and found them quite beautiful. When she saw the zombies turning from the roadside, she cheerfully said, Happy New Year, everyone, even though it might have been the New Year last month. The zombies came towards the fireworks, and when they saw that there was only one zombie here, they stopped advancing. They just stood in rows on the street, watching Yu Qingxian set off fireworks. From the smell, it could be felt that the two baits had already moved. It seemed that she had led all the zombies over. Yu Qingxian took out several strings of electronic firecrackers from the box behind her and hung them on several zombies. After turning on the switch, Yu Qingxian left with her suitcase. The zombies with firecrackers were instantly overwhelmed by the other zombies. Yu Qingxian felt a little embarrassed, but she still left with her suitcase. She had led the zombies away to let the two baits find a way to escape. Whether they could escape or not was not her concern. But Yu Qingxian never expected that the two baits would take a big detour and end up where she had set off the firecrackers and fireworks. Yu Qingxian could see it clearly from upstairs. The two teenagers' figures looked suspicious, as if they were looking for someone. Yu Qingxian stared at them for a few minutes before realizing that the two baits were looking for her. No, why would they come looking for her after being saved? Yu Qingxian felt that she had already helped them, and if they didn't want to escape but instead wanted to join in the fun, she wouldn't intervene if they fell into danger again. She was fair. However, after staring at the two for a while, Yu Qingxian found that their movements were very agile. They didn't seem like ordinary people. Even if they hadn't awakened any special abilities, their physical skills were definitely not bad. The two could easily jump from one rooftop to another. Such talented individuals wouldn't voluntarily act as bait, right? The two teenagers only saw the zombies downstairs, but didn't see any humans. Only a few zombies were still flashing with electronic firecrackers. The teenagers were puzzled, but they also knew that they couldn't stay on the rooftop at this time. They still needed to find a way to get a car in order to survive in the city. In their hearts, could it be their own team leader? But now it seemed not. Yu Qingxian stared at them for a while before turning and leaving. Obviously, they didn't leave this place as soon as they were out of danger, but instead ran towards the inner city. This decision to act as bait was their own. Since it was self-inflicted, it had nothing to do with her. Yu Qingxian went downstairs, got on her suitcase, and headed in the direction where the two cents had disappeared. It was almost 5 o'clock, and the sky was beginning to lighten. Yu Qingxian suddenly stopped on the roadside and sat quietly on her suitcase, waiting for the sunrise. At this time, many houses on the edge of the city had collapsed for some reason. Some vines were clinging to them. The breeze brushed by, and the green leaves swayed. Yu Qingxian stared at the leaves, couldn't help but get up, picked one, and hung it on her head. So the leaf swayed on her head. This inexplicably improved Yu Qingxian's mood. Ah, I am the slow sheep village chief. Yu Qingxian spoke. After saying this, Yu Qingxian went to pick many more and stuck them on her head. The troubled slow sheep village chief. Yu Qingxian added. During her antics, the sky slowly brightened. Yu Qingxian's previous life was always upside down, and she rarely saw the sunrise. She had seen it once on a cross sea bridge before. But Yu Qingxian originally went to the bridge to see the sunrise. It was never like today, waiting for the sunrise because it was getting bright. Yu Qingxian watched the slowly rising sun, the gentle breeze blowing. No wonder so many people want to travel. This was the first time Yu Qingxian truly felt like she was traveling. Yu Qingxian did not take off the vines but walked while staring at the green leaves. However, because of the sun, these leaves wilted after half an hour. When Yu Qingxian passed through a town, she found that the town was built along both sides of a river. Carrying her suitcase down the stairs, she could still see that this town should have been quite lively before the end of the world. But because of the stairs and some railings, it indeed prevented the zombies from coming out of this ancient town. Yu Qingxian walked down, looking at the swaying zombies, which made her hesitate for a moment. It was because the zombies all looked at her in that moment. If those zombies hadn't lost interest in her in an instant, Yu Qingxian felt like she had entered the world before the end of the world. The zombies today should have evolved once. Their reaction to sound has become more sensitive and rapid. Of course, their clothes were also more tattered. Many zombies had flesh and skin falling off, exposing their bones. Some even dragged their entrails around. The zombies that lost interest in Yu Qingxian began to wander aimlessly. Yu Qingxian could only awkwardly nod at them and then drag her suitcase along the street. Because the shops on the side of the street were not cleaned, they were covered in dust. Many plants grew out of the cracks in the stones. 
This surprised Yu Qingxian. Just three months without human traces, and these plants had gone wild. Perhaps the current weather was very suitable for their growth. Yu Qingxian took out her camera and took pictures of the beautiful shops on the roadside. These riverside shops were mostly coffee shops, some bars, and of course, some bookstores. When she saw the bookstore, Yu Qingxian walked in without hesitation. The store looked very neat and orderly. There were indeed two zombies at the bar, but one of them had already fallen to the ground, probably dead. The other one looked healthy. It was just that the bar was enclosed, and the door needed to be opened to enter. So these two zombies were inside the bar and did not come out. Yu Qingxian said excuse me to them and then carried her suitcase upstairs. The situation on the second floor was not so good. After all, it was a scenic area, and there were many tourists. There were many bloodstains on the ground. However, they had turned black, and it didn't look so terrifying anymore. Yu Qingxian put her suitcase at the stairwell and then went to see those zombies. There were human bodies that had been dismembered, but by now, they had decayed beyond recognition. Yu Qingxian didn't mind and kindly led the zombies that were wandering on the second floor downstairs and sent them out of the bookstore. She also sent the zombie that had been trapped in the bar for three months out of the bookstore. Yu Qingxian didn't know if this store belonged to this zombie, but as a human being, as an adult, it is necessary to go off work. Yu Qingxian is just sending it off work now. You can go play now, if you want to come back, just stand at the door for a while, I will open the door for you, Yu Qingxian said. It is easy to recognize it by the work clothes of this bookstore. But is it appropriate to wear work clothes after work? Yu Qingxian thought about changing its clothes, but when she turned around, the zombie had already disappeared. Sure enough, whether it's a person or a zombie, they all run fast after work. She moved all the bodies in the bookstore out of the room and buried them in the flower bed. Although it may be a bit unfair to use the flower bed as their grave, this is the only thing Yu Qingxian can do. By the time she finished these things, it was already afternoon. It was only at this time that Yu Qingxian realized what she had done to read quietly. Yu Qingxian stood at the door, looking at the setting sun in the west, and then turned into the bookstore. After going upstairs and looking at the empty second floor, she began to pick up the scattered books on the floor and put them on the shelves. Then she went to get water and cleaned the entire study room. By the time she finished, it was already dark. Yu Qingxian's vision was not affected much, but she still reached out and pressed the switch. There was no change. Even though she didn't need to sleep, she couldn't help but sleep for a few days. After going upstairs, Yu Qingxian sat on the chair and lay her whole body on the desk. After a while, Yu Qingxian took out her own charging cable and connected it to the backup power supply on the suitcase. She wanted to charge her phone. The phone hadn't been charged for several months, but that wasn't the most important thing. The most important thing was that she couldn't turn it on. Although this was a very old phone from many years ago, many apps and games couldn't run on it. But she could still see the photo album and chat records. Now she couldn't turn it on. This made Yu Qingxian very anxious, but she didn't dare to hit it casually. Afraid that if she hit it, it would really break. Although it couldn't be turned on, it could still show that it was charging. Yu Qingxian felt that she either had to find someone to help her fix the phone, or she had to learn to fix it herself. But Yu Qingxian didn't trust her own skills. She only had one phone and she wasn't sure if she could fix it well. It seems that she still has to find someone to help her fix it. This is also too difficult for a zombie. Yu Qingxian was entangled in whether to learn to fix the phone herself or find someone to fix it until dawn. In the end, Yu Qingxian chose to learn it herself. Since she wanted to learn it herself, she needed to watch tutorials. She didn't have this knowledge. It seems very difficult to learn without a master to guide her. Yu Qingxian thought that she shouldn't take 10 or 8 years to learn it. She could wait for 10 or 8 years, but her phone definitely couldn't wait. Yu Qingxian was so anxious that she hit the table. The major she studied in school is completely useless in the apocalypse. Yu Qingxian looked at her phone, which was fully charged, but still couldn't be turned on, which puzzled her greatly. Since it can be charged, why can't it be turned on? She had thought about getting a computer and then importing everything into the computer. As a result, the phone couldn't be turned on. Could it be that it was frozen in the low temperature during the heavy snowfall before? It seems possible. After all, the phone she used would automatically shut down in low temperatures and couldn't be turned on at all. But now she is in a warm place. It should be able to turn on. Yu Qingxian put the phone on the table, reached out and pushed open the window next to it. The sunlight happened to shine in, and Yu Qingxian turned to the bookshelf and took out a book. It was as if she was preparing to settle in this town. In the morning, she read a book, went out for a walk at noon, and sat in a restaurant for half an hour. Even though no one cooked for her, and she didn't need to eat, Yu Qingxian just wanted to do it. After all, 
That's what tourists do, right? Yu Qingxian sat on a chair for a while, then got up and left. She leisurely seemed like a real tourist. She didn't need a mask, wouldn't be stared at, and wouldn't suddenly have someone come up and talk to her. Of course, even before the apocalypse, that wouldn't happen. But no matter what, she needed to talk to people, and that really bothered her. After all, she really wasn't good at communicating with humans. When Yu Qingxian passed by a dental clinic, the wind blew and her long hair fluttered, as if she saw something. She stopped and looked at the dental clinic. For some reason, something she had forgotten seemed to reappear in her mind. At that time, she was already 20 years old. An adult should be able to go to the doctor by themselves, but she was still like a three-year-old, clinging to her mother's clothes and following her. Because when she went to the dentist, it was just the dentist and herself. Her mother sat outside waiting, and the doctor only said a few words to her, and she couldn't help but cry. This led the doctor to think that maybe the anesthesia had worn off and she was crying from the pain. She couldn't help but cover her eyes and tell the doctor not to talk to her. Looking back now, the doctor probably thought she was sick. It was really difficult for the doctor at the time. It was completely her own fault, and in the end, it made the doctor feel guilty. Indeed, being a human is really tiring. There are those like her who are not good at interacting with humans, and there are those who have to interact with all kinds of people for a living. Yu Qingxian leaned over and looked inside the glass door. There were no zombies inside, and many of the devices inside were gone. They must have been taken by survivors. But of course, these things are very necessary in the apocalypse. But it also made Yu Qingxian think of something. Since survivors came here to take things, does that mean there will be survivors here? She wouldn't be in danger, right? Yu Qingxian turned to look at the roads on both sides of the river. In fact, there weren't many zombies on both sides, most of them were gathered at the intersection. Because there were occasional vehicles passing by on the road, these zombies would gather at the intersection. So when Yu Qingxian came down the steps, this place was full of zombies. Yu Qingxian returned to the bookstore. She spent the afternoon taking pictures with a fully charged camera. Sometimes she took pictures of houses, sometimes of rivers, sometimes of zombies, and sometimes of flowers. In any case, it was definitely not something she would have done when she was alive. Yu Qingxian stayed in this town for five days, walking from the head of the town to the tail. Although this kind of town was already full of commercial atmosphere, and probably often criticized on the internet. But suddenly, it became quiet and looked very beautiful. Yu Qingxian stood at the end of the town, holding her suitcase, looking up at the blue sky with white clouds floating by. Several birds flew over her head, chirping. Yu Qingxian smiled slightly. She needed to move on to the next stop. She waved to the town. She didn't know if the town would return to human hands the next time she came. Yu Qingxian got on her beloved suitcase and continued on. It was probably not far from the official base. She walked for three more days and when she arrived at a small town, she found that there were no zombies in this town. Yu Qingxian instantly understood that this place already belonged to humans. But because no one lived there, it seemed unusually quiet. Yu Qingxian carefully sniffed and confirmed that there were no humans in this small town, then found a tall building to climb up, then use a telescope to observe the distance. Finally, she saw a black spot on the horizon. Just because the distance was so far, there was only a black spot in Yu Qingxian's eyes. However, being able to see this city from such a distance is enough to show that the city wall is very high and large. This made Yu Qingxian even more curious about the newly built survivor base. But it is not a simple matter to approach the survivor base. Of course, for humans, seeing the base is seeing the hope of life. So how to approach the new human home? After all, only where there are people can there be someone to repair appliances. But there should be someone alive to repair the phone. Yu Qingxian now wishes to become a living person and then rush to the base to fix the phone. The longer the delay, the lower the possibility of repair. Yu Qingxian thought, it seems that she really needs to start from scratch. This made Yu Qingxian anxious and restless in the house. And just when she was anxious, she smelled the scent of humans. This startled her. Because humans were approaching. Yu Qingxian was so scared that she hid in the room stealthily. Fortunately, these humans did not intend to go upstairs. It seems they were conducting some kind of underground trade. They mentioned that the base was 50 kilometers to the east, where there was a black market. Anything could be traded there, but because of the variety of goods, it was not protected by the authorities. However, the people in the black market were all very skilled. Whether it was modifying cars or buying firearms, everything was possible. Therefore, they received protection from many teams of supernatural fighters, who occasionally helped clear the surrounding zombies. Of course, this black market mainly dealt in medicines and food. After hearing what these people said, Yu Qingxian was somewhat surprised. 
Since it was a black market, she thought she could cover her face, remain silent, and communicate by typing on a tablet. Moreover, it would be convenient for her to obtain medicines and food. However, she didn't know what place was 50 kilometers to the east of the base. Well, having a direction was always good. Yu Qingxian carefully watched the several cars downstairs, which seemed to be trading something. She crouched upstairs, listening to their trade. It turned out they were trading crystal cores. Twenty minutes later, the two groups of people left the place. Yu Qingxian made sure they had left before she went downstairs. But as soon as she was about to leave, she found a piece of paper at her feet. It seemed to be the location of that place. Without hesitation, Yu Qingxian picked it up and put it in her pocket. Having confirmed the place she wanted to go, Yu Qingxian no longer hesitated. She just didn't know that less than 20 minutes after she left, a car arrived. The people in the car got out and searched everywhere, but they couldn't find the piece of paper. Didn't it fall here? It's not in the car either. Could it have been blown away by the wind? One of them said puzzled. How could such an important thing be lost? If it really fell here, it must still be in the original place, and it couldn't have been picked up by anyone. It couldn't have been blown away. But who would come to this place? The person who lost the address was also very annoyed. It had only been 20 minutes, how could someone have passed by here and picked it up? At this time, Yu Qingxian, who had picked up the paper, of course did not know that those people had come back. She rode her small suitcase quickly. She knew the exact address. It was 200 kilometers from her location. But for Yu Qingxian, it was not far. Even though it would be very dangerous for others to pass through a city full of zombies, it was not difficult for Yu Qingxian. The important thing was her skin color. Yu Qingxian prepared to touch up her makeup, at least make herself look less terrifying. Yu Qingxian rarely found a mirror and carefully looked at her face. It had been a long time since she had seen the cracks on her lips. Yu Qingxian finally observed carefully. The torn part seemed to have been forcibly torn open by her own fingers, causing the left side of her face to be completely torn open. There were no signs of decay in the flesh and blood, which surprised Yu Qingxian. After all, many zombies had started to decay. She had not looked at her face for the past few months, actually because she was afraid of this problem. But now it seemed that she didn't need to worry about this issue. It's just that as the weather gets warmer, she still needs to deal with the wound on her face. Even if it doesn't hurt, if a fly lays eggs on her face and then she ends up with a mouthful of maggots, that wouldn't be good. Yu Qingxian thought wearing a mask was indeed a good thing. But she should first sew up her face. Yu Qingxian wandered around the hospital and finally found surgical catgut. She just didn't know if her body could absorb it. If it didn't absorb, wouldn't she have chosen the catgut for nothing? After struggling, she used the catgut to sew up her face first, making it look less frightening. It took her half an hour to sew her face properly. She even tightly wrapped the claw marks on her wrist with a bandage. She didn't want to breed maggots. After all, if she did, she would have to remove them one by one. Too much trouble. In fact, Yu Qingxian didn't notice any problem with her eyes. It wasn't until she brought over a book of people's photos to compare that she realized there was indeed a problem with her eyes. It turned out that she had become a zombie, and there was indeed a beautifying filter on her. Her eyes didn't look like those of a living person no matter how she looked at them. After thinking it over, Yu Qingxian still felt that she needed to cover herself up. But if she covered herself too tightly, it would be very suspicious, right? Indeed, as a zombie, there were convenient and inconvenient aspects. But Yu Qingxian couldn't avoid fixing her phone. It would be best if she could transfer all these things to a new phone. Then she could handle it herself in the future. Yu Qingxian still chose to cover herself up more tightly. She put on long pants and long sleeves, but because it was a thin undershirt, it could cover her skin color and not make her look like a fool wearing too many clothes on a hot day. Then she put on a mask and a fisherman's hat, and Yu Qingxian indeed looked like a human being. Although she was a zombie, her physical abilities had increased many times compared to when she was alive. After all, she could climb 20 floors now without panting. After ensuring that her appearance didn't show any flaws, Yu Qingxian had to think about communication. First, there was the issue of language. She had always thought she was speaking human language. Who knew that what she was saying was not human language at all? So Yu Qingxian had to doubt whether the words she wrote could be understood by humans. So she couldn't be sure about the words she wrote. Since she couldn't be sure if the words she wrote could be understood by humans, she really couldn't write anymore. Yu Qingxian first took a tablet, charged it, turned it on, and then opened the memo, typed the words, and then had the system voice read it out. After confirming that the words she typed did convey the meaning she wanted, Yu Qingxian finally breathed a sigh of relief. Fortunately, her brain wasn't damaged, and what she wanted to express was still the same as a human's. Since she could communicate by typing, 
She didn't have to worry about being at a loss when someone asked her a question. After preparing everything, Yu Qingxian headed towards the direction of the black market. But Yu Qingxian was still a little worried. After all, she was alone. What if someone targeted her? Oh well, let it be, she had already died once anyway. Daring. If she can fix the phone smoothly, she will profit. In any case, for Yu Qingxian, neither outcome is bad. Yu Qingxian has never been to the black market. She put several boxes of anti-inflammatory, antipyretic, and pain-relieving drugs in her backpack. These drugs should be important in the apocalypse. This is her only chance. If she didn't die in the hands of the black market people, she wouldn't have the courage to come a second time. She has staked all her courage, 28 years, no, soon to be 29 years, on this moment. When she arrived at the place, she found that the black market was underground and outside the safe zone of the base. Because there are still many zombies in the small town 10 kilometers away. The people who can operate a black market here are really bold and skilled. Yu Qingxian is actually very afraid of being searched. Just a touch from someone and she feels cold all over, already cold. Fortunately, the two people guarding the entrance only gave Yu Qingxian a brief glance when they saw her. After all, Yu Qingxian's appearance clearly indicates that she is a girl. A girl who is alone is indeed not common. But they let her in. There are lights at the entrance. I don't know if the electricity comes from somewhere or from a generator. Anyway, it's not dim inside. Yu Qingxian walked down the passage and, after about two minutes, her eyes suddenly opened up. She found that it was like an underground street. Although there weren't many people, there were indeed various shops. Yu Qingxian didn't know who to look for to fix her phone. But after scanning around, she headed towards a place that looked more like dealing with electronic devices. Because there were some phones and walkie-talkies on the counter of this shop. Yu Qingxian walked over and knocked on the counter, then input her thoughts into the tablet. The man looked up at the tablet in Yu Qingxian's hand and said, Fixing a phone? Nowadays, people don't use phones much. They use these new communication devices, with a longer range and can adapt to the current magnetic field. Do you want to change to one? Yu Qingxian shook her head. She didn't need to contact anyone, she just wanted to fix her phone. Seeing Yu Qingxian shake her head, the shop owner didn't push further, but asked Yu Qingxian to hand over her phone. As for why Yu Qingxian didn't speak but typed to show him, the shop owner didn't mind. After all, although rare, there are people who can't speak in the apocalypse. Anyone who dares to come to such a place is not a good person. Fixing a phone is not difficult, but what are you going to use for payment? The man asked again. After all, there are people in the base who can do this kind of thing, so why come to a place like this? Hearing this, Yu Qingxian took out a box of antipyretic medicine from her backpack and put it on his counter. This box of medicine was completely unopened, which made the man almost drop his eyeballs on it. You see, even the ability users in the base wouldn't give out whole boxes of medicine like this. You see, there are not many medicines on the market now. Although the authorities are also urgently dealing with this situation, all plants and water have been contaminated after the apocalypse. It is the most difficult to solve the problem of medicinal herbs in this aspect. The medicines that can be obtained have already been taken by the ability users task force and the authorities. It is indeed impossible to enter some hospitals in big cities. So Yu Qingxian directly took out a box of antipyretic medicine, which was undoubtedly like putting a pound of gold on someone's table before the apocalypse. The man immediately took the medicine and said, don't worry, I guarantee to fix your phone and modify it to adapt to the current magnetic field, at least it can be used for 5 or 10 more years. Although Yu Qingxian didn't believe the man's words, she didn't refute them either. Seeing that Yu Qingxian didn't speak, the man took it as her consent. He even brought out a stool for Yu Qingxian to sit on. Yu Qingxian sat down. As for whether there were people around her, she didn't know. This fisherman's hat was really useful. Not only could it cover her upper face, but it could also block others' line of sight. Yu Qingxian sat on a chair, taking out a book from the suitcase to read. According to the boss, it would take one or two hours to repair the phone. As long as she sat down, she instantly became inconspicuous. I really don't understand you. The note was well kept in your pocket, and yet it still fell out. How would I know? It's really my fault, otherwise we wouldn't have been delayed these few days, another voice immediately replied, with a hint of apology in the tone. Because they were delayed for a few days, the good things had already been bought. But fortunately, these things were not disposable, and there were more to come. And they had already reserved for the next time, so it didn't cause too much loss. The two of them talked and then left the underground black market. Their voices were not loud, but Yu Qingxian's ears were really good. And the smell on them was indeed the same as the one she had smelled a few days ago. It was enough to show that the note in her pocket was dropped by these two people. 
But Yu Qingxian still kept her head down and didn't want to look at the two of them. The note was picked up by her, but she definitely wouldn't return it. She didn't hear anything and didn't know anything. After the two people left, she continued to lower her head and read the book. It was almost two hours later when the owner of the repair shop spoke, your phone has been repaired. Although the appearance has changed, the content inside has not changed. The operating memory and the built-in memory have also been greatly expanded, so you don't have to worry about running out of memory for at least three to five years. Listening to the owner's words, Yu Qingxian reached out and took her phone. She was wearing sunscreen gloves on her hands, so you couldn't see the color of her hands. Yu Qingxian opened the phone to check, and indeed, there was no loss in the chat records with her parents, herself, and various photos. Of course, for the owner, repairing a phone was not a big deal. When he was in the base before, he often encountered people who wanted to repair their phones. Like her parents, lover, and children, all died in this disaster. So it was naturally important to get the phone back on. Yu Qingxian confirmed that although her phone had changed its appearance, the contents inside were not missing. She nodded at the owner, put the book back in the suitcase, and put the tablet and phone back in her backpack. She didn't stay in this place for long and turned around and left the underground black market. It was the owner who waved at Yu Qingxian's back, if you want to repair anything next time, remember to come to me. Yu Qingxian thought for a moment, turned back and walked over, using the tablet to show the owner the locations of the several official bases she wanted to build. The owner took out a map and gave it to her. This map is free for you. It contains information about the official bases, and each base is recruiting strong individuals. I think you are very good, and any base would be happy to have you, the owner said to himself. Yu Qingxian took the map and found that it was more like an electronic screen. It turned out that in just three months on Earth, technology had developed to such an extent. Thinking of this, Yu Qingxian took a box of anti-inflammatory drugs and put it on the table, then turned and left. No matter how the owner called her from behind, she pretended not to hear. This successful disguise made Yu Qingxian breathe a sigh of relief. But it didn't mean that this success would be repeated next time. Yu Qingxian always felt that her success this time had already used up her lifetime of luck. Yu Qingxian sat on the suitcase and headed north. At this point, she had confirmed the location of the official base, and this map had indeed made things much easier for her. There was no need to be in the dark. Yu Qingxian put the map book in her backpack and then opened her phone. Inside were messages from her parents and various photos. Her parents really loved to travel. Of course, it was because she didn't like going out, so they would travel and take all kinds of photos to show her. After seeing the photos of her parents, Yu Qingxian was stunned. Because her parents had indeed taken photos of many places for her to see. But at that time, she had never really gone to see the scenery her parents had taken photos of, and most of her attention was on her parents, and she rarely took the initiative to ask them what they had seen that day. Yu Qingxian looked at the last photo her parents sent, which was the day they had a car accident. They had sent a message to her, saying they were going to see the earliest sunrise in the country. After that, there were no more messages. She didn't even receive the call right away that day. Yu Qingxian was someone who didn't answer any calls except from her parents. Even many times, her parents didn't call her when they wanted to contact her, knowing that she wouldn't answer. So it was when the police came to her door that she found out about her parents' passing. And at that time, there were several missed calls on her phone without any names. But for some reason, when she found out about her parents' passing, she didn't feel very sad. She even felt like she was relieved. After all, her only motivation for living was her parents. She had loving parents and a good family background. But for some reason, she still fell ill. Yu Qingxian didn't have any unbearable past or dark memories. She just didn't want to live. Yu Qingxian looked at the message her mother sent, which was more than three years ago, around two in the morning. That was also the last message her mother sent. Baby, mom and dad are going to see the earliest sunrise and take photos for you. Yu Qingxian rarely looked at these chat records. She was born with a lack of emotion, and even when facing her parents, her emotions were so weak that it was frightening. Just like what her parents' relatives said, it would have been better to raise a dog than to have her. And she felt the same way. So after her parents passed away, she no longer had any contact with those relatives. She didn't even know if any of her parents' relatives were still alive. Thinking about this, Yu Qingxian pulled back her thoughts. Since she had come to this place, she decided to go and see the earliest sunrise that her parents wanted to see. Yu Qingxian confirmed what she was going to do next and began to relax. Before, it was her parents who took pictures of the scenery for her to see. So next, she would take pictures of the scenery for her parents to see. She wanted to see the sunrise that her parents hadn't seen and the scenery that her parents had seen. Yu Qingxian also wanted to try to understand her parents' love for her 
and she wanted to love her parents. After deciding where to go next, Yu Qingxian was not in such a hurry. She opened the map given to her by the boss and then started the navigation. She didn't know what the map was charged with, but she looked all around and didn't see a charging port. It was just a thin sheet, even thinner than her tablet. She entered the destination and it showed a distance of 3,000 kilometers. When Yu Qingxian heard this distance, she couldn't help but confirm the map again to make sure she hadn't made a mistake. 3,000 kilometers, at her current pace of traveling day and night, would take about a month. Plus, with her slow movements recently, it would probably take more than a month. She had been able to get here so quickly before because of Shi Yu. Now that she was alone, she would definitely be wandering around without rushing. After all, traveling is not a task that needs to be rushed. Otherwise, it wouldn't be relaxing. Of course, except for catching a train or a plane. Her mother often told her that she missed her flight because she couldn't get up in the morning. Yu Qingxian remembered telling her that if she couldn't get up in the morning, she shouldn't book a morning flight. She should book for noon or afternoon. But her mother insisted that they had to take the flight at that specific time. Yu Qingxian couldn't understand why it had to be that specific time. She felt that she would never understand this feeling in her lifetime. The suitcase was walking north along the roadside. She didn't plan to walk in a straight line. Although walking in a straight line was faster, she intended to walk along the edge. In any case, taking the long way around would avoid encountering humans. It was already March, and she and Shi Yu had plans to go to Autumn Color Lake to see the scenery in the fall. Therefore, she couldn't afford to waste time. Otherwise, by the time she got there, the lake would be frozen again, and there would be no way to see it. Thinking of this, Yu Qingxian increased the speed of her suitcase. However, what Yu Qingxian didn't expect was that the prices in this post-apocalyptic world were indeed confusing to her. A box of medicine could get her a new phone with a particularly large memory, which could last her six or seven years even if she took a thousand photos a day. But she had a camera and didn't need to take photos with her phone. Yu Qingxian opened the camera, but it was the front-facing camera. When she suddenly saw herself in the lens, it was a bit unexpected. Yu Qingxian's phone stored tens of thousands of photos, all taken by her parents. She rarely took photos, let alone selfies. Although she had taken many photos of Shi Xingyu, they had never taken a photo together. After all, he had been pulling her suitcase for three months, so they should take a photo together in the fall. Thinking of this, Yu Qingxian made a V sign in front of the camera and took her first selfie in over 28 years. Yu Qingxian looked at herself in the lens, with a dull complexion and eyes that only had pupils, looking dry and lacking any moisture. She had thought that wearing colored contact lenses might cover up her strange eyes. But she found that the lenses dried up in her eyes after a while. So she gave up using colored contact lenses to decorate her eyes. Otherwise, she would have to put eye drops in her eyes every five minutes. And since she didn't really need to live among crowds, there was no need to bother herself. But one thing was important. She must not let flies linger on her. Flies were very adept at finding opportunities. Even living creatures, they could lay eggs on their bodies, not to mention her own corpse. Especially since she couldn't feel any pain, even if there were maggots wriggling inside her body, she wouldn't feel it. Thinking of this, Yu Qingxian felt that she should take a medicinal bath. Just in case. With that in mind, Yu Qingxian turned and went to the market, then found a bathhouse and went to the hospital to get medicine. Of course, it was all kinds of insecticides. Then Yu Qingxian completely soaked herself in the medicine, leaving only her head exposed. There were also some oral insecticides on the shore. Although these insecticides would definitely harm her body, for Yu Qingxian, it didn't matter at all. After all, she was now just a corpse. It was only because of the zombie virus that she didn't decay like a real corpse. But the insect eggs were different. Even zombie insects couldn't withstand such a large dose of insecticide. After drinking two large bottles, she sank into the bath and slept in the water for half an hour. But there were no insect eggs or maggots floating on the water's surface, which reassured Yu Qingxian. Fortunately, there were no insect eggs or maggots on her body. After leaving the bathhouse, Yu Qingxian also washed her hair, using a bucket of water, of course. She had thought that her scalp would come off with a tug, but fortunately, it was just her illusion. Her hair was still firmly attached to her scalp. In the future, you still have to be careful and not let the flies get close to you. So, Yu Qingxian, who had soaked in a medicated bath, left the bath center with the smell of insecticide all over her body. As the weather gradually warmed up, the flies began to gather around the zombies. It's just unknown whether these flies are zombie flies or ordinary flies. In any case, flies are annoying. And mosquitoes too. Perhaps because Yu Qingxian still had a strong smell of insecticide on her, the flies that were covered in the scent of other zombies flew around her. Yu Qingxian was surprised to see the flies avoiding her, so she approached them. 
Indeed, it wasn't her imagination, the flies were avoiding her. Yu Qingxian felt a bit nervous despite not having a crystal nucleus in her head, but she had one in her backpack. It was a crystal nucleus of a level 3 zombie. Could this advanced zombie be interested in the crystal nucleus in her backpack? But that crystal nucleus wasn't hers, she had to return it to Shershingyu. In any case, she decided to communicate first. Excuse me, can you understand what I'm saying? Yu Qingxian spoke, taking the initiative to greet the zombie. Yu Qingxian felt that she had taken a big step in socializing. She was really brave. When the female zombie heard Yu Qingxian's words, she took a step forward, causing Yu Qingxian to step back three steps in surprise. It was obvious that the zombie understood. The female zombie was indeed interested in Yu Qingxian, a low-level zombie who was carrying the crystal nucleus. Although the female zombie had initially come for the crystal nucleus, she was now more interested in the fact that a low-level zombie could communicate with her. She was evolving towards intelligence among these savage zombies. She had indeed sacrificed some combat abilities. But in this world, one couldn't survive by just increasing combat power without using their brains. At least she had witnessed a higher-level zombie being killed by humans and had started to evolve. Therefore, she realized that even if she was powerful, without a brain, she couldn't beat humans. So she chose to give up some combat power and evolve towards becoming an intelligent zombie. Of course, evolving into an intelligent zombie was also very difficult. It required the ability to think even when one was a low-level zombie. This was the only way to gradually evolve into an intelligent zombie. Of course, the female zombie couldn't think too deeply at this point. For example, why a low-level zombie could talk to her. So she directly said, I want the crystal nucleus in your backpack. Yu Qingxian was taken aback by the directness of the zombie. Even Xiao Ji, who seemed very direct, would usually probe first. This zombie, on the other hand, was straightforward and directly asked for it. However, this made Yu Qingxian feel that this zombie was so straightforward, which was easy to talk to. But, sorry, I can't give you this crystal core, it belongs to another zombie, Yu Qingxian replied. Their main selling point was sincerity. Is that so? I'm really sorry, the female zombie spoke. The two zombies stood facing each other across the street. For some reason, Yu Qingxian didn't feel any awkwardness. If it were a living person on the other side, Yu Qingxian might have felt very awkward. I'm going to take it, the female zombie spoke. She could feel that the crystal core on Yu Qingxian's back was very special, with much stronger energy than ordinary crystal cores. Since she couldn't have it if it wasn't given to her, she could only take it by force. Yu Qingxian didn't expect this zombie to be so direct. Although it had the intelligence to communicate, it didn't think in a way that leaned more towards human thought like Shi Xingyu or Xiao Ji. How should I put it, even though this zombie had intelligence, it also leaned towards the idea of might makes right. That is, if it wants something, it will rely on its strength to snatch it. Yu Qingxian reached for her backpack, wondering how long she could hold her own if she really fought this zombie. She stared at the female zombie, unmoving and silent. If possible, she didn't want to conflict with zombies or humans. Whether as a human or a zombie, she wanted to be a kind person or zombie, like her parents. When others mentioned them, they would say that the couple was very gentle. Of course, what she did was not for reward, she just wanted to do it. However, she couldn't give this crystal core to the female zombie. The female zombie did indeed want to snatch it. In the world of zombies, there was no thought of caring for other zombies. After all, only by becoming strong could one survive in this world. How could one let food be stronger than oneself? But when the little zombie in front of her stared at her, the female zombie felt a sense of timidity. It was as if the little zombie in front of her was not an ordinary zombie, but a powerful one that made her unable to resist. She even wanted to turn and run, but she could see the vigilance emanating from the little zombie. These two strange auras could actually converge in one zombie. The female zombie was somewhat puzzled at this moment. She completely didn't understand why. Yu Qingxian saw the female zombie suddenly take two steps back thinking that the other party was about to rush over and beat her up. Without thinking, she turned and ran with her suitcase. The female zombie also didn't know why Yu Qingxian suddenly ran, thinking that Yu Qingxian had seen some danger and immediately followed her. But this action made Yu Qingxian feel that this zombie really wanted to snatch the crystal core. Should she just give it to her? When she saw Shi Xingyu later, she could apologize to him. After all, she couldn't let herself be beaten for a crystal core. The two zombies ran for 10 minutes, one after the other, and Yu Qingxian finally couldn't help but turn around and ask her, do you really want this crystal core so much? The female zombie was also somewhat surprised and couldn't help but ask back, isn't it because you encountered danger? One sentence made Yu Qingxian stop directly. 
She turned to look at the female zombie and pointed at her, the danger is you, you wanted to snatch it, so I had to run. The female zombie also didn't expect that the reason this zombie ran was because she wanted to snatch her crystal core. But now she could be sure that if she really wanted to snatch it by force, she wouldn't be able to, so she gave up. But from the mouth of this little zombie, she seemed to be unclear about her own abilities. I won't snatch it, but don't you eat this crystal core? The female zombie asked Yu Qingxian. Zombies want to become stronger, naturally by eating people or crystal cores. Of course, if they could eat those with abilities, that would be even better. After all, zombies can also mutate and trigger abilities. They belong to a higher order of zombies. I won't eat it. This belongs to another zombie, Yu Qingxian shook her head. Although she knew that she wouldn't break her teeth if she gnawed on the crystal nucleus, it belonged to Shi Xingyu. Giving it to her would be a waste. She didn't want to become stronger, nor did she want to live forever. But it was clear that the female zombie in front of her didn't understand this. So why was this crystal nucleus in the hands of this little zombie, and why wasn't the little zombie eating it? Moreover, there were no other stronger zombies nearby, so why won't you eat it? The female zombie couldn't help but ask again. Because it belongs to another zombie, so I can't eat it, Yu Qingxian replied again without annoyance. The female zombie tilted her head slightly and then went over to the nearby zombie. She directly lifted the skull of that zombie and skillfully took out a crystal nucleus from inside. Then she walked over holding the crystal nucleus. Eat, I'm giving it to you, the female zombie said. Yu Qingxian looked at the crystal nucleus in her hand, covered in brain matter, and then at the female zombie. She felt like she was being treated like a little sister. Could it be that she was being recruited? Yu Qingxian naturally wouldn't eat it. No, thank you. You eat it yourself, Yu Qingxian let go, and the suitcase fell to the ground. After saying this, she turned and rode on her suitcase and left. The female zombie didn't expect Yu Qingxian to refuse the crystal nucleus she offered, and she tried to catch up and force the crystal nucleus into Yu Qingxian's mouth. This surprised Yu Qingxian. Unexpectedly, there were gifts for children in the zombie world, but this was too rough. However, she looked younger, wearing sportswear and still having remnants of nail polish on her fingers, so she should be a college student. Of course, she could also be a working person, wearing sportswear for exercise. Advanced zombies do not leave any scars on their bodies, unless they are killed directly, their recovery ability is very strong. It can be said that the zombie virus has indeed evolved for humans. The female zombie was also surprised when she heard Yu Qingxian say she wouldn't eat it. Since she wouldn't eat the crystal nucleus of the advanced zombie, why wouldn't she eat the crystal nucleus she made herself? This was given to her by herself. The way for lower level zombies to submit to higher level zombies or show loyalty is to give the best things to the other party. So the female zombie instantly understood that the crystal nucleus was a tribute from another zombie to the zombie in front of her. But she felt that the crystal nucleus belonged to another zombie. Perhaps this little zombie in front of her was not a complete intelligent zombie, so she didn't know that the crystal nucleus could be eaten. Of course, Yu Qingxian didn't know what this female zombie was thinking. If she did, she probably wouldn't bother arguing with her. Since there's nothing else, I'll go first. Yu Qingxian waved to the female zombie, who didn't speak, and started her suitcase to continue forward. The female zombie, seeing the little zombie running away, caught up again. She didn't understand why Yu Qingxian was riding such a slow thing. And what was the thing under Yu Qingxian? Yu Qingxian also didn't expect this zombie to be so fast. Of course, from Shi Xingyu's pace, she knew that the speed of advanced zombies was definitely faster than that of ordinary people, but she didn't expect it to be this fast. Since you have intelligence, you should be an intelligent zombie, so your speed should be faster than this broken box, right? The female zombie caught up, and she was even just walking fast, keeping up with Yu Qingxian. Hearing this, Yu Qingxian looked at the female zombie with some confusion. Broken box? Do you know how expensive this suitcase is? You actually call it a broken box. Forget it, it's her fault to discuss human values with a zombie. So, are you fast? Yu Qingxian looked up at the female zombie next to her and couldn't help but ask. No matter how she looked at it, she felt that Shi Xingyu and Xiao Ji's level was higher than the female zombie in front of her. So those two zombies should be faster, right? Thinking of this, Yu Qingxian realized that she had been running for more than 10 minutes, but was still caught up by Shi Xingyu and Xiao Ji. It seemed that their speed was indeed very fast. Of course, otherwise, why do you think human vehicles are reinforced, thickened, and made heavier? The female zombie said, reaching out and overturning a nearby car, shocking Yu Qingxian for a whole year. It turns out that high-level zombies are so strong. My apologies. However, it's also true that on the human side, there are strong individuals like Gu Wanqing, so if the zombies are too weak, the balance of power will be tilted. 
In the apocalypse, it's not possible to stand alone, but rather a test of survival. Only the victor can survive. The strong may not necessarily win, but the winner is definitely strong. In this test of survival, Yu Qingxian is like a bystander, detached from both sides. In fact, Yu Qingxian knows that if the zombies knew she had human consciousness, they would definitely eliminate her as an anomaly. And if humans knew that there were zombies with human consciousness, they would definitely kill them without hesitation. As a human, she cannot integrate into the human world. Indeed, as a zombie, she cannot integrate into the zombie world. Yu Qingxian looked at the overturned car and then at the female zombie. Of course, it's only limited to this type of vehicle. For larger vehicles, I definitely can't overturn them. At that time, it's necessary to destroy the wheels of these vehicles and make the human vehicles lose control, the female zombie continued to explain to Yu Qingxian. Upon hearing the female zombie's words, Yu Qingxian suddenly thought of the special wheels on the vehicles of the team of superhumans. It turns out that it's not just to prevent being punctured by sharp objects. It's also because the zombies know that destroying the wheels of vehicles can make them stop. Thinking of this, Yu Qingxian finally realized that this zombie was teaching her how to prey on humans? Didn't they say that zombies do not help each other? Why would this female zombie teach her how to hunt? Yu Qingxian just nodded and didn't say anything. The female zombie was considerate and directly pulled Yu Qingxian down from the luggage rack. Yu Qingxian was forced to close the luggage rack. She was pulled by the female zombie to the front of a car. Try to overturn the car, the female zombie said. But this sentence made Yu Qingxian feel like it was completely absurd. A small car weighs at least a ton, and it's simply outrageous to try to overturn it by herself. But looking at the serious expression of the female zombie, she also felt that it wasn't good if she didn't try. So she stepped forward, exerted all her strength, and only managed to lift the car slightly off the ground by one wheel. However, it was only a slight lift, and it touched the ground again. Yu Qingxian didn't have the strength to overturn a car. The female zombie was somewhat surprised to see that Yu Qingxian really couldn't overturn a car. But she felt the kind of pressure that didn't allow her to resist from this little zombie. Zombies have no reason but fear pressure. This is also the reason why high-level zombies can command low-level zombies. It's not because these zombies are of one mind, but because instinct makes them do so. But why is she so weak, and where does that strong oppressive force come from? The female zombie stared at Yu Qingxian, but saw that this little zombie didn't have any frustration because she couldn't overturn the car. So you don't want to become stronger at all? The female zombie asked Yu Qingxian in confusion. Since this little zombie belongs to the naturally high-level zombies, why not use this talent? If she worked hard, wouldn't she become a stronger zombie? Of course, if this little zombie becomes powerful, then I can only bow down to it. But I can't kill it. If it feels threatened, the pressure that makes her afraid will instantly strike. Besides, her original purpose is only the crystal nucleus in this little zombie. Since I can't get the crystal nucleus, I can only find another way to improve myself. Yu Qingxian was somewhat surprised because this wasn't the first time a zombie had said such things to her. Sure Xing Yu had also said it. She didn't understand, aren't zombies supposed to be better the stronger they are? Why do they expect this little weak zombie to become stronger? I don't want to. Since there's nothing else, I'll leave first. Yu Qingxian shook her head, not interested in becoming stronger. Making someone who isn't interested in living become stronger after becoming a zombie is like asking a first grader to help a college student take an exam. She didn't want to become the zombie king who ruled all zombies, nor did she want to become the savior of humanity. Right now, she just wants to see the scenery and then slowly decay. Yu Qingxian felt relieved when she saw that the female zombie didn't follow her. If she stayed here any longer, her zombie sister would probably take her to attack humans, although she had killed people before. Thinking about it, Yu Qingxian felt that she didn't really have much resistance to killing. As for why she used a gun, and even had good marksmanship, it was because when she was writing a novel, she didn't know how to describe it, so she tried it herself. But Yu Qingxian never thought she would actually use it. But as she looked at the zombie sister standing still, she waved at her, goodbye. See you next time if there's a chance. Although she said that, Yu Qingxian felt that the possibility of seeing her again could be ignored. After bidding farewell to the female zombie, Yu Qingxian continued north. And the female zombie didn't follow. After all, it was a good thing for the advanced zombie not to stay in this city. If zombies want to level up, there will be conflicts. Not only among humans, but also among zombies. Yu Qingxian was actually puzzled why these advanced zombies seemed to have good temperaments. They didn't rush up to crush her skull. And they were easy to talk to. She felt that the survival of zombies was not easier than that of humans. The pressure on both sides was the same. Humans have to guard against others' calculations. 
And zombies also have to worry about being targeted by other zombies. Yu Qingxian took out her phone and took a picture in the direction of the female zombie, then put the phone back in her bag. At this moment, Yu Qingxian really wanted to contact Xiu Xingyu and return the third level crystal nucleus to him. Carrying this time bomb on her back really scared the zombies. If she encounters a zombie that is not as reasonable next time, Yu Qingxian will definitely not be able to protect this crystal nucleus. Yu Qingxian thought so, but she didn't really want to throw away the crystal nucleus. In fact, Yu Qingxian had never been so responsible. Like the things her parents used to say to her, even if she had promised, she might not be able to do it well. It's just that she was holding someone else's things and had to find a way to return them. Yu Qingxian had always told Xiu Xingyu that the backpack was heavy, and this crystal nucleus was heavy. It wasn't a joke, carrying someone else's things was heavy. Thinking about this, Yu Qingxian suddenly took out her umbrella from her backpack. After opening it, she carried it on her shoulder, blocking the sunlight overhead. Zombies don't feel hot or cold, but how should I put it, they still have bodies, so they still have weaknesses. Yu Qingxian looked at the zombies around her moving towards the shadows, and knew that the temperature had risen. Is the temperature this high even in the northern spring? Yu Qingxian thought to herself, and took out her phone to check, finding that the temperature was 27 degrees. The time on her phone had also been adjusted to the correct time by the boss. This meant that she no longer needed to guess what day it was or what day of the week it was. Indeed, it was only March. In the northern regions, March should not have this temperature. It seems that a lot has indeed changed. It's as if the temperatures in the north and south have been swapped. The north, which should still be cold and shivering at this time, unexpectedly has summer temperatures in March. However, this had no impact on Yu Qingxian. Yu Qingxian walked more than 20 kilometers north, and as soon as she heard a car sound, she immediately stopped her luggage and headed to a nearby village. About three minutes later, a convoy of cars drove by. Yu Qingxian didn't know how strong the people in the cars were, but those who could come out of the base must be very strong. Yu Qingxian watched the convoy drive by and then took out the map to check. There was also a large city ahead, much larger than the city she had passed through at noon. It could be considered a well-known large city in the north, like City G. However, it was still over a hundred kilometers away from her. Yu Qingxian suddenly thought of City G, where many teams of superhumans also appeared. So, there should also be many teams of superhumans in the city ahead, S City. She didn't know if the city was safe now. After much consideration, she decided to bypass the city from the edge. It was just that S City was blocking the direction she wanted to go. There was no way to avoid it. Obviously, seeing these survivors made Yu Qingxian somewhat worried. As time in the apocalypse grew longer, human superhumans would also become stronger. It seemed that enjoying the scenery had become somewhat difficult for Yu Qingxian. Yu Qingxian sat on her luggage and looked at the map in her hand. In fact, if she went to the left, she could also take a look at the ancient capital. But imagination was beautiful, and reality was cruel. Yu Qingxian looked at the few large characters floating above the ancient city, and it was somewhat unexpected, but not entirely unexpected. After all, this place had been the capital of many dynasties. Therefore, even in the apocalypse, this place could not become a paradise for zombies. It was really amazing to build a base in such a place full of zombies. Although Yu Qingxian might not be able to see the ancient capital, seeing that humans could build a base in such a place full of zombies still made her feel a sense of respect. Indeed, no matter what happened, this country was very strong. Yu Qingxian thought to herself that she shouldn't go there. But when she came to her senses, she was already heading in that direction. Even if she turned into a zombie, Yu Qingxian couldn't change the human nature of wanting to join in the fun. Although she was socially anxious, she was also a skilled internet surfer in her lifetime. It was inevitable for anyone to join in the fun, including Yu Qingxian. It wouldn't take more than a few days for Yu Qingxian to reach the capital from her current location. However, Yu Qingxian never expected that when she saw humans again five days later, it would be during a battle between humans and zombies. Yu Qingxian could tell that the opposite side was human because she saw their uniforms. Just seeing them made her feel a sense of respect. As for the zombies, countless zombies were besieging the capital base. And the cause of this phenomenon was a high-level zombie. This high-level zombie was stronger than any high-level zombie Yu Qingxian had seen before. Even she, who was usually slow to react, could feel the threat from this zombie. Yu Qingxian was originally just passing by, but the zombies behind him rushed forward, pushing and shoving, almost trampling Yu Qingxian. This forced Yu Qingxian to carry her suitcase and go upstairs. The capital was very large, with only the ancient palace enclosed. From that point, the zombies spread outward. The zombies outside the city naturally had to find a way to enter the base and enjoy their feast. 
However, Yu Qingxian's attention was not on these zombies or the soldiers fighting them, but on the zombie standing on the high building. Yu Qingxian had never felt that anyone or any zombie was very strong or dangerous. So when Shi Xingyu told her that Gu Wanqing was strong, she didn't feel it. But now, Yu Qingxian clearly felt it. This zombie was strong, just like a sudden sixth sense giving her that feeling. Yu Qingxian now knew that this zombie was strong, even making her feel that as long as this zombie wanted, it could slaughter anyone. Looking at the zombie on the roof, Yu Qingxian wanted to avoid it. It's better to be safe than sorry. Without thinking, Yu Qingxian went downstairs and took another route. In the instant that Yu Qingxian withdrew her gaze, the zombie on the roof instantly sensed something. It looked in Yu Qingxian's direction. Because just now, a beam of light made it feel a chill on its back. It was as if it had been glanced at by a powerful superior. Retreat. The zombie waved its hand and roared at the zombies attacking the human base. Even the frontline zombies heard their king's command. So the zombies that were just about to launch a massive attack suddenly retreated like a tide. This puzzled the frontline soldiers. But they remained vigilant. What if these zombies came back again? The zombies retreated? Gu Wanqing had just received a notification that a high-level zombie had created a zombie tide, had just arrived at the capital base, and heard that the zombies had retreated. Yes, they just retreated 10 minutes ago. It's been half a month, and this is the first time the zombies have retreated. As for the reason, it's still under investigation. The person in military uniform next to him saw Gu Wanqing and immediately became very serious. He showed great respect for Gu Wanqing. Obviously, Gu Wanqing's military rank was higher than his. Gu Wanqing listened to his words and reached out to take the report from him. In the past few months, many strange things had indeed happened. Like the zombie that didn't eat people, and the high-level zombie that followed the zombies. A week ago, she had a face-to-face -face encounter with that zombie. But the small zombie that didn't eat people was not with it. And when the high-level zombie saw her, it seemed very surprised. It had originally been prepared to attack their convoy. But after landing on the hood of her car and making eye contact with her, it instantly jumped away. This surprised Gu Wanqing. After all, she had encountered high-level zombies before, and each time was a big battle. Although her side did suffer losses, it was already within her best efforts. Not to mention that this high-level zombie was one of the strongest zombies she had encountered. But the fact that it gave up attacking their convoy puzzled Gu Wanqing. However, Gu Wanqing did not know the specific reason, and it was not possible to bring that zombie in for questioning. Her current task was to kill the zombie that commanded the zombie tide. Although the cause of the zombie tide was not clear, each base had experienced some zombie tides, but they were not severe. It was only in the capital base that the zombies had continuously besieged for half a month, which was abnormal. Gu Wanqing looked through the photos and reports. The figures in the photos were blurry, but it was obvious that they were not human, but zombies. In other words, it was this zombie that caused the continuous influx of corpses for nearly half a month. Well, I understand. I will go and talk to the higher-ups about this later, Gu Wanqing took the documents and said to the person. After saying this, she stopped again, turned around, and took out a box of chocolates from her pocket and threw it over. Thank you for your hard work, Gu Wanqing said. The person immediately stood up straight, saluted Gu Wanqing, and saw her off. As for the people behind him, they did not know why their captain was so cautious about a very young girl. Yu Qingxian was surprised when she noticed the zombies retreating. After all, with so many zombies, Yu Qingxian thought that this zombie king might take over the entire base. But to suddenly retreat at this time really puzzled Yu Qingxian. After all, it was about to get dark. Yu Qingxian could understand the retreat during the day, as the high temperature would lower the activity of the zombies. But at night, it was completely different. The zombies at night not only had enhanced vision and mobility but also their hearing and other abilities would double. This made Yu Qingxian think of animals like bats and owls. In short, the night was the best time for zombies to attack human bases, but this zombie king actually gave up. Although Yu Qingxian was curious, she did not investigate further. She couldn't go and ask the zombie king why it suddenly retreated. Yu Qingxian entered a particularly tall building. Even though she knew there was no power, she couldn't help but press the elevator button. But as the elevator started running, Yu Qingxian was surprised. The elevator in this building could actually operate. In other words, this building had electricity? The elevator door opened in front of Yu Qingxian. Inside were several zombie bodies, but Yu Qingxian didn't mind and went in with her suitcase. Then she pressed the button for the top floor. The elevator indeed started moving. Yu Qingxian crouched down and carefully examined how those zombies had died. When she saw the bullet holes on the zombies' foreheads, she knew that this place had already been visited by humans. 
Thinking of this, Yu Qingxian suddenly looked up at the camera in the elevator. Yu Qingxian immediately stood up and climbed onto her suitcase, reaching out to pull down the camera. Since the elevator could operate, could this camera also be operational? Although Yu Qingxian was sure that there were no living people in this building, what if someone was observing through the cameras in the building? After all, this was not in a safe zone, but this building happened to have electricity. Of course, it was also possible that Yu Qingxian was being overly cautious, but it was better to be careful. She threw the camera to the ground, and at that moment, the elevator stopped. When the door opened, Yu Qingxian dragged her suitcase out of the car and saw the base in the distance. Of course, she could barely see the buildings inside, surrounded by high walls. These were not part of the original imperial city but had been built in the past three months. From her perspective, the walls were at least 20 meters high. It was indeed quite impressive to build such high walls in three months. Yu Qingxian moved to the side, and the huge glass walkway allowed her to see everything below and around her, including the powerful zombie that she felt. Yu Qingxian had never expected that the other party would chase after her. But strangely, Yu Qingxian was not too nervous. She watched as the numbers on the elevator jumped, gradually increasing, and then the elevator stopped with a ding. A zombie walked out of the car. This zombie also looked very young, wearing a jumpsuit, and looked good. But it was not the red eyes of the advanced zombies that Yu Qingxian was familiar with. This zombie's eyes were golden. Just like that kind of cat's eye, or vertical pupil. Yu Qingxian took out her phone and took a picture of it. If this zombie wants to kill her, she also wants to leave a string of words on this photo, writing, killer of the undead. But obviously, this zombie also seems to be very wary of her. When Yu Qingxian took a picture of it, it instinctively covered its forehead. Obviously, this zombie knows what the weakness of zombies is. But unfortunately, she only had a phone in her hand, not a gun. Although she also has a gun. It's difficult to kill advanced zombies with a gun. After all, they are very fast. When the advanced zombie saw Yu Qingxian put away her phone, a hint of doubt flashed in its golden eyes. Obviously, this is a zombie. Or a zombie that looks like it has no combat power. But why do her actions and behaviors look so much like a human? She can even use human tools. The two zombies faced each other like this. Yu Qingxian was not sure what attitude this zombie had towards her, so she did not take the initiative to show goodwill, nor did she speak. And that zombie seemed to ignore Yu Qingxian, just staring at her. Yu Qingxian saw that this zombie had not made a move for three minutes, so she took a step back. Excuse me, is there something wrong? Yu Qingxian was still prepared to break the awkwardness first. For some reason, Yu Qingxian felt that she had become more courageous after becoming a zombie. Every time she encountered a zombie, she took the initiative to speak. What's going on with this? And this advanced zombie did not seem too surprised when Yu Qingxian took the initiative to communicate with him. He had never encountered a zombie that made him feel threatened. At least all the zombies in the city obeyed him. Second, third, and even fourth level zombies willingly submitted to him. On the first day he became a zombie, he had his own consciousness. Although he did not remember his previous memories, he also knew that humans were his food and he was superior to all living beings. And in this base, there was something he wanted. Unfortunately, he tried many methods, but in these three months, he could not capture this base. Even the tide of zombies could not do anything to this base. And Yu Qingxian's appearance, for him, was to come and take that thing from him. Since the other party took the initiative to communicate, it was obviously because she thought she was powerful. Are you here to take that thing too? The male zombie asked. When Yu Qingxian heard his words, a question mark popped up in her head. She didn't quite understand what the zombie meant. What thing? Yu Qingxian asked curiously. She didn't know what thing was worth this zombie commanding so many zombies to besiege this base. And facing Yu Qingxian's clueless look, the male zombie was obviously a little surprised. Since you're not here to take that thing, what are you here for? The male zombie asked again. This zombie was very strange. From the appearance, she was undoubtedly the lowest level of zombie. But from the pressure, she was obviously a high-level zombie, and she could even make him feel pressure, enough to show that she was really powerful. This was also the reason he chose to approach this zombie actively. If they teamed up, they might really be able to get that thing. He didn't mind giving the other party half, but now it seems that she did not feel that thing was in the base. Just here for a trip, Yu Qingxian honestly replied. But this zombie was not so easy to communicate with. She asked him what that thing was, but he didn't answer. When this zombie heard Yu Qingxian's words, she even doubted whether she had misheard. A trip? Zombie? Trip? Yeah, but what did you just say that thing was? Yu Qingxian asked again. The male zombie said to Yu Qingxian, I'm not very clear about it either, but I can feel that thing is in that base, and it's very attractive to me. 
what he said was indeed true, because he could feel that there was something in the base emitting a powerful force. And this force made him feel comfortable, so he wanted to get that thing. When Yu Qingxian heard the male zombie's words, he looked back at the base. Something attracted him? He didn't feel it at all, completely unaware. But at this time, the base became tense. Because the appearance of the senior zombie that could command other zombies in the capital naturally put everyone on guard. Therefore, several buildings in the capital that could observe the base deliberately turned on the power to activate the surveillance inside the buildings. The photo of the zombie taken earlier was discovered from the surveillance. More than 10 days later, they once again discovered that a senior zombie had triggered the elevator. This time, it was not just one, but two. The first one even wore a hat and was pulling a suitcase, so it didn't feel much like a zombie. Most importantly, the surveillance was also dismantled by the other party. So they concluded that the first one must be a human, not a zombie. Zombies wouldn't behave like this. But how could someone not take the safe passage and instead go to the place with the most zombies? It should be noted that in order to connect the circuits of these buildings, quite a few people were lost. It can be said that the teams that went to do this task never thought of coming back alive. In fact, even wearing specially made explosion-proof suits, none of these teams came back. But they completed the task, so naturally they were heroes. They were curious about this human, but they never expected that this human would dismantle the surveillance five minutes later. The zombie they had been looking for all along actually appeared in the footage. So they found the whereabouts of that human. But because the surveillance couldn't capture the appearance of that human, the other party had a strong sense of self-preservation. At this time, Gu Wanqing and Wen Qingsheng also entered the surveillance room. Following them was Pei Yuan. He glanced at the surveillance, then leaned against the door and didn't speak. Pei Yuan didn't expect that, after more than a month, he could still see that little zombie. But from the looks of her, she completely wrapped herself up. Most people probably couldn't tell that she was a zombie. The reason she could do this, could it be because she wanted to pass as a human? Pei Yuan, come and take a look at the strength of this zombie, Gu Wanqing said, looking back at Pei Yuan leaning against the door after seeing the zombie in the surveillance. This was Pei Yuan's ability. Of course, Pei Yuan didn't fully disclose the specific function. Not only could he tell if this person had been infected with the zombie virus, he could even tell the strength of this zombie, and whether it had eaten more or fewer humans. In short, this ability was indeed very strong. Upon hearing this, Pei Yuan walked over. This zombie is at least level 5 or higher, belonging to the level of a zombie king. Pei Yuan concealed the fact that Yu Qingxian was also present. Gu Wanqing, upon hearing this, then pointed to the person next to the zombie who was all in black. Is it a human or a zombie? Gu Wanqing asked. But Pei Yuan didn't answer. Seeing that Pei Yuan didn't speak, Gu Wanqing didn't force him. This was how Pei Yuan was, he would only tell the truth when he was in a good mood. Normally, out of 10 things he said, 2 would be believable. But in this kind of situation, Pei Yuan wouldn't lie. If she were to fight this zombie, it really couldn't be determined who would win or lose. Gu Wanqing also didn't expect the zombies to evolve so quickly. The reason her ability was stronger than that of an ordinary person was because she awakened her ability when she was 19. More than 3 years ago, on that midnight. Because several meteorites fell, many accidents occurred that night. And she was also a survivor of that accident. She was just lucky to have survived. Although she survived, her head hurt badly. There was a strange energy in her body, causing trouble. In the end, she could only be locked in the laboratory, using various instruments to dissipate the energy in her body that was enough to make her explode. Of course, at that time she met Wen Qingsheng. He also survived the accident. Wen Qingsheng, like her, awakened his abilities three years before the apocalypse. And Wen Qingsheng's ability was very special, which Gu Wanqing almost never allowed him to use. After all, using it once would harm his body. And now, his ability was not needed in the current apocalypse. Yu Qingxian did not know that their whereabouts had been discovered. She was puzzled that the advanced zombie leader, who could control the zombie horde, was actually attracted by something in the official base. But what was this thing? She couldn't feel it. However, Yu Qingxian did not stop the intention of this zombie. Then good luck to you, I wish you success, Yu Qingxian said subconsciously. But as soon as she said this, she suddenly realized. If this zombie succeeded, wouldn't the base be breached? Thinking of this, Yu Qingxian looked back at the solid base wall and felt that it was unlikely to be breached. How long have you been controlling the zombie horde to attack this base? Yu Qingxian still wanted to ask. After all, she had only seen zombie hordes besieging bases in novels and movies. Now that she saw it with her own eyes, she was a little curious. After all, in many movies and novels, many bases were easily breached. 
So she wanted to know how long this zombie had been leading so many zombies to attack this base. Half a month, the zombie was honest and directly stated the specific time. Yu Qingxian was in awe of the human warriors for being besieged by a zombie horde like today for half a month without reaching the gate of the base. If she were still alive and could instantly reach the base, could she also live well? Hmm, that was probably impossible. After all, the survivors in the base also needed to work, especially in the early days of the apocalypse. Many things needed to start over. It was natural that the official base would distribute food uniformly. In order to ensure that everyone had something to eat, it was probably encouraged for everyone to work. Thinking of her lazy nature, Yu Qingxian gave up. After all, she lived in an old residential area, but all the equipment in her house was very modern. She didn't like washing dishes, so she had a dishwasher. She didn't like sweeping the floor, so she had a floor sweeping robot. She didn't like trouble, so the washing machine was a combination of washing and drying. Indeed, in her over 20 years, in the first 25 years, she rarely did things because of her parents. How should I put it, without all kinds of high-tech products, Yu Qingxian was just a waste. Thinking of this, Yu Qingxian smiled helplessly. People who could survive in the apocalypse were indeed very brave. They were the people she admired. Suddenly, Yu Qingxian fell silent, which surprised the zombie opposite her. In his opinion, it should be simple for Yu Qingxian, a zombie like her, to blend in with the crowd. Of course, it was a bit difficult for him. Just as he stepped out of the elevator, he almost mistook this female zombie for a human. Because she really looked like a human. Can we cooperate? The male zombie asked, taking the initiative to propose cooperation to Yu Qingxian. I'm sorry, but let me refuse, Yu Qingxian calmly declined. Cooperating with the zombie meant leading the zombie horde to attack the base together. Yu Qingxian would not stop this zombie king, but she would not follow him to attack humans. She was not a pervert. After saying this, Yu Qingxian pulled the suitcase with one hand and took out the map to check with the other hand. It was confirmed that this building was indeed the iconic building of the local area. So, from this building, one could indeed overlook the entire city. Yu Qingxian was determined to make the most of the visit. It was said that originally, a ticket was needed to enter this building. Now, no ticket was required, and the scenery of the city had not been too much affected. Yu Qingxian had never seen the city from this perspective before. She went up this tall building not only to see the current human base but also to see the scenery. With the idea of, since I'm here, I might as well see it all, Yu Qingxian naturally planned to take a good look at the landmark buildings in the city. After all, with the attraction of the zombie king, she had become a super ordinary zombie wandering around. The fact that the zombie king actually refused her was somewhat puzzling. After all, there were many supernatural beings in this base. If she ate a few more, they would become stronger. But the humans in this base are very delicious. With your strength, you should be able to deal with the strongest supernatural being in this base, right? The zombie was persistent. If this zombie could help her deal with the most difficult supernatural being in this base, it would be a great help. But if she were killed by the supernatural being, then he would have one less competitor. Now she seemed uninterested in herself, but what if she got hungry? Even though she seemed very gentle, she might just be full. Yu Qingxian had never thought that in the eyes of this zombie, she could actually deal with the strongest supernatural being in this base. Brother, you really think highly of me. Yu Qingxian patted the zombie's shoulder and gave him a thumbs up. You have a great imagination. Why not ask her to immediately resolve the relationship between humans and zombies instead of asking her to deal with the strongest supernatural being in the base? Yu Qingxian even felt that the latter seemed easier to achieve. After saying this, Yu Qingxian withdrew her hand and sat on the suitcase, starting to move. There should be a lot of surveillance on this tall building. If someone could really see the surveillance, would she also be under surveillance? Forget it, with her fully armed appearance, she was not worried about being recognized. There should be no acquaintances watching the surveillance. But she seemed to have no acquaintances either. Oh well, let them watch. I still have a zombie king by my side, who would dare to come. And Yu Qingxian completely guessed the thoughts of those who were watching the surveillance. Even though this person seemed to have some connection with that advanced zombie, none of them dared to easily send someone to this tall building. The person sitting in the chair saw this scene and turned to look at Gu Wanqing. Gu Wanqing saw him looking at her and shrugged, Sorry, I have other tasks on hand. My task is to protect this person even if I die. Ask him if he agrees to let me go. After saying this, Gu Wanqing still pointed to Pei Yuan. She was already busy enough. She had traveled all over the country. But because there were some things that only she could do, she naturally could not refuse. Although Pei Yuan did not say whether the other person was a human or a zombie, Gu Wanqing was 100% sure that the other one was a zombie. 
A zombie that did not eat people was already legendary enough. When the person heard Gu Wanqing's words, his gaze turned to Pei Yuan. Pei Yuan just smiled and said, Sorry, my bodyguard is not available for loan. The person was stunned for a moment and didn't react for a while. It looks like the zombie tide won't come tonight. Tell the people that the danger has been temporarily lifted. Have a good night's sleep tonight. Gu Wanqing knew that she had nothing to do with them, so she waved to them and left the surveillance room. Pei Yuan and Wen Qingsheng also went out. Only the people in the control room were left looking at each other. But what Captain Gu said was right. There was no zombie tide tonight, so it was not appropriate to keep the people underground. Although the weather was not cold now, it was still not suitable to stay underground. Therefore, the people who had been living underground for half a month finally returned to the surface. Yu Qingxian's phone suddenly rang. She took it out and saw that her phone had entered the signal range of this base. She received a message from the base, level 1 alert lifted. There will be no zombie attack tonight. Everyone can rest easy. Yu Qingxian was somewhat surprised to see this message. It turned out that the survivors of this base had been living underground for half a month. It was really hard work. But for her, a shut-in, living underground was a fresh feeling. Thinking of this, Yu Qingxian turned to look at the male zombie walking slowly behind her. But why did you suddenly retreat today? Yu Qingxian had been curious about this question. Since they had persisted for half a month, why did they suddenly retreat? Zombies don't get tired, and they don't feel being killed. If they kept attacking at this intensity, they might actually be able to take over this base. Of course, this was under extremely lucky circumstances. Otherwise, in the country where she lived, there would definitely be people willing to sacrifice themselves to protect others. Maybe there would be people with special abilities trying to take the zombie down with them. So giving humans a chance to breathe was also giving the zombie a chance. But the zombie wouldn't think of this. They would only try to bite a living creature. Wasn't it your warning? Not to attack the human base again? The male zombie spoke. Although Yu Qingxian hadn't actually said it, he had indeed felt the pressure. Anyway, he knew that this time was not suitable for attacking the human base. Hearing this, Yu Qingxian felt that this zombie's ability to talk nonsense was really strong. Not all zombies were as communicative as Shershing Yu. You are really an easily delusional zombie. And I didn't say anything at the time, but you were too cool, so I just took a look and left, Yu Qingxian replied. She hadn't said anything about not attacking the human base. When the zombie heard Yu Qingxian's words, he was also stunned. Clearly, he had felt it, but she didn't admit it. Oh well, the human base could be attacked at any time. Anyway, first figure out what this zombie came here for. He wouldn't believe it even if she said she was here for sightseeing. So the words Yu Qingxian said were not believed by this zombie. Yu Qingxian didn't care whether the zombie believed it or not. Anyway, it was an experience she had never had before to overlook the entire city from here. She had seen the introduction of this building. There was an open-air balcony on the top. But the elevator couldn't go directly there because this place belonged to many wealthy and powerful people. So there were hardly any photos circulating. Yu Qingxian looked at the sign on the building and walked up the stairs. When she stepped on the stairs, she felt the wind blowing. Yu Qingxian put her suitcase aside and then carried her bag and camera to the rooftop. When she reached the top floor, Yu Qingxian felt that the wind was a bit too strong. However, there were indeed several zombies swaying on the rooftop. They were still wearing luxurious clothes. Yu Qingxian thought of how she used to frantically look up the brands of these clothes for her novel, just to make the wealthy characters in her story not reveal the author's poverty. Now, she realized that the quality of the uniforms worn by the waiters was better than those wealthy people's clothes. The clothes on the waiters were still intact, while the clothes on the wealthy people had already decayed. Yu Qingxian ignored the zombies, walked to the edge, and looked down. Falling from here would surely result in bones being destroyed. So high! Yu Qingxian was almost afraid of heights. She pulled her head back and looked at the swaying wealthy zombies. Indeed, as a commoner, she couldn't understand the taste of these wealthy people. Eating on the rooftop in such strong winds, the warm food would turn cold in less than a minute. Do people who come here to eat really like cold food? Thinking about this, Yu Qingxian shook her head. It shouldn't be the case, it's probably because it's the end of the world, so the weather is problematic. This place, enjoyed by the wealthy, should also accommodate guests in the winter, so it shouldn't really be open air. They should have means to heat and protect from the wind. It's just because it's the end of the world that they allow the cold wind to blow. Yu Qingxian found a chair, took off the waiter's vest, grabbed a bottle of wine from the counter, and poured it onto the chair. She wiped it with the vest. While wiping the chair, she noticed the empty bottle of wine. At first, she thought she was mistaken. But after throwing the wine-soaked vest, she picked up the bottle and examined it herself, 
even comparing it with her phone. Sure enough, it was the expensive bottle of wine she had written about in her novel. The wine the female lead chugged down in one gulp when she first met the male lead, worth three million. Although there are even more expensive wines, most of them are only one bottle and not suitable. Like this limited edition, single digit, not truly out of print wine, she could use the same wine for the ending in the grand finale. She could never afford a bottle of wine in her lifetime, and yet she used it to wipe the chair. But why would such an expensive wine be casually placed in the glass cabinet so close to her? Thinking about this, Yu Qingxian turned to look at the glass cabinet. It seemed to be a display case, not a place to store wine. In other words, was this bottle of wine placed here for display? To show the nobility of this place? Forget it, it's the end of the world. This bottle of wine might not even be as precious as a loaf of bread. She regretted it. Thinking about this, Yu Qingxian picked up the vest to wipe the chair. So this bottle of wine served its final purpose of wiping the chair. Otherwise, it would have rotted on the rooftop. Thinking about this, Yu Qingxian poured other wine into the bottle and put it back in the cabinet. Three million worth of wine, poured like that, really made Yu Qingxian feel a bit guilty. But fortunately, no one saw it now. There shouldn't be any cameras in this place, right? After all, the people who come here are all influential. If a video were to leak, it would be a big problem. Although there were no cameras, a zombie saw all of Yu Qingxian's actions. She didn't know why the zombie was so startled and kept looking around. This place was the center of the zombie tide, and since the last time humans broke in, most of the zombies had surrounded this place. So it was completely impossible for humans to break in. What was she afraid of? Yu Qingxian turned around and saw the zombie standing at the staircase, looking at her. Although she could tell that this zombie always had fanciful thoughts, when those golden eyes looked at her, they were filled with disdain. No, what's the meaning of peeking at other zombies and showing a look of disdain? Yu Qingxian glanced at him and then looked away. The wine on the chair quickly evaporated, and Yu Qingxian didn't care, just slumping in the chair. There was no cover over her head at this moment. She was surprised to see the Milky Way in the big city. After all, she had only seen the stars in the countryside when she was a child. But that was more than 20 years ago, and she didn't remember. Yu Qingxian stared at the stars in the sky, took out her camera, and took a few photos. Could such a beautiful starry sky be seen in this place before the end of the world? After all, ordinary people can only see streetlights and neon lights. Although many lights are beautiful, Yu Qingxian felt that anything that shines is burning itself. Of course, this kind of thinking is not entirely correct. But it was almost impossible for her to sit on a chair and watch the stars so casually before she died. Yu Qingxian rarely didn't want to argue with the zombie, so she waved at him, come here. When the zombie heard Yu Qingxian's words, he walked towards her. Yu Qingxian didn't know what she wanted to do. And naturally, he didn't care about Yu Qingxian's preferences, so he just sat down on the dusty chair. When Yu Qingxian saw him sitting next to her, she pointed to the sky, the starry sky is beautiful, you must have never seen it. The zombie looked up at the sky when he heard this. He didn't know what Yu Qingxian was happy about. But in any case, he felt that she was very happy. It's average, the zombie said. When Yu Qingxian heard this, she suddenly felt like she had heard similar words somewhere else. Oh, right, when she took Shikxinjia to see the sunrise, Shikxinjiu also said that the beautiful sunrise was average. Yu Qingxian didn't mind. After all, she couldn't force a zombie to appreciate the scenery. Just as a zombie couldn't force her to gnaw on a live cow. Yu Qingxian was sure she couldn't do it, so she didn't force the zombie. Do you have a name? Yu Qingxian took a few photos of the starry sky and asked the zombie. After becoming a zombie, he forgot all memories of being human. Since then, he has lived with the thoughts of a zombie. Humans are food, and zombies exist to eat living things. No, the zombie said. Even though he had independent thinking ability, Yu Qingxian couldn't understand his thoughts at all. Is that so? I have a name, Yu Qingxian said. The zombie looked at Yu Qingxian when he heard this, and Yu Qingxian didn't care about his gaze, more like talking to herself. My name was changed by my parents later, mainly because I don't like to interact with humans, I just like to stay at home so they changed my name to what it is now. As for what it was called before, I don't remember. Yu Qingxian's voice was not loud, and because the wind was too strong, the nearby zombies didn't hear what she said in the second half. When the wind stopped, the zombie finally saw her face from under her hair blown by the wind. She smiled and said, then I'll give you a name, how about calling you I? As you wish, the zombie said, even at this moment, there would be no emotional response. He accepted it just because the zombie in front of him was stronger than him. Therefore, the zombie king feared by all the zombies within a few hundred kilometers, because of Yu Qingxian's words, now had a name. Yu Qingxian finished looking at the stars and also gave a zombie king a name. It felt quite fulfilling. 
But Yu Qingxian found that these advanced zombies were really clingy. No, it's clingy to corpses. Until dawn, I didn't leave. Obviously, he had previously led the zombies to attack the base, but now he sat here with her all night watching the stars, and then watched the sunrise with her. There was also a garden on the top floor, and the morning sun shone from a distance, orange, which reminded Yu Qingxian of orange candy. Well, she'll go find some orange candy later. Although she couldn't taste it, suddenly wanting to eat orange candy had become Yu Qingxian's obsession. She didn't ask I where to find orange candy, but there should be some in the mall. Yu Qingxian left the building and headed towards the shopping mall. Fortunately, this place was bustling with all kinds of things. Yu Qingxian was looking for orange gummy candies, and Ai followed behind her. This reminded Yu Qingxian of Shi Xingyu. In the past, Shi Xingyu used to follow her like this. Are zombies actually a type of small dog? Why do they like following me so much? Half an hour later, Yu Qingxian found the orange gummy candies, the most expensive brand. She popped one into her mouth. It really didn't have much flavor. It wasn't particularly good or bad. She looked at Ai standing by and offered one to him. Want some? Ai wasn't interested in human food, but he took it anyway. He put it in his mouth, chewed, and then spat it out. It's bad, Ai said. Yu Qingxian wasn't surprised. If human food was delicious to zombies, things wouldn't be so complicated. It would be like eating cooked food or smelling a cesspool. Yu Qingxian stayed in this city for two days and was preparing to leave. During these two days, Ai Yi had been following her, even though he might be the zombie king. But in Yu Qingxian's eyes, he was just like an imaginative little dog. Indeed, one shouldn't name any living creature. After calling it for a few days, one would develop feelings for it. Of course, Yu Qingxian only treated Ai Yi like a little dog or cat. However, this feeling was probably only understood by Yu Qingxian. After all, Ai Yi was the zombie king, a cruel creature to humans. I'm heading north, not staying here. You can take your time, Yu Qingxian bid farewell to Ai Yi at the edge of the city. But Ai Yi didn't bid farewell to Yu Qingxian, nor did he follow her. He was like when Yu Qingxian first saw him squatting on the rooftop of a tall building, looking indifferent. Yu Qingxian didn't care whether Ai Yi could see her, but she still waved in his direction, hoping that he would still be alive the next time they met. If they were to meet again. After watching Yu Qingxian truly leave, Ai Yi finally breathed a sigh of relief. He had thought that the zombie had come to compete with him for that thing. But it wasn't the case. He didn't understand Yu Qingxian's thoughts and actions, but he did learn something from her. That is, not to organize zombies to besiege the base anymore. Indeed, as long as he didn't let the zombies besiege the base, those food sources would come out on their own. However, the feeling from this food source was very strong. This made Ai Yi even more cautious. Indeed, the higher level zombies were more sensitive when facing danger. If he continued to let the zombies besiege the city, this powerful food source might attack him actively when he was unprepared. Yu Qingxian didn't know that her stay in this city for a few days had given the base and the city a chance to breathe. However, regardless of the decision not to attack the base, it wasn't her decision, so the outcome wouldn't matter to her. Yu Qingxian sat on her suitcase and continued heading north. It took her half a month to come to this place. On April 1st, Yu Qingxian squinted at the tornado rising from the flat ground. This shocked her. How could there be such a big tornado in her country? Coastal cities might experience it, but this was the north. It was hundreds of kilometers away from the coast. Even though she was still quite far from the tornado, she couldn't stand still now. This tornado must have blown in from the sea. After all, along with the wind, there were countless raindrops. She was blown by the wind while sitting on her suitcase for a few hundred meters before she finally reacted and found a place to take cover. She had never experienced a typhoon, so she was quite shocked to see one. Yu Qingxian hid in a house and took out her camera to take pictures. To say that zombies are the end of the world for humans, but for Yu Qingxian, the tornado that is rising up now seems more like the end of the world. The sound of the wind and rain beating against the windows was crackling. Yu Qingxian put down the camera and curled up on the sofa in the house. Because of the rain, the window glass could no longer see the outside scenery, and even the sound of the wind outside was so loud that it seemed like the whole world belonged to her alone. But Yu Qingxian felt a long-lost sense of peace. Every time it rained, Yu Qingxian would have this peaceful feeling. She had never really investigated why she felt peaceful on rainy days before. But now she knew that it wasn't because of the rain that she felt peaceful, but because she was inside the house during the rain. Without being blown by the wind and rain, of course she would feel peaceful. Yu Qingxian just huddled on the sofa, listening to the wind and rain outside. Until an hour later, Yu Qingxian felt the ground under her feet shaking, as if it were an earthquake. But Yu Qingxian knew it wasn't an earthquake, it was the tornado approaching. 
Just as Yu Qingxian leaned over to see the situation outside, a zombie bird flew past the window. Then came a zombie dog. It seemed that the tornado was approaching this small town. Many places in the north are vast plains, which caused the tornado to come over without much hindrance. Of course, Yu Qingxian didn't know if the house could withstand the tornado. A concrete building should be able to hold up. After all, it's not a wooden house. Yu Qingxian didn't leave. She just didn't know if the window could hold up. As soon as she had this thought, the window instantly shattered. The huge wind blew in, sweeping up all the light things in the house. Yu Qingxian pressed down her hat, and her long hair was blown in her face by the wind. The wind was really strong. Yu Qingxian was not particularly tall, but she was not short either, just on the slender side. During the strong winds in the spring, winds of force 6 or higher could knock her over. Yu Qingxian thought for a moment, then took off her hat and put it in her backpack, tied her suitcase to the sofa, and then tied herself to the sofa with the curtains. Let the strong wind blow, Yu Qingxian hung on the sofa. Most of the walls inside the house blocked the wind, but the zombies outside were not so lucky. Some zombies were even swept up by the wind. One of them flew past the window of the house where Yu Qingxian was taking shelter. Oh, Yu Qingxian had never imagined that the scenes from those movies would actually appear before her eyes. The speed at which the zombie flew past was very fast. If she were a human eye, she might have felt like a black shadow had flown past. Fortunately, she was a zombie's eye, and she could see very clearly. The strong wind lasted for half an hour. Yu Qingxian even took her phone out of her suitcase and lay on the sofa to record the situation outside the window. What if another zombie flew past? And Yu Qingxian was lucky, the tornado passed by several houses next to hers, so it swept up several zombies and flew past her window. After that, the sound of the wind gradually diminished, so the tornado should have passed. The movement inside the house also gradually quieted down. Yu Qingxian then untied the curtain from her body. She turned and walked to the window, then looked back. By this time, the huge tornado had weakened considerably. Indeed, the further inland it went, the weaker the wind's power. If it had been as powerful as when it first formed, it would probably have lifted these concrete houses along with their foundations. Yu Qingxian held her camera and took a lot of pictures of the tornado. Opportunities to see a tornado up close like this were rare. After taking the photos, the rain outside still hadn't stopped. The tornado would probably stop blowing after another one or two hundred kilometers. It's just that she didn't know when the rain would stop. By the time it was almost dark, the wind had subsided quite a bit. The rain has also lessened a bit. Yu Qingxian did not rush to leave, but instead prepared to wait for the rain to stop inside the house. However, the rain had been going on for several days without any sign of stopping. Yu Qingxian did not plan to wait any longer and left the small town with her luggage and umbrella. There were fewer wandering zombies in the town, probably swept up into the sky by the tornado, and no one knew where they had landed. It was also unknown whether these zombies could survive the fall. Of course, if their heads were not injured, they should still be alive. However, shortly after leaving the town, Yu Qingxian's luggage ran out of power. She could only pull it along. Yu Qingxian continued to walk north, surrounded by land and houses that had been significantly damaged by the recent hurricane. There were also many zombie limbs on the roadside, either legs or arms, and even some severed heads. After standing by the roadside for a while, Yu Qingxian picked up one of the severed heads and buried it in a hole. She thought that even if they had turned into man-eating zombies, it was not something they had chosen. In fact, Yu Qingxian wanted the victory of humanity so that the bodies of the zombies could be properly dealt with. After all, the people in this country were very particular about returning to their roots. Not to mention ordinary people, even tomb raiders looked down on thieves who stole corpses. Human life is precious. Yu Qingxian looked at the small mound in front of her and suddenly remembered the bouquet of flowers that Gu Wanqing had placed in front of her grave. This made Yu Qingxian reach into her pocket and find a rose seed. She planted it next to the small mound. I'll give you one, I didn't plant many, whether it can sprout or not, it's up to you. Take good care of this seed, and when it grows up, it can shade you from the sun. Yu Qingxian said to herself, not expecting the buried head to answer her. Life in this post-apocalyptic world was indeed very difficult. If humans could really be reincarnated in the next life, she would definitely want to be born in a peaceful era. Yu Qingxian looked at the small mound and then turned and left. Yu Qingxian buried as she walked. She buried the severed limbs under the road and buried any severed heads she encountered. After all, only with a severed head or half a head could it be considered dead. After walking for two more days, Yu Qingxian finally did not see any more severed remains, which relieved her. She felt like she was turning into a mole. Fortunately, after burying a few people, she had put a few shovels in her luggage. Otherwise, if she had to dig with her hands, she would truly become a mole. The further north Yu Qingxian went, 
the hotter the weather became. Even on rainy days, the temperature could reach over 30 degrees. No wonder even when it was raining without the sun, Yu Qingxian felt weak and powerless. She almost wanted to ask her luggage why it wasn't moving. It had been almost half a month, and it hadn't cleared up for a single day. So her luggage had not been turned on for half a month. She could only pull it along. But at this moment, Yu Qingxian really didn't want to move. She arrived at a county town and passed by a bedding store. The store was made up of large floor-to-ceiling windows. In front of the glass was a large bed that looked very comfortable. Yu Qingxian stood under the eaves and looked at the glass for a while, then pushed open the glass door and walked in. The store had not been visited by zombies, and there were no zombies inside. Yu Qingxian placed her luggage by the bed, lifted the covers, took off her shoes and clothes, and lay down. It was soft and felt very good. And with this sleep, Yu Qingxian slept until the early hours of the morning. When she woke up, the rain outside had stopped. She checked her phone and saw that it was already 3 in the morning. Her phone battery was also running low. If the sun doesn't come out soon, Yu Qingxian really can't go on. Of course, it's not that she can't physically move, but mentally she feels stuck. Yu Qingxian lay on the bed and glanced outside the window, noticing the moon in the sky. That means it's a sunny day today. Great, she can finally sunbathe. She feels like she's starting to mold. In any case, she really needs the sun. Zombies need the sun, saying that out loud might scare other zombies to death. Who knew zombies liked the sun? Of course, that includes Yu Qingxian. A few hours ago, Yu Qingxian was still looking forward to the sun, but couldn't resist opening an umbrella. She experimented and after less than an hour in the sun, she felt pain. This shocked her. She thought zombies wouldn't feel pain, but if exposed to the sun too much, the whole body will ache. No wonder those zombies don't want to be in the sun. It turns out sunlight is lethal to the virus that controls the body. Of course, the virus also fears high temperatures. So if the temperature on earth rises to 50 or 60 degrees, won't all the zombies die? No, no, zombies can be killed, but with such high temperatures, won't all humans die too? This kind of thinking is not good, it would mean sending all the world's creatures to their deaths. Yu Qingxian held an umbrella and watched the light on the suitcase flash. She didn't ride it when the suitcase could start, but instead let the sun charge the battery. At least when it's fully charged, it can last a little longer. If it suddenly rains for another 10 days, she'll have to go through the same thing again. Although she really hates the sun, she can still use an umbrella. Without the sun, the suitcase really has no power. Yu Qingxian didn't leave until noon. When she passed a river, she found that the water had risen a lot, with many bodies floating in the river. There were zombie bodies, zombie animal bodies, and mutated animal bodies. Some continued downstream, while others were washed up on the banks. When Yu Qingxian walked over, she startled a bunch of flies. These flies didn't come towards her, but instead avoided her. Yu Qingxian felt that taking a medicinal bath was the right decision, but soaking bodies in the river would surely spread infectious diseases. Yu Qingxian stood by the river, which had spread to the bank. That's why these bodies were washed up on the shore or blocked by trees and houses. Yu Qingxian picked up the suitcase, held it over her head, and walked towards the bridge. The water at the bank was not deep, only up to Yu Qingxian's calves. It seems that the hurricane and rain from half a month ago still had an impact. Just this small river rising so much, she dared not think about the situation of the big river. Yu Qingxian crossed the river. The reason she didn't fish out the bodies in the river this time was simple. Those bodies had been soaked and rotted. Just a touch in the flesh would fall off the bones, which reminded Yu Qingxian of the instant noodles she forgot to eat after soaking for three hours, and the steamed buns that fell into the water. So Yu Qingxian didn't know how to deal with these bodies. If they were soaked in water, they would remain intact, but if she tried to fish them out, they would all fall apart. Can any infectious disease be worse than the zombie virus? So Yu Qingxian only thought for a second and then gave up the idea of fishing out the bodies. After crossing the river, Yu Qingxian turned around and bowed to the corpses, sorry, you can still soak here. After saying this, Yu Qingxian turned and walked away without hesitation. His shoes, socks, and pants were all wet, but Yu Qingxian was not in a hurry. He took them off and changed into new ones. The previous pants and shoes had wrapped him up tightly, and now he didn't need to come into contact with humans again. Yu Qingxian changed into his favorite little skirt and small leather shoes. It was hot now, so it was suitable to wear a pretty little skirt. However, Yu Qingxian looked at his legs and found that his skin didn't seem as dark as before. Of course, it was still a bluish-gray color. It's just that the previous Yu Qingxian looked like an eggplant dyed gray, and no matter how you looked at it, it didn't look like the skin a human should have. But now the color had faded a bit, and the initial Yu Qingxian looked like someone whose entire body had turned blue from being bruised. 
So now that the bluish gray color had faded a bit, it was actually a bit greenish. This made Zhu Qingxian think of a potato that had been sun dried. Why couldn't he have a normal color? Well, there were still pitch black zombies, so it was already good enough that he hadn't turned pitch black. Thinking of this, Yu Qingxian sat on the suitcase and walked forward with an umbrella. Did he feel too conspicuous with the umbrella? Should he find a sun hat to wear? Thinking of this, Yu Qingxian felt like he could give it a try. After all, he was still wearing clothes, so as long as he covered his head, it would be fine. The zombie virus resides in the brain. So as long as the temperature of the brain doesn't get too high, the zombie virus will disappear, and the person will become a corpse. It's true that the initial Yu Qingxian really didn't have a reason to live. But now, she seemed to have found a little bit of a reason. Of course, it was only a little bit. If someone really came out to kill her, she wouldn't resist. Yu Qingxian had originally been worried about the rain. But after the previous rain, the days that followed were even hotter. When he passed the river again, he found that the water in the river had decreased a lot. Some aquatic zombies had dried up on the riverbed. Yu Qingxian placed the suitcase on the bank and walked down to the riverbed with a stick. He wanted to see if these aquatic zombie creatures could survive outside of the water. He poked the aquatic zombie creatures with the stick and found that the ones in the freshwater had already rotted and didn't move at all. It seemed that the aquatic zombie creatures in freshwater were not as resilient as those in the sea. After all, the aquatic zombie creatures by the sea had already come ashore. Yu Qingxian squatted by the river for a while and suddenly heard the sound of a car. She was so scared that she quickly went ashore and hid herself and her suitcase under the bridge. Several cars passed over her head but stopped at the bridge. Yu Qingxian heard the cars stop, and her whole body was almost pressed against the bridge. No, she shouldn't have been discovered. What were these humans doing? Yu Qingxian's hiding was subconscious. It wasn't that she was really afraid of being killed by humans, but she herself would instinctively avoid humans. After the flood comes the drought, right? Survival is getting more and more difficult now. Those hurricanes at the beginning of the month were really frightening. The person in the car just lowered the window to look at the situation of the river. After all, it was the early stages of recovery and development, and it was already very difficult. Not only did they have to face the threat of zombies, but they also had to face the test of nature. Zombies could be killed, but natural disasters couldn't be controlled. Like the previous hurricanes, they weren't controlled by humans and couldn't be paused. Even the modified vehicles couldn't get too close to the hurricanes. After all, not everyone had the courage to get close to a hurricane. Are you talking about Chinan and the one next to him, Wen Chang? Those two are completely abnormal. Who dares to chase after a hurricane? One of them said. As Yu Qingxian listened to the person's words, she was a little puzzled. She hadn't heard of these two names and didn't know them. Gu Wanqing's name was only known after someone called her. That young man was called a Shang, full name unknown, and his dog was called Xiao Tian. Yes, yes, that Wen Chang doesn't have any weapons, just holding a baseball bat. I heard that a few days ago, she killed a level 3 zombie by herself, the person who spoke first added. While this sounded like a normal conversation, for Yu Qingxian, it was extraordinary. A girl holding a baseball bat, she knew her. So the little girl's name was Wen Chang, and she killed a level 3 zombie. Indeed, the little weirdo was really strong. So Qinan is the person next to the little weirdo? Yu Qingxian never expected to hear the names of those two people in this place. Indeed, among the survivors, these people were all very powerful. They were already well known among the survivors. Of course, the zombie also heard it. The people in the car should have come out from the base to investigate the situation. It's been either a hurricane or rain in the past month, and now it's scorching hot. In weather like this, humans are naturally worried about what will happen next. It's as if humans have already begun to be eliminated by the earth. But even so, humans still have to live well. After taking a few photos, the vehicles continued forward. The people in these cars should be checking the water situation. After the vehicles had gone far, Yu Qingxian came up from under the bridge. Although the riverbed was indeed dry, the place where Yu Qingxian was hiding was not. Her little leather shoes were all muddy. Yu Qingxian put the suitcase on her head down by the roadside and looked at the mud on her leg. She had to find a place ahead to wash it off. Yu Qingxian walked forward with a pair of muddy shoes, leaving a trail of footprints. When she arrived at a small town, Yu Qingxian looked for a few taps, but no water came out. She went to the supermarket to see if there was any bottled water. It took her several supermarkets to find it. Indeed, the things in this small town had already been emptied by humans. After washing her feet, Yu Qingxian changed into new shoes. She also found a full-length mirror to take a look at herself. Yu Qingxian took off her mask and looked at her face. It was good, there were no signs of healing, and of course, no decay either. 
For Yu Qingxian, not decaying was already a very good thing. Indeed, her whole body was turning green at this time. Yu Qingxian thought for a moment, it was very likely that she had soaked in medicinal water. She didn't know if it could be restored. Although she did like the color green, having green skin was not particularly good looking. Yu Qingxian even specifically found a sun hat and wore it to bask in the sun for a while, but found it still didn't work very well. It did block some of the sunlight, making her less uncomfortable. But in the end, Yu Qingxian chose to use an umbrella. This was the most suitable way for her. Yu Qingxian took her phone and took a few photos of herself in the mirror. Actually, she didn't quite understand why so many people like taking pictures of themselves. She didn't understand before, but now she seemed to understand a little. For the world, human life is fleeting. No one knows when an accident will occur. Leaving behind photos is a way to leave some thoughts for those who care about oneself. Yu Qingxian looked at the photos, feeling a bit helpless. Taking photos of herself, no one could see them. Oh well, she took them anyway. With this in mind, Yu Qingxian even specifically took a photo with a stone at the entrance of the small town. The name of the town was written on the stone. It could be considered a tourist photo, proving that she had been here. When Yu Qingxian arrived at the easternmost point, it was already the end of April. She wondered if she could catch up with the autumn colors this year at her current speed. At this time, there were some zombies wandering in the square. She looked around here and there, and finally chose a suitable place, waiting for the sun to rise. Meanwhile, the camera behind her was recording. It was not yet 3 o'clock in the morning when Yu Qingxian saw the golden light rising from the horizon. It emerged from the pitch black ground. Is this what my parents meant by watching the sunrise in the middle of the night? Yu Qingxian turned to the camera, leaned in, and whispered, Mom, Dad, I see it, the sunrise you wanted to see. After saying this, Yu Qingxian stepped aside, and the sunlight poured into the lens. Yu Qingxian watched the sunrise slowly and then checked the time. So what time do people in this city get up? It can't be 3 in the middle of the night, right? Yu Qingxian muttered to herself. After all, she had never thought about this question before. After the sun had completely risen, Yu Qingxian turned off the recording. As the sunlight shone, the surrounding zombies began to find ways to hide in the dark. Yu Qingxian smelled the scent of humans. Just as she was putting the camera in her suitcase, she looked up and made eye contact with a human standing on the steps in the distance. Yu Qingxian had not expected to encounter humans in this place, especially humans in uniform. These were official people. Yu Qingxian did not run away as she usually did when she saw people, but stood up straight. The leader did not linger on Yu Qingxian, but looked equally at all the zombies. Then a dozen people behind him held shields and stood by those people. Yu Qingxian finally saw the red in the hands of the person behind the leader. Suddenly, she understood something. Then she looked at the flagpole. Yes, this was the border, and even in the end of the world, they would not let others take advantage. This was the first time Yu Qingxian had seen the national flag rise in the morning. All the zombies in the square crowded towards those people. But although they rushed up, they were not killed, but were blocked by the shields. It was not until the national flag was raised that those people took off their hats and saluted the zombies. Then they opened fire and shot the zombies. Yu Qingxian walked to the edge of the square with her suitcase and witnessed the scene. When she realized it, the zombies had already been dealt with. Yu Qingxian squatted behind the fence, her body blocked by the flower bed. So those people couldn't see Yu Qingxian, but she could see them. She watched them tidy up the remains of the zombies and then take the bodies away. The entire square was left with only the flag fluttering in the wind. No wonder there weren't many zombies in the square. It turned out that people came to clean up every once in a while. After those people left, Yu Qingxian took her suitcase and walked out from behind the flower bed. She stood under the national flag for a while before taking out her camera and taking a picture. Indeed, even as a zombie, Yu Qingxian felt very relieved when she saw the red. But then again, if in the future, the ones killing her were also official people, would she also receive a salute? Oh, just thinking about being so respected when she died, Yu Qingxian wondered if she should pick out a coffin in advance, lie down comfortably, and then have someone shoot her. With that in mind, Yu Qingxian took out her phone and added a task to her to-do list, find a beautiful coffin. But she was a zombie, so she probably wouldn't leave a complete body, right? Then find a beautiful urn. It's best to be the one with the flowing pattern. With these thoughts in mind, Yu Qingxian sat on her suitcase and left the city. There weren't many zombies in this urban area. It was estimated that there had been garrisons guarding here for the past half year, so the survivors in this urban area had not gone to other bases. When she first arrived in this city, she was a little scared. But now it seems that even walking on the street, you can't meet any survivors. When Yu Qingxian left the city, she didn't forget to take a photo with the city. 
She thought for a moment and felt that she should find something to print the photos. She had seen it on a shopping app before. It can be connected in various ways. I don't know if there is something that can connect to the camera. Find a few beautiful notebooks and pens, print the photos and stick them on the notebook. It should be very beautiful. Yu Qingxian had never done this kind of journal before. Now she can try it. Then you have to prepare the notebook and pen first. This kind of thing should be available in the bookstores near the school. Yu Qingxian opened the map and took a look. There is indeed a middle school nearby, so Yu Qingxian went there. But halfway through, Yu Qingxian felt something was wrong, because she smelled the scent of many humans. It seems to be in this school in front. Yu Qingxian suddenly stopped the suitcase and thought of a problem. In fact, after the school cleans up the zombies, it is indeed the most suitable place to gather. There are many dormitories, canteens, and exercise fields. So no matter what, in a city, the most suitable place for survivors is the school. It's no wonder that when students were still students, they felt that the school was the most difficult place to leave. Yu Qingxian did not go forward, but retreated. This time it was not because she was afraid of people, but because she didn't want to scare humans. She looks like a zombie. Nowadays, humans should already know that some advanced zombies have intelligence. Not all advanced zombies grow in a barbaric direction. It is precisely because of this that humans need to be extremely careful when dealing with zombies. Although intelligent zombies have the appearance of humans, their eyes are still not like human eyes. Although the eyes of advanced zombies are red, not all of them are red. Like I, his eyes are golden. Sure Xingyu and Xiao Ji's eyes are red. Although they are red, the eye patterns are still somewhat different. But Yu Qingxian doesn't remember where they are different. Who stares at other people's eyes for no reason? Although intelligent zombies, each zombie is different. So the eyes will also change. For example, among zombies of the same level, the combat power of barbaric zombies must be higher than that of intelligent zombies. Otherwise, that kid sure Xingyu wouldn't have been smashed through more than 10 walls. But thinking about it, human abilities of the same level can completely beat zombies of the same level. Half of the primary ability users can fight against second level zombies, and if they have talent, they can probably fight against third level zombies. Of course, whether they can survive may still require some luck. But second level ability users can completely fight against third level zombies. Although she knows this, she doesn't know how to judge the opponent's level. Like Shi Xingyu or Xiao Ji and I, they can easily determine how strong the opponent is. The stronger the zombie, the more it can feel how strong the human is. Thinking like this, Yu Qingxian turned in the direction of the city. Go to another city to find a notebook and the like. This city, I'm afraid that soon, it will return to human control. Yu Qingxian felt fortunate that she came quickly. If it were a few months later, she probably wouldn't be able to pass through this city to see the earliest sunrise. She went west again. And when passing a road, she suddenly stopped. There, there were rows of barbed wire fences. She knew the danger signs on them, and there were official signs. This place. Yu Qingxian looked around and didn't see any landmarks. But, Yu Qingxian immediately took out the map to check her current location. When she saw the place name, her face turned a little pale. It's where my parents had a car accident. It's less than 20 kilometers from where you can see the sunrise. Yu Qingxian lay on the net and then found that the net should be an electric net. It's just that the power is off now, so it's not electrified. This road was also newly built later. In other words, the original road was blocked. Oh, Yu Qingxian remembered that she didn't see the bodies of her parents. The official said that because the car caught fire, they couldn't be saved and turned into ashes. Even the cancellation of the household registration was handled by the authorities for her. Well, she just attended the funeral. Then she went home, and she didn't even care about what happened later. Now she thinks those relatives were right. It's better to raise a dog than to raise a child like her. All parents don't want to raise such a cold-blooded child, right? Yu Qingxian tore open the iron net and went to that place. But the closer she got, the more her head started to hurt. She thought of the feeling she had at the water park before. But this feeling wasn't as strong as before. Before, it felt like her eyeballs were going to pop out. Now, this headache was the pain she had long been accustomed to from lack of sleep. After passing through a dozen iron wire nets, Yu Qingxian finally saw the scene in front of her clearly. It was a huge charred pit, and there were many strange fragments in the pit. The fragments were slowly glowing, but there was nothing in this place. Yu Qingxian jumped down from the edge of the pit. She, who should not have felt any pain, now felt like her head was being pricked by needles. And there were suddenly many images flashing before her eyes. But those were not her memories. They were things that had happened here before. It seemed that these crystals had recorded them. Yu Qingxian stood in the middle of the deep pit, 
and scenes from the night of that day kept flashing back before her eyes. The sky suddenly lit up, and then exploded in front of people like lightning. Then it instantly plunged into darkness. This scene kept playing in Yu Qingxian's mind. So her parents didn't die because of a car accident, but because of the sudden appearance of the light. As the scenes kept flashing back, the light in front of Yu Qingxian's eyes slowed down. Gradually, she seemed to see something in the light. It was a crystal the size of a human brain. And there was not just one, but because it was too bright at that moment, it overlooked the other lights in the sky. In other words, in an instant, countless crystals fell all over the earth, causing countless accidents. And her parents also died in this accident. The scene was still playing in Yu Qingxian's mind, but she felt a little weak. Indeed, this place was not only dangerous for humans, but also for zombies. But in fact, Yu Qingxian was willing to die where her parents had died. Yu Qingxian collapsed on the ground like this. As the sun set, the sky around her became darker and darker. The crystal fragments in the pitch black pit kept flashing. Even Yu Qingxian's body was flashing. It wasn't until midnight that Yu Qingxian woke up again. She found that she hadn't died yet, and she was a little disappointed. Yu Qingxian struggled to get up and knelt on the ground. The sky was dim, but she could see the stars. Obviously, it was already night. Yu Qingxian turned her head to look at the moon and then confirmed the time. She had probably slept for about seven hours. By now, she had adapted to the pain caused by the crystals. It was not very clear during the day, but now she could see clearly. After all, even though zombies were not restricted at night, glowing things would still be particularly conspicuous in their eyes. As long as the sun does not appear, even a little bit of light will be magnified countless times in the eyes of the zombies. This is also the reason why zombies tend to move towards light. After all, zombies were once human. So, deep down, they still know that where there is light, there are humans. And humans are their food. Yu Qingxian stood up and picked up all the fragments of these crystals. Well, my parents died here, and there's not even a body left, so I'll keep this as a memento. However, even though these crystals exploded, there should still be a large piece left. Forget it. Since the authorities have sealed off this place, it means that whatever was here has been taken away. Thinking of this, Yu Qingxian suddenly had a flash of insight. Could it be that the thing attracting IE is this crystal? But this crystal is harmful to both zombies and humans, right? Or, in the past three years, has the government modified this crystal? Remove the harmful substances from the crystal. So what is this harmful substance? Is it the zombie virus? Since the country has removed this harmful substance, how did the apocalypse happen? Even overnight? Yu Qingxian suddenly slapped herself on the head. Is she an idiot? There are so many countries on the whole earth, and it's not like if one country can control it, other countries can't. Yu Qingxian was like picking up pretty little stones by the river, bending down to pick up here and there. And at this time, the sky here was getting light. It means it's already 3 in the morning. She put the picked up crystal fragments in her pocket. Then she crawled back. And she twisted the torn net back. Although it was obvious at a glance that the wire mesh had been damaged. But she really tried. There was no way to restore it to its original state. In order not to be caught doing something bad, Yu Qingxian quickly rode her suitcase away. In fact, there is one good thing about the apocalypse, her suitcase has been left here for several hours, and no one has taken it. That's really great. Of course, she didn't mean that others like to take things randomly. Well, Yu Qingxian did have this idea. After all, when she was in school, her phone was taken from her pocket on the way home. It scared her so much that she didn't dare to go out for three months, quietly took her own phone, and that person could do anything quietly. It's really scary. Thinking of this, Yu Qingxian became even more cautious, protecting her backpack with her hand. Clearly, there was no one around, not even zombies. If someone or a zombie saw Yu Qingxian's actions, she would probably be associated with sneaky behavior for the rest of her life. When Yu Qingxian entered the next city, she found that there were many more zombies in this city than in the previous one. She happily headed towards the bookstore in this district. After all, there was something she wanted to find inside. Just as Yu Qingxian entered the bookstore, she felt a gust of wind behind her. She turned around suddenly and saw a figure rushing towards her. Yu Qingxian was startled and immediately closed the glass door. But obviously, this glass door couldn't stop the other party. The figure went straight through the glass door and landed in front of Yu Qingxian. Yu Qingxian was shocked. Oh no. It's really a high-level zombie coming to take her life. But when she saw who it was, her eyes instantly turned cold. It was just a black dot. Lao Nyo is back. Sure Xing Yu looked at Yu Qingxian, who had just been full of fear, and when she saw that it was herself, she returned to her usual innocent look. But did she just widen her eyes? He even saw the color of Yu Qingxian's eyes. 
It's not just one color. What is it? Shi Xingyu didn't understand. But Shi Xingyu did not expect to suddenly see Yu Qingxian. It turns out that she can run so fast by herself. He thought that Yu Qingxian was still hiding somewhere. So Yu Qingxian actually didn't need him. Shi Xingyu thought so, and then saw Yu Qingxian come up to pull his hair and look at his clothes. Yu Qingxian stared at Shi Xingyu in front of her, noticing that his hair had grown longer, his skin had become closer to ice complexion, not as white. And, Yu Qingxian stared at Shi Xingyu's heterochromatic eyes. One gold, one red. He had indeed evolved again. In other words, Shi Xingyu was developing towards the direction of the corpse king. But he was too slow. Next time, introduce Shi Xingyu to I, let I teach him how to advance. Not only was Yu Qingxian observing Shi Xingyu, but Shi Xingyu was also observing Yu Qingxian. If he hadn't seen Yu Qingxian's suitcase and heard her voice, he wouldn't have felt her presence at all. Her breath was getting weaker. Clearly, she had become stronger, but it was increasingly difficult to feel Yu Qingxian's breath. It seems that in these few months, she has also made progress. At least it's becoming increasingly difficult to detect her presence. What is this zombie doing by not increasing its attack power or level, but instead trying to hide itself? Yu Qingxian looked at Shi Xingyu and thought for a moment before saying, But how did you find me? Since she knew it was Shi Xingyu, she wasn't so worried. I was chased here by someone, Shi Xingyu replied honestly. After all, in front of Yu Qingxian, he had been pressed and beaten, so there was no need to pretend in front of her. Ha! Huh? Yu Qingxian looked at Shi Xingyu with some surprise. He? Chased by someone? That shouldn't be. Could it be that humans have evolved so much in these few months? It's that little freak you mentioned. I don't know why, but she locked onto me and chased me for over a month. I couldn't shake her off even with a hurricane, Shi Xingyu said. When Yu Qingxian heard the mention of the little freak, she immediately remembered what she had heard before that when Chang was chasing after the little freak. It turns out that the little freak was chasing after Shi Xingyu. Well, since when Chang had locked onto him, Shi Xingyu was in great danger. He couldn't stay with her. Otherwise, he would be found by that little freak when Chang. Since you're being chased, why don't you go somewhere else? Why did you come to find me? Yu Qingxian stared at Shi Xingyu, feeling somewhat speechless. I did go somewhere else, but I didn't expect you to run so fast, and I certainly didn't expect to meet you in this place, Shi Xingyu also felt somewhat speechless. He had already said goodbye to Yu Qingxian before. He really didn't expect to meet her in this place. Then leave now and go somewhere else, Yu Qingxian pointed to the door, telling Shi Xingyu to leave. Shi Xingyu also didn't expect that Yu Qingxian would really drive him away. Although at this time, as a zombie, he wouldn't have any emotions, Shi Xingyu was still somewhat puzzled. Whose fault was it that he was locked onto? Thinking of this, Shi Xingyu became somewhat angry. Don't you know why I was targeted by that little freak? Believe it or not, I'll hand you over to that little freak right now. Shi Xingyu also pointed to the door. Really, he was about to advance, but she was asking him to leave. Clearly, he had human consciousness, but no human conscience. When Yu Qingxian heard Shi Xingyu wanting to hand her over to that little freak, she immediately shut up. If she were really handed over by Shi Xingyu, she would definitely not be able to resist and that little freak might even cut her into pieces. I'm sorry, I was wrong, don't hand me over. Yu Qingxian knelt directly in front of Shi Xingyu, speaking sincerely. Shi Xingyu. He really felt that Yu Qingxian never really took his abilities seriously. But Shi Xingyu also felt that this was good. With her temperament, if she knew how powerful she was, wouldn't you want to hold hands with all the zombies in the world and jump into the sea together? Although she always said she was fair. But as long as she still had humanity, she couldn't turn a blind eye to human death. Forget it, I just came to see you when I saw your suitcase, thinking that if a human killed you and took your suitcase, I would help you avenge, but I didn't expect it was you, Shi Xingyu spoke. He suddenly broke in and really didn't realize it was really Yu Qingxian. When Yu Qingxian heard Shi Xingyu wanted to avenge her, she quickly waved her hand, no need, no need. If I die, remember to grab my body and bury it. Look, I designed a coffin for myself. She took out her phone and showed Shi Xingyu the coffin she designed. Shi Xingyu looked at the strange lines. Even though he was a zombie, he couldn't understand what she was drawing. What are you drawing? Shi Xingyu finally couldn't help but ask her. When Yu Qingxian heard Shi Xingyu's words, she spoke, a coffin, with an urn and a coffin for the body. She was very satisfied with her artwork, but seeing Shi Xingyu's puzzled look, she felt like she had become a zombie and he definitely didn't recognize it. Of course, she wouldn't make fun of Shi Xingyu. Yu Qingxian also ignored Shi Xingyu and went to find a suitable notebook for journaling, and then various colored pens. Shi Xingyu still stood silently as before. Although she had been away from Lao Niu for a while, she did have some difficulties in her actions. Especially when there was no electricity, 
Yu Qingxian could only drag her suitcase. After she got these things, she put them in her backpack. As soon as she zipped it up, she smelled a fragrance on the tip of her nose. This was the smell of humans, and she was very familiar with this scent. It was the scent of the little pervert. Sure enough, Shi Xingyu had really locked onto the little pervert. Yu Qingxian looked at him, you run, run in the opposite direction, the farther away from me, the better. After saying this, Yu Qingxian picked up her suitcase and rushed out of the shop, running westward. But Shi Xingyu didn't move. In fact, he thought he could chat with that human. He had had a few encounters with the other party, but the little girl hadn't made a move. So Shi Xingyu thought that the little girl chasing after Yu Qingxian was not trying to kill her, perhaps there was another reason. Are you planning to run away for the rest of your life? Don't you want to talk to her? Shi Xingyu didn't move, just watched Yu Qingxian's back like this. The advanced zombies were not really unreasonable. For those difficult humans, they naturally would negotiate with them in a human way. After all, humans believed that zombies were once humans, and they had developed zombie intelligence, and could even communicate with humans. So there could be negotiations, after all, humans didn't want to expend too much. There was no benefit in fighting zombies to the death. So humans would believe them. They would believe the zombies. When Yu Qingxian heard Shi Xingyu's words, she paused. She had never thought about negotiating with humans. When she was human, she couldn't even talk to humans properly, let alone herself as a zombie. She felt there was no need to negotiate. But why was Shi Xingyu so sure? Could that little pervert negotiate? After a few months, when Shang finally detected that little zombie again, sure enough, as long as he locked onto that advanced zombie, he could find this little zombie. But they didn't escape? Why? It was strange that over the past month, she had directly negotiated with that advanced zombie several times, but the other party had just left. If the other party really fought seriously, although she could take down the other party's head, she would definitely suffer as well. So when Shang was somewhat surprised to see two zombies sitting and standing at the entrance of a bookstore. Because of the influence of Xingyu, the surrounding zombies directly retreated several kilometers away. Xinan saw Yu Qingxian at a glance. Although he knew from Wen Chang that the other party was a small zombie, he was really surprised. And seeing her in a green outfit and a white skirt, sitting on a suitcase. The male zombie who had faced them several times before was also there. But this time, the little zombie didn't run. She turned to look at the two people in the car. The two people in the car also looked at her. Yu Qingxian thought she would be very scared, but strangely she wasn't. Perhaps it was because there were only two people on the other side. But in any case, there was still an old cow by her side to support her. When Shang used the system to detect Yu Qingxian's abilities again, he found that her combat power had even decreased. Before, it was 8, but now it's only 5. Not only did she not make progress, she even regressed. Also, if the system hadn't confirmed it, she might not have even noticed the existence of this little zombie. Her presence was also weakening. As a zombie, being so weak, could she survive well in the apocalypse? The answer is probably unknown, after all, this little zombie is living well. When Chang confirmed that the surrounding zombies were several kilometers away, and his gaze fell on the male zombie, then he looked at Yu Qingxian. Xing Yu knew that he was being ignored. People and zombies nowadays really don't care about him, a high-level zombie. It's really a degenerate world. Xinan did not get off the car. He originally thought that the person who gave him the medicine was a master, so he was prepared to recruit the other party into the team. But after learning from Wen Chang that the other party was a zombie, he gave up this idea. His three team members also stayed in the official base afterwards. The zombies nowadays are getting stronger and stronger, so Chinan naturally wouldn't let those three teammates follow him. Therefore, he left them in the official base. He also didn't like staying in one place all the time. More importantly, Chinan somewhat liked Wen Chang. And Wen Chang was also unwilling to stay in the base. Even if she was alone, she wanted to leave. Xinan knew that Wen Chang was not as gentle and in need of protection as her name suggested. But he couldn't help but follow her out. However, Xinan also didn't know why Wen Chang was so persistent about that little zombie. He didn't ask, and it wasn't necessary to know. So at this moment, Xinan was staring at Yu Qingxian, wanting to see the uniqueness of this little zombie. But indeed, it was quite unique. It was the first time he had seen a green zombie. But he was curious why this little zombie would help humans. Seeing that the two people were staring at her, Yu Qingxian pulled Xingyu and hid behind him. But it was completely futile. She was lifted out from behind by Xingyu. They don't understand what I'm saying, Yu Qingxian said. She had tried this when facing the mother and daughter. Humans couldn't understand what she was saying. Xingyu, upon hearing this, said, it's because you don't want to communicate with humans. 
Try using the way humans speak. Hearing Xingyu's words, Yu Qingxian's face showed some confusion. She had always spoken like this. But since Xingyu said so, you speak for me, Yu Qingxian shrank behind Xingyu again. Xingyu, sister, come out and speak for yourself. But this time, he didn't lift Yu Qingxian out, but looked at Wen Chang. What are you chasing us for? Make it clear in advance. Just because she doesn't eat people doesn't mean I don't eat people. I haven't attacked you during this time out of consideration for her, and I'm prepared to make it clear. If you continue to chase us in the future, I won't be polite. Xing Yu was now very proficient in speaking the human language. The horse feeling from before was gone, and it sounded like a normal boy's voice. It wasn't particularly pleasant, but it wasn't unpleasant either. After all, Yu Qingxian's ears had been honed by various radio dramas and anime. So, to the average person, the usual voice in Yu Qingxian's ears could be considered pleasant. Thinking about this, Yu Qingxian wondered if the voice actor he liked was still alive. Should he ask for a photo? When those voice actors appeared before, there were too many fans, and she didn't dare to go. At this moment, Yu Qingxian started to daydream again. When Chang looked at Yu Qingxian staring at Xu Xingyu's back and wondered what she was thinking, his gaze shifted back to Xu Xingyu. When Chang was indeed surprised by the fact that two zombies would live together. After all, the system had said that zombies wouldn't appear in groups, especially not too powerful ones. Of course, it might be possible for lower level zombies. So when Chang felt that Yu Qingxian was being controlled by Xu Xingyu, but in the current situation, it seemed more like the relationship between these two zombies was the other way around. Sorry, I'm just curious about this zombie. After she turned into a zombie, her combat power not only didn't increase, but decreased. I've always wanted to investigate this, of course, I have no ill intentions, when Shang spoke up. From the mouth of this male zombie, she could tell that the little zombie didn't eat people. In other words, she likely still retained some human conscience. Otherwise, she wouldn't have helped Xin and get the medicine. But to what extent, when Chang wasn't sure? Probably not much. If she still retained human consciousness, she should want to integrate into the human world, rather than always lurking among the zombies. Listening to Wen Chang's words, Shi Xingyu's eyes narrowed slightly, clearly not believing her words. Just out of curiosity, could she follow Yu Qingxian for half a year? Shi Xingyu didn't believe that. He quietly asked Yu Qingxian, do you believe her? Hearing this, Yu Qingxian's gaze shifted to Wen Chang's face, then she withdrew her gaze. Tell her not to follow me anymore, she said. As for Shi Xingyu's question, Yu Qingxian simply ignored it. Shi Xingyu was already used to her being like this, so he relayed Yu Qingxian's words to Wen Chang. After learning what Yu Qingxian said from Shi Xingyu, Wen Chang seemed to want to say something, but in the end, she chose not to say anything. Don't worry, I won't appear again in the future, and I will keep your affairs to myself. Wen Chang thought this zombie would have something in common with her. But now it seemed that even if they both didn't fit in, it didn't mean they got along. After saying this, Wen Chang turned and returned to the car, and erased these two zombies from the system. There was no need to track this zombie in the future. When Qinan started the car, he still looked at Yu Qingxian. Thank you for the medicine earlier, he said. After saying this, Qinan raised the car window, and the car drove past Yu Qingxian and Shi Xingyu. Shi Xingyu watched the car disappear on the street before turning to look at Yu Qingxian. Yu Qingxian didn't show any emotion towards the human's gratitude. I thought you did good deeds just to hear him say thank you, Shi Xingyu said somewhat surprised. This kind of thing should make people very happy. But looking at Yu Qingxian, it seemed that she didn't have any feelings. Her expression remained the same as before. I didn't do this kind of thing just to hear him say thank you. I did it because it would make me happy, that's all, Yu Qingxian said. She only did things to satisfy herself. Perhaps someone like her, living in a group, belonged to the selfish type. She had to be happy first before others. Doing good deeds was also because she wanted to do them. She really couldn't be a kind person like her parents. Yu Qingxian thought this and saw Shi Xingyu staring at her. She was a little puzzled. What is this kid looking at? She's not a stunning beauty. Your face, did you sew it up? Shi Xingyu said. You just noticed now? My skills are pretty good, right? Yu Qingxian flipped her long hair, looking proud. It's terrible, Shi Xingyu said truthfully. She even sewed it crooked and poked several needle marks. Fortunately, it was her own face, not ruining other zombies. Yu Qingxian knew that zombies didn't appreciate it and didn't bother with her. But she suddenly remembered something. She immediately took the level 3 crystal core from her backpack and returned it to Shi Xingyu. Here's the crystal core back. I've been through a lot carrying this crystal core, being targeted by those zombies. Yu Qingxian handed the crystal core to Shi Xingyu. Finally, she could get rid of this hot potato. Shi Xingyu looked at the crystal core 
perfectly intact, handed back to her by Yu Qingxian, and was surprised. She had been carrying this crystal core for two months. She hadn't even taken a bite. Who are you trying to fool? Sure Xingyu didn't believe that Yu Qingxian had a hard time. As long as Yu Qingxian was cautious, there probably wouldn't be any zombies in the world really trying to steal from her. Yu Qingxian didn't mind being caught in a lie by Sher Xingyu and sat on the suitcase. She started the suitcase, and Sher Xingyu followed along. Sher Xingyu didn't eat the crystal core but put it in a small bag around her waist. Yu Qingxian looked over and noticed a small bag on Sher Xingyu's waist. She didn't know what was inside, but after putting the crystal core in, it bulged. But it didn't matter, as the crystal core had been returned to Sher Xingyu. You're about to level up, right? Yu Qingxian asked. Yes, soon, Sher Xingyu said. If it weren't for being chased by that little freak, she might have already leveled up. But now she seemed to be stuck. She didn't know what to do for a while. When Yu Qingxian heard Sher Xingyu's words, she suddenly thought of his golden and red eyes and couldn't help but say, I've never seen a level 4, 5 zombie before. Likewise, Sher Xingyu wasn't discouraged. After all, she had never seen a non-cannibal zombie either. I was planning to return the crystal core to you at Autumn Lake in September, but I didn't expect to meet you here. So, should I still go in September? Yu Qingxian asked. She wanted to go to too many places and was afraid she wouldn't be able to go to Autumn Lake in September. Go, as you said before, Shi Xingyu said. Yu Qingxian looked at Shi Xingyu and said, The scenery doesn't matter to you, as a zombie, you can't appreciate it. Shi Xingyu didn't respond. Although it was true, she felt it wasn't quite right. Anyway, let's just go, Shi Xingyu said. Sure, let's go, Yu Qingxian said, then suddenly looked at Shi Xingyu. I do know a zombie who is already above level 5. If you don't understand something, I can take you to see him and let him teach you. This surprised Shi Xingyu. She actually knew other zombies, and even higher level ones than herself. In the past two months, Yu Qingxian had experienced quite a lot. I don't think that zombie will teach me, but will smash my brain, Shi Xingyu said honestly. She didn't think that zombie could accommodate her existence, especially since she was halfway to level 5. The other party would definitely try to kill her by all means. How could they get along? Why? Yu Qingxian asked, somewhat puzzled. After all, she thought that aside from daydreaming, I was quite gentle as a zombie. Of course, like Shi Xingyu, she couldn't appreciate it. Because I also want to smash the other's head, Shi Xingyu answered honestly. If the other is stronger than oneself, then one can only be subordinate or be killed. Zombies also have pride, of course, they cannot be subordinate to other zombies. This will only make that zombie stronger and the zombies below will not get any fresh flesh and blood. Of course, one must be the king oneself. Yu Qingxian heard this and also realized this problem. There is no cooperation between zombies. Only by eating more flesh and blood can one become stronger. Otherwise, even if one grows a crystal nucleus, it will still be at the mercy of other zombies. Yu Qingxian thought of this and fell silent. Shi Xingyu saw that Yu Qingxian was not speaking, so he reached out and stopped Yu Qingxian's suitcase, then skillfully pulled out the handle from the back. Yu Qingxian was completely turned in a different direction. She did not expect this old cow to be so self-aware. I can only send you out of the city, I won't go with you. Shi Xingyu seemed to have begun to understand Yu Qingxian, she said this before Yu Qingxian could ask. Shi Xingyu did not get a response from Yu Qingxian and did not care. He had said before that he and Yu Qingxian were different. He was a true zombie and could not not eat people for Yu Qingxian. And in his eyes, her saving people was inexplicable. By her side, he would always be under her control. Even if she didn't say anything. When they reached the edge of the city, Shi Xingyu let go of Yu Qingxian's suitcase. Yu Qingxian also started her own suitcase. Then see you in September. Don't die, after all, I can't contact you. Yu Qingxian waved to Shi Xingyu on her back, marking the end of this brief reunion. No one knows if they can survive in this world tomorrow. Humans don't know, and zombies don't know either. Yu Qingxian withdrew her hand, opened the map, and continued westward. Shi Xingyu watched Yu Qingxian leave without looking back, and didn't care. He reached out and patted the waste bag at his waist. What an unreasonable request. There are many powerful humans and many zombies in this world. Hopefully, in September, his head will still be there. Yu Qingxian seemed to think of something, and when she turned around, there was no sign of Shi Xingyu at the edge of the city. She thought that at this time, she should say have a safe journey. But it seemed useless to say that to a zombie. Yu Qingxian entered the destination she wanted to go to, and the map showed it, even setting a route for her. It even told her which base was more suitable as a rest stop along the way. Yu Qingxian looked at this route and felt that it was completely unacceptable. This route would lead her into a crowd of people. Yu Qingxian thought of this and took out a photo from her backpack. 
It was a group photo of herself with her parents. Her parents were smiling happily, but she had no expression. She was indeed a failure, even unwilling to smile in a photo with her parents. Yu Qingxian stared at the photo, but not a single tear fell. She knew that at a time like this, others would definitely cry their hearts out. But she didn't want to cry at all. But she understood that her parents were very important to her. Since she was young, she had never been able to integrate into human social circles. Especially when she was 15 or 16, it was so severe that she would feel physically uncomfortable when facing strangers or even acquaintances. It was also during that time that her condition, from not being able to communicate normally with others, developed into a situation where every time she went out, after reluctantly interacting with humans, she would experience symptoms of fever. Even if she went to see a doctor, she didn't listen to what the doctor said. But why? Why, after becoming a zombie, has this symptom decreased a lot? Yu Qingxian was not clear and could not understand. Yu Xiaohyun's next stop is a place she has been looking forward to for a long time. It's also a place she used to say she wanted to go see the snow. But now it seems that there is no snow in that place, so she's going to see the flowers. However, that place is covered with heavy snow all year round. Can she see the flowers? Maybe she should go to a flower shop to check. If there are no flowers, she'll just scatter the seeds along the way. Anyway, next spring, there will definitely be flowers. Even in the harsh winter, they can bloom in the coming spring, right? Yu Xiaohyan said she was going to choose flower seeds, but when she saw so many seeds, she felt conflicted. What kind of seeds can grow in the north? But when she looked at the sunlight outside, she felt she was worrying too much. Yu Xiaohyan gave up those seeds and went to look for the mutated flower seeds in the post-apocalyptic world. There are many of them by the roadside. These flowers are very beautiful, although some have not been planted yet, some already have seeds. Yu Xiaohyan looked at the plants in the field and placed her suitcase on the side. Of course, she also brought her backpack. She was going to the thicket, where last time she went to the rose bushes and tore her clothes. But she still put her things slightly to the side of the road. She was worried about being found by passing survivors. Of course, in a place like this now, she might not see any living people for days, so she didn't have to worry. Yu Xiaohyan stepped over the ditch and entered the thicket. But as soon as she took a few steps, it seemed like something was entwined around her feet. It wasn't because Yu Xiaohyan felt it, but when she realized it, she was already hanging upside down. Her long skirt was all turned over, blocking her view. Yu Xiaohyan reached out to push the skirt down and saw a super beautiful morning glory in the thicket. At this moment, she was entwined by the morning glory vine on one leg. Yu Xiaohyan could barely see the vine on her leg. It had green leaves and beautiful morning glories. Yu Xiaohyan stared at those flowers and said, I'm blooming. But, she couldn't be hanging in this place all the time. Although it was almost evening now, the sun would rise again early tomorrow. If she kept hanging in this place, she would definitely be dried up by the sun. Yu Xiaohyan reached out in the air, but the morning glory seemed to realize what she wanted to do and lifted her up a few meters. At this point, she was estimated to be more than 10 meters from the ground, and she was upside down. At this point, she could only focus on what was in front of her and not what was behind her. But from this perspective, she could clearly see the surroundings. This should be someone's vegetable garden, but now it's full of various vines. Clearly, morning glories used to need to climb other plants or tree branches or fences to grow. But now it could lift her, who weighed 90 kilograms. It was really amazing. Indeed, the apocalypse made many things very powerful. Even she, who was afraid to step out of her room, had embarked on a hiking trip. So no matter what happened in this world, Yu Xiaohyan wouldn't find it strange. But could it please put her down? The morning glory didn't understand her words. Instead of putting her down, it spun her like a windmill. Yu Xiaohyan crossed her arms and was tossed back and forth by the morning glory. She didn't have that kind of congested feeling. It seemed that turning into a zombie had its benefits. And the morning glory seemed a little dissatisfied with Yu Xiaohyan's sudden silence, so it threw her out directly. Yu Xiaohyan fell to the ground, rolled a few times, and lay on the ground in a big shape. And when she sat up, she met a pair of beautiful eyes. Of course, this wasn't a zombie or a human, but a big white dog. Judging by its appearance, it was bigger than any dog she had ever seen. After three minutes of staring at each other, Yu Xiaohyan finally realized that this was a mutated dog. It's like the big wolfhound by Gu Wanching's side. But she has never kept a dog, nor a cat. Oh, she has kept one. It's just that they have passed away. She wouldn't be sad for a human's passing, but she cried a lot at that time. It was a calico cat that grew up with her. But when she was 10, the cat passed away. Looking back now, that was the most serious emotional outburst for her. It wasn't because her parents passed away but because of a cat. Yu Qingxian once again felt the coldness on her body. 
This dog is big, and it seems impossible to break the collar on its neck, which is now tightly choking it. The sense of security it once provided has now become something that could take its life. Yu Qingxian knew that it might be considering itself as a human, ready to seek help from humans. If it were a zombie, it might have pounced at her by now. Yu Qingxian stood up and approached, and the big white dog did not retreat. I don't know if I can break it, I don't have a knife in my hand, Yu Qingxian reached out and grabbed the collar. What followed was a strong scent. Indeed, the collar was deeply embedded in its neck. Yu Qingxian grabbed the collar, and the mutated dog seemed to be in pain, trembling all over, but it did not instinctively bite Yu Qingxian. She grabbed both sides of the collar with both hands and pulled hard, and the collar broke. The collar was actually quite loose and not meant to restrain it. That's why this mutated dog could grow so big and not be immediately strangled by the collar. Instead, it had been around its neck for nearly half a year. Yu Qingxian looked at the name on the dog tag, Tyrannosaurus. Is this your name? You're called Tyrannosaurus. Yu Qingxian widened her eyes and looked at the big dog in front of her. But at this moment, the big dog lay on the ground, and its suddenly relaxed state also relaxed its tense nerves. The bleeding had already stopped. Yu Qingxian looked and found its amazing self-healing ability. It probably saved it. Yu Qingxian looked at the collar in her hand, which was almost scratched through. There were many marks on it. It was just because the collar was embedded in the flesh, even with the strength of this big dog, it was not possible to directly scratch through the collar. She stood up, took the collar, and walked to the edge of the ditch. There was flowing water in the ditch, and she crouched down to wash the blood off her hands and the collar. Then she placed it by the ditch. Tyrannosaurus also staggered over. But it probably hadn't eaten for a long time, it looked big, but it was just because of its fur, there wasn't much meat on its body. But all Yu Qingxian could do for it was this. Yu Qingxian never expected that it would be so difficult to catch a bird. These birds had already mutated and become more agile. Fortunately, her efforts paid off. Finally, in the middle of the night, she found a nest of bird eggs. She even took the bird's nest. The two birds pecked at her. When she shook off the birds and returned to the house, she found that Tyrannosaurus had fallen asleep. This left Yu Qingxian speechless. So why was she so desperate for a dog that she didn't even know who it belonged to? Oh well, just this once. Anyway, once this mutated dog recovers its strength, its combat power will definitely surpass her own. She doesn't need to worry. Oh, and the dog's owner doesn't need to worry either, your Tyrannosaurus is still alive. Yu Qingxian fed Tyrannosaurus five mutated bird eggs. Of course, five bird eggs wouldn't even satisfy a normal child, let alone a mutated large dog. But that's all she could do. She had wanted to catch a few mutated birds before, but in the end, she had no choice but to settle for taking a nest of someone else's children. Yu Qingxian mourned for the five bird eggs in his heart. Sorry, the Tyrannosaurus, who had eaten five bird eggs, looked much better. Although it didn't feel satisfying, it was better than nothing. It was better than being idle. Yu Qingxian didn't know if the owner of the Tyrannosaurus was still alive. If they were, why did they abandon the dog? So it was highly likely that they had passed away. Of course, Yu Qingxian had no way to take the big dog with her. It had already mutated. It bled every day and hadn't been eaten by zombies. This was enough to prove its strength. Yu Qingxian left the room and walked out with her suitcase. As soon as she moved, the Tyrannosaurus, which had just closed its eyes, stood up instantly and wanted to follow Yu Qingxian. Yu Qingxian had only taken two steps when the Tyrannosaurus bit her skirt. This made Yu Qingxian pause. But she was also stubborn and continued to walk forward with force. The Tyrannosaurus wouldn't let her go, so the already thin skirt was torn in half. Yu Qingxian heard the sound of fabric tearing and turned to look. She saw the Tyrannosaurus holding a piece of her skirt in its mouth. It seemed to realize it had done something wrong and immediately lowered its head obediently. But Yu Qingxian didn't mind. She opened her suitcase and took out another skirt from inside. Dang dang. I have a spare skirt. Yu Qingxian looked proudly at the Tyrannosaurus. It turned out that the white skirt was already covered in mud from the morning glory and needed to be changed. The Tyrannosaurus watched as Yu Qingxian put on the new skirt and made gestures in front of it, its eyes shining. Because it had just done something wrong. But Yu Qingxian didn't blame it. She threw the damaged skirt aside and looked seriously at the Tyrannosaurus in front of her. I don't know if you can understand me, but I still have to say it. Yu Qingxian patiently explained to the Tyrannosaurus that she didn't have the ability to take care of this big dog. Perhaps Gu Wancheng or Wen Chang could take care of it. First of all, I am a zombie, and I don't eat anything. I'm not very capable and can't take care of you. Although I can go get dog food for you, I definitely can't carry that much dog food. Yu Qingxian patiently explained to the Tyrannosaurus. The places she passed were either deserted or full of zombies. 
The Tyrannosaurus definitely couldn't follow. If it encountered high-level zombies, this kind of mutated dog would definitely be a delicious meal. So she thought it would be better for the Tyrannosaurus to go its own way. Seeing that the Tyrannosaurus seemed to have taken her words to heart, Yu Qingsan then carried her suitcase out of the yard of this house. The yards in this place didn't look high, and the houses weren't tall. It was probably for warmth. But the temperature here was high now, and in such low, small houses, it must be very hot. Yu Qingxian walked out of the yard and continued forward. She had originally wanted to find flowers to plant, but the morning glory was too irritable and had tossed her around during the day. What if she went again and the morning glory swallowed her? In the apocalypse, plants might eat living things or zombies. But after walking for about one or two kilometers, Yu Qingxian felt the Tyrannosaurus following her. Although it was trying very hard to hide itself, but no matter what, it had mutated, and its body was naturally much larger than before. So even though the Tyrannosaurus hit its head, its whole body was exposed. Yu Qingxian was helpless. She had only raised cats, and that was almost 20 years ago. Now, raising such a big dog was completely difficult for her. Clearly, the Tyrannosaurus had an owner. She had only helped it remove the collar. It wasn't a big deal. Why did it have to follow her? Yu Qingxian didn't care about it. Follow yourself today, if you ignore it, it will leave. Yu Qingxian really thinks so. But five days later, the Tyrannosaurus still followed her. Although sometimes the Tyrannosaurus would leave for a few hours. But then it would catch up. Just standing on four legs, the back of the Tyrannosaurus was already over a meter high. If it stood up, it would probably be over two meters high. Yu Qingxian was helpless. Of course, she didn't care about it. Instead, these days, she saw some wildflowers on the roadside. She would be very interested in taking pictures of these little flowers with her camera. She would lie directly on the ground to find the right angle for the flowers. Originally, they were small and grew on the side of the road, but Yu Qingxian's photos made them look like they were holding up the blue sky. After seeing the photos she took, Yu Qingxian was very pleased. In the past few months, her photography skills have improved qualitatively. Although she has no talent, as long as she takes more photos, there will be a qualitative change. At this moment, Yu Qingxian saw that the area around the road was all cold-resistant trees. It's just that they look like they were about to be sunburned. After all, these trees are cold-resistant but not heat-resistant. However, when Yu Qingxian passed by a small hill, she found a red pine tree among the withered yellow trees. It was not just any red, but a blood-red color. Yu Qingxian stood at the foot of the mountain and did not approach. She took two steps back and took a picture of the blood-red pine tree. Although it looked somewhat eerie and beautiful, Yu Qingxian knew that such eerie beings in the apocalypse were very dangerous. Although if this pine tree were cut down, the wood might still be useful. However, Yu Qingxian did not go up the mountain, but continued to walk forward. Yu Qingxian did not find many flower seeds, so she planned to look for some in the nearby town. If she couldn't find seeds suitable for this temperature, she would bring a pack when she went south and plant them next spring. Of course, if she was still alive as a zombie at that time, Yu Qingxian took out the map and found that she had reached the northernmost part of her country. In the past, this place in June was only about 10 degrees. Even with an umbrella, Yu Qingxian felt a little wilted. She checked the temperature on her phone. 42 degrees. No wonder she felt so listless, the temperature was so high. But with such a high temperature, she wouldn't die on this road, would she? If she were to die, she would have to choose a beautiful posture. With this in mind, Yu Qingxian stopped walking. She took out a shovel and prepared to dig a hole for herself. But as soon as she squatted down, she heard a sound. Yu Qingxian immediately grabbed her suitcase and crawled down the roadside ditch, lying down directly on the ground. Although it was a bit sneaky, Yu Qingxian really had no other choice. Because the temperature was too high, she felt that her sense of taste and hearing were both diminished. It was impossible to run far away. Fortunately, the ditch was quite deep, about a meter high. It was originally for draining snow. Now that there was no snow, it was dry. In addition, there was 50 centimeters of soil on the roadside, covered with wild grass. It could really block her. Yu Qingxian lay still in the ditch. She suddenly thought of the Tyrannosaurus. She didn't know if that silly dog had hidden. But even if it hadn't, it should be fine. After all, many teams of superhumans keep mutated animals to help them in battle. So Yu Qingxian was more worried about herself than the Tyrannosaurus. But Yu Qingxian noticed that a car had stopped in the distance, and a group of people got out of the car. They looked around carefully and then went up the hill. Yu Qingxian watched the people and then looked at the top of the mountain, instantly understanding the goal of these people. It was that blood pine tree. Indeed, this mutated plant could not escape the clutches of humans. It's a good thing they weren't here to catch her. 
Yu Qingxian dared not move at this moment, she crouched in the ditch and casually grabbed a handful of grass to hang over her head. There were four or five people standing guard in front of the car with guns, while the rest were cautiously heading up the mountain. Yu Qingxian watched as those people even wore specially made helmets and carried several things on their backs that looked like fire extinguishers. She didn't know what those things were, but since these people were fully armed, they must have been tipped off in advance. Maybe someone had already suffered a loss at the hands of this tree. Yu Qingxian just didn't know what use a blood red pine tree had. She didn't know what was happening on the mountain, but she could hear some rumbling. Then came the sound of an explosion. The people in front of the car also looked towards the mountaintop in shock. Suddenly, a large fire erupted from the mountaintop, and the fire snakes were swept up by the wind, shooting straight into the sky. Yu Qingxian didn't dare to take out her camera to take pictures, so she could only take a few with her phone and record a video. After that, several people came running down from the mountaintop. Get in the car quickly, the fire can't burn down this tree. The leader seemed a bit flustered, running while looking back. It seemed like something was chasing them from behind. The people immediately got into the car and opened the doors. Once those people had scrambled into the car, it quickly drove away. Yu Qingxian watched the large fire on the mountaintop and then watched as the cars disappeared. It's not setting fire to the mountain. Yu Qingxian also didn't know if this fire would spread to several mountains. Over a dozen people went up, but less than 10 came back. Obviously, those people all stayed on the mountain. Yu Qingxian waited for half an hour, but the fire on the mountain didn't spread. She heard the rustling of leaves, and a wisp of smoke rose from the mountaintop, then there was no more movement. Yu Qingxian climbed out of the ditch and shook off the grass on her head. Then, a nauseating smell wafted to her nose. Those people must have been roasted. Yu Qingxian pulled her suitcase out of the ditch and stared at the mountaintop for a while, feeling the smell slowly dissipate. She jogged over and saw that the trees in that area were all charred, but the blood pine tree still stood there. Yu Qingxian even felt that it was glowing. Its color seemed even more vibrant than before. Yu Qingxian now understood that this tree eats people. But obviously, a tree like this in such a place is a natural hazard. It's normal for humans to want to get rid of it. Or perhaps this blood pine tree should have some medicinal or other value. Yu Qingxian didn't go up to greet it. She just took out her phone and took a few more pictures of it. With so many people eyeing it, it's likely that it will be uprooted in the future. While she could still see it now, Yu Qingxian took a few more glances. When it got dark, Yu Qingxian finally arrived in a small town. The town looked very beautiful. The roads were not made of concrete, but of beautiful cobblestones. The outer perimeters of the surrounding houses were all built of wood, and there were large floor-to-ceiling windows. It seemed to be convenient for watching the snow. But at this moment, Yu Qingxian could only see those pine trees. This place used to have snow all year round, but now the snow had melted, revealing the rocks underneath, which also had a unique scenery, and some green grass had grown in the soil between the rocks. For some reason, Yu Qingxian felt that this place would be suitable for grazing cows. Sheep could also be raised here, because the higher areas were all rocks. Yu Qingxian found a small building with a good view and settled in. After tidying up a bit, she went out in the night. The temperature had indeed dropped quite a bit at this time. Yu Qingxian's energy had also increased quite a bit. She crossed the entire town and climbed to the top of a mountain. Standing on the mountaintop, she could overlook the entire town. And she turned north, where she could see another country in the distance. But that country was sparsely populated, so there was no need to worry too much about zombies coming over. Yu Qingxian looked for a while and then looked away. The town she came to was just an ordinary town, to see the winter cedars. The city more than 10 kilometers away was where most people went like sledding on the ice lake, skiing, and so on. Yu Qingxian couldn't play with these facilities now. Although it was a bit of a pity, Yu Qingxian didn't really want to play. That's what she said. But Yu Qingxian set off in the middle of the night and headed to the neighboring city with many entertainment facilities. It took her two hours to walk more than 10 kilometers. Because she followed the road, she did take a detour. There were mountains all around, because to the southwest, there was a large mountain range. The birch forest here was not yet tinged with golden yellow like in autumn and winter, but as Yu Qingxian listened to the sound of the wind blowing through the leaves, it was as if the trees on both sides were applauding her. Yu Qingxian suddenly stopped and waved to the trees on both sides. You're welcome, you're welcome. Yu Qingxian smiled. She had only seen videos of people walking through various forests during the day, but this was the first time she had walked through such a forest path at night. Sitting on her suitcase, Yu Qingxian couldn't help but sing a song about the birch forest. But there was no snow at this time. Although the atmosphere was not very strong, Yu Qingxian was very happy. After passing through the forest path, 
Yu Qingxian returned to the road and finally arrived in the city of M when it was almost dawn. But a little further north from this place was a good place to see the aurora. Yu Qingxian thought about it, but the timing was not right. After all, the best time to see the aurora was after September. She had come to this place during the hottest time. It was also a time of great change in the Earth's climate. Yu Qingxian felt that if you wanted to travel somewhere, and you had the time and the means, you should just go without hesitation. Because when you want to travel, it's the best time to travel. Looking at the map, Yu Qingxian followed a very ordinary travel guide and went to the northernmost outpost first. This was the northernmost town in the entire country. But Yu Qingxian didn't dare to go there ostentatiously. Because in this place, Yu Qingxian smelled something. In other words, there were people in this place. This made Yu Qingxian feel a little cautious. After all, there were also troops in the city where the sun rose earliest. So Yu Qingxian naturally had to be a little careful. She didn't want to alarm those troops. Fortunately, this place was quite large, and even if Yu Qingxian went there, she didn't attract attention. She sat on a long bench in the distance and looked back at the red flags fluttering. She stared at the flags for a while, took out her phone, and took a photo with the national flag. Yu Qingxian didn't see the aurora in this place, so she went to the next scenic spot at night. But she never expected that the Tyrannosaurus Rex was following her. After more than a week of recovery, the Tyrannosaurus Rex looked a bit rounder than before. Before, the Tyrannosaurus Rex would hide from her and not let her see it. It seemed to know that she wouldn't deliberately drive it away, so it became more and more unguarded. Yu Qingxian didn't pay attention to it, but pulled her suitcase and followed the signs. In such a tourist destination, there was no need to look at the map, as there were signs everywhere. At this point, she no longer had the map given to her by the black market, but a guidebook she had picked up at the ticket office. Every time she arrived at a place, Yu Qingxian took a photo with the stone tablets of those scenic spots. Looking at the photos on her phone, Yu Qingxian was startled. She looked at the photos of herself with those iconic buildings and thought of her parents. Yu Qingxian immediately opened the album and found the photos her parents had sent before. Sure enough, the position she was standing in, her parents had also stood there before. However, she understood too slowly. Now, three and a half years later, she was beginning to understand the significance of her parents sending her the photos. People will die, the scenery will change, but everywhere in this world, there are traces of them. Yu Qingxian is not alone. Her parents are still with her. She stared at the photo and swiped to the right, and sure enough, it was the same scenery. Her parents were really patient. Not only were there photos and videos, but also various explanations. Yu Qingxian put the brochure she had taken from the scenic area on the roadside and instead followed her parents' instructions to view the scenery. Although it was different. She opened the video, and it was her mother's voice. The scenery recorded in the video was the same as the one in front of her. She looked at the distant scenery, listening to her mother's voice. It was as if the three of them were traveling together. As the video played, Yu Qingxian climbed onto the observation platform on the riverside cliff and saw that the place looked like a winding dragon. The view was very broad, and she could see very far. She put her phone in her pocket and held the camera to take pictures. Yu Qingxian didn't know if this sudden change in the climate was temporary or if it would be like this in the future. But since she was here, of course, she had to take pictures. However, through the camera lens, Yu Qingxian saw a black creature crawling out of the river. She immediately put away the camera and took out her binoculars to look at the creature. It looked like a large fish, but this fish had claws and sharp teeth in its gaping mouth. Oh! What is that? The fish is coming ashore. No, she had seen fish come ashore before, but those fish were not this big. It could swallow her in one bite, and it was crawling from the river towards her country. Yu Qingxian blinked, then couldn't help but want to tell this strange big fish to crawl to the other side. While Yu Qingxian was thinking that the big fish probably didn't need zombies, a zombie deer with a swing, almost falling head passed by. So, a long tongue was spit out from the big fish's mouth and rolled the zombie deer in. Although she couldn't hear any sound, Yu Qingxian felt a bit of pain in her bones. It turned out that this big fish also eats zombies. The big fish crushed the trees, climbed onto the riverbank, and headed towards the city. Just as Yu Qingxian was worried, several off-road vehicles had already driven up from the road. The big fish also stopped when it heard the noise. Yu Qingxian looked around, grabbed her suitcase, and crouched behind a trash can to sneak a peek at the situation. Several people got out of the car, but they were not wearing uniforms, which meant that they were members of the Supernatural Powers team. Yu Qingxian glanced at each of their faces. Well, good, she didn't recognize any of them. As she watched those people skillfully use a fishing net to catch fish, Yu Qingxian couldn't help but cover her face in amazement. Were these people geniuses? 
She thought that since the fish had legs and didn't need to breathe, it could naturally come ashore. But because of zombification, Yu Qingxian's thoughts were trapped in the fish coming ashore, and it was no longer an ordinary fish. But she didn't expect that these people would actually use a fishing net. And this fishing net was obviously specially made, no matter how the zombie fish struggled, it couldn't break free. However, unable to break free, the zombie fish began to spit out saliva. This saliva was corrosive, and if it landed on a person, they would probably lose a layer of skin even if they didn't die. But it was obvious that these people had fought the mutated zombie fish several times already, so they easily avoided the zombie fish's saliva. When the zombie fish spat out its powerful tongue, one of the men swiftly cut it off with a knife. Then, several people armed with submachine guns opened fire on the zombie fish. The submachine guns were equipped with silencers, so Yu Kyunghyun couldn't hear much noise. After a fierce battle, the zombie fish stopped moving. The leader of the group approached, pried open the zombie fish's head, and took out a crystal core from inside. Watching the man's skilled actions, Yu Kyunghyun couldn't help but hold her head. How many zombies had they killed to become so skilled? However, their arrival naturally attracted zombies, but these people were clearly accustomed to it. After getting what they wanted, they got into their cars and drove away. As the zombies approached, several cars drove directly over them and then left. Some of the zombies that were hit quickly got up and crazily chased after the cars. Their speed was like that of sprinters. However, as the zombies followed the cars, they also moved out of Yu Kyunghyun's field of vision. She put away her binoculars, placed the camera back in the suitcase, and put her phone in her backpack. She was ready to leave this place. She had indeed gotten too close to humans. And the humans here clearly had extensive combat experience and were not ordinary people. Yu Kyunghyun picked up her suitcase and quietly left the area. She didn't take the main road but instead took a small path up the mountain. This kind of mountain path was not suitable for rolling suitcases, so she had to carry it. But the sides of the path were overgrown with wild grass, indicating that humans had not set foot in this place for a long time. After walking for a while, she looked back and saw the Tyrannosaurus still following her. She didn't know where the Tyrannosaurus had been hiding before. It was obvious that the Tyrannosaurus had hidden much better than she had. She stared at the Tyrannosaurus, and it suddenly bared its teeth. When Yu Kyunghyun was somewhat puzzled, the Tyrannosaurus leaped directly over her head. Only then did Yu Kyunghyun look ahead and see several zombie deer blocking her path. Yu Kyunghyun was not in a hurry. She took out her phone and snapped a picture of the nearby zombie deer. Don't worry, those zombie deer probably don't eat zombies, Yu Kyunghyun said after taking the picture. Yu Kyunghyun didn't need to worry because these zombie deer were not coming for her but for the Tyrannosaurus. The Tyrannosaurus barked at the zombie deer a few times, causing them to take a few steps back. But it was only to gather strength. Yu Kyunghyun knew she couldn't persuade them, so she had to go to higher ground and leave the area to the Tyrannosaurus and the zombie deer. She secured her suitcase, took out her camera, and started recording. The epic battle between the Tyrannosaurus and the zombie deer is about to begin. Who will emerge as the champion? Stay tuned. Yu Kyunghyun even thoughtfully added sound to the video. Yu Kyunghyun knew that the Tyrannosaurus had a strong self-healing ability. But when she saw the electric sparks emanating from the Tyrannosaurus, she was still surprised. It seemed that the Tyrannosaurus was not just a mutated animal but had supernatural abilities. With electric sparks on its body, it charged forward and directly clawed the first zombie reindeer, smashing half of its head. The zombie reindeer's brain instantly spilled out, and its body began to sway before collapsing with a bang. Obviously, the Tyrannosaurus also had extensive combat experience. It knew how to kill zombies. But then again, for the past six months, its neck had been bleeding every day. And zombie animals were exceptionally sensitive to the smell of blood. Being able to survive for half a year with a fatal injury, the Tyrannosaurus truly lived up to its name. Those few zombie deer were taken care of by the Tyrannosaurus Rex in no time. However, the Tyrannosaurus Rex did not leave immediately, but instead used its claws to rummage through the brains of those few zombie deer. Yu Qingxian listened to the Tyrannosaurus Rex rummaging and hummed to herself. She wondered if the zombie deer's skull was stuck in its foot, so she naturally went over to take a look. As a result, she saw the Tyrannosaurus Rex pushing two crystal cores in front of itself. Yu Qingxian, she is not a zoo monkey, why does everyone want to feed her? It's one thing for advanced zombies, but why do even dogs want to feed her? Does she look like she's about to starve to death? For me? No need, you eat it yourself. Yu Qingxian waved her hand, indicating that she didn't want to eat. Seeing that Yu Qingxian didn't want to eat, the Tyrannosaurus Rex lowered its head and swallowed the two crystal cores. Yu Qingxian walked back to where she had just been sitting, closed her suitcase, and continued to trek through the mountains and valleys. 
It's unclear how long she had been walking until Yu Qingxian realized that she seemed to have arrived at a ski resort. However, she only looked at it from the entrance. There was no snow in this place now, so naturally, there was no way to ski. There were zombies in the ski resort, and these zombies were still wearing ski suits, all of them seemed to be tourists. She looked around and found a place where many dogs were kept. However, all these dogs had turned into zombie dogs, having not eaten anything for over half a year, and many had already turned into corpses. Only a few were still alive. But judging from their appearance, they seemed to be so hungry that they were eating their own kind. They looked ferocious. Yu Qing Xian didn't dare to approach and open the door. She was also a little afraid, afraid of being bitten by the dogs. Yu Qing Xian wandered around and then saw a sled. She had a sudden inspiration and pulled the sled out. This sled was originally meant to be pulled by reindeer, but Yu Qing Xian thought it would be perfect to use it to pull the Tyrannosaurus Rex. So she happily called the Tyrannosaurus Rex over, and then haphazardly tied all the sled ropes to the Tyrannosaurus Rex's body, placed the suitcase in a safe place, and then sat on it herself. Let's go! Yu Qing Xian said. The Tyrannosaurus Rex also cooperated and rushed out. Although there was no snow, the flat ground was no problem for the Tyrannosaurus Rex. It ran around with Yu Qing Xian. Yu Qing Xian, sitting on the sled, was also very happy, but her hat was blown away, and she had to get off the sled to pick it up. After that, she held onto her hat with one hand and the sled with the other. Next time, she would wear a hat with a strap so that the wind wouldn't blow it off. It seemed that because Yu Qingxian was in a good mood, the Tyrannosaurus Rex also ran happily, even closing its eyes. So Yu Qingxian watched as the Tyrannosaurus Rex pulled the sled and took her straight into the thicket. Yu Qingxian finally crawled out from under the overturned sled, only to see the Tyrannosaurus Rex squatting on the side, squinting its eyes and sticking out its tongue, its large tail thumping the ground. Seeing it looking like it was trying to please her, Yu Qingxian reached out and gave it a pat. The sled overturned, and you're still happy. If I were a living person, I would have been killed. Yu Qingxian said, then pulled the branch out of her thigh. If she were still a living person, this branch in her thigh would have been excruciating. Of course, if it were numb, it seemed that she wouldn't feel it either. Yu Qingxian looked at the bloody hole and saw a little bit of plasma. Although her body had been dead for over half a year, her blood had not completely coagulated. The Tyrannosaurus Rex, seeing the bloody hole on Yu Qingxian's thigh, immediately came over and licked it with its tongue. Yu Qingxian was puzzled by the Tyrannosaurus Rex's actions. Was it trying to comfort her? I'm not in pain, you don't need to worry. Yu Qingxian reached out and rubbed its head, indicating that she was fine. After saying this, Yu Qingxian pushed the Tyrannosaurus Rex's head away and prepared to pull down her skirt. The result was that the blood hole pierced by the branches was slowly healing. This was definitely not her own ability. If she had this ability, she wouldn't have to run around with half of her face split open. So this was the ability of the Tyrannosaurus. But isn't it a lightning or electric ability? In other words, the Tyrannosaurus has dual abilities? And this kind of ability only appears on the male and female protagonists in those post-apocalyptic novels. You, kid, are amazing. A proper protagonist. Dog. Yu Qingxian suddenly felt that maybe it wouldn't be bad to write about the apocalypse from a dog's perspective. She stared at the Tyrannosaurus and felt her professional habits acting up again. She even thought that this idea was pretty good. Thinking of this, Yu Qingxian couldn't help but praise the Tyrannosaurus. Up to now, she had encountered three people who seemed to be the female protagonist, an underground emperor who seemed to be the male protagonist, and now a dog who seemed to be the protagonist. Then who was she? Was she responsible for discovering the protagonist as an NPC? Thinking of this, Yu Qingxian began to ponder with her chin in her hand. First of all, the protagonist was indeed very powerful, but there was one fatal flaw. That was, the protagonist always encountered rare events, things that only happened once every ten, a hundred, or even a thousand years. Although from the protagonist's perspective, it was indeed cool to fight their way out of a zombie horde. But as an ordinary person, Yu Qingxian just wanted the other party to save her. But generally, the protagonists in post-apocalyptic stories were not saints and often turned a blind eye to people in danger. Because if there was any possibility of their own safety being threatened, they would ignore it. Of course, Yu Qingxian wouldn't blame these protagonists. It's just that sometimes she would think, if these abilities were in the hands of those soldiers, the result would be completely different. Thinking this, Yu Qingxian withdrew her thoughts. But in a cool story, it had to be cool. In the apocalypse, human life was the least valuable thing. Some lives were probably not as precious as a piece of bread. And human nature was the most fragile. People who were the protagonists would be tempted, so how could ordinary people resist? Yu Qingxian stood up and patted the Tyrannosaurus's head. 
If it followed a powerful person, it wouldn't have to worry about food and drink in the future. Following her, it was a bit difficult to find something to eat. Tyrannosaurus, why don't you leave and follow someone else? Following me, even the zombies I was with before starved. Yu Qingxian said seriously. Whether it was a human or a zombie, following her, they could achieve the achievement of going hungry for three days and nine meals, and the achievement of being the top in the daily step count in the friend's circle. After listening to Yu Qingxian's words, the Tyrannosaurus just wagged its tail and showed no intention of leaving. Seeing that it didn't move, Yu Qingxian bent down and untied all the ropes on it. As for the sled, Yu Qingxian had no intention of taking it back. Anyway, no one wanted such a thing. What if the autumn lake froze again this winter, then she could really go skiing? Why didn't she think of this last year? She should have let the old cow pull her to go ice skating. If the river hadn't frozen by September, then she would go rowing. Thinking this, Yu Qingxian added this plan to her phone's memo. She looked at the several things she had listed to do. Grasslands, deserts, and the pure land, and then go see the canyons and rainforests. That would be about it. Yu Qingxian walked back while thinking. She kept sliding the camera on her phone to make sure she went to the places her parents had been. There were many places that Yu Qingxian didn't want to go to. She felt it was too much trouble. She had already come this far, which was already very good. Yu Qingxian comforted herself. She passed through the groups of zombies, picked up her suitcase, and continued westward. The further west you go, you have to pass through a city that has been around for thousands of years. That place is not the current capital. But in many dynasties, that place was the capital. However, it is still far from its current location. It would probably take 10 days to half a month to get there. Yu Qingxian has to cross this mountain range. There were originally many wild animals in the mountains. Of course, now they might be zombie animals or mutant animals. In any case, they are very dangerous for humans. But for Yu Qingxian, it seems quite safe. And there is a road along this mountain range. The trees on both sides are also very beautiful. She had seen them in many travel bloggers' videos before. Yu Qingxian naturally packed up her things. At this point, her suitcase was already full, starting with just a camera. When Yu Qingxian opened the suitcase to check her things, she was a bit surprised. She originally thought she could travel light, but along the way, she ended up collecting quite a few things. She put the books and camera aside first, then looked at the several dresses she had prepared, all of which were strap-long dresses, so they didn't take up much space. Then there was the bunch of roses she stuffed in the suitcase. She made a few of them into bookmarks, and the rest she casually stuffed into the suitcase. She originally thought the roses had withered, but now looking at the fresh roses, Yu Qingxian wondered if she was seeing things. She picked up the bunch of roses and then saw the bunch of small flowers underneath. They were given to her by Gu Wanqing, so to speak. Even the bunch of small flowers seemed to have a bit of a revived look. This puzzled Yu Qingxian. She didn't understand why the flowers that should have withered were now alive. It wasn't until she saw the small bag in the corner that she understood. Inside were the crystal fragments she had picked up. Could it be because of this thing? Yu Qingxian put the flowers aside and picked up the small bag, then poured out the fragments. At this moment, the fragments were emitting a beautiful light, and even the dust on top, which seemed to be produced by friction with the air, was gone. It looked like a beautiful dark pearl, but there seemed to be something flowing inside, something she was familiar with. Right, it was a crystal core. It's just that there was very little inside the crystal core, almost motionless, unlike the thing inside these crystal fragments, which seemed to be flowing out. Yu Qingxian probably understood that the crystal core that appeared in the bodies of zombies and ability users was the same as these crystal fragments. It was because of the energy in these things that zombies became stronger in humans' evolved abilities. Even these two bunches of flowers were because of these crystal fragments. So why do humans, after dying, come back to life as zombies? Is it because of the strange energy in these crystals? But aren't zombies caused by a virus? Yu Qingxian was a bit puzzled again. After all, she wasn't studying this, so she couldn't understand it at all. Yu Qingxian couldn't figure it out, so she didn't plan to think about it. She tidied up again and then put the two bunches of flowers in the suitcase, and put the crystal fragments back in the bag, placing them under the two bunches of flowers. Yu Qingxian flipped through her books. The books were also made of plants. Could it be that the books had sprouted too? Yu Qingxian opened her book and looked at it. She found that the rose flower sign clipped in the book had indeed taken root and grown together with the book. Yu Qingxian held the book and could only find a place to dig a hole and bury the book. After all, the flower sign had come back to life and taken root, so it was better to plant it in the soil. Yu Qingxian suddenly thought of the seeds in her backpack. Could these seeds have sprouted too? Thinking of this, after burying the flower, Yu Qingxian immediately opened her backpack, 
which didn't contain much. Only her parents' photos, her phone, a small comb, more than 10 bags of shampoo and shower gel, and the seeds of those roses. In Yu Qingxian's eyes, these seeds looked like small pomegranates. But now these seeds looked very fresh, just like they had just been picked. But there was no sign of sprouting, which made Yu Qingxian breathe a sigh of relief. However, when she breathed a sigh of relief, she suddenly remembered that she had picked the seeds for planting in the future. She thought for a moment and then returned to the book she had just buried. Only half of the roses bloomed well. Yu Qingxian was not in a hurry to leave. Instead, she was waiting for the half-bloomed rose to take root in the soil. After waiting for a few days, Yu Qingxian found that the half-bloomed rose had started to sprout from its half-rooted branch. This meant that the rose was indeed alive. After confirming that the rose was alive, Yu Qingxian prepared to leave with her suitcase. During these days, she would sit under the tree to cool off during the day, and only in the morning, afternoon, and evening would she go around to look. She even tried the snowboard, but she felt like a duck walking in it, so she took it off instantly. While Yu Qingxian was sitting on a bench stretching, she heard a noise as she bent down. This made her jump up from the bench. A car was coming. Yu Qingxian grabbed her suitcase and ran straight into the nearby forest. Then she crouched behind a clump of trees. This was the hiding place she had imagined in the small square in front of the ski resort before. If someone came, she would run to this place. And this place was a few hundred meters away from the ski resort. Survivors wouldn't just walk into the forest for no reason, which made Yu Qingxian feel a little relieved. She crouched behind the bushes and looked down through the cracks in the leaves. She could see the car, and it looked familiar. It seemed like she had seen it a few days ago. After the people in the car got out, Yu Qingxian could confirm that it was the group of people who had killed the zombie fish. She just didn't know what they were doing here. They couldn't be here for skiing, right? There's no snow. Of course, if Yu Qingxian had seen this group of people before, she wouldn't have felt unfamiliar. After all, when this group of people was in the small town before, she had even organized a zombie party. But Yu Qingxian didn't know that she had saved some of these people. And the leader of this team didn't expect that the person who saved their lives last year was just a few hundred meters away on that small hill. The reason they rushed from the south to the north was, of course, because they felt it was easier to survive in the north. After all, it's cold, food can be preserved for a long time, and people from the south are not used to winter. But who could have thought that as they headed north, the weather got hotter. The zombies evolved, and they also settled in the capital base. Naturally, there was no need to take the risk of going back to the south. Of course, during this time, they had not given up searching for the person who saved their lives. But it had been half a year, and they still had no clue. Nowadays, most of the vegetables grown on the ground would mutate, although there were stocks in more than 10 official bases. But they were members of the Supernatural Powers team, and they had always been reluctant to eat what the base provided. And they were capable, so naturally, they would leave those things to those in need. Plus, Supernatural Powers need to hunt zombies to obtain crystal cores. And this kind of ski resort, with its wide terrain and good visibility, didn't have too many zombies. It was indeed very suitable for hunting zombies. And this kind of ski resort must have backup food, even if fresh food couldn't be preserved. But the shelf life of many things was still quite long. Most importantly, in this post-apocalyptic world, as long as the food wasn't rotten, it could be eaten. So they naturally started to clear the zombies from this ski resort. Yu Qingxian squatted from the beginning, and later lay directly on the ground. She watched as those people cleared the entire ski resort of zombies as if they were cutting cabbage. Indeed, when ordinary people see zombies rushing over, their legs go weak. It's like these strong ones are just passing a level in a game. As the zombies become stronger, they also become stronger. In this world, there is never a lack of strong people or heroes. Yu Qingxian watched these people for a while, took out her phone and took a picture, then got up and left with her suitcase. Half an hour after she left, a Tyrannosaurus Rex came over carrying a giant white rabbit. The rabbit was barely alive, not yet dead. And the Tyrannosaurus Rex placed the rabbit in front of Yu Qingxian and nudged her with its long nose. The meaning was clear. If she didn't eat crystal nuclei, then she should eat living creatures. Yu Qingxian felt that the Tyrannosaurus Rex was really concerned about whether she ate or not. But she really didn't need to eat. You eat this yourself, I don't need it, I really don't need to eat anything. Yu Qingxian said earnestly, it is indeed very difficult to catch living creatures in the apocalypse. So Yu Qingxian felt it was completely unnecessary to waste it on her. The Tyrannosaurus Rex stared at Yu Qingxian's face, and after a few minutes, confirmed that Yu Qingxian was not lying, and then ate the rabbit. This rabbit also looked mutated, almost half her size. But for the Tyrannosaurus Rex, it was just a few bites. It even swallowed the skin and bones in one go. At this moment, Yu Qingxian thought, 
Could this Tyrannosaurus rex evolve to the point of eating humans? But on second thought, it should not be possible. Even if it regains some wildness, the loyalty to humans in its bloodline should not be erased by a small virus. Yu Qingxian listened to the Tyrannosaurus rex crunching on the rabbit, feeling a bit uncomfortable. Fortunately, she soon walked onto the road. The surroundings were all forests, and the scenery was quite nice. Yu Qingxian sat on the suitcase, holding an umbrella. But as she looked into the distance at the slowly darkening sky, she began to worry. Was it going to rain heavily again? And Yu Qingxian's worry was soon confirmed by the falling raindrops. The rain poured down heavily. Yu Qingxian couldn't find a place to take shelter. Because this was a self-driving tour road, there were not many vehicles on the road. This road is usually more popular in the autumn. That's when this road and this mountain range are at their most beautiful. However, Yu Qingxian sat on the suitcase, holding up the umbrella, barely blocking the rain. But the Tyrannosaurus Rex was not so lucky. It sat next to Yu Qingxian and was soon soaked by the rain. Yu Qingxian looked at the sky, then took out her phone to check the weather. But this place was too far from the base and had no signal. The latest information was three days old. But the news from three days ago gave Yu Qingxian some information. Three days ago, the Huashi base had already predicted that a powerful rain cloud was heading towards their country. It was said that this rain cloud had caused many countries to be flooded. And with the rain came cold air. After the rain, this water would freeze. So, they asked the survivors around each base to return to the base for shelter as soon as possible. After reading the information, Yu Qingxian put her phone back in her backpack. She looked around and found no shelter from the rain. She couldn't just sit here all the time. So she had to pick up her suitcase, hold the umbrella, and move forward. It wasn't until dark that Yu Qingxian finally saw a camper van on the side of the road. The door of the camper van was open, there was no one inside, and no zombies. But Yu Qingxian knew that this camper van could indeed serve as a temporary shelter. She got on the car, and when the Tyrannosaurus Rex wanted to come in, she stopped it. Shake off the water on your body before coming in. The Tyrannosaurus Rex was obedient, quickly shaking off most of the water like a big spinning top, and then leaping onto the car. The car shook because of the Tyrannosaurus Rex's movements. Yu Qingxian then closed the door of the motorhome. She sat in the motorhome for a while, reaching out to touch the table, which was covered in dust, and there were also some bloodstains on the walls of the car. This motorhome belonged to a couple or a married couple. She reached out and took down the photo on the refrigerator, showing two people smiling at the camera. It was estimated that these two people had stopped here to rest, but they did not expect that one of them would turn into a zombie. She looked at the now black bloodstains on the ground, which extended from the bed to the door of the car. As for the bloodstains on the road outside, they should have been washed away by the rain. Yu Qingxian took a pot to collect rainwater and wiped the dust off the motorhome. It wasn't until almost dawn that she sat in the living room of the motorhome. The Tyrannosaurus Rex had already climbed onto the bed and fallen asleep. The not-so-small one-and-a-half-meter double bed was barely enough for the Tyrannosaurus Rex to sleep on. It seemed that mutated animals like the Tyrannosaurus Rex still needed to sleep. She sat for a while and then walked towards the driver's seat. She pulled back the curtain and sat in the driver's seat. The car keys were still there, so Yu Qingxian tried to start the car. The sound of the car starting woke up the Tyrannosaurus Rex, and it whimpered like a puppy until it heard Yu Qingxian's voice, then it tucked its head back and continued sleeping. After starting the car, Yu Qingxian looked at the fuel gauge and found that the motorhome had only used a little fuel. She did not drive the car, but turned it off again. She walked back to the living room from the driver's seat, and the heavy rain outside had not stopped. The roadside ditch was still flowing. She didn't know if this place would be flooded, but it probably wouldn't. This place was halfway up the mountain, so even if there was a flood, it wouldn't reach this place for the time being. Yu Qingxian looked at the time on her phone, which had gone from 5 in the morning to around noon. The heavy rain outside showed no signs of stopping. The water in the roadside ditch had already started to flow rapidly. Obviously, the previous information was not false. The message was transmitted from the Huashi base to the Huabei base. And she had received the message within the range of the Huabei base three days ago. Now she had left the range of the Huabei base, but had not yet entered the range of the Huashi base. It would probably take several hundred kilometers to reach the communication range of the Huashi base. But now, with the heavy rain, she couldn't see anything five meters away and the temperature was getting lower. The temperature had been over 40 degrees just two days ago, but from yesterday's rain until now, it had dropped to over 20 degrees, and it was still dropping. Yu Qingxian didn't feel the temperature dropping. It wasn't until 3 in the afternoon that she took her phone again and found that the temperature was only 10 degrees. Such a large drop in temperature was a test for humans. 
Yu Qingxian got out of the car with an umbrella and checked the tires of the car. The air in several tires was gone. They looked flat. Yu Qingxian didn't know how to inflate them. There was no network coverage now, so she couldn't receive any messages. Fortunately, the map could still be used, but only for viewing locations. It wasn't as useful as the phone the big brother had helped her modify. But once she left the signal area, the phone became a brick. Yu Qingxian, holding an umbrella, squatted down and looked at the flat tires, then got up and went to check the doors. She had seen many RV travel videos and had naturally seen those bloggers introduce their own RVs. They would also say where to put things. So Yu Qingxian wanted to see if there was anything that could inflate the car's tires. However, when Yu Qingxian opened the door of a rear compartment of the vehicle, a hand suddenly fell out, and Yu Qingxian instinctively reached out to catch it. This arm has rotted severely. Her other hand completely opened the trunk and found the female owner lying in the trunk. The female owner was curled up in the trunk, and her body had rotted severely. It is unknown whether she died from her injuries or starved to death after turning into a zombie. Yu Qingxian put the female corpse's arm back, put the umbrella back in the car, wiped her hands with a towel, and then took out a shovel from the trunk. Tyrannosaurus got off the bed, and Yu Qingxian let it stay in the car. After closing the door, she walked towards the back. Anyway, this female owner must have been unable to run after being injured, so she hid in the trunk. Unfortunately, she was not saved. Even though Yu Qingxian had been avoiding this situation for the past six months, facing a female deceased suddenly did not affect her as much as she had imagined. Yu Qingxian carried the body out of the trunk, emptied a plastic box of clothes from another trunk, and put her body in it. The heavy rain continued. This made it difficult for Yu Qingxian to help the corpse put on clean clothes. For some reason, Yu Qingxian suddenly thought of a lyric, the cold rain is hitting the face randomly. Yu Qingxian changed the female owner into clean clothes, but the heavy rain quickly filled the box with water. Yu Qingxian covered the lid and tilted the box to drain the water. For some reason, it made her feel like she was cooking and draining water. After covering the lid, rainwater could no longer enter the box. Yu Qingxian dragged the box into the forest, chose a place with a good view, and buried her. Those who can go on a self-driving tour must love freedom. The scenery here is very good, although nothing can be seen in the heavy rain. After burying the female owner, Yu Qingxian took out a rose from her bunch and placed it on the grave. Looking at this simple grave, without even a tombstone, Yu Qingxian could only do this much. She clasped her hands together. May you attain Buddhahood early. Yu Qingxian's tone was sincere. Although humans cannot understand, her heart was sincere. After handling the female owner's body, Yu Qingxian was as wet as a drowned rat. She looked up at the sky, and the rain was pouring down on her like someone pouring a basin of water. Splish, splash. Yu Qingxian got into the car, and water was all over the floor. Transformed into a water ghost. Yu Qingxian stuck out her tongue at the Tyrannosaurus. The Tyrannosaurus lay on the bed, and its fur looked fluffier after being washed by the rain. It looked like a bed of cotton. Yu Qingxian took out shower gel and shampoo from her backpack and took a shower by the door. Since no one could see her, she was not embarrassed at all. After showering and washing her hair, she returned to the car, put on a skirt, started the car, and found the owner's hairdryer in the car. She then dried her hair. The sky outside was getting darker. She spent another day leisurely. The tires of this RV had already deflated, so it was impossible to drive it anymore. The heavy rain outside also prevented her from moving forward. Although she could brave the rain, her luggage worth hundreds of thousands could not. So Yu Qingxian settled in the RV. But this stay lasted for seven or eight days. Although her location was halfway up the mountain, the rain did not flood the area. But the heavy rain never stopped. It was like the sky was leaking. With such a large amount of precipitation, lower-lying areas would definitely be flooded. And it was said that there would be cold air. Yu Qingxian did not feel the cold air. She glanced at her phone. The temperature at this time was around 3 degrees. Although this temperature is acceptable for humans. But now there is such heavy rainfall, it is a disaster. On the ninth day, the rain was a little lighter, but it still didn't clear up, and the wind started blowing. Yu Qingxian glanced at her phone again, and it was already 5 degrees below zero. What was drifting down was no longer rain, but small pieces of ice. The small hailstones hit the roof of the car with a bang. Yu Qingxian felt that she couldn't stay in someone else's RV anymore, and anyway, the small hail couldn't kill her. She thought for a moment and started to pack up to leave. When Tyrannosaurus saw Yu Qingxian packing up, it immediately got up. There was a bag of dog food in the RV. Yu Qingxian had never seen the owner's dog, so she just took it to feed Tyrannosaurus. However, she only fed Tyrannosaurus a small bowl of dog food every day, just enough to sustain its life. 
Of course, Tyrannosaurus slept every day and didn't move around, so Yu Qingxian thought that it probably knew it would go hungry if it followed her and would probably leave. After all, it could go wherever it wanted. Yu Qingxian got out of the car first with an umbrella, and then took the luggage out of the car. Tyrannosaurus immediately squeezed out with her, afraid of being locked in the RV by Yu Qingxian. Yu Qingxian found it a bit funny to see its anxious appearance. How could she lock a living creature in a place it couldn't leave? She had closed the door earlier because of the heavy rain and Tyrannosaurus's long fur. After all, it was a long-haired dog. Although it looked very large due to mutation, Yu Qingxian could barely tell that it should be a breed of dog. She had never been concerned about what breed of dog it was, but now she wasn't concerned. Whatever breed of dog, it was a good dog. Yu Qingxian put on a female car owner's clothes, which she didn't mind. She also took two raincoats. One raincoat covered the luggage, and the other, Yu Qingxian put it over Tyrannosaurus's head. Its size was too big, and the raincoat barely covered its head. Because the raincoat had a cute little duck pattern. With Tyrannosaurus's head covered, it did look very cute. Yu Qingxian took out her phone and took a lot of pictures of Tyrannosaurus. A big white dog with a little duck on its head, really cute. Tyrannosaurus didn't move, letting Yu Qingxian take pictures of it. It still grinned at Yu Qingxian. When Yu Qingxian left the RV, she closed the car door. After walking a few steps, she noticed something was wrong. The ground was freezing. It was fine at first, but as she walked forward, there was a slope, so she started to slip. But this didn't affect Tyrannosaurus. After all, its paws could probably climb close to a vertical wall. So Yu Qingxian, who had been walking in front of Tyrannosaurus, was in a panic. It was as if these legs were borrowed from another zombie. Three minutes later, Yu Qingxian gave up struggling. Plus, her umbrella was blown away by the wind, and she couldn't even move forward, but instead, she retreated half a meter. Yu Qingxian had to put away the umbrella and put it in her backpack, reaching out to grab Tyrannosaurus's fur. Forward, Yu Qingxian said. She grabbed Tyrannosaurus's fur with one hand and carried the luggage with the other, unable to make a pointing motion ahead. Fortunately, the big dog was very smart and pulled her forward. Yu Qingxian didn't even have to walk, she was pulled along the ground by Tyrannosaurus. After all, her small leather shoes were not slip resistant. This made Yu Qingxian want to go back and get a sled. She was afraid of pulling Tyrannosaurus's fur like this. What if it went bald? Fortunately, Tyrannosaurus's fur was very strong and was not pulled out by her. It was a little better when they reached the hill. At least the first part was flat, and there was no uphill road. The hail that had fallen on Tyrannosaurus had turned into water, making it wet again. But there was no trace of melting hail on Yu Qingxian's body. This made Yu Qingxian momentarily puzzled. Then she immediately realized that she had no body temperature. The temperature in the air was her temperature. Thinking of this, Yu Qingxian thought that she would get a thermometer when she reached the next town and keep it in her pocket. She could check her temperature at any time. Yu Qingxian took off the raincoat from the luggage box, got on the bike, but did not start the luggage box. Instead, with a kick, the luggage box slid out quickly. Due to inertia, Yu Qingxian's speed increased significantly. By now, the surrounding environment was clear, although there was still hail, it did not pour down like the previous heavy rain. Passing through a forest, Yu Qingxian knew that she had arrived at a place very suitable for viewing the leaves. Crossing a small stream under the road, it was said to be very beautiful, and if lucky, one could even see wild deer and musk deer. For some reason, whenever she heard about these deer-like animals, Yu Qingxian felt that they had a celestial aura. So Yu Qingxian was still looking forward to rushing over. Even if she couldn't see the living ones, zombies would do. But before she got close, Yu Qingxian heard the roaring of water. As she approached, the trees moved away from her sight, and what Yu Qingxian saw was not a beautiful stream and pond, but muddy floodwater, even many trees on both sides had been washed away. Even the road had some water stains, and it had frozen. It was just that the temperature was not so low at the moment, so the floodwater had not frozen. But even the small streams in such places had turned into 10-meter-wide rivers. Wouldn't a 10-meter-wide river become a river? Yu Qingxian walked over and looked towards the direction of the mountains. Although the road was indeed in the mountains, it was also built along the foot of the mountain. After all, building roads would also damage the habitats of many wild animals. Of course, the choice was to minimize the damage. Yu Qingxian put the luggage box on the side of the road, crossed the ditch, and looked down the mountain. She found that the position below the mountain was all muddy floodwater, like a large brownish-yellow mirror. The original beautiful water puddles and grassland had disappeared. Yu Qingxian turned back, took the camera, and recorded the scenes of these seemingly watery places. Fortunately, when she left, she had fully charged the luggage box and the camera with the car's power supply. 
She was not worried about running out of power in the short term. Yu Qingxian did not get too close to the floodwater. Even though the place looked sturdy, Yu Qingxian didn't know if she would become the last way to collapse the place if she walked over. She shot those videos from a few meters away. On the opposite bank, several zombie animals gathered, probably smelling the flesh and blood on the Tyrannosaurus Rex. However, they did not know the danger of the floodwater. As they approached, they were directly washed away by the floodwater. Of course, not only were there zombie animals coming from the opposite side, but there were also zombie animals following from the foot of the mountain and behind her. The Tyrannosaurus Rex was originally guarding Yu Qingxian's luggage box, but when those zombie animals pounced, it had to take action. Yu Qingxian was not worried about the Tyrannosaurus Rex, but switched the camera from video mode to photo mode. She turned around and saw the Tyrannosaurus Rex change from its cute appearance just now, and the raincoat of the little yellow duck instantly shattered. Its soft fur stood up instantly, and its whole body was filled with electric light. Yu Qingxian immediately picked up a piece of raincoat and stepped on it. After all, water conducts electricity, and she didn't know if the electricity would reach her. But obviously, Yu Qingxian's worry was unnecessary. The Tyrannosaurus Rex was very proficient in controlling its abilities. Every electric light accurately hit those zombie animals. As the electric light struck the zombie animals, their heads instantly exploded. Yu Qingxian even suspected that the Tyrannosaurus had secretly stuffed explosives into the heads of these zombie animals. This Tyrannosaurus is really powerful. But now it's unknown when this flood will shrink. Yu Qingxian put away the camera and found that the hail had stopped. This made her unable to help but look up at the sky again, but the thick clouds did not disperse. It even started to blow. Yu Qingxian stared at the splashing water and found that these splashes had turned into ice in the wind. How cold does it have to be to instantly freeze water? Yu Qingxian took out the camera again, directly turned on the video and placed it on the suitcase. In fact, she had already prepared for a long time. Since those splashes could quickly freeze in the air, maybe these floods would also freeze, but it shouldn't be a short time. But the cold air didn't make Yu Qingxian wait too long. In less than half an hour, the water flow decreased. Yu Qingxian couldn't help but look up the mountain and found that the trees on the mountain had already started to turn white. It's like someone sprinkled a lot of powdered sugar on the trees. Around 4 o'clock in the afternoon, as the sky darkened, the 10-meter wide flood in front was completely frozen by the cold air. Although the flow rate had decreased a lot, it was still rushing. So when it was frozen, it was like many small bumps appeared on the brownish-yellow road surface. As Yu Qingxian looked at it, it seemed as if it was jelly flowing down from the mountain. But Yu Qingxian knew that this was her good opportunity to cross over. She immediately picked up the camera, took the suitcase, and walked to the other side of the river. However, when passing the small bridge, Yu Qingxian first moved a stone and threw it over. The stone smashed the sugar crumbs on the ice and slid far away. It seems that the ice was very solid. Yu Qingxian first sent the suitcase to the other side before hugging the camera and shooting from top to bottom. The trees had already fallen where the flood had washed through. The destructive power of this flood was extremely strong. Looking down, it was all in full view. This flood was like a brute, not following the original stream, but directly rushing and crashing. It directly destroyed a large area of the forest. Therefore, from this place, you could see the vast expanse of water. This was not a vast expanse at the scene, it should be considered a huge ice surface. After shooting, Yu Qingxian closed the camera and crossed the ice. The Tyrannosaurus also walked over, but Yu Qingxian found that the fur on the Tyrannosaurus had also frozen. Even the mutated ability dog, with its wet fur at this time, couldn't generate any warmth. Yu Qingxian reached out and patted its head. It was stiff. If it didn't warm up soon, the Tyrannosaurus would probably freeze to death. Yu Qingxian took out a map and saw a town at the foot of the mountain several kilometers ahead. She didn't hesitate and immediately pulled the suitcase, heading towards that place with the Tyrannosaurus. The Tyrannosaurus needed warmth and food. This was the fastest she had run, apart from escaping for her life. When she arrived at the small town, Yu Qingxian did not smell the scent of living creatures, which made her feel a little relieved. But there were still many zombies in the town. After all, this place was a tourist area, so there were naturally many tourists. Yu Qingxian found a warm-looking house and let the Tyrannosaurus in. She naturally went to find a lighter and an axe. After more than 10 minutes, when Yu Qingxian came back, she found the Tyrannosaurus shivering and huddling on the edge of the sofa. But this sofa, which couldn't generate any warmth, was useless. Yu Qingxian's axe directly chopped towards the sofa. In short, she piled up everything that could be ignited. She lit the pile of sofa she had chopped open with the lighter. After all, she didn't know how long this cold air would last, so she had to be frugal with the fire. Yu Qingxian avoided the fire, but the Tyrannosaurus approached. 
In just a few minutes, the Tyrannosaurus Rex was emitting heat, looking like a huge steamer. Yu Qingxian watched it squatting by the fire, finally showing a relieved smile. You stay here and warm up, I'll go see if there's any dog food or something to eat in this town. Yu Qingxian stood up, and the Tyrannosaurus Rex stood up with her, immediately comforting her. So big in size, yet so timid. Upon hearing this, the Tyrannosaurus Rex sat back down. Yu Qingxian opened the door and walked out of the room. At this time, many zombies had gathered outside the house. However, Yu Qingxian was not worried about the Tyrannosaurus Rex's safety and headed towards the supermarket. Generally, supermarkets should have these kinds of things. When Yu Qingxian hurried to the supermarket entrance, she felt that her feet were difficult to move. At first, she thought it was just her imagination, but when she reached the supermarket entrance, she felt that her legs were as stiff as rust, even bending was difficult. Yu Qingxian immediately realized that the temperature was definitely very low, beyond the tolerance of the zombies. She turned around and saw that the zombies were frozen in place like popsicles. Yu Qingxian instantly realized the danger and knew she had to hurry back because she also needed that pile of fire. There were indeed many things in the supermarket, like sausages. Yu Qingxian walked around, picked up several bags of dog food, and grabbed all the sausages from the shelves. Then she carried two shopping baskets back. But her steps were getting slower and slower, and Yu Qingxian felt like she was turning into wood. How low was this temperature? After all, this was the first time she had felt cold in the past six months. And halfway there, she really couldn't move anymore. Fortunately, when the Tyrannosaurus Rex saw that she hadn't returned for a while, it came out to find her. Seeing her standing in the middle of the road with a shopping basket in hand, the Tyrannosaurus Rex quickly rushed over and carried her back with its mouth. When she was put on the ground, she even heard the sound of bricks hitting the ground. Now she was not only a cold corpse, but also a stiff, cold corpse. The Tyrannosaurus Rex was very clever, even knowing how to open and close doors. It then pushed Yu Qingxian towards the fire and sat beside her, tearing open the bag of dog food and starting to eat. It seemed really hungry. Yu Qingxian stood by the fire like a statue. It wasn't until 10 minutes later that she could finally move and sat down. The two bags of dog food she brought back had already been eaten by the Tyrannosaurus Rex. Yu Qingxian moved the suitcase to the side of the fire. In this cold weather, she couldn't let her treasures freeze. Even without taking out her phone to check the temperature, she knew it must be tens of degrees below zero now. She looked out the window and saw that the zombies at the door were also frozen in place. She didn't know what kind of powerful zombies would evolve during this time. As for the trip to Autumn Lake in September, Yu Qingxian was definitely unable to reach it smoothly. After all, it was nearly 5,000 kilometers from here to Autumn Lake. And now, it was already mid-July. When she had nothing to do, Yu Qingxian chopped down everything upstairs that could be burned and dragged it down to prevent the fire from going out. She felt fine, but the Tyrannosaurus Rex couldn't stray too far from the fire. So this was something only she could do. She then rummaged through people's closets and brought down several quilts for the Tyrannosaurus Rex. She also put on a cotton jacket and cotton shoes for herself. Fortunately, this place was very cold even before the apocalypse, so there were all kinds of warm things. She even found that kind of insulating foil. Although she didn't know if it would be useful for her corpse, Yu Qingxian still wrapped herself in it, put on thick clothes and shoes, and went outside. This time she was prepared to bring more dog food and things that the Tyrannosaurus could eat with a trailer. She didn't want to run out every day and freeze into a popsicle. Maybe this time she had taken sufficient measures to keep warm, anyway she didn't feel frozen like before. This made Yu Qingxian very happy, very good. She made several trips back and forth, emptying out the supermarket and also took a lot of water. The Tyrannosaurus also needed to drink water. By the way, she checked to see if there were any other supermarkets in the town. Just as she was about to go and check out the other supermarket, something suddenly smashed down in front of Yu Qingxian. It directly collapsed the front house. Dust scattered, and Yu Qingxian saw a human figure nearly two meters high in the dust. No scent. It's a zombie. Yu Qingxian stared at the zombie, adopting a strategy of neither moving nor attacking. As the dust settled, Yu Qingxian finally saw the true face of this zombie. There was not a single thread on its body, and its skin was like wearing a black plastic suit, even reflecting light. Its two eyes looked somewhat strange and white, and its mouth split open to both sides. Yu Qingxian felt that this zombie looked somewhat familiar. Where had she seen it before? It wasn't until the zombie slightly opened its mouth that Yu Qingxian suddenly remembered, it looked like venom. But not quite, it just looked like a black person who had been sunburned. This zombie said a few words, leaving Yu Qingxian puzzled. She couldn't understand what the zombie was saying. It's a foreign zombie. Sure enough, this place was too close to the border. Even though there were official personnel stationed in these areas, 
they couldn't completely seal off the border. She just hadn't expected that there would be zombies sneaking in. It was bad enough that this guy had turned into this appearance, stronger, but also bald. Yu Qingxian saw that its movements were very agile, seemingly unaffected by the temperature. In other words, this foreign zombie had already evolved towards another extreme in the cold? If evolving meant not being afraid of the cold and turning into this kind of ghostly appearance, Yu Qingxian definitely wouldn't want that. Yu Qingxian couldn't understand what the other party was saying, and the other party couldn't understand what Yu Qingxian was saying. Obviously, the communication between the two zombies had failed. But Yu Qingxian knew that this zombie must be coming for the Tyrannosaurus. The only living thing around here should be the Tyrannosaurus. Sure enough, when this zombie found that it couldn't communicate with Yu Qingxian, it headed towards the direction where the Tyrannosaurus was. Yu Qingxian watched the suddenly disappearing zombie, and then belatedly realized that the foreign zombie had gone after the Tyrannosaurus. She threw the gloves in her hand on the ground, but picked them up a second later and rushed towards the house. No, if you want to eat animals, go home and eat. This is someone else's dog, you dog thief, stop right there. Yu Qingxian thought, in her whole life, had she ever risked her life for anyone? Of course not, but now she was actually risking her life for a dog. It was already dark, and she didn't know how cold it was outside. Indeed, wanting to travel quietly in the end of the world didn't seem so simple. After all, even if it wasn't the end of the world, there would be all kinds of difficulties. Yu Qingxian caught up, and when she arrived, she found that the zombie was banging on the door. This made Yu Qingxian anxious as she rushed up to pull the nearly 2 meter high zombie. When she grabbed the zombie, the feeling was somewhat off. But she still forcefully pulled the zombie. I know you're very hungry and want to eat living things, but that dog is mine, you're not allowed to touch it. I'll tell you, I know not only several advanced zombies, but also several powerful humans. If you dare to touch a single hair of my dog, I'll have those zombies and humans come after you. Yu Songhai and dragged it back and kept warning the zombie incessantly. So, what did the foreign zombies eat? Their evolution is terrifying. See, they say not to eat everything, but look what happens. Yu Songhai and didn't know how to let the Tyrannosaurus escape. How long can a Tyrannosaurus survive in this low temperature? Now the Tyrannosaurus can't leave the pile of fire. Yu Songhai and pushed the zombie out and then entered the house. Without Yu Songhai and's obstruction, the zombie started hitting the door again. At this moment, the Tyrannosaurus also looked alert outside, and its fur stood up completely. It emitted a cautious growl from its throat. Yu Songhai and looked around but didn't find any suitable weapons. A gun? No, it's useless against this advanced zombie. After thinking for a while, Yu Songhai's gaze turned to the burning fire. She picked up a burning chair leg and went straight to the door. In the moment before the zombie broke in, Yu Songhai opened the door. The cold wind rushed in, causing the flame in Yu Songhai's hand to flicker. But without hesitation, she directly shoved the burning chair leg into the zombie's mouth. Regardless of whether it's an advanced or ordinary zombie, they all fear high temperatures. But Yu Songhai never expected that the burning chair leg she shoved into the zombie's mouth would be so powerful. When the spark met the zombie, it was like igniting a methane tank. The advanced zombie was instantly engulfed in flames. After hearing its screams, the zombie was engulfed by the flames. Even after it took a few steps back, it exploded directly. With a bang, the flames surged into the sky and then instantly extinguished. In the place where the zombie had stood, only a black debris remained. This surprised Yu Songhaian. She felt something was wrong when she held the zombie's hand. Whether it's a person or a zombie, bones can be felt. But when she grabbed the zombie, she felt like its hand had no bones. She originally thought that if the flesh inside had rotted, it would become flammable. But she never expected it to explode. It was as if the zombie had a lot of hydrogen gas in its belly. Yu Songhaian didn't feel any pain, so she didn't realize that she had been affected. When she looked down and saw her cotton jacket starting to burn, she was scared and slapped it hard, then rolled on the ground to extinguish the fire. Not only was her jacket burned, but her long hair was also singed. This made Yu Songhaian lie down directly. She really liked her long hair. If she were a living person, her hair would grow back. But her body had long lost the ability to metabolize. So her hair wouldn't grow back. Yu Songhaian didn't have anything else to be proud of, but she was proud of her long, silky black hair as a night owl. Now, it's been burned. Yu Songhaian lay on the ground and didn't want to move, but the Tyrannosaurus came out of the room and went to the pile of ashes to find something. In no time, it came back with a crystal core in its mouth. Yu Songhaian didn't lie on the ground anymore. The door was shaking, and it was probably going to break with a light touch. The cold wind kept pouring into the house. The fire she had just lit was about to go out. Yu Songhaian could only find nails and wooden boards to nail the door shut. 
Anyway, she could go out through the side door, but the temperature in the house couldn't dissipate. She added some firewood to the fire and then went to find a mirror and scissors. Although she really liked her hair, it didn't look good to have burnt hair hanging stiffly on her head. Yu Qingxian found a mirror and saw that all the hair around her face had shrunk due to the high temperature. She had to carefully trim it with scissors. After more than 10 minutes, Yu Qingxian finally cut off the burnt hair. Fortunately, she didn't go bald. The hair on her forehead was not burned because it was covered by a hat, but the hair on the sides of her ears was burned and had to be cut off. Yu Qingxian and the Tyrannosaurus Rex stayed in this small town for a while. Because she had swallowed the crystal nucleus, Yu Qingxian found that the Tyrannosaurus Rex seemed to have grown larger again. It should have leveled up. She took out her phone and saw that it was already August. Yu Qingxian couldn't wait any longer. After wandering around for the past few days, she had already adapted to the outside temperature. So she packed up and prepared to leave. She was fully armed now, even putting several rolls of insulating foil in her suitcase. In these two days, the Tyrannosaurus Rex had also adapted to the low temperature. It was originally a husky and could withstand the cold. It had been frozen stiff before, but that was because its fur was all wet, making it easy to lose body heat. But now, looking at its fluffy appearance, she felt warm. Yu Qingxian thought for a moment and went out to see if there were any sleds or scooters in the town. She wanted to ride on the Tyrannosaurus Rex. This way, her journey could be accelerated. Yu Qingxian and the Tyrannosaurus Rex strolled around the town and found that there was actually a sled riding activity in the town. However, she thought that if she went to other places, it would be more suitable to have something with wheels. After much thought, Yu Qingxian felt that a sled could also slide on the ground. So she chose a beautiful sled. However, the dog pulling the sled was not as big as the Tyrannosaurus Rex, so Yu Qingxian had to assemble one herself. It took her the whole morning to get it done. This sled could not only carry people, but also had a shelf at the back. Yu Qingxian didn't hesitate to empty all the dog food in the town and put it in the box, then tied it to the shelf. Then it was water. But the water had already frozen, so she could only let the Tyrannosaurus Rex eat it as ice blocks later. With these things ready, Yu Qingxian finally sat on the sled. After more than 10 minutes, Yu Qingxian returned to the road. With the Tyrannosaurus Rex, her speed increased significantly. In just two days, Yu Qingxian's phone entered the signal range of the Huashi base. Her phone kept ringing, and she couldn't ignore it. So she asked the Tyrannosaurus Rex to slow down, and then took out her phone to check. She found that the base had sent several messages. The earliest one was to remind the survivors in each base to take measures to keep warm and not to leave the room unless necessary. As for meals, they would be distributed uniformly by the authorities. As for how long the cold air would last, the predicted time would be more than three months. After reading the first message, Yu Qingxian looked at the second one. It mentioned the situation of the team of superpower users. They were not allowed to leave the base at will for the time being. If they wanted to leave the base, there had to be a fire superpower user in the team. After all, a fire superpower user could generate heat for the team members in time, and the team of superpower users was now considered the main force against the zombies. The authorities provided some flexibility, but they also needed to be responsible for the lives of these people. As for the third message, Yu Qingxian was somewhat shocked. It said that more than 20 days ago, a certain country used some chemical agents to poison the zombies, and even used banned weapons. As a result, the zombies in that country mutated and became very powerful. Our country had not confronted them directly. There was also a blurry photo attached, showing only a black figure in the distance. Yu Qingxian stared at the photo and instantly knew that it was the zombie she had burned to death a few days ago. The time since this message was posted is half a month ago. That is, it was the day she first encountered the RV. In half a month, this zombie has traveled tens of thousands of kilometers to get here. Yu Qingxian felt that this zombie ran really fast. With this speed, she had already traveled the entire country in the past half year. Yu Qingxian quickly crossed out the three messages, and the last message was sent four days ago. It was the second day she arrived in this small town. The content made Yu Qingxian shiver. She never expected that the authorities had actually detected this zombie. And after it was killed, the authorities were also very clear. It's just that it's not known whether the zombie was killed by a person or by a higher level zombie. So this message was released to tell the people of the country that if someone kills this zombie, they can contact the authorities for confirmation. Of course, the authorities did not specify where it was killed, in order to prevent imposters. If no one claims it, then it is very likely that the zombie was killed by another zombie. Yu Qingxian stared at her phone, this was a message from 4 days ago. But the person who killed this zombie would never come forward. Because this zombie was not killed by a person at all. And it can't be considered that she killed it either. 
It was just self-defense, just a chair leg with fire. If she said that she burned the zombie to death, would anyone believe her? After reading the message, Yu Qingxian stared at her phone for a while, then turned it off instantly. The signal on this phone is not the same as before. If half a month ago, all the bases had forbidden the superhuman task force from leaving the base, then the superhuman task force that left the base might have killed this zombie. But then the authorities wouldn't have needed to release this message, after all, the authorities should know which superhuman task forces left the base. But what if there were other superhumans who directly took over the area? After all, in the post-apocalyptic world, those who can be protagonists are definitely not willing to be subordinate. Now that she has encountered so many people who seem like protagonists in the post-apocalyptic world, Yu Qingxian feels that it's not unusual to encounter more. But the authorities may not necessarily be aware of this kind of thing. So during this time, will the authorities lock her phone? After all, her phone was reconfigured by someone in the black market. She is not sure what signal source is being used. In the past, with over a billion people, the authorities wouldn't deliberately lock down these signal sources. But now, it's unknown how many survivors are left in this country, and the signals lingering outside the base will definitely be locked down by the authorities. People who dare to run around in the post-apocalyptic world are definitely the kind of people the authorities want to recruit. Yu Qingxian turned off her phone and finally breathed a sigh of relief. Regardless of whether it will happen or not, she must be cautious. Just as she put her phone back in her backpack, Yu Qingxian heard what sounded like a train running on the tracks. This made Yu Qingxian feel a bit puzzled. Could it be her imagination? But she did hear it. There was still some distance between her and the sound. When Tyrannosaurus pulled her onto a bridge, she found that there was a railway under the bridge. She looked up to where the sound was coming from and saw a somewhat old-fashioned green-headed train. This train runs on coal. Yu Qingxian first learned about this kind of antique from her parents' conversation. But this was the first time she had seen one. The front of the antique train had been deformed from a collision, but it had been reinforced at the back. The windshield seemed to be covered with a layer of frost, making it difficult to see the inside. But since the train was running, it meant that there must be people inside. Thinking about it, a train in the post-apocalyptic world is actually quite good. After all, a train can be completely transformed into a mobile house, much better than an RV. Yu Qingxian stared as the train passed under the bridge. She counted, there were a total of eight carriages. She just didn't know how many people were inside the train. She can't smell any fragrance, it seems that the train is well sealed. I guess it has been under renovation for most of the year. 